this is one of the premier events, not only in CSGO, but in esports as far as I'm concerned. We're getting 13,000 fans screaming their heads off here in an arena, watching CS, and just we're all feeling it together, right? You just cannot help but ride that energy wave that just goes pounding through Lanxus every time. Every second feels like an hour right now. But once the game goes live, you know that that's where the wear and tear is going to begin. The stage is set, the players are ready, and we have an incredible game on our hands. Two players in very different spots, and they need success from Flaney, and they don't get it. Simple as that, seized. And a fall as well, Apex turreting around. Guardian gets in on it, two big kills. Oh, and the third sublime. Simple puts the first nail in the coffin, and it's Larvi through to the semi-finals. Outstanding performance. There's the first shot. There's the second. He has the kit, and there's the triple kill clutch. Two big headshots, looking for more. Oh my God! Automatic with four frags. What a victory for them. They should be very proud, and I'm sure they are as well. Two semi-finalists figured out we're about to get a third. Liquid went 3-0 in groups, but they go up against a team that has been in every final since adding Nico. Oh my goodness, Kiyoshima, he's got three. Rain is mowing them down, and he gets three joined in with Nico as well. Now he makes his move. It's perfect. He gets two. He's going to add one more into it. Find further Fallen stands. Oh! What? Exceptional work from Fallen to remove those final bricks away from the green wall of Optic. SK, large and in charge. We are ready to take you into this first semi final of ESL 1 Cologne 2017. This is more than a semi final, this is the clash of gods. Both of these teams are so dead even, it's going to be a bloodbath. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Come, come and fly away with me. Come and fly away with me. Guardian might not be realizing he's almost over peaking, nearly goes down. Will he get the flick anyway? Taking down Skadoodle Shroud gets one. Guardian with another kill. Automatic coming in from the other angle. Looking for the shot at Guardian! <laughs> up to 11 kills and looking for number 12. Can anyone take this man down? It's all on Skadoodle. We get one, gets the next as well. How can it be real? Cloud9 are in the grand finals of ESL1 Cologne 2017. It's Fur being aggressive, but he's got chances to fall back. Oh, wow. Fur is so on point, and that's got to be so frightening. He continues it. The strike comes in for Rain! Oh! Oh! It's like nothing else. Three kills that no one could provide but him in this moment. One man stands between SK Gaming playing in those finals. He will not relent. He will not quit. He fights so hard. Another kill for Rain, but three more. Is it even possible? No! Cold Zera removing Rain from the battlefield and putting SK Gaming into the finals of ESL 1 Cologne. Something quite magical about this venue, isn't there? It's going to be exciting, exhilarating, and hopefully we do see some of those epic plays we saw in the semi finals and the quarters. Cold's just fighting at this point to try and salvage the round. There's no way Plant is in mind. It's all about kills. It's a one versus two. Knows one's close as well, based on the nade. Doesn't really have the range on the CZ. Has the accuracy. Oh, oh! Yes, oh my God, Zero! What a way to start off! Three versus three. The difference? Stewie again finds another kill. Stewie's had enough of it. He's going to fight. Stewart with the ace. Cloud9 needed it now more than ever. Oh my god, automatic! 
another, and they win the round off that. You have to be kidding me. That is the most insane round. They will continue to push SK back off the old bomb train. This for executes oh. Skadoodle, and then gives up the site for Fur. Oh my god. Fur, five kills, and Ace to start it off. Brilliant from him. Fallen. It's two on the AWP. It's carried over and Cole. Fallen's got a third. And this is how you do it. That's how you win it. SL1 Cologne. The trophy sits in the center of the Lanxess Arena. 15,000 esports fans gather to witness Counter Strike history being written. This would be so painful for me, but I'm just very happy that still people are supporting me, supporting and appealing. The year is 2019, and an arena of 15,000 human beings have such a passion for a video game and someone that played that video game that they just received a standing ovation in an arena full of 61 different nationalities of fans. Five 
years, the Lanxess Arena of Cologne has been the prodigious pilgrimage for those truly passionate about competitive Counter-Strike. I love to play here. I never want to skip this tournament. Not one day in my life I will ever skip this tournament. And it's always a dream to play here. It's like going in a gladiator game and you're just like, there's only one winner and everybody's fighting to death to lift the trophy. He's got the first, he's got the second! Zywoo's a god! He is above anything Ashes can create! You're a bunch of wildlings, a bunch of Dothraki out there, and I love every second of it. I just want to say something. I miss you both in Cologne. You are not my friends. You are my brother, my friend! When it all goes down, I'm going to run this town. Intel Extreme Masters Cologne is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, and 1xBet. The majestic Lanxess Arena, G2, Vitality, Ents, and Heroic already booked their tickets to play here, but that means there's only two spots left. 
It's absolutely wild that there's only two spots left. The Cathedral is calling, but it's only for these last two teams that remain. Now FaZe, Na'Vi, you've got to look at Cloud9, Astralis, all with a chance to still make it through. But we were always talking about Hooksy's world. Maybe we're living in Gamer Legion's world? They could still do it as well. Are we just living in Gamer Legion's world? Are they going to do it again? Do they have magic in the tank? That's what's so cool about today. It might be the teams that you don't expect because when that cathedral is calling, sometimes people are able to do much more than they imagine. Oh yes, they go further, they push harder, and they do their absolute best. But it has to be now on this last day if they want to have a chance of making it in. The Shocks, you got some work to do on the A stream. I'm going to go take care of the B stream. Oh, I'm getting goosebumps just seeing images of that beautiful arena. And that is where every team is dreaming of ending up playing in a packed out arena in front of a coveted crowd and etching their name on our historic trophy. Six teams remain, but only two spots up for grabs in the playoffs of Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. My name is Ferris Biz. Joining me up here, we've got Yanko, we've got Kassad, and very special guest Hades joining us. I know uh, probably not the uh, opportunity you thought about, uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we need to get you a microphone from somewhere. So uh, <laughs> let's sort that out. Hopefully Oli's on the case with that. Uh, gentlemen, great to have you uh, up here. How's the uh, final day of the Yeah, I guess game? we'll have to make do on the Yeah, hopefully Oli can hear us somewhere. So it's fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, final day of groups. Uh, we've got so much on the line, six teams remaining, only two spots going into that arena. And yeah, so much to be looking forward to. Yeah, it's crazy, especially that obviously group B lower brackets, we have to kick off the day uh, Navi versus FaZe. <laughs> you know, yes! like one of those teams is going to uh, get eliminated. Even on the other side of that lower bracket, you have Maus and Astralis, who have both played some good Counter-Strike in this tournament. So yeah, today it's going to be wild. And Gamer Legion keeping their heads above water as well, Kassad. Uh, that wasn't on my bingo card yesterday. I mean, yes, they, they beat Fnatic, some, one team that, that actually can be beaten. And uh, Here we go. Oh, here we go. Beautiful. Uh, thank you very go. much, Audio Man. You. And thank you, Hades. Uh, great to have you up here. How are you, how are you feeling this morning? Feeling good. Um, thank you for having me also. And yeah. <laughs> I, I know it's a difficult, you know, uh, pre opportunity here because uh, you are eliminated, won't be going through to the playoffs. But um, I just want to get your thoughts about the Nines kind of progression throughout the entirety of IM Cologne because obviously plans, um, it was great to see you there. Then coming into uh, the group stage probably wasn't quite what you were hoping for, right? I mean, to be honest, both games which we lost, I feel like we should have won, but then we choked really hard, both uh, against Ants and Cloud9. But it's really promising for us that we can like put a fight and actually be on winning map points, game points against such teams. So it's promising. I mean, you did get a win against Liquid. That's a, that's a big one, and you know, obviously later on you just had the heartbreaks. But overall, tell us first of all, tell us like how do you feel about your team progressing and developing, and the second thing is like how do you enjoy the games outside of your own? Um, so for the progress, I think we constantly make progress, uh, which I think we can see from the major. We bounce back pretty well, and it's just really good for us because. Not everyone was feeling comfortable on land, and with every game, it seems like, for example, K got unblocked. He's, he plays really good in the main stage, and so the more like games we get to play, then I think the better we will get. And outside of the game, everyone's just still having fun. Like even after the tough losses, like one hour after the game, everyone's just joking around, just talking what could have done, what could have been better, and there was no like no arguments between each other. We just so look, progress, looking no. at like this, this like you know, you see that the, the the level of Counter Strike is just amazing. Cutthroat tournament, your face and face and Navi playing in the lower bracket. Does it feel like the whole tournament is scary? Whoever you face, yeah, it is like it's so stacked, and there is no like no one which is safe right right now. I feel like anyone can be anyone to be honest. Yeah, I mean, we're going to be seeing teams beating other teams coming into today and some hearts going to be broken. Let's take a look at today's schedule because we have so much on the cards for us as a potentially the last opportunity to be making it to playoffs. We said it, the grand final of last year at IM Cologne 2022. Now, very different story, Kassad. Uh, Na'Vi taking on FaZe, first of all. Oh, yeah, you, you can see that's the, that's the first game and that's one of the most dangerous games that we can have right now. Obviously, everybody wants to see Na'Vi do well with this new lineup and the new like teammates speaking English and everything. But FaZe 
Haze, on the other hand, like you cannot write them off. They are always dangerous. They are always scary. Always a lot of firepower. They can win any event, and this clash is going to be really good. Hades, I want to get your thoughts on uh, the two matches that we see going on on the B stream. Obviously, uh, you were beaten by Cloud9 and Ents. Uh, Ents going up against Heroic for a potentially a spot at the semi-final. But for Cloud9, um, what what were your take on them as a, a new team coming into things? I mean, we. We played a lot of practice against, uh, against them, and with Axel, they're like top one for us. <laughs> but <laughs> with Buster, they're still good, but they're not as good. But it looks like with every game, they just get that little bit better, that little bit com more confident. So I feel like they should probably win against Game Elite. We heard this from a couple of players already, what you said about Cloud9 in practice. Can you tell us, uh, even though it might be an obvious question, but what is the one main thing that makes them so good at them, or so scary in practice? Mm. I would say it's their patience, because mm. like they will do something on one end of the map, but they will never like leave any gaps open. So if you try to take info plays, you'll get punished most of the time. Can we bring up that lovely graphic again? Because I got a little bit distracted by the concept of Cloud9. Obviously, they're going to be taking on Gamer Legion. But over on the other side of the bracket, um, things getting a little bit chaotic. Obviously, we preface uh, FaZe versus Na'Vi. Then it's going to be Maus versus Astralis. And the winner of each of those games will play another game later on today. So I feel like it's going to be a question of stamina in this one, Yako. It is going to be a question of stam stamina, but I also don't want the viewers to think, ah, oh, okay, whoever wins out of FaZe, Na'Vi is going to be the one who's taking that spot. Both Maus and Astralis have been looking good for me this is the best Astralis has looked I think probably since the you know golden era of Astralis yeah. really like it, it makes sense the players are delivering it seems the atmosphere within the team is better I mean you got guys like Device getting up and shouting like really feeling that fire again which is I think dangerous for whoever goes up against them yeah and Device has been showing up in terms of the big frags in the server as well Kassad it's kind of crazy that he can take so much time off and then come back and basically not skip a beat Freya, he has been showing up ever since he came back it's like he never left the consistency is there and Nianko said that the fire is there as well so motivation he's there I have seen him in the dream I have seen him like working out i've seen him, like mentally getting ready what were you doing there physically getting ready i'm just like walking past <laughs> the, the, the thing is like he's Picking getting ready <laughs> just bringing water to the ice and <laughs> no the thing is like he's he's ready to be back on the, the highest level of counter strike and it's good to see he's one of the all-time goats and you know happy to see him here how do you feel hades is he one of the guys that you used to watch you know coming up and sort of emulate try to emulate yeah, he's the guy which I was always looking forward to. So when I've heard he came back, I was just downloading all the demos instantly, you know? <laughs> So yeah, I'm a device fanboy. Well, when we look at the Group B side of things, you might be getting a little bit of deja vu because if we throw ourselves back to last year's playoffs, um, we can see all four of those teams are trying to fight for just that one spot. Actually made it to playoffs last year, Yanko. Yeah, I, I think also uh, for that Astralis lineup, like that was the one time they managed to get into a playoffs of big event. Yes. And of course it was Cologne for Maus. It was also their best result of the season. So that was all surprising. I think we like to say that we have given up uh, the, the bracket to have the ideal grand final, right? Because there were a couple of teams that maybe you would expect to be there, like Cloud9, G2 weren't, weren't in the playoffs, yes. but you had Navi and FaZe on the opposite side, and boy, did it pay off. Where do you stand on the uh, Navi side of the equation then, Hades? Obviously, hell of a lot of changes into this new season. What are you thinking of the team? Mm, like, it's still pretty early, but sometimes you get those magical rounds where you see so much potential in there, but then they also make, like, so many silly mistakes sometimes. So if they cut them, those mistakes out, or, like, fix them, they would be really dangerous. Basically, what he's saying, he's not impressed yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... He can't speak, he's right here. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Alexi just now, we did an interview and he said, you know, I asked him one thing that you you think you could do better is like, I think the atmosphere can be a little bit better, like that yeah. we need to stay positive at times because we tend to lose energy at times and that's when the communication drops and you're not going to play your best CS when the energy isn't good. It has to be flowing, it has to be snappy, but you know, those are just growing pains for a team that went through a major overhaul, different cultures, different personalities, um, and that's going to take a lot of getting used to, especially for a Finn, to play with some Eastern Europeans. I mean, he was in G2, so he had, you know, Nico Hunter in that and uh, in there and all of that stuff. But yeah, I think for now, those are things that you can sort of not necessarily let slide, but be like, okay, that is going to happen now, but let's see them a month, two months from now. And by then, that should be, there should be an improvement there. Uh, and then we see FaZe over on the other side of the ring uh, versus Na'Vi. Uh, did you see the game yesterday, Hades? Uh, G2 versus FaZe? Because mm. that was a pretty, uh, that, that, that was a stomp, right guys? I was so surprised mm. that G2 were gonna pull that off in two. I've only watched like the last map, so I didn't really see the whole game. <laughs> Neither did we, anything. 
<laughs> the thing is, I wanted to ask you about ants. Obviously, they are playing heroic for that semi spot, and you are probably super close with all these guys. How do you see them as a team right now? I mean, whenever we, when I was still in ants, whenever we played heroic, it was maybe not a confident game, but we all usually went out on top in those games. So I think they should be able to take it because they play some good counter strike. Actually, I, I got another question about ants because I, I hold uh, Snappy and Saw as the like coaching game leader do in high regard. I think they're probably were going underrated until their recent success in the trophy Dallas. So what can you tell us a little bit about that dynamic? Mm, they have a, like a really good partnership on how to prepare for games, um, how to prepare for prax, and just to fix all the small stuff which need to get fixed during the game or like after the game. So they just have like a really good, what's it called? Like they, synergy. Yeah, synergy. they have yeah. good synergy. And then we move on to uh, another game which uh, both teams obviously qualified, but a uh, spot for the semi-finals up for grabs, Vitality versus G2. Um, what's your take on Vitality so far with Flamesy now coming in? I don't know, I haven't done a single of their games, <laughs> no, but I, I think it's obviously a good change. You can feel like also a little bit of a honeymoon period even for them, uh, getting a new player in, a young player, Flamesy, great guy, great kid, yeah, uh, yeah. good, very good player, first of all, but then also great personality, always looking to improve, will do anything for the team, will sacrifice, and to be honest, the only thing that was surprising was their loss to NIP at Blast. Other than that, yes. it all seems to be going according to plan. They're absolutely throunced uh, mouse yesterday, so yeah, if... We can see the G2 from yesterday against FaZe and Vitality that we've been seeing so far in this season. That should be an incredible matchup. Yeah, I think it's going to be hella competitive, right? Oh, definitely. If, if G2 shows that form from yesterday, again, not the blast one. But the, the, the thing is, like, the thing is, like, Vitality is one of those teams that I consider like to be the closest to like what you would describe a perfect team right now, right? Because they have this like roles that are fitting together, the personalities, the atmosphere, the coach, everything is like fitting there. And the org is good, right? So overall, they're close to that, you know, being a real, real team, right? Which is super rare these days. Hades, who do you have winning that one? Vitality or G2? Mm, I think Vitality. Like. Yeah. Uh, I feel Zai will pop off today, you know? <laughs> We've seen glimpses <laughs> of it yesterday. And you can feel it in the orping waters. Yeah, Something, yeah. Something's going to be happening. I, I feel it. Well, we'll have to wait uh, to find out exactly how that one is going to be going down. But man, are we starting off with a banger indeed. We're throwing things back to the grand final of last year, now with an entirely different tale. Look at that trophy. Both of these teams' names etching it. It's Navi versus Fates after this. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my! Oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my God! Gary, are you gonna be kidding me? What a map! What a map! The in-game leader. Architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? I just think the uh, device deserves a better team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, device fan boy. As you all know, big roster shuffle, roster mania. I've got Patsy in a bloody liquid jersey to, to prove it. And uh, we're going to be ranking them. We're going to be using these playing cards, high value. I think ace is highest, uh, all the way down to joker, meaning I'm not quite sure. I'm going to throw them at you guys. Astralis. What do you think, stare. Borup and Stare? Borup and Stare, I think, I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good. I good think to it's, see Borup I think he's a king. I'll put yeah. him as a queen, though. Okay. Yeah, good. Uh, appreciation yeah. for the new Astralis roster. Borup is not not only really flexible and really versatile in terms of anchor spots right. and whatever, and they specifically need that player because they have Device, Blame F, and uh, uh, now they picked up Stare as well, yeah. right? Stare was always like the kind of like a star player in a way. And uh, now that they have more up like the missing piece for the consistency in their back yeah. lines. That's it, another ace actually. Okay, a okay. lot of love for Astralis' changes, that's cool. Yeah. I like it, I think, I mean, Stare. Stare is, stare. I couldn't believe how young you were. One of the um, upcoming know. talents and I think Borup, I mean, he was upcoming when I was upcoming basically, and right. when, when he was tricked still. So I think he's a solid player and he always was. Yeah, I see like he has a Luke on left and right, like what is everybody doing? Oh. 
Queen, little bit. Queen. Yeah. Okay, agreement. I know Stair is very good. I just hopefully he hope he has like all the good roles that he was playing in beforehand and he's got kind of got that good confidence. It's the first time none of you agree. Okay, none let's start with Prozos, Mr. Prozos. Yeah. Why you why choose is, why the king? A king move. Their back to on the last event was like close to ours and we, we were like like I was hearing them laugh all the okay. time and they had a lot of fun so I think like their chemistry is really good and I think like the lineup has a lot of potential. Where do you see them at the end of the year? Ranking wise? Top 15 to top 5, everything's possible. What do you mean top 15 to top 5? You're giving yeah. us, it's not even yeah, okay. like a fork. Yeah, right, you're right. <laughs> it's but a window. I, I, like, okay, let's say top 10. I think okay. top 10, yeah. Okay, top 10. I was shocked that they removed Glaive. Okay. Um, I dislike the move. I believe that he's he has so much knowledge and he knows exactly how to put the work with the young stars to make them work as well. Kangol Queen, Some, something in between. Something in between the king and the queen and the king. All right, this is very varying. I just think the uh, device deserves a better team. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, device bad boy. I think like the core of device blame and stir is like really strong, but then like Baz and Borup is. It's like a question mark. You don't you don't know how it will work, right? Well, what are your thoughts on Borup though? Um, it's meh. <laughs> What is your calling? The final day of groups here at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne. We still have six teams vying for a spot in the Lanxess Arena. And today, well, only two will progress. Here in Group B, we have, whether you want to view it as a pleasure or a pain, the chance to whittle down four into one, and all four teams deserve that spot, have fought for this opportunity. We start off today with Maus versus Astralis, and even here, there could be only one. It's a tough test today. It's going to be a gauntlet for either of these teams. Joining me on the desk here, we've got Bla, we've got Kassad. Guys, we've come to the end of the groups. And I like that the, the you mentioned Highlander. It right? That's so what I was good. thinking about. Christopher Lambert, and it's so good, right? There can be only one. He doesn't get the reference. Oh, yeah, okay. Ne never mind then. I let's do. Go back I to do. The really? I know. I'll chop your head off with a claymore. All right. Ooh, let's, let's get in go. here. Okay. Yes, you are completely right. Four teams, only one can go through. From that side, it's just super cutthroat. It's super spicy. You're going to have a great game of Cloud Strike. Yeah. We are indeed. We are indeed. Maus, Astralis, look, these two teams, right, maybe we didn't have a full sense of what their form would be coming in. New rosters for both, additions coming through, changes in leadership, mm -hmm. yet both have proved that uh, they're ready to fight for trophies early on. Yeah, if you look at this last matchup they had, this was obviously in Dallas where Maus were able to take on Astralis, but these are different rosters, right? They even had two different IGLs as well. Astralis since then had an opportunity to play in Blast where they kind of kind of fixed some of the issues they might have been having some of these starting issues. For Maus though, it's been hitting the ground running. She will be coming back to this team saying as well that it felt like I never left. It's like the, all the boys are back together again, but they've grown, they've evolved when he was away. They became men. They became men. But interestingly enough, the, the one man, one of the youngest players on his team, the veteran is going to be frozen. And he has been, according to Shui, he's been like the calm voice in the team, which is wild to me considering he's just 21. But he's been around for like a while. I do want to point out, you said one of the youngest. No, no, he's the second oldest. Torsi's only got him by like three months. This is such a young team. They are, they are, uh, he's just got the most experience, but I mean, he's still a kid. He's still a kid. I was doing a really Crazy. good job, you know, doing, you know, these swaps and, 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 and players, like getting players you know, super young and, and developing them into a really, there really, we go. like, you know, oh, he's already sleeping. He's an old man. Well, not, he's getting not, man not after that your old. heart, Kassad. <laughs> getting yeah. a nap in pre-game. He, uh, he does this though. He does this every single game of Mouse. He does this. He takes, closes his eyes, meditates, whatever. He's but in you his know, mind. But, palace. but you know, when he jumps into the uh, into the game, he's going to be dropping a bomb almost seemingly every single time. So I don't know if this works for other players. This works for him though. Listen, he did this uh, he, before. This he did a full focus that much. I was staring them down from the from the upper floor and yeah the other guys were just on their phones and doing like talking and he was just laser focused looking at the screen didn't even blink 
Didn't even blink. That's actually the secret to being a pro Counter Strike player. Learn how to not blink. Just be like a gecko. You know, lick your eyes. That's the way to do it. Don't lick uh, your eyes, guys. <laughs> I look you. The PSA from Kasad. Don't lick your eyes, guys. Uh, moving on, though. Let's talk uh, a little bit about some of the other elements of this Mouse roster. In particular, I want to focus in on Torji. I think we did actually get to catch up with him uh, before this matchup. So let's hear what he has to say. It's the day of last chances to make it to the arena. And Mal certainly have that chance going up against Astralis very shortly. And Torzi, playing 1.54 rating. You were dominating. We come here and I see your rating drops a bit. You're 0.94. But you've been talking so positive about how you're being used. I wanted to see what do you think it's down to? What have you been struggling with here? Yeah, so yeah, the planes were pretty good for me. Like we beat Mongols and, um, and yeah, on that game, I was just pop popping off, you know, and then coming to the group stage. I mean, it's tougher enemies, yeah. and, uh, but also we played yesterday versus Vitality and they totally crushed us. Mm. And I think like nobody really showed us, not just me, but like anybody from our team, you know, yeah. like we got totally destroyed and it was pretty tough game. And I mean, if, if we talk about ratings, you know, it's, it's not going to be nice if we got 16-4, 16-4, mm. you know. So, yeah, but I don't really think about this. I think okay, even though we got destroyed, it felt good because we didn't get really angry on us, no. uh, on each other, and we didn't get like depressed, you know. So we took it as fun, we, we took it as a lesson, we talked through, and now we are just ready to face a size. I like this. So the mood is still good. We're not caring about the ratings. You're confident, though, and your individual level can be like rising higher and dominate. Because I think in a game like this, especially against the likes of Astralis, we need to see that come up. And are you feeling any pressure? Yeah, I know it has to come up, and I'm. As I said, I'm pretty confident in my uh, individual uh, level at the moment, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't feel, I mean, there is always a little pressure, but I don't feel like extra pressure, you know. It's just another game. We need to win. We need to focus. And, yeah, I just try my best as I always. Now, with the Australian style of play, what do you think it is specifically you guys need to watch out for? What have you got to be careful of? Yeah, I think they have a pretty good play style. I think they can change it up. Like sometimes they fake a lot, sometimes they pl play pretty, uh, pretty direct. So we have to figure it out what's their game style at the moment. And uh, I think we need to focus on our communication a lot. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be the goal of today. So yeah. The goal of today is to get that Irene from Mouse. Let's see if they can get it done. One big goal, and it doesn't sound like the confidence is shaken just yet. It's been good for Torji, but as you said, they hit the ground running. Well, they also did a little bit of a face plant against Vitality. Yeah, it's really good to know that they haven't let that really affect them too much because it was it was going to be happening. It was going Man. to be happening. They've been, you know, they had a very close game against the Mongols. They were looking good, and Vitality are in championship yes, form right yes, now. Yes, they did play well. Yeah, that's fine. But he said, like, yeah, we got destroyed, but we took it as fun. Like, <laughs> no, no. I think it's lost in translation. Okay. I think but what he's trying to say correct is he wasn't stressed saying, about it. He did correct himself saying, okay, we learned the lesson and that's it. Like, I, I can respect that, but if we took it as fun, no. I'm, I'm that's looking, not fun. I'm I think, yeah, anyone who's been, you know, 16 forward in an MM game knows that's not fun. We I'm looking at the Vito's here. On, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like it's just going to play out the way they did in Dallas. I don't think anyone's going to take any risks. If they do, I'll be a little surprised. I think Mouse are going to stick with Inferno, even though they got banged out against uh, Vitality. It is a map they usually pick with. And for Astralis, right, Ancient should be the pick again. They just look phenomenal on that map. But there is a thing, Kassad, this is my thing. If they do go with a Vertigo pick, there, there, we, go. Go. there we go. They're playing it safe. Vertigo should be banned by Mouse. We should have a uh, toss up in a nuke and overpass as a decider. And I'd be very surprised if Mouse goes with anything apart from it. Should we do a huddle too? Yeah, we never do huddles, man. Like, yeah. everyone's like, they we can do, one we can do one real quick. Let's do one real quick. Come together, guys. Come together. <laughs> huddle. Uh, uh, predict up. the last map. This is a surprise. Uh, this is a, that's this a, a second stage. No, that's not a surprise. I whatsoever. think it's a bit of a surprise. I think Astralis mm. knows that they, that they're going to be dangerous on Inferno against them on the decider. No, no. And the, they would rather the, the bands are fine. Uh, the pick coming in for Nuke, ah, yeah. right? That's a bit of a surprise, I feel like. I wasn't fully convinced. We haven't seen this team, uh, the, 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 the team of Mouse play on Vertigo yet as a decider. It's going to be a debut. They it's an Astralis who looked damn good yesterday. Against yes, them. exactly. They usually look good as well on a map like Vertigo. I remember being against Vitality back in whatever the tournament it was. And they seem to have a normal, like a decent grasp on the map. But one of my favorite maps, by the way. Uh, and uh, I think the, the, the Vito is just really 
50-50 here. I can't really put an advantage on a single team when it comes to the, usually you can get a sense of like What's who happened? won the veto, who lost the veto, who has to win which map, but right now it's straight up 50-50. I see a three mapper here. Well, that's exciting for sure. And I mean, the guys on the other side are going to make it exciting as well. Astralis, uh, Rock, and Device blame F. Those ratings starting to climb sky high. I think Device is like fourth highest in the tournament at and, this point. I mean, the Device is looking phenomenal. I mean, obviously, these two players on each team are the heavy hitters. But there is one thing which makes Device stand out. Yesterday, in the game against Vitality for the side of Mouse, no one's able to do anything. Not even Frozen, not even Torji. You look at Device, they got banged out by G2. Well, not banged out, but still a pretty reasonably close scoreline. But when everyone else failed to deliver, Device still was on top of his game. And he will be the difference maker for me. He's the most skilled player on the server for me, definitely. Even though there is a lot of talent in Blame and the other guys, but Device is class. I mean, as well, you talk about the young talent when we're thinking about Miles over on the other side. It's like the most experience you could possibly be in Device. The guy who's been the consistency god for so long in Counter-Strike. The guy who's defined so much of global offensive as well. And I mean, this is uh, this definitely going to be a tough The time. fact yesterday, I, firstly, I am really loving the side of Device, this in-your-face waving. It's not, he's not exactly Acadian calling people effing noobs in, a, in you know, <laughs> out loud yet, but at least, you know, he's be showing a little bit more uh, zazz, so to speak, outside of the server, which is cool to see. But what I love watching Device is it just blows my mind. It boggles my mind how someone can just disappear for a year, come back, and just be like, yeah, I was never gone. I had never left. I'm still so bloody damn good. Class. Pure class. Pure yeah. class. The picture of it. And uh, a guy who looks like he's having a lot of fun. I mean, Miles have talked about the atmosphere. Oh, we're having a great time. Chemistry's back there. Astralis, man, they've been loud. They've been happy. They've been smiling. I don't know the last time I saw Astralis smiling. It's crazy. It's pre-COVID. <laughs> Maybe they got their vaccines. I don't know. <laughs> we don't want to get fully. Did you? A little uh, all right, all right. Uh, jumping in, actually, b just before we started as into Ancient, right? we did see Mouse play Ancient once against Na'Vi, which is a 16-9 win. They picked that map. They look very solid as well. But I'll tell you this, on a defensive side, what Astralis are going to be throwing their way? What we saw from Astralis yesterday was Borup and Blame F. Just finding the right timing up towards mid, finding the right timing upstairs towards mid, and just cutting off rotations, getting in the minds of NIP. NIP just crumbled. After like round five or six on the CD side, it felt like they had no answer whatsoever. Now, this is going to be a real test for Mouse. I think Astralis look probably one of the best teams on Ancient right now. Yeah, definitely. They feel very comfortable with that map, and they seem like they know every timing. And every timing, everything that's going on with, with, with the map itself, the map controls are going always. They're very cool, calm, and calm and collected when it comes to when it comes to these early rounds and like these basics. But the real hero of this morning is are your notes. This is very, very well written. Thanks, Kasat. Stop steal stop stealing my You have like this like this doctor <laughs> style handwriting, so it's 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 pretty cool. My Wait, did you my is that a compliment? Doctors, Do you mean yeah? the doctor yeah. style is in he's got good penmanship? Because in, in the uh, US usually we say doctors have the worst penmanship. Yeah, but America is different. You guys don't know how to write it. So <laughs> True, it's real. It's just uh it's just like very, very nice to see. Thank you, Kasat. That might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me in the past three years I've known you. Uh, don't 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 get used to it. Kasad's working on self-improvement here, working on the compliments. But, but uh, I let's am talk in love, though. So. Let's, he's oh, definitely in go. love. That the explains everything. Man. He's just been walking out, you know, from, from the hotel. All right, I'm going to wheel us back in for a second. <laughs> let's talk about the improvement that we've seen from some of the young players. I want to think specifically about Jim Pat, because he uh, came into this, right, looked very rattled early on. Mm -hmm. And there's still been some moments. You, I mean, a 16-year-old player yep. playing this kind of a tournament for the first time ever, this level of competition for the first time ever. But we've seen improvement. Listen, I, I can't really put any kind of criticism on a 16-year-old kid that came to play in the biggest event of the year or, you know, biggest event of all time. Basically, this, this Cologne event is super, for super CSGO, important yeah. for CSGO. So overall, I can't really, you know, put some any kind of judgment on good or bad. I think he has time to figure things out, his own role, how to fit in with the system, how to fit in with Shui calls, and like all these like things that are coming in. High tier CS is super, super, you know, high pressure things, right? It's very cutthroat, it's very dangerous, it's very scary, and it tends to like put some pressure on you as if you're a 16 year old. What did we know when we were 16 year olds? No. Nothing. Right? So we can't really criticize that, and I think he's going to be fine. I don't think, yeah, I agree with Kasab. We don't have to criticize him again, like you said, all the points you mentioned, right? The 16 year old kid playing his first lap, proper land ever, big land ever, being Cologne 2023. But you also have to point out the fact that he is, he could potentially be that weak link for this mouse team. 
everything on the line, you lose, you're out, as Starlets are going to be aware of this. We saw Mongols being aware of that in the first game on Nuke, where he was playing ramp, and he was just getting harassed time and time again. And likewise, certain spots he's playing on in uh, uh, with this mouse lineup is different from what he used to play in the NXT lineup. Mm. For example, I know we don't have Inferno here, but Inferno, earlier on, you know, he used to play Pit for NXT. That fit him very p perfectly in this new lineup as well. But for other maps, it moved him a little bit around. So it's going to feel uncomfortable, and practice is different, as opposed to Blame F just barreling down right in front of you. It was interesting as well. There was a Shue interview with uh, HLTV, I believe, where he talked about it, and he said, yeah, all these roles that Jim Fett is moving into are actually roles that he wanted to. We, we've prioritized making him comfortable letting him do what he wants to do, what he's asked for, and that is involving more anchoring, which this is, is tough for a young this guy. This is very important for a young player so he can like get into his first team and see the support from, you know, the the coaching for the IGLing. Like you, if you feel that as if you're coming into like a career of of playing Counter Strike, you it will just, you know, develop you much more faster and in a more healthy way coming into the whatever the future holds for you, right? So overall that's a that's a good thing to hear if that's actually true, right? So I'm just hoping that he will overcome a little bit of this pressure. Maybe this event will be a little too much for him, but maybe on the very next one because they have Pro League. I'm not sure if they're playing Riyadh or, or anything like that. So any kind of future events will just get easier and easier for him if he gets the proper support from Cyclone, from Sui, and the other guys that are already there. It, it is kind of interesting. It's almost two different philosophies in terms of how to build the team between these two rosters, right? Maus has been all about that internal talent coming up through the system. Cyclone plugging them into the team over on Astralis. They tried. They brought in Altex, they looked at it, they thought about it, and they said, nah. I'll, nah. I'll tell you this about Astralis, right? The one criticism we are, everyone had with half a brain for the past three years was like, what the hell are you doing some of the players you're picking up? You're picking up a player and just completely screwing them over, giving them all the shit roles, which is not necessarily bad on paper, but they seem to be kind of the scapegoats when shit doesn't work out for them, right? But for the side of Buzz, when Glaive was calling and Buzz was struggling, was looking rough, and then now coming on in with Blame of calling again, he's looking solid right now. The, the, the biggest issue with, I don't think Altex was bad at all. The biggest problem he has was his nickname. He sounded like a, one of those vacuum cleaners. You know, <laughs> Altex. Alcatraz or Alcatraz, <laughs> Altex that's, that's the kind of deep insight we look to from our analysis <laughs> desk. Right. Now it's time to get into <laughs> some deeper insight from our casters. We got Sponge and Machine to take you through this one. Take it away, boys. Thank you, you handsome devils. Yes, we are going to be taking this one away. And extra insight. I've got Chatty B for that, fortunately. Uh, yeah, into Kassad's love life is uh, where we're going to be starting today. <laughs> right, okay, fantastic. Uh, we'll be deep diving into <laughs> everything to do with love. But here we go. Fist bumps exchange. Mouse versus Astralis. And, her, and from Blair, from the horse's mouth, Astralis looked like one of the best teams on Ancient right now. Surely that means an uphill struggle for Mouse. I think it's going to be an uphill struggle for Mouse, considering how yesterday went. They didn't even get started. They jumped in the server. They got flatlined by reigning major champions by Vitality. We cast that, Chad. It was one-way traffic. Yeah, it's got a tag on it. I don't think they're even allowed to put it on YouTube. Uh, yeah. A little bit of a, a violent affair. But that was how Astralis dealt with NIP as well. So one team off the back of a hiding, the other oh, I like knowing how it's dished out. Oh, I like that a lot. Yeah, okay. So one way or the other, they might be getting the same feeling or the very opposite. As look how many nades device was brought into this pistol. Stairs even got one too. So here's device line up. At the moment, four occupy the sites. They're making audible sounds. Exertion to investigate. Chef and Jay to press the buttons. It's exertion. Yeah, he's going to take this fight. He wants that fight, but he's gone. And the still body's pushing cave. We need Frozen. to use this util here. Where is, when, when is the util flying through? Oh, Buzz. He's caught one. shoe has gone down. And they are committing through. These, this Utah has isolated a perfect take into the site. This is the path of least resistance. There's yeah. nothing they can do. At this point, considering we can see Device still has a molly and a flash, you might be better off saving now. As you lose two bodies immediately here, Exertion and Chewy fall with ease. Now you find yourself in a three-on-five post-plant. Bombs read down for about 10 seconds. Good luck, Mouse. Really, no hope. But that's that got, flash. Yeah, some individuals off the back of this. You'll group up, you'll push. It, uh, no one wants to be saving three sets of Kevlar with five alive for your opponent. There you go. Make it four alive. Frozen still hitting shots, and he was the only one hitting shots in that vitality Look at game. Device. If we, Chef, if we could just go back to Device here. Yeah, well, <laughs> he had just the molly in his hand, right. right? So the contingency was there regardless. It's like we're playing matchmaking with Hugo B. Barnett. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I've you guys that try and defend, and I'll just sit back here with the molly and win the round, the round, shall I? I got the round, guys. He literally didn't need to do anything. And a round where Device doesn't need to be involved other than throwing util, that has to be quite a nice feeling for Astralis. And talking of nice feelings and Device, for you watching Device, you echo the sentiment that he, you know, Upon arrival, that class, that top three individual, he is present. He wasn't messing around.
around. And I think the best thing that you hear from Device since his return is, I have made the choice to be here now. Oh, Before, hot, yeah. he grew up, and this was the only world he knew. Now, this is something that he's been able to take a step back from, evaluate his life, evaluate what he enjoys as an individual. And yeah, he has that love for Counter-Strike, and he still wants to be one of the absolute best, which shows. is yeah, why he came in with such hot form. Him and Blame, those two individuals are the driving force of this Astralis roster. And then we get to see what the likes of Stare, the touted star, is Bowrub, the return of a, an aim star. And of course, Buzz, Device's best friend. Blame with three kills on the second round. Conversion there. And that's his favorite types. <laughs> Someone's going to get him, guys. Make your threads. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. Back into the rifles then, and it's, it is going to be with a couple of um, missing nades. I'm sure the CT is not going to have too much trouble up against some Galils. Let's find out. Yeah, and, and this is where I want to see how they toy with a team like Maus. You can fake them out quite a lot here. They're going to be a bit jumpy across the map. Some individuals that you might want to target, Mr. Yimpat here, if they want to aim for the 16-year-old. Maybe not in the same fashion Kadian did, but uh, in the server. Yeah, or just exploiting his read of the game, right? If you get a bit panicky, if you're the A anchor, you're called for rotates when you don't need them. They can fake him out in that way as well. They're giving a lot of control out early. Exertion has had a slow start. He's gone down again, going looking for just an, an initial glance up towards the ramp. Yeah, it's not meant to go that easy. They were just establishing the boost here to apply some pressure. So that's a huge kill to find in the early stages of this one. Then oh, Util again, again but yeah, just him. jousting and Device has done an awful lot of damage to Torji here. So over towards the long side of the death cube. He's going to continue to jiggle, but that's not a fight you want to be taking. You were already low. They really wanted to retain that control, and these fights have just come the way of Astralis here. Three mouse players grouped up, but look at Timmer. This flame's going to take even more. Yeah, Yimpat's down. Shui trades two left for Mouse to try and recover this round. Well, you can't plant in middle. As the saying goes. And uh, that's where both mouse players find themselves right now. Buzz has been able to slink in towards CT spawn, somewhat undetected. Frozen with an idea that that is a gap, but just hoping to save here, Mouse, and they're picking up right where they left off yesterday. Now, if you're Astralis, you would love to get through this as quickly as possible today. Drop as few rounds as you can. Definitely don't go to a third map, because today, sure, this first matchup is survival. We have Na'Vi versus FaZe on that mainstream, brought to you by Connor and Launders. They're getting a couple kills here, starting to shape up, but uh, yeah, still just a save game. Now, the reason I'm saying this is just... Wait, you don't have a, you don't have a kit. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they're just happy with all the kills. Okay, well... Psychological warfare. Yeah, and look, an AK for him. So that's actually great. Good damage. Really good damage, all things considered. I'm talking about this just being a, a walk in the park. Maybe not. Maybe I, they I'm will have something to say. At the, uh, the old ancient stats, just because I wanted to reiterate. You brought Borup's name up. 22 and 13, 111 ADR, and a 1.5 rating against the Ninjas. He was Astralis' best player on Ancient last time. My heart was bleeding for Borup yesterday because he was in the interview and he was so confident and positive and everything was going well. And then he just was like, yeah, you know, I'm a bit more supportive on the T side and then I'm entry fragging and I'm like, ah. Oh. Like that is like, that. that's the shit kicker role. That's the, I will set my stars up early for map control. Yeah. You know, I'll throw the red smoke, I'll, I'll throw the, the flashes. I'll get you in. And then when everything's established and the call is, all right guys, we're going to execute into then the site enter. with all the unknowns. <laughs> Bow up, you go first. I see, here he goes. And there they go. Device combines with him and they're into the beast. Okay, this is a nightmare for Maus. Put yourself in Maus's shoes. Three rounds on the trot. You've had yourself going, uh, one B, two B. We've lost B. Should we retake B? Yeah. And they just woke up a couple of hours ago You're as right. well. So maybe they think they're still dreaming here, but this is Astralis domination. And it was Shui, a bit calmer from Shui and the corpse is their first man in and the site's lost. Yeah, it seems way too easy, doesn't it? So another save variation here for Mouse. They did all that damage holding onto those two rifles. They buy in again behind it. This is one of the keys of the financial decision because of the damage. And guess what? doesn't help you at all. You yeah, lose you're... another round, four consecutive now. Does it get awkward as well because this looks and smells like a fifth? Because you're kind of limping into this one with a scout and an MP9 as you just did. Yeah, your CT half now will not be really getting off the ground unless you can win a round with this, yes. right? And then get some upgrades. Uh, or you're able to just weather the storm. You're going to have to wait a whole nother round before we see all the guns come out. It's going to be 3,400 into the next. So as you're pointing out, you're not really going to upgrade away from... He's definitely not investment. George's scout, definitely not Yimpath's MP9. And oh, no! From bad Oh, it to gets worse. worse, Chad. It gets worse. Okay. That was an AK-47. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, elimination on the line here. And Miles, they really need to start pulling up their socks here. I know it's extremely early stages, but again, reflect on yesterday, just how dominated they were by Vitality, and now 
a really flat start here with some unforced errors just like that. So would you agree that we can use this game to understand how much of that Mao's getting owned by Vitality would, could be attributed to Vitality? Well, yeah, I, I think that's key because at the moment it's a big measuring stick, right? If you take a look at both of these teams that came through the play-ins with very different routes, if your Mao's you took on Mongols, you win that game. You, you take on the like of NIP, you win that one. You take on Na'Vi, that's all good. But you play Vitality and you get blown out. Now, the, di the difference with those names is, sure, Vitality had a change. It was just one. NIP, new in-game leader. Na'Vi, yeah. or essentially an entirely new roster. Mongols, sure. new players as well. And an underdog name. So we're measuring Mao's. We're all hyped from the play and We see the game against Vitality and it's like, oh. Because mm. okay. they, they, they straight up did not have a chance. Yeah, you but know? if, like if they can be competitive against Astralis, that's kind of where we have them. Because Astralis are showing some good CS, right? They took G2 to 3, they beat What's Apex. This? Flashes for middle, I think. Two out already. Yeah, more of a lane. They're turning up the heat. Appropriately. On the frozen. <laughs> melted down to 19. Strong arm on that one. So Buzz has got a different test here, Chad. Sorry to talk over you, but Yimpat's so pushed up. And Buzz, he's happy to just play this more passive A anchor role, but this might free up Torji to cheat back over and assist in that mid gap. There's so many worries though here. Obviously the weapons aren't there. They've lost red. Donut's a problem. Sure, you've got this A main control, but Buzz doesn't look like he's going anywhere just yet. He's working on this cave control and exertion. Finally, a first kill for him and an important one. He definitely hasn't been himself during Cologne just yet. Lame's definitely feeling himself. You're seeing that. It actually goes around red. Here comes that clear on to Mr. Jimmy. And it's not ideal. Yimpad's MP9 cut down. Buzz. Ooh, spots out Torji. They're going to run him down now. Yeah. Oh, tagged up as well by the orb. Shui has caught blame elsewhere, though, on the cave fight. Rotations will come through, as that bomb plant does as well. First look at a post plant on A. Advantage, I'd argue. Could be still Astralis's. There is a kit, however, for this retake. Sure, Frozen's low from that early exchange. Still plenty of time for this. They even have a smoke if they want to smoke main or donut. You can line that up from the temple position. This is so hard to get back in. Three of you coming out of that tight temple choke point. It's held by a jump for now. It's Buzz. Oh, that scout could be posted. Yeah, oh, damage inflicted. He is two. Torshi, good for it. Need four. Nice from Zershin. And now device has That's to come smoke. up clutch. That's the smoke. His placement of the process. Not bad. Tags up one with a leg shot. Exertion still under the fuse. Oh, Gates him. Oh, oh device. That's Gorgeous Counter-Strike! And why does he make it look so damn easy? <laughs> that just was poised, wasn't it? Poised. No stress from Device at all. Poised is and the gives word. them a double thumbs up. Things continue to be one-way traffic here. Astralis 5-0 and oh in the most pressure situation we've seen in this map so far. Does it look like a pressure scenario for Device? And especially, he holds his nerve. You know how many players are panicking when that smoke blooms? Oh, he's just got a big smile on his Not face. Not panicking at all. The fact he leg shots one and identifies the dink on the next. So one, then he finishes that off, then doesn't overlook <laughs> it, and finishes off exertion as well. <laughs> well I think we can, we, we can definitely see something different, me and Device. Look, one dink. HP. Oh, sparks. Oh. Uh, again. Oh. Well, uh, here we go. The guns are out for Mouse. And they found the first again. Two. Exertion. Here we go. Two in a row. Torji aggressive now needs to be careful with this AWP. Going to be swung on. He's off blame as well. Shui successful. This is a two-man advantage. Oh, it could have been more. Torji had the shadow there. Posted on ramp, but already Astralis Olympic. All back. Successful stare. Prominent in the placement of his crosshair. Torji's going to be feeling real hard done by by that. Just got mauled by the spam. So they draw one back for seemingly free here. Mouse really needs to convert one like this. The opening stages, you get two picks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You do cannot fumble this, especially considering we just talked about the finances and they've had a device clutch on top of that. They still have yet to get off this goose egg. But with two opening kills, you can't help but feel this is this is where that changes. Well, look at the space that's available here. Buzz and device can make their way through a cave and there is a smoke on device here. He can bounce it off the wall and cover off short. No flash to facilitate long. So just going to have to pick this. Second clear, first dead. Too easy. Device, he's ready for a repick if you dare. But it's Device or the Nord, they're not going to brave it. And now Buzz can get that bomb in. Surely not. 3v5 fumbles, stare onto Exertion. And Maus starting to feel like it's impossible to get around here. Astralis and Ancient becoming quite an iconic pairing. And I don't even know if they should bother going for this. Look how entrenched they are. They're, not, they're not going yeah. for it. This is flat Counter-Strike here. Oh, I'm you, you can't be that... starting better than that. You get two opening picks, Shui and Exertion, out the gate. The Exertion gets one for seemingly free in mid, I believe, and then yeah. Shui gets one over towards B. You can see the X's here on the radar top left. So the initial kill mid, and then the second B lane. That's huge. That's massive considering the state of the nation and the way the previous went, right? They almost win that clutch. They do a lot of damage. They're working on the finance, and you can't get a three on five under your belt. So like, I don't even feel... 
like a comfortable pointing fingers at Torji getting wall banked. No, so, wait, no, that's okay. Right, that's we okay. Can, but should we Shui's, that. Shui being exposed to that cave fight is that where we're critical? How many one v ones are you going to give him, right? Yeah. Especially and the other thought processes. Maybe Mao's they group up and they play for info. There's the opener, right? right. It's not going to get easier than that. Good understanding of exertion of that mid control. Shui for free, and then. Well, they get this first coup. You can see the body. The yeah. second gets swarmed. If I'm Cycron, I'm really worried right now because in the interviews coming out of the Maus camp, I think it was Shui saying, yeah, the chemistry was instantly back once they came with the team. It's all good when things are working. But here you're seeing the opposite of that. And I think the caliber of opponent is something that you can look towards. People are saying, well, what about Na'Vi? What about NIP? Well, again, we're still learning about all of these teams here early on in the season. And Maus are one that we're learning, uh, getting off to a pretty slow start today here on your Tuesday morning. Well, yeah, early morning, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and then you just get thrown around the server by Astralis on Ancient. Yeah, oof. I mean, yeah, Mao's historically, how was Ancient for them? They won that game. They played it against Na'Vi, right? That's they won right. that Series 2-0. They had Ancient and they had Overpass. Against Mongols, they played Nuke. NIP was Nuke and Inferno. It was 69 against Na'Vi as well. Right? Like, not even like a particularly uh, stressful game. But I mean, maybe this is also, you talk about that yardstick, this is going to get us even more excited about Astralis' ancient. There is, within the green room, and I know a lot of the other uh, broadcast talent that I talked to, quite excited about this new Astralis team and the type of counts that they're playing. Oh, and, yeah, aware. maybe that's why. Awareness at an all-time high. Aggressive smoke, misplaced. Normally, you'd light that in towards the doors. Burrup finds him for free. Exertion, the man who's found the openings in the previous two, now in the dirt. And yeah. Astralis maintain this control of map number one. That's his third opening death. So was he two for three? Two, two, well, yeah, two for five. Ah, uh, total. Damn, that's that's how I should have said it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but and, and, and in our seventh round, it gives you a lot of context. Yeah. That he's, he's he's involved at Here's the start, the and there's some involved for spray device. Collects, punishes, and stare will trade. So this gets really uncomfortable for Mouse. Feel like I've said that an awful lot in the first seven rounds. Maybe. Pack first frag found. Takes down the AWPer as well. There is legs to this as he repels Stare from the ramp. Torji, the second component in this 2v4, now three. Spotted him in mid and they, it's Buzz and Blame. They just surge forward. Bombs going back towards A. It looks like that's where it's going to be the final finish. I like this. Blame has the rotations here. Buzz? No util. So is he going to leer forward or is he going to wait for stair? Well, now that torji has been able to get over towards the big box, he could be a bit of a problem here. 20 seconds left. They will have to clear him out. Stair oh, noted. Oh, oh, he needs to live. Has Anything to he fight. can do to survive. 15 seconds. He needs to isolate this duel. And Time now. is best friend. Time is best friend. Buzz zinked, but still it's up to blame on the rotate. Yimpat hates Woo! that. And Device oh, is popping oh, off. He is plugged into the mainframe, Chad. He has got that competitive surging around his, his blood, blood stream. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying he is awake today. Well, when we were covering them in some of the early matches during the play, and we did get to see Astralis firsthand, and we enjoyed what we saw, I think uh, oh, you took a page out of the wrestling book. I was calling it the attitude era of Astralis, because this is the vice who started the wave meta. Hi, uh, I just clutched against you again. Nice smiling Tom Cruise on the other side. Now those biceps are out to play. Exactly. This is one of the greatest Counter-Strike players of all time. Yeah, but that's the point, is when you see this supermodel owning you in the server, you're like, well, he can't have everything. What, Apparently he can't. Oh, oh, he's gorgeous and, he, and he's destroying <laughs> me. This isn't fair. But I do like this new attitude of Astralis. It's exactly what I think they were hoping to achieve with replacing Glaive. Right? That it's, it, we've moved on from the old Astralis. We're into something very new. Hello. Hello. Not a bad shot at all. No, Shui's actually given us a little summit summit. Is this a fire starter? Because Mouse, they need something oh, he here. needs to be now. You know exertion. We, know, we talked about his opening kills and deaths. Maybe you can find his third opening, admittedly. We'll see this here. Device nice posted Ooh, up. That's enough. That you're pinned enough. if you're Torji. You have to jump away. Does Device want to lock him in place? Well, apparently so. They've given Blame the green light to go walking, and there is a gap right now. That was Torji giving the way out. Oh, device, he's happy to go walking up that ramp looking for fights. Now, there is an AK. He might want to do some housekeeping because Bomb's there as well. And Buzz versus Yimpat, this A anchor versus A lurker. He just did the recycling with that AK you were talking he did. about. And Yimpat. Oh, 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 quick change! Buzz, that's an awkward one to concede. Maybe Blaine can save Astralis. Frozen doesn't think so. Traded by Stair, but that's the info. They've They're just going gone B. straight They're to mid to B. Exertion should beat them. Should be there to deny the plant. Does he Does he fight or does he wait? He fights. Oh, no, he waits. <laughs> okay, Stair and Device to 20 plant. 20 seconds. The impact rotates through cave side. Stair will occupy. Device safe to plant. plant safe. Stair. Oh, come on. Give him a break, would you? 
when one isn't present, you know, when Blame only gets one, when Borup gets none, Stair gets three. No worries. Well, Nimpat here in a one-on-two situation, and this would get him fired up as well as the team. The young gun, 16 years of age. 16, sure, but no kip. Smoke, though. He knows one with cave. Look at the plant spot. Smoke cave. Take it out. Slow device is walking unannounced. Yim, that's not considered this, and it's now an exposed device. Shoots him in the side of the head, and still Astralis, perfect so far. Yeah, this is fantastic. Counter Strike Hero, you can do a sing their praises. I was looking, and you can combine the stats on HLTV, right? They've got the play ins and the group stage separate. Well, you combine them and you take a look at the stats here for Astralis so far. You got Blame at the top, device number two, that's expected. That's that the sounds, Wombo combo. That sounds right. With Blame in game leading, if he can continue this form, it is going to be a, a sight to behold, I would say. But then after that, it gets a bit wishy washy, right? It's Bow Rup, then it's Stair, then it's Buzz, and all of them are at the one rating or below. But the thing is, they've all had their moments in the matches. Some Buzz clutches some bow rub headshots. He's a very good supportive piece here. He, he will do what he needs to do for the team. And I think picking a player up like this, he's well aware of the opportunity he's been given. And then Stare, he's meant to be one for the future. And I don't think we've seen the best he has to offer just yet. So this is very scary. As Torji, on to Buzz. But that's not blame. Surely you, Torji's going, well, I'm not, I didn't kill your typical mid boy. This is very light on B. Look how much ground they've covered here. Yeah. Oh, Exertion's going to get run on. Borum, that headshot potential we talked about. It cuts the ball into Exertion. Now, Frozen, he's holding on to this B site as best he can. He has Shui in support as well. They're not rushing to plant this. Shui going to hide out on the pillar. But a nice collection from Device. Oh, no! Impossible when Device hits everything. No scope required as he takes down Mao's leader. And he's pulled this round into an impossible territory for Mao's. Look at the flank from Blame. Look at the flank from Flame. The round's over. A's open. Torji leering in mid shore. Remember, an opener again for Maus. This, this international so squad, good. this new configuration of the roster are being made to look stupid. And when you consider, oh, just how easy these kills are coming one after one. Gosh. I mean, do you know, they just sold a fake by device being device. Like, how did he get the kill? Oh, dude, I Shui. didn't think there was any way he no was going to kill Shui there. No he way. had every jump in the world. You know what I even love? The little detail with the timing. They scale up the ramp. They get Borup up towards that break in the wall, right? Yeah. They're subverting the expectation because the smoke landing long. You don't think anybody's up the ramp at that point. Before it plumes, he clears the corner. Player dead, you're in. Yeah, and by having Borup up in that position, as soon as you heard Exertion throwing that incendiary, you knew he was a dead man. Like, you're not getting your gun out in time. I got, I can swing through. I can have that fight. And, you know, that's what the reaction to the defense from Maus. But, yeah, this is clearly a map gonna that they are here, Alex. <laughs> going to be having nightmares about. Well, we can return to the story of the day, right? On A and the B stream right now, we have FaZe taking on Na'Vi. That's with uh, Scrawny and Launders. You can check that one out, uh, twitch.tv slash ESLCS. But here on the B stream with us, uh, we have the matchup for later today. So the survival, which is the case for the winners of both of those matchups, I just mentioned elimination for the losers, but the gauntlet of the day. It's not very often in uh, top tier Counter-Strike that you play two best of threes in a day. And today is one of those days. So FaZe, right? I'm talking about them an awful lot against Na'Vi here. On paper, regardless of the configuration of matches against Na'Vi, against Maus, against Astralis, FaZe, based on the fact they didn't make any changes in the break, should be the favorite. But there is so much upset potential in every single one of these games. And then you look at Astralis, you think, hey, they come in, they warm up by ragdolling Maus around the server, by not giving up anything whatsoever. Get it done nice and quick. Go back to the hotel, have a rest, do your prep. Focus on just how good of Counter-Strike you played in back-to-back -back matches, because they disposed of NIP like it wasn't anything yesterday. I feel like as well, yeah, you give the more that you have that conversation and you feel like you're manifesting it, like, hey, let's do what we did to NIP again today. And, and you do it. By the time you've got a slightly more competitive, competitive opponent. opponent, you kind of believe you can. Uh, it's going to be doing wonders for this team and its unity. Everyone's being validated for their presence and contributions. And yeah, I mean, double best of three days, sure. This is, but this is the thing. This is where experience comes into play. And that's why I say that FaZe would be the favorite in all of those configurations. They did have the most experience as a roster. Did you see the G2 FaZe game? Uh, yes, yes. No, but ex exactly, right? It, yeah. it, the, the, the flux situation with both G2 and FaZe at the moment, for them, it's almost, oh, are we in a good mood today? We have an A main push here. It's hard to get excited. Blame already has red control. Yep. It's just this stack over towards B with the scout. They're about to walk into Buzz, so one and done. Or does he have more? He falls, the second won't land. The impact 
Picks up the kill onto Buzz, Does and they should be able to pick up a rifle. Yeah, I was about to say, catch him in the boost. They dismantled it, but no one's looking at it. Still good timing no here from Blair. No one's looking at it. And undetected. Oh, my goodness. Mouths have got gaps. Yeah, these are massive holes, isn't it? As Blame is, well, just tap, tap, tapping it in. Another kill for him. Frozen will find something back in exchange. Exertion probably thinking, can I get out of here? That AK in red, it would seem pretty nice. And oh, he will not be given that opportunity. Stare. Stares him down. And it will be round number 10. Locked and loaded. Double digits. Might be in for another quick day. David Zanowski. Ooh. An impressive individual. Be able to find it much more here. It'd be cool if he could find device for a little confidence boost, and he does. <laughs> nice find. AWP for Torji. So he is, you know, ooh, milking this for the best <laughs> he can. Uh, this is what we're talking about. This is a perfect round for me to, to have that conversation. I'm hearing shouting from Yeah, yeah. Yes. saying like, congratulations, it's still 10 0. Yeah, I, I think, think they're just taunting him. <laughs> a bit of stamp padding there is how we'd be framing that. Oh, you see, I was trying to frame the stat padding. I've never tried it before, <laughs> but I was trying to frame the stat padding as, you know, the individual of Frozen who just does seem to, even in the in the face of a 10-0 or how he got thrown around by Vitality before, he still manages to find ways to contribute. Yeah, I, I know, yeah, sure, you could just be like padding the stats, but it could also be a player who is so able to stay focused and pursue a victory, even when it seems impossible. Mm. It's 10-0 right now. 10-0 T side of Ancient. It just feels like trade kills have been at an all-time low, right? Uh, that's that's not something that you want. The ability to find openers has been there, but immediately losing scenarios. This time, impact goes down. There's no way Buzz is anticipating a second. If Frozen gets the timing right, there could be a real element of. But this is my point. There's no trade. You just you've given. You're on the CT side. You've given up death immediately for what? He's in main. Unless they all return main, you're only going to get a one-on-one -on -one against Buzz, and, and then you go four v four. Okay, right. great. They've, they've forced it into a basically a kind of a 1-1 one, one with two in mid. Like, Device is worried about the one-way smoke that the CTs have limped out here. Nobody's re-aggressed mid. If Exertion and Shui now start clearing together, it's like, okay, well, nobody's home, but there's still a minute on the clock. Astralis have you chasing their ghosts right now. They're re-aggressing. Blame comes to Util, but Shui and Exertion are going for a walk mid. Oh, Borup, this could be the element of surprise they need. There's an advantage here for Shui. Two in the cave position, and he strikes twice. Issues for Astralis with 40 seconds. They're not in a hurry. Device trying to recover. Eyes on the screen. Malcolm moving a million miles an hour. As he tries to pull his troops through this round. They will clear. Device, the nose scope There's again. The A's open. A's wide open. The Donuts center of mass. Look at Frozen. Frozen. He pushed go. around the world. Shui's dead too. Yeah, the round's oh, over. Oh, no. What a loss for Maus. It felt so good, but how does it fall apart so quick? Well, they're not getting a move on. Still worried about Torji's orb here. If Device wins this. Oh. Okay, we're back on. Back on. Like Donkey Kong. Time. 15. Overplayed their hand here. They can make it, I think. Well, if they try. Uh, it's tight. No one's going to disrupt the plant. They're actually going to get a down shot with a second to spare. No one's in a position to deny the plant. It's, it's play on again. Buzz and Blame. Not going to get away. Nice right, find. Blame to clutch. Oh, look at all the Yuto here. How's Blame meant to have two smokes no Molly? There is no way he wins this round. You smoke it off. Oh, gap. Awkward. Molly. Smoke the, bomb. smoke the bomb. Smoke the bomb. Ray misses, and it only took 11 rounds, but Mauser on the board. Oh, and almost lost that one as well. The fact that they kill Exertion on ledge, that was the safety net out of there, right? They get the no-scope to the... Oh, was it a no-scope? Yep. No, it was. Okay, so they were so aware of that position, and the avenue was wide open. If they literally just went donut towards A there, they would have been in. Not aware of the frozen push. And I know, you know, Device is a professional player, but he saw him go cave. He killed two people cave. He could be in the site and long gone, but he has the diligence to clear, and it gives them a way back into this round, admittedly, Torji the one to pull it back, wrestle back, and put Device on his. But there you go, one to ten. Well, let's see if it's too little too late here. Mouse will need consecutive rounds. They can break Astralis, they can still get five on this CT half, and maybe we can have a game here. Pressure applied towards A. Impact and Frozen. Testing you. Yeah, now they're dumping Util as well. Testing you, Yimpat. They're not biting too hard on this bait, but without the commitment from Astralis, Yimpat's holding his own. I think the fact that they've been able to burn some of this Util early, just look at the radar, how many smokes are dotted across that site, four in total. One of the extinguished, Yimpat, he's very worried that they could have slipped through. So there are gaps, right? His communication would be, hey, they maybe, just maybe, they could have made it across the temple here. Torch is even acknowledging that. Red house play. So information lacking for Mauser's exertion clears out B. Double pump. Yimpat readies himself for Rotation's war. coming. He just needs to delay them. He's a perfect flash from Astralis. Buys him space. 
swinging through with Borum. It's frozen in Yimpat. Stubborn in this defensive A. Blame the exception to the rule. Device 1v4. And there's number two, breaking Astralis and trying as hard as they might to have a competitive half after all. Yeah, you see that play right there. They've actually smoked off Donut mid-side Astralis. The whole play right there is to avoid Big Box and Temple. You want to keep the CTs pinned back site and fight Donut. So for the post plant, you have control. Right. When you take the A site, if you don't have anybody lurking through mid, coming late red or late Donut, you need some territory. You can't just play Big Box. You can't just play Site Box. You need some space. So Astralis, the idea in that round was to fight Donut. And guess what? They were more than ready for this. Impact and Frozen just locking them down. This is a firing squad as Shui comes through to the rescue. Job done. Second round, money broken. And now Astralis will just be down to some pistols. Stairs across here, maybe undetected as well. You can see with the damage done that I think it was through the flame. So I don't think. Oh, there you go. Yeah, good adjustment for exertion yeah, there. Nice that could have there. been troublesome. He's got four kills now, exertion. And as I mentioned, not up to his usual form. This is a player I think is traditionally great at map control. Another crack. Grabs another. Shui goes down to the Glock. Oh, it shouldn't be too many dramas whatsoever. Mouse. Three rounds. Three consecutive. And would love to add two more to that tally to take a 10-5 score at half. Timeout to be called here in the second from Australia, surprisingly so. Castle, an opportunity to get on the mic here. And the same for Cycron on the other side of the server. Just let them know, hey, this is still early on, right? If things continue to go as badly as they were, then we might have a different chat. But now, we're starting to feel it. We just had a bit of sleep in our eyes. We got activated late. And you want to believe that. And you want to continue to show that. So now that they've finally been able to establish a strong CT buy, a strong CT footprint. How are Astralis going to chop and change things? Because they haven't really had a whole lot of resistance. Go back to round number six. They won a 3v5, where they gave up two opening picks within the first 20 seconds of the round. That's right. Yeah, and of course we saw the uh, shortcomings by being forced to save with scouts, MP9s, and did put them in quite the hole. But this would be a way, somewhat of a rope ladder out. This might be more direct here. Just blame towards mid. The other four over towards B immediately. Yeah. Might just be setting up with a piece. Smoke's already raining over, and here comes the flash. Zersh has got a decision to make that molly in the sky. He has to either be behind it, and he's opted to do so. Now, no space taken initially, but they are on the way up. The smokes are in the sky. They bloom. Exertion holds the bar up, and successful defense. Bar up down. Flash is oh. brutal. Look at that one from Device. Two of them doing the flash bang dance, and Buzz just hoovers them up. Three on three, Buzz, more contributions from Buzz, a triple before Torji finally catches him. But look at Blame again, this lurks so, so late. Device just has to live. Give the in-game leader time to work. He could even fake it to keep the attention drawn. The impact's cleared him out though. Do they consider it? Looks like oh, he did have a it's glance. Blame, you definitely yeah, right, you consider press, it. You press your scoreboard, yeah. it's Blame. You start to realize what the possibility is here. You think, Yimpat, you're scaring me. Okay, Torji. Oh, I see his barrel here. Pushing, it. pushing the limits there. That's a big miss. A big miss. And a chance for blame, understanding where they're both playing. He's even got a smoke grenade. For Yimpa wide. Okay, 40 HP. Yimpa chips away. Oof. A nade makes it even lower. 20 as he Oof. spams the smoke. Not far off the mark, but blame's brain whirs into action. He's solving this puzzle. Benjamin Bremer. Now it's about calling the bluff to Torz. You think he's Deep really going to walk silently way. away all the way over towards the other side of the map here to get the plant on A. Well, that's exactly what Blame F has in store. Torz, as he sits, as he waits, he's about to get that sinking feeling he is in the wrong place Okay. at the wrong time. Smoke kit retake package. AK-47, His one bigger shot, issue shot. here is the fact it's an open plant. If he had the smoke next to the box, you know, maybe he could get a, a weird angle, mm -hmm. use it as cover. Blame's gone CT. Now that's going to be not at the top of Torji's list. He's going to get that smoke down quick. No tap yet. No tap yet. Here's him. Clears him. Spots him. And Blame, the pacifist, lets the clock do the rest of the work. A 1v2. Mao is going to be helpless in this one. Torji gets nothing done in the clutch. And Blame F, the closer. Just simple stuff there, understanding the situation, knowing he's out of position. If there was any running from Torji trying to get there in time. Wins the clutch on A, saves the AWP on B. Yeah, that's his... Uh, Anything you need. Simple stuff there, isn't it? Blame F's got you. It does facilitate an AWP. They wouldn't have had one otherwise. And it was blame, right? You should have been aware that it was a possibility. And I mentioned a big miss from Torji. 
He had the jump on him. He saw the barrel. Blame had no idea. He missed the shot. Blame then isolated with the smoke, able to fight the 1v1 against the 16-year-old new addition brought up from the academy roster and then outplay Torji. Simple as you like. Well, that 10-5 dream squandered. What about four? Torji flashed off the line. Device now posted. Or heard and noted. Oh, they're going to allow them to loiter in mid here. You can see Astralis, the fact that they're postured outside the doors, they know that they've lost this mid control. Now exchanging util. Exertion of Frozen close. Shui and Torji pushing down the ramp and the boost over. Need to be careful about this one. Buzz is more inquisitive on A than normal, which might imply he what they've, they've asked him and commanded him to take some space. Okay, well, he needs to be careful here. This position of the impad is not one that uh, should go overlooked here. Torji rotating over towards A as well now. So Maus have all the information and are starting to put their pieces in the right place. The impact. From that big box, he's had a standoff with Buzz. He's being restrained with his an angle management. Doesn't want to give them any info as to his position. They should be able to focus two towards A main here. There's no worry about Donut. There is potential for exertion to come behind. But Yimpat's going to be that first test. 35 seconds for the fin. Supported by Torji. Boost spotted and nice shot in the head. Orc fills the feet. Torji and Yimpat oh, combined. What a spray. Significant damage. Device's bell rung. And now that exertion flank we highlighted should come in for the final kicker. Device is a dead man. Does he trigger discipline it or take it? Yeah, take him. Why not? 2v4. Stare up against the world. Good luck. Have fun. Frozen does secure it and Maus will leave with just four to boast on their CT side. Astralis seemingly masters of ancient. We'll see if they can close clean as we swap sides.
What is your calling? Still with their heads above water, Miles and Astralis must win two best of threes if they want to see the playoffs of IEM Cologne 2023. It starts here, Ancient, the first map of this series, and Device is up to Device things. No one really capable of doing exactly what this Dane can do. It's got that Deve flavor, and Astralis 11. Now, Chad, is it safe to assume this pistol marks whether or not we're going to have a competitive uh, or a drawn out Ancient? Oh, sorry, Alex, okay. I have my mic up by my ear that uh, I kind of needed to talk. I think that Ancient will be one-sided, but yeah. maybe we'll get the similar scenes on Nuke when we get over to Mauser's choice. They've mm -hmm. played it twice here. They haven't lost it just yet. They'll probably have an awful lot more confidence. And, well, Buzz, the big bad Buzz sits down frozen. The only man who's been putting up uh, consistent resistance here, whether it's in exits or otherwise. This is what you're hoping for if you are the Danes. Who shall we mention Device? We mentioned some of the bigger names like Blame, but all in all, it has been quite the team effort here. And I think they've made Ancient their home map. You know, you, you're not laughing at me, but Frozen 17 and 7 somehow after that first half. He's got less deaths than most of Astralis. Well, <laughs> this, and the, what? And, but this is where not all kill counts are made the same. Someone go through and count his exits. Yes, because someone. remember for early me. on, he had two he and Shui had three and then he had another round. We had a couple sets at AWP. So at least five of his kills are exits, Okay. which in a close game is not bad. No. But in a stomp... It's like, well, it is not really still doing 12. <laughs> like, he would be second highest on the scoreboard in the server. Yeah, exit kills are only worthwhile if they have impact in the game, right? Wouldn't it be cool if you had like a filter you could apply? Like, as in on the actual scoreboard? But that would be nice. Come on, Valve. I would love it if we could have CT and T sides as well so we can see where all the impact yes. is. Yeah. But, like, uh, back in the day? Yeah, back in the day. But here we go. A two on four on the A site, bomb down. Buzz doesn't seem to be missing too much. He's caught Shui, and now it falls to a Yimpat 1v4. Good luck, have fun. Buzz, 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 baby. Buzz with four. He doesn't lose a single point of health as he dispatches mouths of their heads. Four gone and stuck on four of mouths. So this is the age-old conundrum of uh, how do you feel about things? And it's a great game. You can okay. play along at home. Everybody, we're just, just situated. I want you to close your eyes. Okay. I want you to put yourself in the shoes of any mouse member. You can pick them, maybe your favorite. Maybe you even want to be the coach. Maybe, just maybe, you're even a Sabrina fan and you're thinking, how's the manager feeling? Well, regardless, pick anybody in the camp, okay. put yourself in their shoes right now and you go, would you rather get blown out 16 to four, have map num number one done and you just know, oh, we didn't show up and go into your map choice and get underway and, and start to put up some resistance or would you like to bring this back and lose the game still, but in a 16, 14 fashion? You're going to lose, like, let's say you lose this map regardless, but what would you prefer? A close 16-14 affair where you feel heartbroken because you almost brought it back after getting stomped in the first I half? I have a nuanced answer. Okay. Normally, I'd like to just get blown out. All right. And get, and get it back onto our map. <laughs> normally, <laughs> normally, I'd like to just get blown out. Oh, you're talking about your hair, Yes, right? my yeah, hair, yeah, exactly, yeah. my hair. But what, <laughs> what I wanted to say was, if you just got railed by Vitality, 16-4, yep. 16-4, you might need I'd to like career. to get a few more rounds than than 16-4 on the first map of the next game. You Fair know, enough. I'd like to kind of shake it off, prove to ourselves, oh, we're not, we are capable. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Do you see where I'm going with saying. that? I do see what you're saying. Cool, cool, good. Well, they've started another round, an individual down, and this is the in-game leader. So the puppet master, the maestro, Shui. You can try and make something happen here. Frozen over towards B lane. We'll have to traverse cave, getting past stair and device, but the three. Well, they're going to start walking in towards Donard, and guess what? We've got Blame on the boost, Bow up the sentry, and Buzz not too far away. The smoke facilitates Bow up to hold this angle for Donard. He's going to flash another look. Or Better than he realizes it is. If yeah. they made a step, Blame will hear it. And now, oh, it's just going to fall into place. You can already see it, Buzz. Only the one. He's actually been hard done by there. Yimpat so low, this MP9 will sweep <laughs> him away. Has a very comfortable overlooked position on the boost. Here's the thing with Blame. If, if some of the uh, more old heads out there might remember Happy and just how... Um, yes. Uh, all the four ones with the Happy baiting. Now, Blame, right, he's evolving as an individual, right? He uh, has done an awful lot. He was in-game leading over there in Heroic, went to Complexity, had to do a little bit of that over there, right? He became, like, the leader of this team that was meant to be based in North America. Then it was COVID. Everything kind of fell apart. Uh, and now he's on Astralis, which is the beacon of hope as far as a Danish Counter-Strike player has been. That's the team you want to be a part of. Uh, Damn, it's Danish. 
I just I, I couldn't president. imagine having I could not imagine having device like one of the the nicest guys yep. you know just smack talking yeah. you it's just smack talking you yeah it's, I'm loving it and especially because it's no doubt a player that Frozen has utmost respect for you yeah, know, like, for sure, it, like, yeah. this is a player he idolizes and he's just how, going how Frozen many majors has he got again? Yeah. keep saving keep exit Frogate <laughs> you know like come on mate I'm just trying to play the game yeah well uh, I never finish my point because I yeah. get distracted uh, but all in all if Blame Yes. realizes that what like what he did just there you know why no one cleared him because no one's expecting blame to be there so he it's, can exploit that oh now i see why imagine was, if blame yeah. starts calling rounds where he goes in first dies is a lull they, they throw some nades with and one gun and then three guys explode out where blame just died right maybe after he gets one that's what happy never did he never he never started to the use himself evolution. on the fishing rod yes you know right, as a piece of utility in the sense he was of always uh, the fisherman. subverting the expectation yeah because just that, just a player alone and where you're expecting them can, to be can yep. change your expectation Especially of the round. Especially at this level of the game, Blame jumps up on the perfect timing, catches Mouse running up, not ready, and this one is over. 16 to 4 is on its way. I have a feeling Mouse are not going to get another taste of victory on this map. It's just looking too damn well rigid. They're still and yelling still at him as well. Out. I love it because Frozen is the player who could turn it on to change everything if you get in his head here. Exactly. Oh dear. Exactly. But like, we'll, we'll reflect here with numbers for everybody. Yesterday, in the Vitality oh. game, uh, they won nine rounds total. That's my bad. I think I said 16-4, uh, 16-4. 16-4, 16-5. Yeah, so nine rounds over two maps, guys. Um, yeah, and some of the rounds that we saw. Remember there was one round where uh, I was explaining this to someone earlier. Apex was covering CT and they were on an eco, uh, like a half by coming mid to be and Apex drops the smoke. Yes. And they, he should have had two kills. He got none and they win that round, right? And then he stood up and said, they don't even need yes, me. Yes, at half yeah. time, it's 4v5. They don't even need me. <laughs> like in some of the situations, I think Apex was like, I don't even need to focus on my cross here. The no. other guys will take All care of it. All he has to do is just, if he could just blow up his radar yeah. or just play with it full screen. I've got some good commands for him. Yeah, actually, yeah, we do. <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see. By my uh, prophecy that this will be 15 for Astralis, or will Maus be able to break through this blue wall? Exertion flash through middle, up and over. Spots the shoulder of Stare, and Stare, though spotted. Oh, he actually got confirmation of presence, so he's going to get away. Peppering. Yeah, that works well. Exertion slowed for a moment. Has a good timing, though, over. Burrup is jumping around like he doesn't seem to think this is a possibility, but as he slinks back, Exertion, yeah, exertion yeah, talking yeah, yeah, a whole yeah. lot here. Just going to creep in. Contact in. Hello, it's a retake setup. Oh, lovely timing. Exertion's using that big brain of his to get his squad into the site. And he's even opened it up. Catches Borup. Now the rest is smoke. Molly for good measure. Bomb down. Yeah, that might just be the rounds here. It shows you how easy it can be as Torji will grab another. Tap, tap, tap away. Down goes Stair. But that's th this is what Exertion is one of the best in the world at, right? Uh, yeah, I think he's great at map control. I think he's really good when he gets out mid and can play towards red, or this time playing over towards... Well, he, he went out mid. He, he traversed mid, jumped up. But what we saw, we saw it perfectly, and you pointed all, the, all of the nuance of it out in terms of... He doesn't have X-Ray, right? But knowing what information Stair's working with and what information he's gotten away with in terms of these little bits catching a glimpse if of I someone walking away... If I hear a player away, jumping around and moving back and spamming and I'm that close in cave, means he... he two things. One, he doesn't know I'm there. Two, he knows I'm there and he's trying to bait me in. And right. someone's watching and his so position. And so that's also a question he has to ask right. himself. Yes, but you can tell how lazy they are with how much noise they make. Right? Sometimes it's super obvious. Sometimes it's like, hey, spam this smoke for me. Yeah. But sometimes it's not. And uh, that was a, a good gap for exertion to pip there. So he a bit of confidence in his decision making. Just has to do that 11 more times. Okay. Fair enough. When we put it like that, anything's just, possible. Just do that 11 more times and, uh, and hope that uh, Astralis monitors turn black. 18 right. to 8 at the top of the scoreboard of uh, the server is frozen. Yeah, the other problem here is now they're on the harder side, right? T side and Ancient are going to be uh, a little bit more difficult. So there he goes. Going out mid this time with three to receive him. A bow up and blame going to boost. It looks like it. Yep, here you go. Well, you'd have to really be alert to be clear of that. And exertion is hyper aware. And forces Borup into a defensive stance. It's very key that they're getting that util perfect for someone like Exertion. I spoke about his map control in mid. If you get the util wrong, he's going to have a hard time. But here, obscuring the vision and setting them up. He goes for more. Exertion almost takes down Borup with an AK. It would have been good, but Borup back with two. Needed the trade. Stare good onto Shui. Forced into an uncomfortable scenario. Now, Yimpat does have to have impact if they want to find the sick conversion. Oh, they're creeping in for this. Okay. Borup wants more. 
Okay, no flash. His crosshair's in the right place, but with the impact onto Borup, he's anticipating Morse. Gets the info safely. Gets away. Torji looking to find the gap. Buzz to try and fill that gap. And ooh, Torji unable to finish off the job, but damage done. Finally, a situation for this young gun that is clutchable. He can win this. He's got plenty of time for it. 38. Oh, that smoke is cruel. <gasps> Finds Buzz through the smoke. Does he expect it clear? Surely not. He knows there might be both here. Stare. Around the box, 20 seconds. Yimpat. Plays the fade. He's got time. Stare. This is Yimpat. Makes it loud. Stare knows. Tracks him and swings him. And Stare will close. Holds his nerve in that one. A nice position and spray from Yimpat for the first. But Astralis one round away from collecting their map pick. Yeah, once that smoke comes down, the whole round becomes so difficult because what's he meant to do? The fact he gets one kill through it is fantastic work from him. But all in all, it stalls him out. It just puts a pause on the round. If he runs away and he tries to come a different rotation point, we'll probably have to make some noise considering the time. And that was a great opener from Exertion there, reading that boost play. But it is the re-aggressor bow up with the double up that turns the round back in their favor. And Stare... Well, easy for him. Just has to wait out the clock, allow Yimpad to play the bomb. And secure 15 for Astralis here. Another commanding victory for the Danes. They took care of business yesterday against a rival, right? NIP, Swedish Org, three Swedes in the server. You've got the relationship with Device and NIP. You've got the config Astralis overlap, and you've apparently got some damage through the boards. Torji very low. Stare is going to get away with his life fear. The harassment back and forth, but Stare. He doesn't want to relent without a fight, wants to make sure he applies some pressure, and uh, that smoke has a bit of a gap, doesn't it? Not even a bit of a gap. It could be a catastrophic gap if anyone goes ledge before it's faded. I think they'll replace it. Device needs one. Gets it done. Up close. Very comfortable here, but faded nicely. Shuey forces the fight, isolates the duel. Flash oh. through, but exertion aware. That but looked no like a lot of team play available. But Mao's holding on. Nice finds and individual brilliance across the board there. Yeah, good job over towards Cave, right? That bait and switch setup, device regressing in. It was a moment sooner that he could have planted his feet and he would have locked this down, but they peaked at the perfect moment. Good job from Maus. Because this will humble the economy of Astralis here. They are going to have to operate with a, a bit of a purchase. 1900 into the next. So might see them go for a little bit of residual cash on some, especially for the likes of device who's kept 650. So they'll invest now. If they get it done with a buy like this, it'll leave a bit of egg on the face of Mouse, I think. It's a good start. Exertion's starting to heat up now. He had a very timid first half for his standards. Or up to re in towards main. They're playing bait. This angle is so vogue right now. Yeah, you can really see just when you flick between these players in their defaults mm. of the power positions in certain scenarios, especially you're anchoring over towards A there, making sure nobody's pushing on out. I think that's one of the things is, notice this with Cloud9 with Buster on Anubis as well. We've seen them play a lot of Anubis already. And it feels like he's just been tasked with, hey, make sure they don't push A, which means he's rarely applying pressure and going for A main control. But I mean, if you the look Buster at the table that he sits on for 15 rounds. Well, yeah, that was, that's, the, that's his CT side yeah. corner. On the T side, he just sits rugs. Yeah. And he got exploded yesterday by Monty. They walked out and literally hard cleared him. And it actually had a wombo combo effect because Perfecto swings for the tray. They knew where he was going to be as well. Yeah. But A main on some of these maps, T side Ancient, I would say less use case than T side Anubis getting basket control, exertion. Um, you're in. Oh. So Blame has seen you. Device is dead. It means there's only one B max. How many deagles are we getting out of here today, Step? Depending on how good the util is, should be none. It's a good molly. Then they scale. The AWP is posted long, and short can be smoked at their own discretion. Impact has a look, gets a Deagle bullet at him, and oh, Stairs Deagle is deadly onto Frozen. He gets a second one there, stays alive, maybe Bow Up activates. I can see he's very far away right now, was operating with the save, but an opportunity then would open up. Good seven now, Mounds with a slight recovery here. And yeah, as you mentioned, Probably good for the confidence considering they got blown out yesterday to start getting some rounds under their belt. Understand that they can do this. They can get back into this game. Bar up save AK will be the only real weapon that Astralis have to work with in the next of play. He's got Kevlar and he's got some good aim. So Bar up, where are we going to take this retained weapon? That's the big question right now for Blame and Cope. I'm going to focus in on spawn and check out his spawn. 
Not too bad for mid. He could also go aggressive over towards B here if they wanted him to use it to, to fight Cave. No timeout taken. As the rest of Astralis here are going to be very light on. The flash purchased by Stair. Device got dropped the P250. And away we go. So Burrup will use the spawn here to head over towards B. This is a good spawn to fight Cave with. He's actually just going to weigh in the sight. So allowing Mouse to make the first move before Astralis activate here. But Exertion's been making first moves every time he can uh, this time. Oh, nice oh, smoke. Yeah. yeah, so he's going to re-smoke deep red on the CT side, B side. And look how much is clear already. So an awful lot of space. We saw Blame doing a good job, but he was more silent about it. But I mean, obviously they don't know, but they've what a perfect... They split the map in half. Yeah, they've just drawn a line. You can't go. You, you've, you've overcommitted to B, and now we can walk into a wide open A side. They're going to have to be aggressive now, Astralis. Yeah, if, if we just think about the Astralis mindset as well right now, with uh, all the rounds that they have to work with, considering the score, at this juncture in the game, actually for the remainder of the game, mm. unless you have some real screw-ups, like some trip over your own shoelaces, forget to plant the bomb like G2 type moments, you're going to be confident you can win this game on the CT side of Ancient because uh, when every round goes past and you're losing, your loss bonus is building. So let's say you lose a site, save. Okay, we get 3,400, drop some silence and fours. You know, right. That does start to become worrisome when the scoreline is, I guess, 15, 12, 15, 13. But uh, if they can just maximize the amount of rounds they can have rifles in their hands, you feel it's just a matter of time. And I'm sure that's what they're feeling. I'm sure that's what all the Danish Counter-Strike fans at home are feeling. Imagine if they have Heroic, who's obviously very good, and the Stralis are good again. Mm. Danes will be insufferable. Well, there is a lot of them. Bloody uh, playing this he'll be, on, he'll be on, his, on his little box or big box. Cardboard. Oh, look at the bait. Maybe they're getting a rifle out of this. This could be the best case scenario. That's if Frozen doesn't farm up a couple extra. I'm not bad. I, okay, I want to be clear about this. I'm not bagging on Frozen here by any means. Someone, but do the math. When you, if you count his exits and then you count. Ecos, did he get there? Three. Okay, so you, you start adding those up. St someone still has to get them, I understand. I would love to get them. I would have loved to have gotten them. But uh, they're not as considered as impactful as, say, an exertion slink in towards B and kill Burr up in, in a retake situation. Or pre aimed the first time the CTs have double boosted, donor. Double boosted? Boosted, Alex. Yeah. yeah. Double rainbow. Double ra I saw a double rainbow on the way to Cologne. You know that. Oh, wow. I've never seen one before. It's lucky or I think so. just a coincidence? I think they're, they're always a double rain, but you just have to look for it. Okay, well, there's an elbow smoke available here from Burrup from A. He's dropped that one down so they can comb forward for this mid control procedurally here. Buzz, careful on the cross. Oh, it's just straight through. Torji didn't even have a chance. Gets worse. Maus lose that. Torji. They missed their elbow smoke as well. So uh, that's actually crazy that Buzz had that pre spam. Did he see? I'm flabbergasted by that out of the corner of my eye. Okay, well, I feel like that is the uh, nail in the coffin here. Number disadvantage, grouped yeah. up. His boost. Device in the back lines will pick them up early if they're not careful. They're not going to have any potential threat from behind either, so it is just going to be all from the front. And A's been completely pushed here. The longer they take, the worse this gets. Ooh, ooh shoulder peak goes wide. Device oh, collects, it. boosted up in early's two long side. Buzz, perhaps to be overlooked here. Exertion. Staring at the fate of the smoke, might be set for success. Bomb to be planted, Buzz doesn't spam. That was what Exertion was waiting for, and now he's going to try and maneuver through the smoke as well. Oh, Buzz, brilliant! Should we back 2v4? Otherwise, this Ancient is Astralis. Great catch from Shui. He's a dead man now. Blame taps away. Bomb to be planted. Frozen cancels in and spammed on through. That is convincing. Astralis, start as they mean to go on in a must-win game. And Maus, they have got to find victory. They haven't tasted it in three maps time.
What is your calling? Astralis take Mouse straight to the stars in map number one, and it turns out that Mice not really built for space travel. That was destructive. Yes, definitely. That was one-way traffic all the way. It was like one lane, written Astralis all over it. They were driving the bus. It was just, it was just. They were just you know, driving the very, bus, running over mice. Very, <laughs> very clinical right from, our, from from Astralis. And like we said before, it's just. They are, they're feeling comfortable on this map. They know exactly what they need, need to do in certain parts of the round. They know how to take map. They know how to use the map against you. And clutches are there simply because of the high confidence right now. We saw device trash talking frozen throughout the whole map. That's something that we need to examine a little bit more because I freaking love it. I absolutely love it, man. And I mean, we just jumped into a round which kind of highlights how good Astralis were overall. When they're winning rounds, they're winning convincingly. But when things are looking a little bit icky, a little bit rough, right? It's a 4v4, 4v5 situation, advantage mouse. Let's see how this one plays out. We're going to see uh, Device and Borup make their way up towards the B bomb site. Borup's going to be quickly found out by... He actually gets a kill on the Exertion when Frozen's able to trade, right? I'm just going to make this play out as it is. And now, it is a 3v5. I want to highlight something real quickly here. We take a look at the... Oh, hold up. I think it is pinched to, pinch to zoom. There we go. Minor technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. There we go. Perfect. So you can take a look at where Mr. Blame is, and you have to expect him. You have to expect him lurking around there. And this is a mistake for Mouse. They are aware he might be lurking out a little bit later, and they stick around for a bit, but they need to help their teammates here towards that B bomb site. Now, bear in mind, the bomb hasn't been spotted. It's on the back of Mr. Number 7. I'm not sure who that one is. going to go back and see how this one plays out. It's still looking very good for Mouse. And then, of course, this happens. Device in what should have been one and done. Finds a first, and then... I don't even know how he hits this. And it's not just a one-off thing for Device. He just kept hitting shots, which he had no business hitting time and time again. And what happens after this is the call coming in from Blame F because he's now pushed all the way in. I want to once again divert attention all the way back towards the CD spawn position. You can see Blame. He's made his way towards CD spawn. He's got the, he's got the rotation cut off. He's like, there is, a potential, uh, there is a potential of a CD being towards mid. So the bomb went all the way from spawn. It's going to be planted at A. Device still sticking around in front of the smoke thrown by the CT, and I'm going to make this one play out the way it does. And Device just being patient. It's an unintended fake from Device. He just faked it. It wasn't even a fake. He just stayed alive, gets all the kills. Towards he finds one, he gets hunted down, not even able to save the AWP. Clinical work from Astralis. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Device getting those two kills on the side for the turning point for that round, definitely he should have traded that. He had all the advantages, but Device was just faster. And that's something that we discussed about Device. Like, he's the guy who will deliver class every single time. Like, he's always consistent. That's why they call him the Mr. Consistent, right? And uh, he delivers once again. The only thing that I kind of like more than that is the fact that he's emotionally engaged into the game. Now, Mouse Sports didn't really show up whatsoever on this map no. like not even a glimpse of mouse sports that we saw in the previous part well before the vitality game it seemed like they continued that path, path like downwards from that game simply uh, similar to phase that lost just the first map against navi it was just uh and, and the thing with Mouse is right now, sure, they had that really good start, winning their first two, three, uh, get best ones, best threes. You get destroyed by Vitality, and we saw the interview where Torji said, you know, we didn't make it really affect our mentality much, we're just still going to be kind of reset, which is a very important thing. But now you start off in this elimination series. I know it's not your map pick, but doesn't matter. You just got banged out. So whatever he said, if Shoei, with the experience he's got, he needs to reset their minds right now, because I feel this might just be done. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't believe him anymore. I don't believe him anymore. They look like exactly like they did against Vitality, where it's just like sleepwalking. Are they, 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 they in look the cowed. server, frankly? They look really cowed. Like, Device is yelling at Frozen. Who was a top fragger in the server, by the way. He's like, yeah, good job, Frozen. You got three kills. Still lost around Dindia, buddy. He's just shit-talking, and I love it. And I kind of feel like, despite the experience that some of these young players and Mouse have, that I think Astralis are in the head right now. Even though oh, it's absolutely. not their map pick. Absolutely. I mean, they still, even if they win this one, they still have another game coming up after that one. But so far, I test looking good, device looking sharp, blame, you know, doing his own thing. Everybody is there as well. He's doing a, a very, very good job right now. So overall, as a team, they are completely 
100% better than Miles. And a really good thing to highlight it is the fact that yesterday in the win they had against NIP, which is again another stomping on Ancient, it was Borup who was getting all the impact, all the frags. He barely did anything in this, in this game when it comes to fragging, and they still won convincingly. The team is clicking, and that's the bottom line. This one was, uh, Borup was like, all right, I'm just going to go die. You trade me, we win the round. Easy success. Man's putting himself on the line for the team. Well, we're, we're headed to another map. We're headed into the future. Let's look to the future. Yeah. We are headed towards Inferno. Nuke, sorry, rather. That's a different word. Uh, we're headed towards Everybody Nuke. wanted Inferno. Everyone I wanted did. Inferno. Everyone okay. did. But Nuke, it will be. Uh, what do we think? Is there any hope here for Mouse? This is a bit of, I wouldn't say a punish pick. It's because I feel like Mouse saw Astralis' game against G2, I believe, which was the most lopsided loss they've had thus far in this event. And they're like, we can probably punish them on it. But I kind of feel a little dicey about it because Mouse, even though, yes, they had a couple of wins on Nuke, it was kind of close affairs, and I'm still not sure, uh, sold on Yimpad towards ramp. I think he's going to get abused. I see a lot of problems coming up because simply Device, again, this is his, with Inferno, his best map. He knows how to play the meta. He hasn't changed. The map is really tight. Rotations are really fast. It's hard to deal with Lurks as well. If Blame Evs does his thing outside, it's going to be super difficult for Mouse. For Mouse. And they're starting on the CT side. We know how dominant device can be on that CT side of Nuke from... You remember the, the, the Astralis days, it was just ridiculous. The I, I played against him millions of times and it's just so hard to predict what he's gonna do. It's uncounterable, it's uncounterable. Okay. So it's just a very, very difficult situation right now for Mouse. They need a good start. If they don't get it, they're out. They're out and I'm looking at Torji. I'm looking at Torji. I remember his debut, not debut, well, his debut with this particular line. His re-debut. His re-debut, right? Dropping the 50 bomb against the Mongols to kind of steal that map away. He wasn't just finding impact on a CT side. He was, he was very device-esque on a CT. Floating around, going for aggro picks, coming out on top. But more impressively for me was how he was working with the pack on the T side, getting crucial kills with the op as well in very uncomfortable situations. If he's able to replicate that on a T side, maybe a chance. If not, this could be a donezo. It could be Dunzo indeed. Miles, we're looking Dunzo already, but we'll see if the mentality can recover a break. And then it's time for Nuke. What is that reaction? This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god! Get ready, you gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in game leader, architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you?
What is your calling? Two spots left in the Lanxess. A long day of Counter-Strike to find out who they shall be. Cologne 23. It's a big one. A return from after the player break. Two months absence from competitive tier one Counter-Strike. And now myself and Chad EB are with you. Map 2. Nuke. Filling them in though, Chad. What do they miss on Ancient? Uh, domination from Astralis. Picking up where they left off yesterday to return Maus to the feeling of... Defeat. Helplessness, That's, yeah. maybe? It's not just a loss, it's getting ragdolled. It's getting thrown around the server and something that needs to change right here, right now. Had uh, the ability to listen in to Shui, trying to fire up the troops, saying you need to fight the pressure, fight the nerves, or there's not going to be a tomorrow. This team with a young leader, a new leader, right? He's had a different path back to the main team of Maus, but he's meant to be the beacon of hope. There's a whole lot of hype around him, and can he get his team where they need to be? Teesside Nuke. Well, that's, I want to explore that for a moment in terms of why Shui was exciting, especially, of course, ending and, and that kind of crescendo of the Game of Legion story in Paris. But it was their T-sides, right? Their T-sides, Game of Legion's T-sides were so impressive. A lot of people pointed fingers and double thumbs up to Shui. Yeah, we love the way he approaches the game, right? As an individual in the server, the there way he is he's on the left side of the strats, but also, right, his fragging ability. And right now, Mao's, since they've had these losses, yeah, they've been dump strings. It's hard to see too many shining lights, but those shining lights, they were on. They were bright. And just a couple of days ago throughout the play-ins, and one of them was Torji. A question mark around this individual staying in the roster, but one who seemingly was proving his worth here in Cologne right, needs to show up right now. That performance, it felt like an ice day. It well, was huge for him. Continue to show it. Can't just be a flash in the pan as device. It's going to be smoked off as well as goosh down. Yimpad on to finish. And they have the top side, so there you go. Dream start for your campaign on T-side nuke. And you've even got Torji still on main roof. So he's got Blame locked in. Or has Blame got him trapped? That's the question. Ooh, nice find. Executes Bremer. Looks like they're on here for the first pistol of the series so far, Maus. And this is exactly the confidence you'd be looking for, Torji, if he can find another. Precision on the pistol, a key here. Weapon for the job of the P250, but nice. In fact, going to take down Buzz on that ramp progression. Now it's just stair to find. And what was a quick block over towards ramp, return to a top pop. In they go, that device goosh, and a big one here. Let's see if Mouse makes some noise. Well, that is a distinct lack of noise, Chad. <laughs> Uh, there it is. They were trying to hunt Stair to make sure he didn't save the armor, which he did. So they were focused <laughs> right until the death knock there, weren't they? Was so funny. I was waiting for the bomb to go up and go, yeah, no. Yeah, well, right. Yeah, good stuff, man. We're still hunting. Okay. No, thanks for the context. Because it was suspiciously quiet. Yeah, there. right. There was no, no celebration whatsoever. Yeah. But, uh, well, they've still got smiles on their faces, don't they? Astralis, the good vibe tribe. We're talking about the attitude era. They've been in a good mood and understandably so. Let's see if they can continue. To keep smiling with this force by squeaky blown off device with a scout towards yard. His task with dealing with exertion. Spots him out, will communicate that. Buzz on ramp here. Hold on, Buzz. Yeah, not ready for that. Not anticipating the walk out of Torji. Catches the ramp player. And taking all the space as well that comes with it. So a big kill against this force by. It's all about the rotation here of Astralis. And as we have multiple members. Down the vent towards yeah. yeah, but the thing is, you can't really rotate into position here against these rifles down the vent. You're going to get smoked off. You're going to get molly. This is you, you smoke decon, you molly stairwell. Well, they've actually flashed. They want to fight, so be even even more diligent. Yeah, it does mean that Torji will give stair that fight. It's not gone well for stair. I think now, if you're Astralis and you know you've lost stairwell as well as the whole site, you, there's no point going for this. If you had the double door side in the window, you might be able to contest and try and fight for the site on the right. retake. Hope a kill comes your way. But the fact that they've been able to get this much space and seemingly just off a Torji kill on Buzz, who got caught on a poor timing, I think they're going to try and help stair get out of here. I was going to say, because surely best case scenario, we have another go. Yeah, do the uh, Deagle double dip. Yeah, oh, that's fun to say. So this is just a, essentially a scort stair there you go. mission, smoke and strafe. There you go. That's that's handy work, right? The never, don't, don't leave a man behind. Make sure that these four individuals, stair, bow up, blame, and device, will be holding on to their goodies. It's very self-indulgent, isn't it? A valve to put valves in their maps. Come on, guys. I put them everywhere. I'd have a, a shrine to Gabe. Well, I was surprised that they actually have a giant valve 
in the Valve HQ as well. It's not even. It's not even just a, the man with. I'm the just a bit plan. disappointed that when we were there, they didn't take a picture of us and tag us on Twitter. Denzel Curry apparently. Denzel he goes, gets a picture. He gets a whole picture. He yeah. gets a song in the game. God damn! I wonder what he was doing. Do you think he's doing uh, agent lines? Oh, actually, that'd be cool. Yeah, wouldn't it? I, I think he was probably like, "Oh, I played Counter Strike once. Let me in." <laughs> yeah. And they're like, "Yeah, no worries. We like your music." Well, I like Denzel more than BB No Money, so that works out. And a Marme. Hey. Device firing off a couple of shots, and Exertion's going to go for a walkabout. Bar up ramp responsible. Can Don't see it. poor Buzz here just with the USP. Stay with him. Before Give him that, a friend. Yeah, I was wondering where Borup's mission, he was being pulled elsewhere. But so far, so good, right? If we're going to be looking at early signs for a competitive series, and I don't even mean competitive maps. Like I said, Astralis still have proving to do on new. Competitive nuke, series. Right? A competitive, yeah. like, to, to go the distance. As in we see, yeah. We yeah. could have back-to-back -back blowouts here. That would not be too strange, considering the circumstances we have ahead of us. But Mao's by winning the pistol, great. And then the conversion against the force, fantastic. Okay, now it's just about jutting it across the line here against those retained upgrades, which they're aware are in the mix. And now it's a scout. They they're brave in the issue here. Frozen tag at the same pressure now. Lots of pressure. This is a problem. They've been tickled. Yeah, damage. And look oh, at the oh, aim oh, on the oh, 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 He hit two for the price of one. Shui gone. That is a bit of a problem for Maus. I was just saying they knew what they look were dealing this. with. Apparently not. For Frozen, he's got three underneath him. They'll confirm there's more body. Oh, God, Jim Pat's gone with the bomb. No, Maus. This is supposed to be a formality, but Device has made it a whole lot more with a double on the scout. Recovery required. Oh, my God, he might get another. Yes, he will. Exertion's gone too. Finishes what Buzz started, and they're going to have oh, five alive. Oh, they again. are going to scream gonna trust at him. Frozen again. They are going to scream at him. Oh, dear. Oh, oh wow. they let him off the hook there. Yeah, they did because that round, you just, I mean, you, you painted the picture. This was supposed to just be, you know, putting it in. You go, you're on the green. But I, I, I thought that they understood that a scout was safe. This is an angle. What, what led them to think that, did they miss a smoke that was meant to land windows? I, I'm not quite sure here. You've just given Device the perfect opportunity to get a whole lot of damage done. Now he's into an AWB. Okay, this could spiral quickly. Blame yet to become necessary component of the Astralis machine. He's zero frags. That's a really bad round to lose. It is a very deflating round to lose, especially as, you know, they, they probably were feeling exactly what we were. They're coming into the third. Good start. It's our map. Smoke all up. Recovery required. Yeah, delayed by a molly here, so he might time the spam, but also there's traces on the AK, so cancel that. Doesn't want to give the fact up he's transitioned he's here. Exertion cheating through the flames has been... Information relay, device communicating a lot. Buzz or device should head down towards B That's here. That's exactly what he was communicating. Yeah, I'm surprised to see both, but this is telling that they are worried about a large force of mouths that is quiet on the map now. Sound Q's playing a big picture in this. Sure, he's waiting out blame. This is going to be a waiting game. It's a battle of patience more than anything else. We know Blame's got plenty of that. They need the pushes to come. Ooh, there's no util. Here there's now. no util for them to finish with these frags. They need to make them. This is what they're waiting for, though, and it's, there's an opportunity coming. Jimpat. Will he be cleared? Stair. Oh, so ready for it. Jimpat does a lot, though. By taking down Stair and confirming a second in the lobby, they're distracted, but it's a messy spray out of Blame. It doesn't really get him back to haunt him. As he controls it enough, Frozen one back, but still, with 28 seconds left, they would be hard-pressed to get that bomb down in time. Yeah, save. Oh, yeah. Well, I maybe mean, not. It looks like Torchy's going to try and have a look, and he's picked up a bit more util. Molly squeaked. They've heard the heaven jump as oh, well here. Molly. It forces him forward. He heard it. Now he can take down Borup. The A-site's open. Frozen has heaven. Device has a timing. Frozen. Oh, oh <laughs> no scope from Device, and now they're going to lose the round. Oh. Device secures it. <laughs> Stunning work! The death stare from Deva. He's nuts! Device just gave a reenactment of his uh, no scope up heaven. Bang! Wow, I, I thought Frozen was going to be assisting in towards the yeah. top side to make sure there couldn't be the scale out of heart, to make sure the pressure couldn't be there. And in his mind, I f I'm sure he feels that's look, quite look, look, here it is again. harmless peak. Bang! Round loser right there. And then Device grabs his AK and finishes the job. Oh, wow. Well, here it is. Ah, it's all right. It wouldn't have captured it anyway. Whoa. 
getting out onto the eco. I, I didn't think they were even going to give it a crack after those, because Exertion, the guy who got spaced towards lower, he died to Device's AWP as well. That was the first of Device's three Simple kills. Simple better be taking notes, right? Because Zywoo and Device are hitting every no-scope they take. That used to be Simple's thing. That, that used to be his thing. You know what I thought I saw yesterday as well out of Zywoo? When uh, Apex was getting fired up and, and yelling across the fence, it felt like there was a bit of sass in him as well. Yeah. Like, maybe not with the words, but definitely with the eyes. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I'm excited to follow that path. I can't imagine how effective it would be to have Zywoo just uh, believing Imagine in himself. Zywoo trash talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> like, true. I mean, I'm sure he does believe he's the best, but in the, like, the most humble way yeah, possible. Yeah. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. They're yes. pretty good too. Yeah, they're good. I mean, they, they could beat me, but I could beat them. <laughs> okay. It's like, yeah, okay, man, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, yeah, Zywoo, you're at the point where okay. we see you in a clutch and uh, we just assume you're going to win it. No, it's so, like that uh, 1v3 he hit on Mirage against now. Yeah, we were both sitting down. Yeah. Right? It was like, uh, I'll like, I, guess I could almost see it coming, you know, and that, what does that say? That says Zywoo is something special, his understanding of the game, he's just, look, he's playing with X-Ray. And uh, I guess we can compound on that point here. In the Lanxess, fantastic news. We've had Vitality in a grand final in the Lanxess before, right? 2019, they lost to Liquid, so Apex gets another crack uh, in the Cathedral. We have Ents locked in, we have Heroic locked in, we have G2, who dominated FaZe yesterday. It's stacked. It is. So you think about this, this bracket we're talking about today for Group B, and once more we'll remind everybody of the match going on on that mainstream with Scrawny and Launders. It is Na'Vi taking on FaZe. And if you don't want a spoiler, you were hoping to watch it later, the unfortunate factor is, well, the winner of these two games today are going to be facing each other, so we need to keep you up to date. So if you don't want to listen, turn your sound off right now, because yeah. I'm about to fill you in map number one in that series went in the favor of Na'Vi. And now Na'Vi uh, on overpass on the CT side and might be able to pick things up in a 2-0 fashion. It looks like Simple's working up, Chad. And that's, uh, that's a good sign if you're a Na'Vi fan, not so great if you're a FaZe fan. You can check that out over at uh, esl.gg slash Twitch A if you're looking for that stream. Okay, mouse back in the guns here. Can't go too far between drinks, especially with the type of round that they lost here to allow Astralis to go three on the trot. So Mouse, you're back into guns, you're back into U-Tilt. And Device is back into his aggressive maneuvers. Procedural and effective. Posted. Bars investigating. Device looking for that trade on the crawl. Shui, well aware, manages his angles well. Flashes off and evades the nade a little bit. 30 damage, excuse me, 30 health. If you're Shui, that's, that's, that's going to paint a big picture. You know the ramp player is not going to push like that without the AWP, but they haven't sprung into action elsewhere. So allowing the re-rotation of devices to come in, that's another way to deal with it. Just because you have the info doesn't mean you need to act on it immediately. Yeah, but then the super ballsy call is regroup ramp and walk ramp. Yeah. Expect yeah. him to relocate. Exactly, right? And you wouldn't hate that here at all, as we do have some util flying through the sky. Smoke dots out towards yard. Yeah, device from ramp, now in towards top. As that wall erected, info flowing. As an AWP shot lands, but the kill, no good. Pat's got a new lease of life now. Lucky device continues to stay active, and Borup joins him. So now, oh, this is just a it's such a, a gamble, chess game. though. This yeah, is a chess they have, game. They have three players on B, and Shui's actually going around heaven, which is fantastic. The Stair is the only one in this top side. Oh, and back up the ladder just in time. On. They have their finger on the pulse here. Borup has his finger on the trigger. Takes down Yimpa. Oh, and Stair set for success. The heaven prong. No more. Torji with one. Would need a whole lot more from that position. Stair. Sprayed on down by Exertion, but caught by Device, who's now secret, this by is the heard, way. This is hurt. Blame's still down here. Easy. Oh, there's a free frag. torji has got his bomb out. And Blame's got her fourth round for Astralis. They look switched on, man. This Astralis, a, a conversation to be had for sure, because Astralis, they're dominating on Ancient, but is Nuke really the same Nuke that they used to have? I mean, this is a different team. Well, this is the thing, right? They played Nuke once in an official here, uh, and they weren't able to pick up the win, right? I think it was a 16-9 loss. Let me verify that one right here, right now, very quickly. But we talk about Astralis, and it's a legendary name. There's only one of those legendary oh, players left in this roster right. being Device. But we go back to the glory days. It was somewhere where Device and that roster made Nuke and Inferno their bitch. They changed the way that those two maps were played. And it's surely it's safe to assume, yeah, one member of that roster we're talking about, but it's safe to assume that the lessons he's learned during that it's domination. Kind of the member. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure that those lessons are being, you know, they, they haven't been forgotten. They can be relayed to new human beings, mm. can they not? Mm. Exactly, exactly. And he's got an aura about him, doesn't he? Does. He does. He's being run at, though. <laughs> Okay, uh, no scope, tag, and then just swap to the B250 and nearly kills them all. Device, unflustered, unbothered, and Buzz will finish the job, but like you can see in his decision making, in his approach, 
that Nikolai Reitz is not scared of you at all. Yeah, and I just want to uh, recall these scorelines we were talking about for Astralis uh, since coming out of the season right. with this roster on new. Because so it hasn't new been, track record. Hasn't been pretty. I mean, they played Na'Vi over there in the Blast Premier four groups, and they dropped that 16-6, to six, right? Na'Vi steamrolled them there, simple with a, a real top-notch performance. And then you take a look at IEM Cologne 2023. Well, in their matchup that went three maps, the third and decider was Nuke, and, well, G2 pulled away with a 16-9 to nine victory. So we're looking to see what Astralis really have to offer up on Nuke at a 5-2 start. That's a very good sign. Yeah, you want to be dynamic or up on the, on the CT side. Just watch this device demo. But you don't often see a three-man yard control where players stay yard. This is pretty old school. Like, I used to call three-man yard controls to stop smoke walls, but you wouldn't hang out in this configuration unless you're expecting a late, Drop of the wall, and there you go. Here comes the smoke. Device catches your exertion on the jump, and you're not going outside anymore, and are that, you? Yeah, oh, now they're they coming they out. They're coming they into two rivals. Especially if Device gets this shot first lobby. Not clear in his corner. Stare profits more. Pressure applied, and Device is waiting for this swing of Yimpat. Gets away with it. Such a terrifying presence right now. 50 seconds. Can Buzz hold on? Yeah, there's, there's, a, the boost. there's a boost as well. There's no way you're checking this. Blame's already cheated over. Torchy's not checking that. His toes exposed. The round is won. And Astralis look deadly on this defense. That reeks of preparation. To be able to stay in that stance and then have the contingency at ramp or ready to go with the boost, it's like a child's book right now. Yeah, that but then Blame was even coming. Like He was holding ramp as well from heaven or hell. That's wild. That that is wild. That they, they they essentially predicted everything that was going to happen in that round. And for an in-game leader, right? This is the worst. Like, put yourself with playing your game now. Yeah, put yourself okay. in Shuey's shoes. You feel like every call you make, they've already they're already switched on. They're already disrupting it. They're already in the right place to to, to rumble you. Yeah, I, I, you need to kind of change the flow of the game here, but. That's a problem again. We return to this similar conversation, and it's not to detract from any of the results here in Cologne. It's just the fact of the matter. Coming out of the break with Cologne, now moved to the second season of the year. This is the biggest event immediately. Yeah. We don't have a second major. So the type of Counter-Strike we're getting is the type of Counter-Strike that you've been able to get together in, what, the last couple of weeks? So if you were at Blast, you could have used that and maybe a little bit more preparation before just coming out of the tournament break. But all in all, these teams are not going to be extremely deep. And that's where you do need to turn to the individuals, their chemistry, the way they work off of each other, and hopefully be able to piece something together here. But four rounds the difference now. Mouse with a purchase that uh, leaves an awful lot to be desired. You can see here, just buying into a couple of deagles, a couple scouts, a few nades mix, and hoping to do some damage. Scout That's going to get a kill onto Burrow. That's not bad. Exertion across unspotted. This would be a good round to get going. Oh, yeah, this would be a ignite uh, of a round. Yeah, only one kill for Shuey and Frozen right now. So the two of them, they can be impactful. But I do like to see more out of the young gun, the 16-year-old, the Finn. He's in the lower deck. And oh. Flame caught off guard as well. Exertion converts. Important frag, powerful frag, considering that the bomb needs to get across still. The device now will be drawn away. Winning this type of round would fire me up a lot, right? This is a round where you didn't really bring in a lot at all. Buzz, if he catches Yimpat here, oh, distracted by the single door. He won't be cleared, though. Exertion shouldn't come through this. Oh, right now. Angle held. Buzz finds Exertion. What a contribution. Three on three. Yimpat spotted out. He's going to come fi fight you. He's coming. You gave me the info, and I'll take the frag, I'll take your head, and I'll likely take the round. Playing around the smoke, Torji just feeds Device another frag. 13 racked up already, and Frozen does not have the weapon for this job, for this clutch. Now, Device has overlooked him, and Frozen hasn't known. Oh, oh. Saw him there. Saw him. Yep, you saw just him. saw him. His First. teammates must have communicated yeah, 100 that. Yeah, 100%, but you know Buzz last I've seen Windows, and you've got 10 seconds, seconds so... Yeah, Run yellow out of about exits here, I suppose. That's actually wild. I never thought I would see the day. I never thought I would see the day. It is. Uh, I mean, he's a new man. The same man. Just but a with, new man. With a new man. And okay. the conversation he had, so candid, so mature. The amazing lurks are frozen. <laughs> because he knows. He knows, he understands this game as well. <laughs> and, he c and those words out of his mouth are going to leave a little bit of a sour they taste. They sting more, don't they? Oh, they do. 
All right, well, this time a tempo shift here. Fast wall smokes. Can't be set up, can't be picked up on the jump here, can ya? At least that's what Exertion is hoping for. Has to worry about anybody pushed up close, tucked in tight. Ready to send mounts to that long good night. But this is map control, but with no gusto. They didn't take any space. When you use three smokes, you don't take the space. You're hoping it forces a CT rotation. But take a look at the radar. Nobody's even dipped their toes. Oh, I just say that as devices sl slink towards the lower side. So yes, it has worked. We have to acknowledge this. But by removing the AWP from the heaven and hell position, that's quite a key scenario for an AWP to rotate around and deal with any lockdowns. He will be condemned towards B. He's even called for help of Buzz. So in the darkness are Astralis and I need to play the sights here. Stare with back What's turned. What's he doing? He's pushing. We're kissing in the smoke here. Yeah. Frozen Sean tomorrow. Oh. Stare. Ooh, flattened. Nice shot. Should we adjust very quickly? And now committing into that top site is the perfect call. What did it lead to the perfect result? Right now, I think if you're Astralis, if you don't find a kill quickly, bomb's about to get thrust in 40 seconds. You might be considering the save here. You, for once, have been completely outmaneuvered. And we were discussing with Shui, you know, how it feels being, you know, in your head, you're being red. Yeah. Well, this one will feel really good. Yeah. You throw the smoke wall, they bite down. I didn't think they were going to. It didn't look like they were going well, to. Well, because historically, in this nuke, Astralis have not fallen for any of it. So now, uh, this is where it can shift a little bit. Astralis will have to either play for information ahead of that smoke wall or send somebody down for, for more aggression, right? Push in towards Secret, go through the double doors, make sure that that isn't an unknown. Because right. what they were essentially beaten with in this round was lack of information. That's exactly how that was meant to go and for Mouse. You can win around with only two kills. Do you know what uh, old Astralis would have done? They'd probably say, hey, Glaive, go play secret and do that Glaive smoke. You yeah, know, right. That, that's, that was an adjustment they would have had. I'm sure it's something that they uh, they still have in their repertoire. Well, everyone can underhand a smoke and stand on top of a railing, but could be interesting to see if there is a different uh, adjustment here from New Look Astralis. Yeah, and if they feel confident that Mao's are going to play this late round as well, right? If they're going to, you know, sit and wait and fester, which is what we've seen them do in a couple of these scenarios, then you don't want to over rotate if you're Astralis, but playing a 2 3. That's okay. We used to do that a lot. We just call it turtling up on nuke. Right. Because yard, ramp room, you don't always need those positions. You do out the gate, like overpass. You start aggressive, right? And then you can transition back. But uh, Astralis, by not getting any traction, and here you go. There's the change immediately. An immediate change. And this time, Exertion gets across. He's softened up, and oh, he was meant to have help. You're going to have to brave the flames. Should have been heard. At least they know there's one. Device readies himself for friction. He's got stair in support. And this needs to be perfectly executed by Mouse. They can use their mollies, they can use their smokes, even a flash. But they go dry. Oh, and Device has let one go. Knife buff from Zerp, punished from Stan. Device does not make that same mistake Ooh, twice. Good shot. Torji puts him down. Buzz, only the one from ramp. Now a two on two established quickly. You've got a lot of time for this, and they're all completely isolated duels. <gasps> Blame, ready, frozen not. Jumps into him, and now an opportunity for Torji to come up clutch. WP player had a brilliant breakout performance upon arrival here in Cologne, but can he bring it <laughs> when it matters? Brought low, and he shuts them up with a double, clutching Torji, four for Maus. That right there is the type of form we need from Torji here today. A beautiful little clutch, well handled, and I got the fire in the belly there. He's happy with that one, and he should be. Brilliant play, considering how close this this round was. Everyone contributing. This Look at that. The, the one that he gets onto Device on the stairs. Like yeah. Device doesn't even have to re-go for that fight. The fact he does, feeling confident against Torji, and Torji sits him on his ass. That's the one that you're going to feel the best about. So happy with that. And they win another one. They can break the bank of Astralis here. And this T-Hall, it can look a whole lot better than it currently does. Well, I'm not sure if they clocked Blame or not. I saw Torji talking a lot. Smoke wall up. Blame dispatched to get the info flashed out. Device. Molly stairs. Blaine trapped. Shubi has the bomb though. He can win the round. Oh, Blaine gets the bomb down. They're pushing him though. Exertion needs this. Oh, gets big it trade. just about. An important frag from Exertion to keep this round competitive. Smokes have faded. No one's picked up the bomb here. Still in the open. Device can't believe his luck. And Torji. That head to head with Device. Head butted back to spawn. They know Exertion's here as well. Has to be a cross. Oh, this looks so uncomfortable. What can Frozen and Jimpat do to, to, to aid this uh, recovery? Well, they have to make a move, right? Exertion's already done his job. The bomb, 
in no man's land. The other two, the unknown entities, have to make some action happen here. Frozen up on the silo. You've had starting to look through squeaky door here. First fight he'll find should be Bor up on the site. Bor up quick on the draw. Exertion, lucky to be alive. Device misses the chance. Slips into the warehouse, but this round is falling apart. There's nothing for them to do. 30 seconds. Exertion actually does take down Device. Stare onto Frozen does confirm our suspicions. That bomb has not been picked up ever since that blame frag. Ever since Shui went down. They've been unable to kind of have their potency back. Now he's just hoping to save in plain sight here. Worst case going down after time, but both just find him. And there you have it, back into the winning ways. Half has been won. Astralis now with eight. And that means only eight more rounds away from survival. The gauntlet of this final day of the IEM Cologne Groups for 2023. Group B, it is a long way up. A best of three to start the day for both A and B streams. And then later on, the winners of those two games will meet the final slot. 7.30, I do believe. And those two names will be locking horns for the final spot in that Lanxess Arena. We do have Cloud9 taking on Gamer Legion here on the secondary stream coming up next. That will be for the uh, or other spot, the six spots in total. We've locked in four. We need to find two. Pretty simple maths. But if we discuss the last two rounds and look forward here into round number 13, we saw the adjustment from Astralis immediately to the space, right? Now it didn't necessarily work. Device pushed over, but then they went again. They sent blame again. So they are clearly wanting to plug the hole of secret in different variations. This time Device, oh, okay. Two HP. Has wrecked him. The impact caught by the aggressive orb. Down to two HP. I mean, maybe he's just going to be used as a piece of utility. Yeah, you can see, look, 2 HP. It looks like they want to play on the smoke. And here he comes, bounding through. Buzz will fall off. Plays it more passively. And Exertion not ready for Blame F's angle. So main, Lurk, cut down. Buzz can have some backup now. The cavalry's here. Device has got secret stairs. Hearing steps now. Hearing a lot. Can Buzz, after falling off, giving up round. Ooh, he doesn't need any help. Device is doing it all. Now Buzz will catch one, Frozen good for the first, and a missed shot puts Frozen up, a leg up to perhaps recover this round, 2v4, now three. Borup and Stair will be playing from ramp side. It's a powerful position that Torji's in, right. very strong. And you've got 50 seconds, so if they give him anything early, which they are, or collect. You can't re-peak You that. can't re-peak it, so that should perhaps open Frozen up for some more planting. Blame's slumped Blame down spam, to decon. Man. If Blame spams, it can force him into the open here. Oh, that's a good point too. Torji, the door is open. I wonder if he even knows. Blame could walk under him. He's no way he'd be ready for that. Will Frozen consider it? Has he noted that the, the decon door is open? Still hearing the scope here. Blame knows he hasn't moved. Yeah, they see the door now. So Frozen knows door open. Holding it. Blame walking it. And Frozen needs this. He delivers again. High impact from Frozen. Four in the round to save Maus. What a recovery. Massive round. Absolutely massive round right there. They were supposed a, to lose. Yeah, 100%. Once Torji gets across on that railing, that is great work. You know that AWP is so powerful in that position. He has to watch both sides of ramp here. This is the opening kill. Exertion goes down for free. They rotate towards lower. They know there's pressure ramp. And Blame, he gets that kill. Torji's pinned. He has to worry about ramp and directly below him. There's very unlikely chance for Torji to pick that up. Now we have a half. Now we have a chance where Maus, they could... Bring this as close as possible. An 8-7, still on the card, still on the table. Still a possibility here. And starting to believe in themselves. Impact. Confirms Borup was dismounting the hut. The only way this becomes disastrous is if you do run past and overlook that boosted Mag 7. Device deep into that angle, hoping to be overlooked and catch a couple, but... Currently uh, using the throwing knife technique. That's how much pressure he feels he's under here. Good luck throwing a butterfly knife. Oh, the bait from Buzz. Let's see. It's just such a common clear, though. Yeah, I know, but with all these bodies distracting... Chewy needs to be alert, and that's the Mag 7, the body shot. No lethality and nicely handled from Maus. The pressure relieved. 
Borup does not even find that final seven or eight damage required. Shui gets three. And Mao's going to make a real competitive half out of this. They get one more gun round to try and close the gap to just a one round game. Yeah, I think here if you're Astralis, you're going to know that you should have had a better half ahead of you considering the type of round you just lost and then the ramifications that had on your money, yeah. right? But this has been hard fought for by Mao's, and this is what we were hoping to see here today. I said a competitive series. We might even get a competitive map here. If we need it, the third and deciding is Vertigo. So uh, heading to the 51st floor to finish off match number one of the day here. It's quite a streak of rounds to get Astralis up to seven, and it's only been one on top since. So trying to melt away here, starting to fade late within this first half on their CT side. Timeout was called, and Castle aware that, hey, 9-6 is going to feel a whole lot better than an 8-7. Fist bumps are in. Freeze time, about 10 seconds to go, and we can recount the buys here of Astralis. A Famous for Stare, there's not a Diffuse Kit in play. A little bit light on the, in the Utah department as well. Just super interested that Shui's eyes were on that smart glass until it changed. He was making eyes at Astralis up until he had no vision of them. Seventh on the agenda. Spam from Blame. Chips away at exertion. Won't stop the walk. Frozen on that silo has been spotted out, so they know that there's at least one towards that blue container. The impact going to be tested here. With only a Galil against two. Barrel. Oh, nice. Device will provide the trade. And now Blame should be isolated here and lucky to be alive is Torji. Device still hitting shots. Still a problem. A thorn in Mao's side. Oh. Ooh, not far off onto Torji. Safe now as he backs away, but the frags have been had and extended. Stair finishes off onto Torji and Device is going ring around the Rosie. Who is this man? He makes it look too damn easy. 19 frags, three in this one alone. And Shui in the back of the head stops it from being a guarantee. And now his position is completely noted. Stair's trying to cut him off with the pass here, rotating straight down the vent. He could try and come up secret here. Keep in mind he has the Famous. Needs to make sure he's very accurate when he takes this duel. The young in-game leader finding the first and this one would fire up the team something cruel. Today really has gone walkabouts. Oh, he's considering it. Stair Stair returns. Away. This could line up nicely for Shui. With 20 seconds left, he's right in hot pursuit. Silent hot pursuit. When he, if he makes a sound, it's over. The back's turned. If he makes a sound, it's over, but he hasn't. He didn't see him. He doesn't know. He doesn't know how close he is to Stair. He's not even going to clear to clear. right. No, he's now he's loud. And Stair will collect the frag. Oh, what could have been for Shui. But Device with a triple secures Astralis a ninth as we swap sides.
What is your calling? It's cut throat here in Cologne. Astralis Mao, second map and a 9-6 half as Astralis just seven rounds away from continuing their battle in pursuit of the playoffs. Mal's to be eliminated unless they can convert their map pick. Device has been bullying them in the server and in the studio. Let's strap in for what could be our final half of this series. I'd love to see Vertigo. I'm sure Mal's would too. Why are you bullying me? Everybody ask it. Everybody ask me. Sybil's playing right now on that mainstream. Check it out. Face Navi. I just heard a very guttural roar out of Carrigan as well from the previous stream. Yeah, he had something to say. Device taking contact towards Yard against Frozen. The man that he has made his absolute nemesis here today. Molly Top Hut, Smoke Out Squeak. They want the way down the fireman pole. Torji's dealt with Buzz, pressure towards Ramp, and the rotations here from Shuey. Stair close though. So if Blame takes contact, Stair can swing to punish, but. That was the bomb spotted. Shuey, good alert and presence of mind. He gets away. Ramp is completely conceded as Device walks across. You can see Shui just had a little glance. He doesn't get the info. Bomb on Blame. Oh, oh. and Stair's gone. He knows there's another there now. Blame. Oh, hard to track. Good movement to at least get away with the bomb. It could have been a round loss right there. Torji's he still could be. Yeah, they want to search should for be. Oh. Impact. Confirmation of Device down secret, but the rest are disconnected from this. Does he want to go like up the vents? Exertion is still on the hut with Jewel Berettas here. So if they walk out top, the Israeli should be good for a couple here. Yeah, this should be his pair of frags with his pair of pistols. Ooh, just looked away. Timing is everything in Counter-Strike. And now, play with the bomb and Borough gone. Nice work, Device, the last to find. Toast spotted, and he's up for the clutch. Would have to be bangers and mash. And yeah, hasn't quite managed to find that headshot. The impact secured the round with Torji's help. And so Mouse will take the pistol. Let's go, boys. A pair of pistols here. And where we started to get excited in that first half for Mouse was the pistol with the conversion. And then they ended up dropping the ball against some retained upgraded weapons here. So I think Astralis, without the plant, will find themselves in uh, safe territory here. Devices upgraded to a Deagle. Nobody else yet to bring through with any purchases. So it might be recycling for the Danes, something that they're very proud of. I, I, I think they're pretty good at that, yeah, right? They've got like healthcare and the streets are clean. And they pay for school for yeah. free and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're one, it's of, the, a, it's a like one of the best places. democracy. One of the best places to live in the world, yeah. happiest places in the world. Mm -hmm. okay. Do you know, do you know nice. the happier place, happiest place in the world? Uh, it's not Denmark. Neverland. Finland. Oh. Yeah. Why? Um, I think it's probably something to do with the saunas. Ah, uh, okay. The heat shock protein. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you see what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> exactly, yep. Human growth hormone. Ah. If you spend two, uh, 30 well, minutes... That's all when you got to talk to Kassad about, I think. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an evil witch tackle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right, well, Frozen did die. And at the hands of the Deagle of Device. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, I think we... They have to pay more attention here. Torji's already been catching some flack as well. This, I mean, this would be a heartbreaker. They can't and they shouldn't. With only $700 invested, sure, you've died to a fantastic shot and it's frozen. <laughs> Device onto frozen. Yeah. Extra drama, but... Make a soap opera out of this one. Still, I mean, you know, I'm sure you'd agree, Chad, there is, uh, there is no reason for Maus to lose another player. It, I, I'll give them one more just because of the state of the nation right now, but they should not allow a plant. Hold up, is that? That was the door. Okay, that wasn't the bomb. I thought the bomb maybe just got down the vent. It's all right. If the bomber got down the vent and they had lost track of it, would have had some big issues here, but still top side, drop towards Squeaky, just bow up to find, and Torji will dispatch of him. Two in the round for Torji, two for Exertion. And now back to a one round game. Astralis will have made no secret that the rifles are coming out here. One of the keys you know, is making sure that that information flying. Okay, they had Glocks, there was no head armor. These are the details that you're looking for in those type rounds because it's a given for us. We can see it, the other team, sure. the mystery box. Right, yeah, Frozen's probably going to go. They, do, they have a Deagle. They have they, one, they Deagle. one Deagle. AKs are out now. Buzzer's got the HE for squeaky door. That's going to be his task as he runs into the lobby here. Bang, doors open and will not be closed again for the round. Just temporarily obscured the vision by Smokes. Oh, sure he's forced down the vent. Smokes should. Guys, his return up. 
They need to use this space here. Astralis and going to be stalled out now. Is Stare and caught. Frozen. Good understanding of the situation. Corralling Stare right into that spam zone. That's the thing. Hurting them like sheeps. Sheeps? Sheep. It's already the plural. Yeah. English is a funky language. Bah. Yeah. So we're going to get across. Bigger concern here for Astralis is the bomb, right? So let's like, say you get across, you're down secret, you apply a bit of pressure towards lower, which is exactly what device is going to be aiming for here. I feel like you might need to return to the top side and go for an A split. Try and help out the two lobby members, Barup and Buzz. Barup and Buzz. Partnered up. They're in the option is a split ramp. I don't like this for Astralis. Oh my, loses his head. Yimpan needs to hold on to Buzz there. Couple of chip damage from the Famas. A nice bait, frozen profits. That's the bomb on Borup. Now that might have been communicated. And so decisions to be made seconds. off the back of that device. You know, what, you know where he was, but you know where the bomb was too. Now it has to be a vent to top split. Okay, Torji's got a power position. Is Blame ready? No, not at all. Collection from Torji. Trying to tie this game up. Device, barrel spotted, easy collection for exertion, and Borup in a clutch, he can't win this one. Torji confirms it, and we are 9-9 nine, nine all tied up. This pistol round from Maus has managed and facilitated a complete evening of the scoreline. And that's what they weren't able to do in the first half. That's where we started to lose a little bit of hope about this being a competitive map, but it has really turned on here and starting to find their voice are Maus. So an important round to win here, and it all started with Frozen. Great work, the incendiary, the spam, perfect. Device gets one back, but ramp was the issue. Yimbat had the support of Frozen as well, and that held them at the door. So a nice one to win, and even, you know, Torji now starting to feel the heat. He was the player who won them a big clutch in that first half as well. So part of this comeback. Second time out. Yeah, and you don't hate it. You're still at a point in the game where there was a smile on Castle's face, so he's not too stressed out just yet. But this is the T-half now that Astralis are going to have to try and close things down if they want to get it done in two. Some it is going to be a long day ahead of you here. you got a best of three at the end of the day if you win. Yeah, something I want to draw attention to is that, uh, you know, it is less than a month. I mean, admittedly, that is me making uh, 29 days less than a month. But less than a month since Shui joined this roster, and even less than that since Yimpat joined this roster. 20 days. Uh, and when you think about that and the map pool you're up against, the team you're up against, the form they are in, this is a real test for the, for the Mao's development uh, in order to see just how deep they can go. Sure, Ancient, he fell short, but we've got two more maps in the in the can of this series. That's if they can get there. Yimpat to defend his honor here on Ramp, forced off by Flash and Boots, charging towards him, lots of bodies in. And Ramp now occupied, flying the Astralis flag. You've got a bit of util for a finish. Yeah, this is the thing. If you were to go B, you could uh, smoke that single door. As mentioned, you could try and get into the site here. You don't have a molly for the stairwell. They are sending Borup back towards Lobby, and he's donated his U2 over towards Blame here. So we could do a re-smoke deployed just above that one minute mark. So blocked again. Will it change the tune of where Astralis were hoping to end here? Inquisitive towards Heart Device. Going to lay activate around Heaven here. You can see this position. Does rely on his teammates getting in and causing a skirmish. Blame's going to throw the squeaky limp smoke here, so that's going to at least ask the question, can they drop down the vent? Shui reaction. Oh, and Shui confirms there is action on Hut as well. Two players B for Mounds here. Oh, Frozen's been spotted out. Frozen's been spotted out by his arch enemy. He can finish it off to the job, likely, with the USP. 16 HP on he device, and he's got 20 seconds to die. Oh, this will do it oh, perfectly. Thank you very much. Right on the money. Mounds will take the lead. Okay, good round to win. Now it's going to be Astralis back into these guns here. So there was a few moments of threat from the Danes. But as we're taking a look, see what the buy has in store. Device is asking himself the question, do I want to bring out the AWP, it'd be glass cannon, or do I want to get out the AK? Well, they are going to operate here on this T side with five AK-47s. Torji has his primary gun on the other side of the server. Right now, Device has 22. The next closest on his team is 12. Now we mentioned the old Astralis being good at this map, and Device is a part of that. Need someone else to chip on in here and assist. I like this from Torji. And Buzz, he doesn't. Caught out by the aggressive AWP line. Starting to feel himself now, isn't he? That's, I mean, that's a Torji play. That is a Torji play, and he's playing his own game. Yes, I said it. 
impact. Got to power up. That was the box carrier. That was a lot of util. He's gotten away as well. I spoke too soon. He's surely a dead man. Device is ahead of him. Maybe Shui can save him. This is a big frag here. If Jim Pat can somehow get away. Yeah, no, he's a dead man. I don't know. He's out. Device is going to play this round. At least now the reaction from Shui is present. Oh, and the bomb's been delivered. That's an oopsie. That's a daisy. Shui, dead now. Look at the damage. 34 points of health yeah, between the two of them Yeah, he's got sure. You know, the communication's been had. He's very low. But this is the problem. He is orping against two players who are very low. He misses a shot. It doesn't matter about their HP anymore. And he's starting to investigate the complete wrong way. Oh. A window broken. Hang on. Come on. He heard that. He did. And he is starting to backpedal now. If that's all it takes, a broken pane of glass to draw Torji in. He might find himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now, we mentioned he was great for a clutch in that first half. This would be miraculous here. Blame and stare. Yeah, they've, they've played it so well. The one sound cue they've given him, and it's misinformation. Now, they are a way aware of how susceptible they are to a bullet. Stair can molly heaven and plan. Blame covers main and vent. So as far as Astralis are concerned, everything is covered right now to get the bomb down. Torji, you, you're really going to give this one a go. Finances for yourself, not great. Yeah, you've got the AWP on your back. Event. Back presented perfectly played by Astralis for the close. You saw just how much pressure Yimpat was under towards ramp. And the fact that Vice got out for free there. He was pinned behind the box. If he dropped down, he would not have been able to contribute whatsoever. But Device gets that. He drops the bomb at the feet of Shui. Shui gets traded over towards hell. And then the round is just on. But the presence of mind from Device knowing that the ramp players, if he's on that headshot box, chances are he takes a pot shot and he crouches. He's staring, he's staring at the wall, right? And Device is well aware that he's probably not going to be addressing that slip and exploits it for a what did translate to a bit of an awkward bomb drop, but it, they recovered it. He quite truly had no idea he got past, which is quite wild, all things considered, because he got the opening pick. Right, yeah, precisely. It's a really powerful move from Devnet, and Torji's done it again. Buzz twice handed an early death by Torji's AWP. Now, whoa, careful. No, oh, no. Frozen's lost his head. Long range. You don't get longer one taps than that. Blame from Silo takes him down. And look at Stare already. Yeah, I mean, down uh, towards secret here, so nobody will be able to walk through and poke their head up. This is a very difficult angle to be able to clear late, and I don't think Yimpat wants anything to do with it. He's trying to fortify this B bomb site here just with a Famous, and the angle that he's holding tells you just how much pressure he could be under. So Astralis are going to hit the pause button. In the mid rounds is where they tend to do some good work, but nuke a different kettle of fish, and especially Blame not playing the traditional space taker role like Stare is now. Yeah, and Borob's playing the lobby hold. Torji last got that frag maybe 20 seconds ago. Still posted on it. Gonna have to be something that he takes into consideration. If Blaine wants to return to lobby at any point with that bomb. But with two out on the well secret and Shui's red gonna, side. Shui's walking across here, Alex. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, just like that. Wow, that is what you wanted. They had to move eventually. And they've got plenty of time for the finish. Exertion's got two to deal with. They get three. Oh, brutal. He turned into it while trying to run away. <laughs> so good. And yeah, Yimpat, I mean, he has had a very boring round. He stared at Decon Door for about 60 seconds and watched the kill feed as his teammate got picked apart but limb from limb. You can't have your AWPA get opening picks hyper-aggressively hot and then ramp and then still have the round fall in that fashion. Like, Torji did his job in both rounds. And the difference being? I suppose in this one is that Frozen gave one back for free which then allowed everybody else to take the space. They just posted up, they just waited, and then more kills came their way. Astralis didn't have to do an awful lot. Hurry up and wait was the name of the game in round number 21. In the previous, it was a bit more hard fought for, and it was hard to keep tabs on all the fights that were going on across the map. But if it's difficult for us and the observers to do that, then you can only imagine for these teams finding fights. Astralis will put themselves back into the lead. This is a close one here. Ooh, you want close one as well. Check out ESL.gg slash Twitch A. A battle being fought from the same side of the, uh, well, sorry, the same group. In both low, in the lower bracket. Both in the lower bracket. So we'll be having the winners clash later on today of this, these games. This is really worrying right now. I haven't been keeping my eye on the prize as far as mouse timeouts are concerned. This is the fourth and final already being, ex oh, yeah. damn, you, you really don't love to see that. And Cyclone does have a tendency for, to call them when you aren't going to be investing the next round. You know, like some, I think some coaches like to wait. They let them have this one. Well, this is this is the conversation they're going to have right now. 2400 is the loss into the next. So if everybody saves here, they can buy. But 
the buy in the next. Like, I'll let you guys do the maths. 1950 yeah. plus 2400. Silence Them 4 makes things a lot more manageable than it used to be, right? With the, with the cheaper yeah, price tag. But even still, on a map where being able to block key choke points like Squeaky and Huck, right? Being able to throw a deep Molotov outside to stall their progression yard, they're all very important. So to be light on in that regard is something that is going to hurt Mouse here. Uh, and Cycron chose those last 30 seconds to probably talk them down the stretch here, right? What are the most optimal solutions as far as our buyers are concerned? What type of round should we be running? Where have we been finding weakness? Well, you haven't been having any issues getting opening picks. I do like their positioning in the sense that Stare, it's going to be impossible for him to find the multi-kill he's hoping for if he continues to, to crawl here. Now, he's showing presence. It's clearly part of the strategy. They want to kind of just dip their toe in and test how the water's feeling. I wouldn't be surprised to see Blame start yet being the next piece to activate. There's been pushed now, which is going to help move things along. That works wonderfully. He's even smoking. Yeah, he's them off. stressed. Look how much he's talking. He's hearing so many he steps. and pushing. And Device in support. This is the first shot. Stair does get another, and Device should rack up the rest. Nice work. Astralis hold on. Blame very ready for exertion. Pedestrian frag. For the Astralis 12. Now, this is where some other issues start to crop up. Torji, if he wants the AWP, he can. He has the finances to do so. 5K. So he's in uh, touching distance of the big green. But, but we all know the problems that come with that. And I just spoke about the importance of utility here. So he will opt for the AWP, which I can understand. He's been getting opening picks. He needs to manifest that again. And his teammates need to make sure they're tight. They don't give one back. You wouldn't expect him to go as Aggie, though, right? Without the Alp Kevlar? There's only one incendiary. That means that there's no molly for Squeaky or Hut. Because Yim passed the ramp player. Did he drop it to an A player? It doesn't matter. It's probably already been burnt here. Oh, this making my skin crawl. Yeah, Defending on the CT side like this. Oh, Stairs going really quick into main. Someone has to address this. And Shui, so Flash Buzz does get caught out. Vision restored just in the nick of time. Could be the double from Stair. Oh, controls the spray with just three HP to spare. These are the two you want alive, though. Yeah, blame and device. This would be a twist of the knife. 25 frags already from Device. He's so set in his ways, in his path to victory. He wants to keep this clean. Exertion. He's got a good understanding as where one of them may be coming from, right side by side with Still Device. Timing here for got blame. The crosshair. Perfect timing. Doesn't get better than that. Blame one. <gasps> overlooks him. Overlooks the impact. Assumes it's clear. Has no idea of device. Device might assume it's clear. Here, here, here. Oh, Yimpat's dead too. And they're clutching up just the two of them. Frozen left in the clutch. Maybe he can recover this one from Maus, but it's slipping through their fingers. But look at how passive device just went. Lobby entrance, holding just the line for the squeaky or lobby walk. Now letting Blame investigate with 30 seconds left. Not taking any chances in this one, our Astralis. It's Molotov. Extra bonus. Frozen detached from the top site now as they clear it through, confirming nothing vents. It's just suspiciously quiet. And Device even gets himself an upgrade. Now they're in. Now the bomb to be planted. Blame to Molly Heaven. Planning back site. No kit here for Frozen. Nose in the wrong place. They are so good at converting mistakes. They're punishing unforced errors. Or just errors. Does he go for this? There has to be a kit somewhere towards topside, but wait, the finances were they broken. Were so they were light. battered, so I don't ups? know if it was going to be a priority. No molly, would have no molly. It's probably no kits, and so the bomb's already yeah, halfway gone. What's he supposed to do? By the time he even gets on the scene, an orb, yeah, for Torji, maybe if you kill them both, but you're not going to win this round. They Device will pick it up. It felt like he did. It, there, there was no real effort to win this round because it was just up against it. And that's because Astralis crossed their T's. They dotted their I's. Cut audible. And I, yeah, I, I can't quite believe Device onto Jim Pat was when that round was won. Yeah. Like, even, I mean, Exertion dying, 3 HP, you know, that, that could have happened in a multitude of different ways. But Jim Pat being not cleared by Blame, which mean, it, which would mean it that a 3v5. every Counter-Strike player, you'd think after your teammate has come, killed someone in lobby, as the all pack, you wouldn't be expecting someone still tucked in. Never mind Jim Pat on that close wall, but Device... Not really ever caught out. Well, this could be the death knock right now for Mouse. The context, we've made it very clear here today. Survival game, eliminated, eliminated and removed from IEM Cologne for 2023. Mouse were a team that were in the playoffs last year. This time might not even get a chance at playing that match to qualify them through Astralis on their map choice of Ancient. Absolutely dominated here. 
Mouse have find, found some form. They've found a little bit of competition. They've definitely put up more of a fight here on map number two. Not in any hurry, are they? No, it's wild how silent Australis are happy to stay. But it, that silence, I'm sure it's an uncomfortable silence They've for the defense. They've two nades this entire round. Almost 55 seconds have subsided. And then look where Stare and Device are with that said. Look at where they are with that said. They have everything they need and more to finish this round in a magnitude of different ways. And it's Device actually that goes proactive. He's clearing through May and Torchy's been spotted. So isolating this player, it is a deep clear, but it's an easy one for Device. And now they all activate in unison. Exertion gone next. Buzz Trophy, there's a lot of bodies here. Shuey and caught by Buzz on the re-swing. Well, Yimpat's a ramp player, they know that. Frozen's the rotator, so they should have down. a pretty good idea where the final two players could be off to. Blame, still yet to waltz in towards the site, has the bottom, is going to have to very shortly here. Frozen with the reposition, was behind the back box at ramp for the majority of this round. And with 15 seconds left, Surely Blame's going to punch in the digits. There it is. Bomb down. 40 seconds thrust onto the clock. Another round slips past as Maus will concede 14 to the Danes. It's going to have to be real perfect counter from Maus. And that was the... Uh, did you see their third time? Or was it their fourth? They're out of timeouts. Oh, gosh. They got nothing left. So Cycron burnt that. And now just has to watch as his CT side... Someone has to step up. Yep. Someone has to step up on that, that can use their microphone. And remind everyone of what's at stake. You know, like, hey, you're, you're enjoying Cologne. Would you like to play another game in Cologne? Would you like to play another map? Vertigo can be played. We need to post another six on our defense of this map, our map. Yeah, that's the key here, right? And it's sure, it's not a Torji 50, but it, w it wouldn't be fair to say he hasn't had an impact. He's found opening kills with that AWP on the CT side that his team didn't convert, that he's going to feel True. that they should have converted. When you send an AWP out He's like clutched that, as well. Yeah, so he's, he's actually showed up here on this map for the squad, which is good to see. It's great for Torji. But uh, for the team, it still feels like a loss. It feels pretty hopeless out there right now. There's so much money for Astralis here. We're talking high end, almost 13 grand for device. Low end, about 3.4. So residual buys for everybody on the Astralis side of the server right now. And there is another best of three for the winner of this later today against the winner of Na'Vi and FaZe. Oh, and Torchy's dead to device. Comes through. So many bodies in front of Frozen. He's gone as well. It feels hopeless now. And especially if Shuey meets Device's Orb, he's taking jewels, multiple bodies. He's going for wall bangs. Come on now, Device. He is feeling himself. 28 and counting. In regulation, no less. Yeah, huge Device performance here on one of his absolute home maps. Pulling him across the line, isn't he? And every time they've tried, you know, from these down scenarios to re-aggress or claw one back with some aggression. Just get whacked on the nose, it feels like. Just go, uh, yeah, we knew you'd be doing that. We were already prepared. Oh, like, so the response to losing players outside like is this. the push, is it? Yeah, well, we're more than ready. Bow up at the top of the ladder. Shuey hoping for anything. Gets nothing. He's laughing and at him. this is what we're he talking about. He's laughing at him. Oh, what are you going to do? You're going to push. I can't get easier kills I in my life. I never saw that coming. What? You're pushing in a disadvantage? Are you really? They're just having a great time over there in Astralis. This one should be a lock. It would be <laughs> quite the gift to give over a 2 on 4 situation. Towards ramp here. Another creep, another push, another missed timing. Impact knows where device is at least. But that should send you towards the top side, you would think. You it feels like they have more time in a round than every other team, Mr. Yeah, Alice, well, doesn't they're still it? Still walking, Chad. 19 seconds as they walk towards the top side. And they've got a perfect pincer. Heaven comes out first, calls it clear. And look at how many nades they have again. What game plan is this? Don't throw any U2, just shoot them? Yeah, but... You don't even have to buy the nades, no. guys. What's the point? But nades are even nicer when you're using them to guarantee the round as soon as that bomb goes down. Yeah, I exactly. Even <laughs> if there was a four on four, yep. if they had top side, smoke main, smoke yeah. main. You want to push heaven. a smoke Flash. or Flash. push a molly? Or... Hey, what are you meant to do? Astralis are looking too good and they continue to impress here right. in Cologne. They're giving Maus that feeling. And it's the same feeling they probably felt yesterday against Vitality, where yeah. it's... Flailing, we hopeless. Know, we, we can't win. Like, not like we could. Mm. Like, we can't. They're just... Everything they're doing, they're beating you in the individual duels, and they're closing professionally. And doesn't even feel like they're having to do an awful lot to get there. 
I think the opening one to Torchy there was tough, yeah. I mean, Device did the most standard swing through, pre-aim the credit card, and Bob's your uncle, Torchy's dead. Well, the conversation continues. Astralis, they are one round away from keeping their head above water and playing the winner of FaZe versus Na'Vi. Which is, yeah, really close over on that second and map. And that, that is series. great news if you're Astralis. You're not watching this game right now because you've got your own task to worry about, but you're hoping that these two teams have a stressful day at the office. Yes. You're hoping that this goes to a third map, that that third map goes to overtime, triple overtime, and it just keeps on going. So by the time they get to the end of the day, they are bloody exhausted. Stylish run boost to establish a little bit of a gap over that uh, CT smoke. Impact deploys one of his own. I'm sure the teams Yimpat's used to playing in the Academy Leagues uh, have a bit more punch and pace to them. This is like pulling teeth, just slow, methodical, brutal. Astralis looking for a clean close. Yimpat to be tested. And if he gives Device an inch, that mile will be taken. He wants answers, doesn't need to go any deeper. There's three Astralis players about to test this young gun. And he activates with only one. Takes down Borup, communicates up a storm. And Buzz, he'll recede as well, so they completely concede that ramp space. Now Utility's thrown out towards Yard. Blaine crawls out Squeak. And they're looking to finish this game, finish this series on A. Shui's re-smoked Squeaks. Blame's ahead of that. Shui, an important frag onto Blame. Holds on to the advantage. Maybe for a moment longer, Torji can provide some help on main. Great shot hit by the Orc. Now perhaps a pivot from Astralis. Exertion not going to allow Device to relocate. He's got him hot on his heels. And a great flank from him. Device still hit the shot onto Torji though. And Buzz, <gasps> he's been overlooked. He's been overlooked. He's in the blind spot. He's in the blind spot. Shui doesn't know, but Exertion will close. Okay. A little bit of a sigh of relief for Shui. Yeah, time to dig deep though. This is the thing, you've just given yourself another round, you've just given yourself another opportunity. You're not done yet. You don't give up the fight every round. If you want to go down as one of the great teams, you need to find this resilience. Does it come in the first month of being a squad? Probably not. But you're definitely building for the future here. So they hold on. Mouths get themselves up to 11. Remember all that cash we spoke about with the Danes. Astralis have no issues buying here. And traditionally, they have no issues making it to the playoffs at IEM Cologne. This is just to keep that dream alive. In case you missed the memo, Astralis have never failed to make the Lanxess. A loss here means they break that streak. Five events in a row. Never failed to make the playoffs and yet never lifted the trophy. Right, quite the curse there, isn't it? And just to get back to those playoffs, they needed to win these two best of three series today. And the first one looking good, but down a man again and through an opener of Torji. Gets himself up to 19, continues to deliver for his team. But Astralis essentially trying to bore their opponent to death here. Yeah. God, you just have to stay focused, right? I mean, it is a, it's, a, it's an exercise in focus. Blame's trained his entire team to play the game just like him in moments like this. We hoping that we'd the see other the day. team steps out of line and just gets punished time and time again. But it, it, you know, it, there's method to that madness. And we've seen it working. Yeah, precisely. Audible. Steps heard towards the secret side. More than one. That will be communicated by Frozen. Rotation. Shoe spotted by Buzz descending that vent so they know the jig is up. Shoe, what's your plan with this? He's hoping find something on the ladder. 24 seconds. Borup's taken down Shui, yeah, but Borup has the bomb. Lost it now. Great one from Blame. More bodies down maybe here. Maybe Yimpat, maybe. Trigger discipline is huge. With only 14 seconds left, if he can just deny the plant, he's going to win the round. Oh, Yimpat, he's been spotted. Takes the bomb carrier down. Device will adjust. Bomb will still get planted. It could have been a round winner, but they say play on. Torji frozen on the retake just to extend play. And it's Device and Buzz. To keep the dream alive of that perfect playoff history, Astralis boast. Frozen, will you get past Device? He doesn't seem to think so. 31, and Buzz secures it. Astralis will meet the winner of that phase game. Phase versus Na'Vi still duking it out for that one spot. And Astralis sent Mouse home. Massive work from Astralis here today. We talk about survival. We talk about getting the job done, conserving energy. Great work, 2-0, ancient, way too easy, nuke. A little bit more of a test there, but at the end, it looked like they were playing with the mouse.
Mounds will fall, they will falter, and in their back-to-back -back games, they're going to have some hard questions to ask themselves. They were not here to compete against Vitality, the same against Astralis and Frozen. It looks pretty shattered here with this one. It was not their day at the office in back-to-back -back days. You make a change. You feel like you've evacuated the scapegoat. You know, you feel like you got rid of the problem, and problems still following this mouse squad. Yeah, you see this. There's not even a slight smile, anything to be proud of in this series here today. You were absolutely dominated from start to finish. 2-0. This was your chance to go back-to-back -back colognes for Mouse, which sure there's no German players on the roster, but this org has a lot of history with German Counter-Strike. Back-to-back, and that's back-to-back -back nights staring at the ceiling in your hotel room, feeling like you didn't have a chance. Vitality throwing Mouse around the server, and then Astralis giving them quite a similar treatment. Some heroics from Torji, picking it up on Nuke, delivering in the individual capacity you expect of your Orpa. But at the end of the day, Mouse leave with a heavy head, tail between their legs, and a suitcase to pack. Just trying to grab a player on the sideline for an interview here. Who wants to do it? Who's going to jump in front of the camera? That's the big question. We're oh. calling it the Astralis Attitude Era. They're trying to grab somebody. Please, come on, have a chat. Well, apparently, we're ready. Let's throw it on down to the sideline. Well, Chad, they do have a very long day ahead of them, but the first stage has been completed. Now, I want to touch on this Ancient to start off with. You guys look so good on that, so strong, so confident. You were dominating on this B site over and over again. Did you just see a weakness in them to exploit? I mean, not really. We just played uh, our own game with some different like uh, variations, right? We we're very confident in our Ancient, so uh, we just played our own game. We knew that they would do mistakes when we played uh, how we wanted to play, and then uh, it worked out perfectly. It definitely did work out perfectly. But then coming on to Nuke, you were tested a little bit more, that's for sure, but still getting the win. This is the first win as this team being able to play on Nuke. So what adaptions had you made on that compared to the past? I mean, no, nothing really. We just played it more, right? Uh, got more used to playing Nuke. Um, I would also say like we had a pretty strong seed side, even though only getting nine rounds. We lost an unfortunate eco, which kind of fucked up our economy. Uh, but otherwise than that, I think we had some good buy rounds, which like we completely shut down their play, stuff like this, right? So uh, yeah, just playing them at more experience. Now, how confident are you to go all the way? You've got one more game later today. Where's the confidence right now? How's the mood in the team? Because you're still laughing, you're still smiling like crazy. I mean, I think everyone's very confident, uh, especially when we just like uh, finish this game fast. We have more time to rest. We're playing later. Uh, so it's nice that it went 2-0, so we can chill, we can go back, we can prep for the next game, right? Okay. It's very important, uh, so everyone's very confident, I know this. Question. I like it, you're saying all the right things, sir, so <laughs> let's keep it moving, let's go back to Mike on the desk. Or not on the desk, as the case may be, but I am standing uh, beside uh, one of the winners here, Device, uh, almost back in the length, sir, how's it feel? Uh, we try not to think too much about that. Don't worry about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it was a good, good game, um, I think we had really good preparation and executed the game plan and yeah, I'm just really happy to have a chance uh, later and now we just have to gain as much energy as we can in, in these hours. Now I have one very important question before I let my analysts uh, get a crack at you. Uh, what is it about Frozen? Why Frozen in particular, man? You were going at them. And I'm just uh, trying to get in people's heads when we're sitting here. I think it's a bit funny, but I'm just kidding. Like it's, it's just him that plays those roles and he survives more than the others. That's how it is, but it's funny to Yell some banter. People do the same to blame sometimes. So I think it was time to give something back. Okay. I like it. When did that switch happen? Because we've been noticing, right? Like since the get go, you've been the one who's kind of you know, doing a little bit of bantering, bit of yelling, and also kind of reflecting in the server as well. Some of the plays they're going for, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say it's not your style, but you are a little bit more in their faces. You are trying to kind of dominate in the server as well as well as you know just yelling at them. Any association with that or? No, not really. I think ever since I came back, I thought a lot about like how the orb was used in the meta. I think it's a bit too passive and I was like, it's the best gun. So it's, it's all about how you abuse that. So mm -hmm. I think previously in my career, it was more only the percentages. But I think now where I'm thinking a little bit more about how the gun is OP, and, but also how I can in my positions like uh, manipulate the map on, on ancient the B side, I think a lot about which pressure we put and how I can use the orb and stuff like that. Listen, I'm not going to congratulate you just yet. You have one more game, you know, it's going to be rough as well. Long day in front of you. You lost a lot of energy during this best of three. You played amazing. What do you do to recover right now to come back, you know, in the same mood, in the same vibe and to qualify for the Lanxus? 
I think we promised each other that we would give everything we have for this game because who knows if we're going to win. So right now we have our entire support staff. They have been uh, cooking the entire day trying to figure out how, how do you relax, which food do you need, how much prep, stuff like that. So I think they are covering that. For us it's all about not thinking about like riding the high of, of a game, but thinking about when do we love playing CS? It's when we play team CS and we set each other up and we play good CS. So I think that's, the reason, yeah. yeah. That's the next question I want to ask you. The, everybody remembers the old Astralis and, you know, the GOAT Astralis. Yeah. They had that troubles right now. You came back. Right now, this is the best lineup that Astralis had in a while. And you are on, you know, the leader of it. What do you have to say about your teammates right now, you know, in, in this situation where you're like doing much better than you did before? I think, honestly, it's the whole team. I was also in the team the last six months where we failed a lot of times. So I think it's the team. We just fit so well. We invest a lot in each other. It's like it's like how it should be, I would say. And yeah, I mean, like, I don't consider myself like the leader of the team. I think that everyone is a leader. Flame F is maybe the captain a little bit more, but I think everyone just carries their weight. and. That's what matters the most and everyone supports each other. I think you see it on all the teams that have success. Like you see this chemistry, you see this um, kind of bond between players. And I think we found that really early in, in this lineup and we just keep nurturing it. I think it will get better. Quick question. You're doing great. Doing great, absolutely great. But quick question, Navi, FaZe, playing right now, who do you want to face? Well, I haven't really thought too much about it. I think both teams are really great. Um, Hope they play a long game so they <laughs> they use more energy. That's what all I'm Fair thinking enough. about. Yeah, <laughs> always about the gamesmanship. One more question before we let you go. People have been talking about it. Uh, uh, you know, in the community, we've been talking about it on the desk. You guys are getting loud. You guys are smiling. You guys look like you're having a good time. Uh, there was a there was a meme going around. You know, the the Mr. President Astralis are having fun again. <laughs> you guys having fun again? Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. And uh, kudos to everyone around the team. I just think that. It's amazing how quickly it can go, and uh, I just love being in this team. And the, the way we're doing it, even though we, don't, we might not win later, we'll still be happy. Well, congratulations on the win now, and uh, I'm sure we'll check in again later. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. We'll take that one away from you. Good game. Good luck. Good luck later, man. Now it's time for us to shuffle on back over to our home on the desk. Man, device absolutely incredible listen, through that series. Listen, I got I love what he said right there. Is like I know I used to play the numbers called the most textbook opera we've ever seen in CSGO. And we can see it in this game itself. How he was just not just mowing down mouse, but he was in their heads, not seemingly missing any single shot. And if I were to listen, if you're a new kid watching, you know, looking to play Counter-Strike at a high level and you want to watch your symbols, you want to watch your monitors with AWP, watch this guy's demos. Watch this guy's demos. So those numbers aren't, aren't fluff. 1.48 rating and he's been delivering numbers like this. I think it's the highest rated player right now in the tournament with this performance as well. I mean, this guy's just class. You see the way he speaks about his team and the way he like carries himself on the interviews. He just shows that he has so many years of experience, titles, everything that he did. And he had that little break, well, extended break that he had. And he came back and he is the same guy. Better. No. I think it's better. It's just, I think it's a better it's, version. I mean, in terms of like quality of his like game and everything that's going on, it's just mm -hmm. uh, he's he's. That's why people consider him as one of the you know greatest of all times that ever touched the game. That's why he won four majors. That's why he won all those titles with Astralis. He just he just delivers and he's present. I, I feel like in the team kind of inspires the other like new members to play even better. And this is the best Astralis that we've seen in a while. And I do hope they, that we get at least a good game from them from that spot uh, for the for the Lexus Arena. Later and on. at least a good game. The way they're playing, I, I'm very worried, you know, whether it's Na'Vi or FaZe, I think this is going to be such a tough test for that last hurdle to get into the Lexus for any of these teams, yeah. right? High level of CS coming through from Astralis right now. They were, I mean, against Maus, God, it felt like it was Maus against Vitality all over again, right? They just never quite got in. Astralis yeah. were controlling it every step of the way here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they could, we, saw, we saw it in the first map on Ancient. They controlled the, the, totally the first half right here. It was a little bit touch and go at the beginning of the se second half, but then they just started dominating, winning all these important duels, only making all these right moves at the right time. And Device, you said it yourself, in the green room, caught some really crazy timings, checked some, checked some angles that nobody would check, and delivered like, you know. Uh, I think we uh, take a look at the round. I think Asad, you had a round. Yeah, we, like had, round, a, we right. had a round, I think it's, uh, one eight, of the, I think, yeah, I think I don't know, round eight. Yeah, this is where they started. He goes with the gesture kill. So they start with the three out, outside setup. He gets a kill. He goes back to the to the to the door, and you will see after this we can hit a pause right there. And he's just spotting for any kind of contact right there. So what what happens there once he gets spotted? 
they are gonna try to react to that and go towards ramp, which is because it's the simplest solution. Basically, they're man manipulating their rotations all over the place. We can play it like forward. So he's gonna be spotted. There's another kill outside. Immediately Frozen, Torji, and Jimpad are going towards the ramp, and you will see what happens on the ramp. He got spotted right there. Yep. It's an they immediate try to reaction. Flash him off. Right. Immediate reaction. Let's go ramp. They're, they're aggressive outside, and look what happens. Two players waiting for them on yes. that ramp. Manipulated rotation, manipulated reaction from Astralis. Got them the double kill here on Borop. I think he's going to get another one. Yes, the round is pretty much over. So that's how you play the opponent, right? You dictate the pace of the round, you dictate the rotation and their reactions, and where do they actually use three usually go. So. Perfectly played by Charlie, is perfectly played by Device, and that's why they're. And, and he said it in the in the interview as well. He's like, "Listen, I know this gun is a little overpowered. I am Device, after all. I can manipulate rotations. I can be the guy getting, you know, just kind of holding down an angle on the CT side or just finding picks. Go back to Ancient, right? I even yesterday and today, every Ancient game they played, you just find him with the AWP on the T side, lurking outside of B ramp. And listen, I some of them are holding some pretty off angles. I see. Uh, I think it was. Uh, Torji, for example, on B-bombs, he's holding a bit of an off angle, just a little bit of a pixel gap, and device. His clearing, his timing is so impeccable, and he keeps varying it up every single occasion. And listen, if this is a device that have gotten up, like he's gone on that little bit of a journey away from CS, comes back stronger, his Gandalf of white right now, it's looking almost unstoppable, it's looking scary. But that being said, Navi face, whoever comes out of top, that is going to be the test for yes. this new Astralis lineup. Yes, it is. There is another team to talk about here, though, a team that we're saying goodbye to, unfortunately. Maus, I know they were hoping to make it uh, to the arena in what they view as their home event, but it's not going to happen this time. This young team, not quite ready yet. And to hear from the newest uh, addition, the, the, the youngest player, Banks caught up with Jim Pat. Now, Maus will be the next team eliminated here at Cologne, but for a rookie coming into an event like this and the pressure I on your shoulders, honestly, this is a couple of tough games. Vitality in now into Astralis. I just want to look at just the matchup so against Astralis and where you guys' confidence was at because it had been quite so a tough well, few games. A lot in each yeah, other. I mean, it's like, <coughs> after it's the Vitality like game, be, we were like a bit and um, shocked. Yeah, kind I mean, like. We I don't consider myself like the leader of the team. I think we had a good reason to play Memphis, maybe the captain a little bit more. I think everyone and just also carries we had their good weight, we do, but that's what we matters just the most, and everyone and supports each other. I think you see it on all the teams that Something have success, is missing now, but we had chemistry, figured it out. you see this. And figuring um, out that will come in future events, but for you, how has it been to come into your first really big tier one event in, and come with this team? What have you learned from this experience? I, think it will get better. I mean, first I was like really nervous actually, like when I was playing a couple of the first games like Mongols. Well, thank you for that interview, Jim Weiss, uh, apparently coming through. Uh, he, I mean, look, we got the, the words from Jim Fat that he was feeling very nervous, right? Understandable. 16-year-old playing the biggest event of his career yep. by a long shot, tier one opposition, into the main roster after being on the academy team for so long. We did see him, you know, calm down, settle into this event a little bit, but... Alright, back to back Vitality, Astralis getting absolutely banged out. That's L not really the final note you want. Listen, it's trial by fire. And again, he, uh, we did hear in the interview from Shoei and all the mouse members where they said that Jim Pat, he was like, put me in these positions. I want to play it. So they put him in comfortable positions. But that being said, he's played different positions on multiple maps on that NXT roster. So you can't, so you're trying a new position with your new team. Fair enough. It's going good in scrims. Fair enough. You go, go, go up against Vitality and Astralis in games like this, it's not going to work out. So I don't blame him. There's a lot of growth Listen, still to do. Did we, would we want to see like a, a great performance from this kid? Yes. Did it happen? No. Should we criticize him? Absolutely not. 16 years old, that's a child. What does he know, right? If I'm the coach, just go back to him, just work with him, work, work, work until the next event, see what can be done. And then like in a couple of, well, events, more than a couple of events, see if it was the right choice or not. But right now, Nothing to be, you know, too sad about. They did play okay. They lost to some strong teams right now, and it is what it is. They're still a young team, super, super young. Uh, if you're They're mouse, if you're mouse, I don't really look at this as a as a massive failure or anything. I think they put up a pretty decent showing overall. Torji looking pretty good once again. I think that's a good sign. Even in the losses, he wasn't. He didn't disappear. He was there. That's a good sign. Frozen's fantastic. Young team. They're going to take a little bit more time to gel together. I think overall, it's more of a win for Mouse than a loss, despite the fact that they're out of the tournament. I mean, he is talking about Torji as well. In that final map, even, we did see a stretch of time where it felt like maybe he was starting to take over, especially in the second half. You know, bit. multiple rounds where he gets an opening aggressive pick, and then the round falls apart. He did try. That's something that you want to see. Like, if you go for the kills, if you go for your moves, and you still fail, if you still get outplayed, that's fine. 
if you go play scared, if you play not to lose, then that's where the criticism criticizing comes from, right? Yeah. So they did play well, and we oh, have yeah. an update. We Navi have an update won. from the other stream. Navi closed it in two. Overtime was not enough for FaZe to survive, so FaZe Clan also out of Cologne here. That's gonna be a tough pill to swallow, but now we know our last date here Man. in Group B, Navi Astralis. Who's gonna be the final team to make it to the Like, like this is a Group B lower bracket. It looks like the playoffs of, of, a, of a tier one event, right? It's Genuinely. kinda, it sucks. Man, defending champions, FaZe Clan, they didn't make any changes. Of course, bought in Neo as a coach. Obviously that change was there. And Navi, I mean, with the massive lineup change they had taking on phase i think that's a commendable achievement but it's still not quite done yet navi now going up against astralis yeah that game is going to be super fun to watch both i think it's it's not like in navi's favor all that much considering how astralis was playing this event it should be a very fiery matchup you know it's going to be ancient again probably new something like nuke and uh, i'm looking forward to watch it as well as, as the other co games come after that one I'm genuinely curious. Do you think it is in Navi's favor? Sorry? I feel like it's so much up in the air. Do where where do you lean in that matchup? I, you don't really lean all that much towards Navi. Maybe 51-49, simply because the names. Like when I say names, I mean simple. <laughs> but the thing is, like devices, you, you saw how he plays right now. He can mm -hmm. take. He took on simple many times before, did he? And you know, came out and as came a winner. So I'm not really afraid for him. It's just about the energy. Like who comes in more prepared? Who's gonna be on the, like on the spot on the right place? So. Like I said, super interesting game, a playoff before the playoff. And I think for both these teams, getting their wins, off, of course, for the side of, uh, of Astralis was a much more quicker affair, but getting the wins in, in a two-mapper, I think is going to be really helpful for them. Have a little bit of a break, take a quick nap or a rest if you want to, have some nice food. I mean, I didn't know Astralis had their own personal chef, but if that works for you, that's great for That'll them. Be so nice. They're going to prep, and uh, hopefully both teams should be fresh to give us a banger of a game. I know, one way or another, sparks are going to fly. It's going to be a heater. It's going to be exciting. We have just two more teams to send into the Lanxess. One more match here on the B stream. You're not going to want to miss it as we close the groups at IEM Cologne. For now, a short break. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh my god! Oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god! Get ready, you're gonna be kidding me! What a match! What a match! The in game leader, architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you?
What is your calling? Heroic, Ents, G2, Vitality. Four teams that will be making their way to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike, but there are four teams trying to fight to join them. Astralis, Na'Vi, and the two teams you're seeing on your screen right now, Gamer Legion and Cloud9. At the end of this game, we will know which one of the two teams, Cloud9 or Gamer Legion, are going to make it through to the Lanxus and it is all to play for. I never thought it would be a situation where these two teams were playing to make it through. And earlier today, we had FaZe, Na'Vi, Astralis, and Mouse just playing to stay in the competition. But Cloud9 started off a little bit shaky, Maui, and they've somehow found a way to get to this point one step away. This is a Cloud9 team that if you took them on day one, you would have said, oh god. They need Axile. It's rough. They looked like you wanted to hit the panic button, but I think that they've reset very well into the following days. Day two, day three, they have become a better team. We're seeing the fundamentals pop off for some of the individuals. We're seeing the individuals themselves look like their former selves. And to me, this was the best roster move in the offseason. I'm and I think Myself and many are praying they make it to the Lanxus. Just to see Axel. So Axel can actually join in too. Oh, absolutely. But it is kind of crazy if you look, like you said, you're talking about roster changes. We speak about Game of Legion's roster change. Probably one of the most deflating ones of all the roster changes does this far. And look at Cloud9's coming into Cologne. Obviously Axel with the visa issues and all of that. But somehow Game of Legion's, Game of Legion's staying alive and then Cloud9 somehow battling with a stand-in situation. It is kinda, it's kind of crazy that one of these two teams are going to be going home and they actually have each other in this matchup. I think a lot of people were, I mean, I know Spun shouted for it. He was like, halt the competition. We need Axel to get here. We'll have to wait. I voted for it. I, I mean, everyone wanted that, but th they handled it fine. The first day it looked a bit shaky, but it seems the stand-in is, th they're doing okay. Uh, yeah, and that's that's something that I've actually really liked uh, about Cloud9. We actually can look at some of the statistics in terms of how they've improved over the course of this event. So what we actually have here are, as you'll see here on the left side, the trade percentage, the 5v4 stats for both teams on day one versus how they've been performing on day three. So you can see that Cloud9 playing with Buster now, they're actually getting better throughout the, the rest of this tournament. I don't know why that did that, but uh, we're going to push this here. And look at that, 23.7, it's better now. And then also their 5v4 percentage, that's improving too. Gamer Legion themselves are improving in terms of 5v4 stat, but one stat that we're not gonna like at all, Blah, mm. is the trade percentage. That's not good for Gamer Legion. They should be getting better at playing as a unit when it comes to the later stages of this tournament. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and the thing is, they are overall getting better as a unit, right? It's not just Acor having to carry the team, although he's been fantastic as well. So the system is starting to kind of fall into place for the side of Gamer Legion. And I think a lot of it comes down to, you know, Isaac and Kios, the, the remnants of that old lineup kind of, you know, kind of being the anchor position, so that's working for them. But yeah, I don't think, if you're gonna go head to head and compare these two teams, like Electronic obviously looking much more uh, impactful as well in how he's calling. So yeah, the numbers do pan out for themselves. And looking at yesterday's performance as well, like you know, Acor once again stepping up, but he did find able help in the form of Kios. And more importantly for me, Volt was finding, even though the rating doesn't good look that good, it was a very clo close fought series after all, he did start to kind of wake up a little bit and he was kind of non-existent for them in the first couple of days. I mean, Gamer Legion was non-existent for the first map of almost every game they've played since they got here. Okay. They do have some map one woes that they need to shore up because you can't give Cloud9 a freebie to start this series off. I don't think it's going to be a fanatic Mongols type of vibe where you can afford to completely... I was going to say a bad word, the bed. Shit the bed. I'll <laughs> yeah. say it for you. It's all Here right. We go. I'm trying to be Thanks. polite. Thanks. It's final day. we got to be classy, you know, but... This is my, my issue with, with Gamer Legion, is you can't keep doing that because now you're playing a team that I think will abuse that quite a lot. Uh, it, it really does feel like there aren't many win conditions for Gamer Legion when I actually try to like build this one up. I, I, I feel like with Cloud9, you're looking at them right now as the team with better individuals. Yep. The fact that I just highlighted the team stats, that they're playing better as a unit. I will say that Gamer Legion have, to me, gotten a little bit better throughout this tournament, but I think that Cloud9, the core four with too much. Not including Buster is already such a strong opponent. I'll tell them that they do have one tiny little ace up their sleeve, so to speak. They're Inferno. Mm. The past couple of days have looked 
phenomenal. It has been really, really good, especially on the T side. Now, there is a caveat. You got to look at the teams they played against, right? Like Fnatic, like Mongols, not exactly the level of the players on Cloud9. But they look really good on it. It's a map that should obviously not be banned out by Cloud9, unless they're really looking to flex this seven map pool that have been kind of rumored about. So Inferno coming in could be interesting. And also, maybe we can bring up the, the map stats for the side of Cloud9. They played three best of threes thus far. Yeah. They've only played three maps. They've been allowed the luxury of picking Anubis almost every single time. They went with Ancient uh, as well. So they played Anubis and Ancient six times in total and Vertigo a couple of times. And it's been 2-1, 2-1 and 1-1 for the side of Vertigo. I haven't seen him in Inferno yet. And that's going to come out to play. And here's the thing. When a new lineup, no matter how much you've scrimmed, mm -hmm. a live game is a live game. You're absolutely right. And when we look at that graphic and we just, just think about what we've seen from Cloud9 so far, you wouldn't call it a map pool. You call that a map puddle. That is yep. <laughs> not going to instill confidence for a lot of the Cloud9 fans out there because if, if Gamer Legion do take them to a, a couple different battlegrounds there, we just simply don't have the evidence yet to say with There's any no certainty yep. whether or not Cloud9 are going to be good. We can assume that they're going to be good because these players are world class. I think that they, pound for pound, with when they have Axile, have the most firepower of any team in the world. But it's just that with Buster and with the woes we saw on day one where they're still trying to figure out how does Buster fit in for what Axile was doing? You put him on a new map and they have to relearn all of this over again. Hopefully, Mr. Banks has had a chance to, to chat to Electronic about this. I'd love to hear what he thinks about the roster change that they've had to deal with and also what they think is going to happen in this matchup. The Cloud9 debut team is here with a slight change of Buster still being the substitute player and things are looking good. One game away from making it to the playoff stage. But I want to just ask you overall, how do you feel the team's performance has been? How happy are you? I mean, uh, we're working a lot uh, entire whole tournament, you know, uh, and we're trying to fix our mistakes and work on things that didn't work. On, on the game, in the game, I mean, yeah, so we're going step by step and I hope we're going to make to the playoffs and I hope also we can reach our goal. Yeah. So we will put a thousand percent to do that. I like it. Good attitude for sure. Now, in terms of your map pool, Vertigo, Anubis, and Ancient is all you've had to play so far here. Gamer Legion, for example, love a bit of Inferno. What do you think of their Inferno when you prepared for it? Uh, I think we pretty prepared for Inferno and Overpass, to be honest. We, we did prepare it, uh, so yeah. If we didn't play this, it doesn't mean that we didn't practice it, so okay. that's why, you know. Do you think you can surprise them? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's see how it goes. Electronic, thank you very much. You. We'll see what Cloud9 can do against Game Legion. There we go. He addressed exactly what you yeah. said. He said, just because you haven't seen us play, it doesn't mean we haven't practiced it. But practice is different from doing it live. Of course, uh, this kind of ties into what Electronic has been bringing to this team. It's kind of a bit of a long quote of basically what was asked to perfect in this interview on in HLTV was basically, listen, guys, you guys are coming in. What are your expectations? Obviously, you have a stand-in situation. And Perfecto basically says, I know it takes time to build a system. I know it takes time for, you know, five, two new players coming into a, a lineup to change, to kind of gel together and get that, uh, and get that win. But he doesn't seem to care. So from the very be beginning, we want to be number one. We're going to start building an era right now. And I feel that sort of mentality, that sort of an attitude coming in from Electronic Perfecto is exactly what Cloud9 needs. I just want to say thank you to the baby Jesus of Counter-Strike because it has taken all of this time for a team with a new roster to finally say we're not just getting used to each other, we actually want to bring in results. Everyone else has gone, oh, we're still holding hands, figuring each other out. I like this, fighting yes. mentality. Yeah, I love it too. I, I love that Perfecto is putting some stakes on the results here in Cologne. Uh, the only other player I've seen, I'd say in the past year, say anything similar to that, has been Naf because he knows that he can be one of the most consistent players on the planet, regardless of who his teammates are. And I like that Perfecto thinks the same about himself and, and his team. new roster. Yeah, the fact that he recognizes so quickly that this team really has legs and that they can actually do some serious damage on the world stage. Those are fighting words from Perfecto, and we don't get a lot of fighting words out of him. I, I just love, because if you, if you speak to almost any other team in this lineup changes coming in, they're going to be like, yeah, it's okay, we're going to get better over time and whatnot. And Cloud9's like, no, we're going to make it to the playoffs. Axel's going to cut in. Soft. 
Soft. I like Soft. this. I, dude, I'm such Soft. a big fan of this team already, despite the fact Axel is still not in the server. I, and I have to say, even Electronic, right? We saw in an interview as well. Again, firstly, Electronic giving an English interview. Holy hell, that's super cool. Secondly, just watch him in the, just watch your body language, you know, in the server and also outside when he's like looking at Shiro after a one or a lost round. And they're just happy. It's like, yes. for Shiro, it's he's like, finally, a leader I can follow. And I love it. Shironic. Shironic. Ship it. It's like uh, Brangelina. That's how big uh, that couple pairing is. The power couple of all power couples. That couple pairing is suing each other now, so I don't know if this is really a great... Hey, after, hey, after hey, we'll get there years. when we get there. After we'll, a few years. Yeah, we'll get there Maybe when we get now. there about Shironic. But right now, it's been fireworks. Shiro stats, he has been taking everyone's breath away. The paparazzi, they're flashing cameras right in his face every time he steps out of a van right now because people know that this guy is in contention to be the best player in the world. I said it. A lot of people right now are going to say Zaiwu. And you know what? He still holds the torch. Zaiwu still has it. But Shiro, he's knocking at his door. I like that. A big take. So while we're taking a look at Shiro, though, on the other side, we'll look at his highlights. Game of Legion, do they have anything that can actually match up to this lineup? I mean, the one thing going the way of Game of Legion is and the one player, the one man who's been a difference maker from them being here today and them on the flight back home just a couple of days prior has to be Acor. Acor has been just lights out the best player for this team. But then again, this is about it's a team effort. It's Counter Strike. It's not just one guy stepping up. And Acor, unfortunately, is not Prime Simple. He's not Prime Zaiwu. He's a very solid player overall, but he needs a little bit of help which he did manage to get from the veterans, from his teammates who've been around for a while, which is Kios and Isaac. But I need to see a little bit more from Bolt, which I did allude to saying he has stepped up a little bit, but against his Cloud9, I don't know. But if he doesn't perform to the level he's done so far in this tournament, it's a donezo for Game of Legion. The bane of the old Cloud9 lineups was an op. It was how much damage they could do because their defaults weren't necessarily using utility to the greatest effect to get offers off of those angles. But this Cloud9 team, to me, has already shown that they are better with utility, that they can take map control safer than the last roster. So Acor is definitely going to have to try to get very innovative with how he's going to find some of those opening picks because it's not going to come easy as you would have expected looking at the last Cloud9 team. And also, just to add on to that, like on the T side, for example, which were a lot of their woes for the side of Cloud9. Electronic, he's leading by example. He has posted over a 1.04 rating, right, on it, uh, playing for this Cloud9 roster, while being basically the guy opening things up, just being in your face. And despite the fact that, you know, calling duties early on with a new lineup is going to be a lot of pressure on your shoulders, he's still able to put in the numbers and winning a lot of opening duels. Map, map picks here, Maui. I'm expecting this go ancient inferno. I don't think anyone's going to be feeling too spicy here. I think there's a there's a case for Cloud9 to pick Vertigo, but I, I think that ancient is a is a very likely battleground as well. But Gamer Legion, they should be going with their tried and tested inferno. I don't think uh, that's look at that. any sort of surprise. Yep. And then Cloud9 here, there's a bit of an option like we're saying. Ancient Vertigo. Yeah. One of those two for sure, in my opinion. I yeah, and there we go. Ancient and Vertigo should be banned by Gamer Legion. Yes. And yes. I'm 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 guessing a Mirage. Yep. There we, there we go. Okay. All okay, right. so now we have the, the map veto in place. That Inferno from Game and Legion is super strong, but I just wonder, do you think Cloud9 is going to be able to, to shut him down? They've had a chance to see them play on it twice in two days, and also, like they said, they've been practicing. There's a lot of prep that they could have done. The, the, the thing with Cloud9 in this particular matchup, we haven't seen them in two of the maps. Right, yeah. Right. So we literally have no tape to work with. And that is a scary thing. For the Game of Legion, obviously, they're going to, as the cliche goes, play their own game, so to speak. But then again, for Cloud9, if you don't really have any prep whatsoever, and Akshiro did say, sorry, uh, it was Electronic who did say, yeah, of course, we just because we haven't played these maps doesn't mean we haven't prepped for it. Right. So for me, I think every one of us, us along with the audience, are going to be learning as we go through this particular thing. But Inferno, though, that is a map where Game of Legion, if they have to win, they have to win on that map. I, I think that that I 100% agree with Blair that if Game of Legion want any chance in this series, they have to win Inferno. I, I don't think it's going to happen, though. I do think that they're going to put together a competitive map versus C9. I think that they're probably going to accomplish double-digit rounds versus Cloud9. They're going to make them work for it. But at the end of the day, I think that Cloud9's player quality, it's way too high. The Sharonic Honeymoon Tour <laughs> is in full effect. Do you know for two days straight, boys, we've done this. We've gone, eh, Game of Legion, meh. 
And for two days straight, Gamer Legion has kicked us in the shins. I mean, okay. oh, is that going to happen again? It's, it's not going to happen. I really, nah. I'd be extremely surprised if it happened again. They got completely banged out by Monty in their opener. They took down Mongols in a, in a nail biting fashion where Mo Mongols, they crumbled. They mentally crumbled after the loss they had the previous day against Heroic. And against Fnatic yesterday, sure, commendable effort. It was a very tight series indeed. Ancient, I think that was a deciding map winning in OT. Mistakes made there by Dexter and his men, unfortunately. Now, I'm going to look at his lineups. All have had changes as well, right? But the thing is, for the side of Cloud9, the changes is gargantuan. These aren't just two new random people coming in. This is, on paper, the best team in the world, at least, until we see results. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen here. And I have to agree with Maui. I believe it should be a 2-0. You said that they on paper the best team in the world. On paper, I think these are the two best casters in the world, and I can say that because I'm the desk host and I have full control. Here's Sponge and Machine. Oh, well, while well, you're being sweet, Sam, I want to say that's a banging jacket. Is it new? It's fancy, real nice with the, the safety pins and all that goldy goodness. But we've got a bit of Counter-Strike goodness ahead of us, Chatty B. And it starts on Inferno, an interesting one. I'm not a map we've seen too much of from Cloud9. This isn't what the script had in store here for IAM Cologne 2023. Gamer Legion putting themselves on the map after the Paris Major and now have their players poached. A new roster, some big positions to fill for Neil and Vault, but still getting some victories while perpetually slept on. Yeah, and talking of filling positions, I'm going to keep my eyes on Buster, see if he can have a good, strong individual performance, because, of course, he has got giant clown shoes to fill. I'm just talking about the size of them, not the occupation. Honk, honk. Trying to play one. Plug him into Axel's role one-to-one. -one. It's going to be a forward position in apartments for round one. Yeah, defensive smoke here from Perfecto on the jiggle, hoping he doesn't get overwhelmed. It is an uh, investigation out towards second mid. Hobbit calling it awful clear. Shiro not rotating just yet. So they might want to get a move on here. Perfecto has He's got seen a, a feeling, little bit. hasn't he? Yeah. Gets his smoke down now. And that buys time for the rotation unless they were to disrespect. Perfecto to punish if they tried. Shiro has a flash here. Yeah, good rotation through. Oh, he's been caught out. Kios, he just cheats through the smoke. Finds Perfecto, and now they do start to swarm. They're spamming speculative bullets, but they haven't caught the boost. Need that from Vault back. Good one in to the head of Shiro. Kept him honest. So that bomb's now down. Neelan tucked into the pool, and with the man advantage, Electronics trying to rumble this post plant. Hobbits have disconnected on the retake, still miles away on Banana. I feel like a country mile at this moment. It might even just be a wait and save for Hobbit. Not many Kevlar, what's he going to say? anything, yeah. Vault will likely have at least one on his plate as Isaac beats him to the punch and whittling away at Buster's health as well. Time is ticking, Hobbit's crawling. Now a two on two, and if oh, Neelam oh, was oh, to go oh. down, yeah, rocks Hobbit's socks off, and they will close. Game Allegiance start with a statement entrance into B. Yeah, and simple stuff, right? Get control, you take down poor Perfecto in the smoke. That was thanks to Kios. And Neelan's goosh on a Hobbit. If there was a chance into that round, that was about it. But we got a bit of the Kazakh connection here today. Buster and Hobbit with Neelan on the other side. Oh, yeah, okay. And uh, we like Neelan's specs. Been a Neelan fan for some time. He uh, got sent over there to EG. And now he's on Game of Legion. So uh, I'm sure he was more than happy without that. Uh... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he's not complaining. And the fact <laughs> no, that... it was from EG who were playing online CCT Cup in Europe. I think they... They lost a spirit. Actually, mm. I know they lost a spirit, uh, which makes a lot or of lost sense. lost a donk. Yes, uh, the big donk. He slapped that one on the table. <laughs> but uh, Neelan now to go from the North American roster to an international team who are uh, at the very first time here at IEM Cologne. Right. I mean, yeah, it's an interesting. It's a first for a, for a few of these Game of Legion boys. Isaac, Volt, and Neelan in attendance for their first and uh, well, why don't we have this tech issue? We had Acor in the middle of the screen here. We have just sorted this one out. It's just a little bit of a PC issue, don't you worry. But uh, Acor is going to be the man, right? He's going to be the one that you look to for the majority of impact here. Because I look at this Game of Legion roster, and I set the table on this situation. I say, you just had your promising in-game leader taken from Maus, eliminated. You had your star player taken from Na'Vi for a premium price. Well, they still have one more shot at making it into the playoffs against Astralis later today. And uh, you bring in Neelan, who I think Carrigan on HLTV confirmed, he said to me, they stole actual defaults from EG because they were pretty good. So there's some, some props for, for Neelan there. Uh, and you bring in Vault from ITB, who now is flying the Romanian flag. We knew he had both. Uh, there's a few of us with both out there. But uh, Vault to join the roster. And we spoke about Fnatic having some underwhelming changes throughout the, the break. Well, I think Gamer Legion were 
on par, if not lower, in terms of how impressed we were with the names they were able to pick up. It was, oh, and they were the last team to really find any players, right? Yeah. So for Game of Legion to get some victories throughout Cologne is fantastic. If they pick up a win against Cloud9, I don't care about the buster factor, to be completely honest with you. Yeah. That's impressive. This is playoffs. This is four playoffs uh, of IEM Cologne, especially on your first. That would be an incredible achievement. And, and that's when I say perpetually slept on, right? Because I, I'm one of these people who look at this team and I just I, I don't understand how they're getting so much out of the pieces. So might have to start looking towards the coach Ash here and saying, hey, what, what right. are you feeding these kids? Yeah, uh, Brit to be proud for something for us Brits to be proud of with Ash in the ranks. And here comes the slithery snake out of the tube. In straight to the head of Vault. He's not going to be feeling too good about that one. Isaac should be in right position. Oh, good grief. They are stomaching a few unnecessary casualties. And it's a shame it's the rifles, because that's fallen into enemy hands now. Hobbit, he's going to be scarpering, or rather spraying. He's not trying to run away just yet. Yeah, Nilan needs to get on out of dodge. Oh, he doesn't want to get out with going, the bomb. Bro. He's been heard. The loving embrace of Mr. Perfecto here. Hey guys, we've got a uh, Mac 10 as well. Lovely job. That is insane. Uh, they get an AK, a Galil, and a Mac 10. Everything that they could wield, especially because of Ron Inferno here. <laughs> and, they do, and, and they spent the whole minute in the wrong bomb site, stacked up in a pool. And with all the casualties that Game of Legion have just stomached here, uh, they might have to operate with a couple of Mac 10s and maybe something pacier, or go for Galils. AKs without Util behind it. Let's see how they make this by work. A Galil for Acor, one for Isaac. <laughs> Util is there. They have four mollies to help try and get this banana control. And this is where we'll turn our attention early here. A bit of a classic on Inferno. Now, we might even dig into some of the details of... Ah, here we go. Of how we're looking for this control. So both teams exchanging smokes and neither team wanting to brave the wall that they've just applied. One deep banana out of the CTs. A half wall smoke back from Gamer Legion. And you can see nobody wanting to get involved here. So as they start to fade, a flash at the ready. Nealon and Keo's ready to fade through this. You love a bit of logs, you love a bit of broom. First step of banana control taken. They Scaling used a yeah. second of their smokes for that long obscure. So there are still three people planted from cloud nine towards eight. And now Shiro with a glass cannon, mind you. Yeah, not going to be sticking around. Now, Yanko, once upon a time, would say, and this is an old meta of Counter-Strike, would just say, well, if you get banana control for mm -hmm. free like this, just that execute in go. towards the side. And I think Game of Legion might stick to the kiss method here. Keeping it simple. We'll see if they feel stupid. Ooh. Don't forget that Shiro Warp. Now, they've gone for a front sight smoke. Perfecto doesn't have answers for the potential slip right now. He's elevated over to confirm no one it has. They have no help on B. Ratted Just Perfecto through. or Shiro. There's no rotation available, Alex. This really would have to be Perfecto. And yeah, Shiro and that AWP. They're so hesitant, though. Still, the rotation's not come through, but the commitment hasn't either. That's Shiro now just playing around the Molotov. One's and there enough. it is. Two frags through, and Game of Legion will take a third. Oh, well, yeah. The, the kiss method worked, and a quick one on the forehead of both Shiro and Perfecto there. You get to sit and watch for 40 seconds while Hobbit, Electronic, and Buster hold on to what they have over towards the A bomb site here in Game of Legion. Stroll a banana, get control, nothing jarring, not forced back, not even licked up with damage. Execute in, take their time. You were getting a little bit worried, but apparently no sweat on their brow. They knew they had it every day of the week. Yeah, I think the reason that my concerns were growing was just the fact that you'd given them multiple opportunities to push for info right? on A. Right, and nothing and, happened. And they didn't. Especially when you look at the pistol round, where Cloud9 anything? played forward forward in window room. Yeah. Right, they were looking yes. in second mid, and this time around it was, well, we just think Game of Legion are going to execute late, and they were right. But if you're going to play that type of counter strike your individuals need to multi-kill. We know how difficult it is on a map like Inferno to go for retakes. Retake. So if you're not even trading out one for one here, which we can see, one for Shiro, but nothing for Perfecto. And not even a CT smoke necessary. Tidy work as Cloud9 will be able to invest again. And sure, a lot of that has been facilitated by the extra weaponry they picked up yeah, in Hobbit round number two. Yeah, five and a half grand and he's still rocking a Mac 10. Three and B opening here. Electronic Perfecto and Hobbit to try and get this control, knowing that it can't be consecutive rounds where they just allow Game of Legion to have this for free. But Nealon, likely expecting this, right? Might want to thrust his players forward up mid faster. And with those flashes, Yo. very telling. Top mid space taken. Good response. There's no territory here for the CTs. And maybe if they overlook Hobbit here as he's tucked in. Criminally undercleared corner. Kiel's rat in the smoke and Chiro's coming over. 
Can we smoke middle? Hobbit's tucked in. He is going to be overlooked and a powerful a contribution which puts a rifle into his hands. Molly out, flash the support and bail him out. Oh, in the flames, he licks up Isaac to 28. Nice work from Hobbit considering. Shiro, it's his turn. And no, that does not look pretty. Not only does he swing through, caught out by the timing of Isaac, but the flash is there as well. Oh, just spotting out. Electronic reveals he has rotated speedway. Perfecto, the other B player charging through. And wow, I say that. Electronic just goes and takes the fight. Arch. Nealand's good for it. Isaac as well. Gamer Legion to find another T round. This is promising. And you know, <laughs> when you when you lose your in-game leader. A very prominent in-game leader everyone's talking about. And you're in the potential for MVP of the major yeah. star rifler. Right. You lose them both. And then you are in one best of three distance away from the playoffs of IEM Cologne. I mean, you've beaten the Mongols, which were, which was a team that were impressing us, highly impressing us. Kadian even said, hey, I had to trash talk to beat them. Yes. That's, that's how much right. respect we had for them. They were playing good CS. And Game of Legion survived that. That's the first round of the lower bracket. Then they were up against the Fnatic, which, again, we were singing the praises of. It seemed like a team that were, um, you know, underestimated after the roster change on paper. And in good form. Afro and in good form. looking good. Very Dexter good. calling up a good game. Also having some moments fragging. You had Roy looking like it was back in deathmatch. Mezzi returned to the star fragger role. Everything was looking good. Which, when you've said all of that, Vault's statement as to his reasoning for the change, saying that Game Allegiant had a better plan for the future. Yeah, well, you look at ITB. Uh, well, <laughs> that oh, makes bloody. an awful lot I'd of sense, doesn't it? I'd rather not look at ITB, to be honest <laughs> with you. It's, uh, yeah, and, and it came through this man right here, the coach on the screen. This is who Volt was talking to before making that decision of where he wanted to end up. Okay. So, uh, if Ash, the coach, wants to catch him all in all the big events, all the big playoffs, what do you need here? Just 12 more rounds. You pick up map number one and it'll be all yours. And at the moment, Claire pointed this out on the desk. Uh, we are yet to see Cloud9 play Inferno. Mm -hmm. And that isn't even a conversation with Axel or not. We just, since out of the break, they have not played this in an official capacity just yet. It's been all the fun maps. It's been the Holy Trinity, a bit of Vertigo, a bit of a new burst, a bit of Ancient. Okay. Like it at new is the new Cloud9, new look, but uh, also a new map for them. And not the first time they've been throwing this smoke from Spawn. Deep mid smoke. And that is actually meant to stall out the fast mid play, which is how they found that gap in the previous. No extinguish necessary. Kios, is he going to be cleared? Electronic just around the corner, a perfect weapon for the job. Uh-oh. Electronic. Flattened! Kios double! Strafes into Perfecto as well. A quick sequence that puts already Cloud9 on the back foot. Hobbit squinting at his monitor. Responsible for a... I mean, he needs a multi-kill. Look at the mollies. Look at the mollies! He has to extinguish just to survive. And now they know they've got him trapped. Yep, that hurts. Nade on the side. Yeah, it's on the money, isn't it? I'm curious what we missed there for them not to be considering logs at all. That just looked way too easy for Kios, didn't it? Electronic not prepared. He was still worried about Deep Banana. Yeah. There was a there was a broom molly in play, so he knew no, nobody should have been up close. I guess, yeah, you could easily explain that away by set, by there being a communication or an understanding that mo logs should be mollied, will be mollied. Yeah. Electronic just assumed it would be clear. So this but one, yeah. uh, another one that's going to fall to the wayside here. Cloud9 looking to save, hold on to what they've invested, and this is uh, the flattest of starts. A 5-0 Gamer Legion. Respect underdog. Yeah, and we haven't even needed a call yet, you know? Uh, I think it's very... Makes a lot of sense to uh, consider a a win condition in a game like this, with the stakes this high, with the experience he has. But right now, it's a full team effort. Good contributions. I think Kios in particular, after that double sequence and being flashed out mid to get that party started in the previous, this is already great signs that the uh, the Belgians pulling his weight. Yeah, and we are going to have to look and see who's going to start to become some of the bigger frangers for this roster, right? Because the way that I would frame it is you essentially have four more supportive elements in this team, right? An in-game leader and three players who they definitely weren't the stars. It's, uh, this is... Such a fantastic start, and they mm. haven't even had to wince just yet. This should be smiles from ear to ear. Things are going very well. Can you think of examples of teams that got to the highest um, highs of Counter Strike without having a star? Oof. Like, think about Virtus Pro. Did they? Ha did they? I mean, well, like, I, this is this is where for me, like, I have to start thinking quite difficult because for me, I know that Neo wasn't a star player in CS:GO. But Neo will always be a star Counter-Strike player. That's the problem I have. So I have to start drawing these distinctions. Yeah. So yeah, give me a moment. I'll write down a couple of names. I'll have a little bit of a thing. But just something to yeah. think about. Something yeah. Food for thought.
Well, it's definitely changed the recipe because over the years, sometimes you only needed like two stars and then you needed three. We and then you three. Only needed, now, oh, we need but four. But if we have five role players who are all playing their role, I mean... And no. playing some good team Counter-Strike yeah. and not checking the stats page. Yeah. Well, it's pretty good. Let's find out if this continues for GL. Well, uh, something that has helped Cloud9 out in some of their matches... <laughs> Yep. Here is, there's an opener, not too shabby for Shiro. Opens first one onto Isaac, has been these bullshit bailout rounds, where like, Shiro's winning around with a CZ and a one on two on Anubis on the B side, or they pick something up with some tech nines on a T side of the map, they explode. This one will not be one of those, because they have the full buy, but keep that in mind, because Cloud9 have needed those type of plays, and that comes down to individuals. So you've got the information, there's nothing top mid. Shiro and Hobbit have got nothing to report. The adjustment from Electronic and Perfecto, with that taken into account, is Park Perfecto back new box. Electronic coffins on the jiggle. And now they're coming. Need a reaction. Strikes nice from Electronic. Perfecto still has vision. And the rotation from Hobbit, the flash, they'll peek off of that. They swing through. It hits great on the money, but doesn't finish his meal. Vault's alive. Only just. Oh my god, he gets another one. They know Hobbit's close as well, the flash assist. Oh, still up for debate very much so. Smoke is fading, Vault finally finished off, but there's the trade from Neelan. And they're making a round out of this. The rotation is through. Shiro occupies the ruins with the zoom banger. Acor has his posted on that position. Now Shiro reveals the orb's location. Smokes are present. How does Shiro and Buster go about getting back in this crossfire? Actively held now by Neelan. I like that. Oh, doesn't like that at all. No one hitting their shots on the first engagement. Neela dead and gone. Hit oh! shots! He gets a oh! call! One bullet and another round in the bank! Oh, I can't quite believe that! <laughs> they line up for him! I cannot quite believe that. And that's the only way he wins that round, Chad, because what happens when he pulls the trigger and kills one? He's jumping away, getting hunted down, running. Damn! <laughs> Let's see that one again. Barrel spotted, bang. Oh, yeah, he, do he doesn't even know. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby, that's going to put that's big That's the best smile. kind of surprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Acor was ready for that as well. There was an aggressive AWP move through the smoke. Now, they've been conditioning for that for many a round. That's the first time Shira's had a go, and he doesn't get anything done. I, I want to point this out just quickly. Cloud9 are playing like a team who uh, are playing with a standard and haven't played an official on Inferno yet. So uh, <laughs> everything yeah. going to plan here for Game of Legion. Bloody hell, Hobbit's done well there. Oh, he's gonna burn. He's all right. He's all right. On the bridge, though. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Should could be dead. Neil attacks him up on the boards, but Hobbit's found a nice escape route. Oh, or not, Isaac, actually. Yeah. Profits from that delay of the Neil and tags and finds Ho Hobbit in the apartment on the retreat. Oh, so we've had seven rounds of play so far. Yeah. Well, hasn't come to a conclusion just yet, but we're into our seventh round of play. And uh, Cloud9 have managed opening kills in six of them. Sorry? You said Cloud9 have achieved opening kills in six of them. Well, if I can maths correct. No, five of them. Five That's of them. Regardless, five still. Pretty damn good. Well, there's, you know, we saw Maui showing that their 4v5 percentage had been going up. Oh, Cloud9 right now have not been able to close it off. And this one, however, an exception. Finally, right? Yeah. Unless. It's about time. Unless a court feels clutchy. This is the perfect angle for this kind of clear, though. He baits the orb. Acor very stylish with the AWP. He gets his eye to the scope, but not his finger to the trigger. There's Cloud9 off of the starting blocks. Okay, something to work with here. That's about building off the back of that. So, as we just highlighted, inaccurately, then accurately, They've been doing a good job with the opening picks on the CT side. They just need to be able to start converting some of these rounds. And if I'm Game of Legion, I'm probably returning to the second letter of the alphabet to knock mm -hmm. on that door because B has been a bit of a leaky ship. They don't look very put together on their B defense at the moment. Well, it's the Na'Vi duo as well, though. You know, Electronic and Perfecto, they've likely got some residual synergy, you'd think. You would hope. Molly, decision to be made. Shiro opts to support him, and that's the bodyguard. Electronic activates into Kios, trying to punish the Orpa. Wasted util there, you can see. Under pressure, a smoke dropped a Molly into it, so 600 bucks down the drain. Do you think that kind of implies that there's 3B? Vault's going to like, yeah, go looking. This is cool. This is a nice intuition-driven play from Vault. 
Perfecto's aware of the gap here. You can see him acknowledging that from CT spawn. Hobbit 2. And by cutting noise, this is going to start sowing those seeds of doubt. Are they regrouping? Are we about to be executed upon? That's a fake. That's completely faked him out here. Oh, that's smart. Hobbit's not looking. Yeah, they overlooked it. They think that they've gotten some information, but it's misinformation. And now from behind, oh, he sees oh, the back of the oh, head. Oh. And Volt successfully opens up the site. Perfecto getting caught out by the pace of this. And they're playing some real solid Counter-Strike game of Legion. They should have the site, but Buster still resides within that pit. Bomb down, 40 seconds on the clock now. Hard retake, very hard retake, especially because they have to clear through Arch. You know, there was, it was occupied. Isaac, oh no, he's made a meal of it. Buster finds a second and now advantage Cloud9 for this retake. Not going to be easy to hold on to. Acor needs to rack up a couple on the AWP as he looks away. He's worried about middle. They're charging him. They're isolating this dual kneel and can't do anything. And now Acor's trapped. He's dead. And Cloud9 retakes successfully. Buster to thank for that one. Yeah, and they have to thank their lucky stars that they got him standing in right now because that was a fantastic job over towards Pit just staying alive. We talk about this position of being a, a spot where you can multi-frag from, mow, mow them down, but delaying just as powerful. Pit, you're in earshot of the site. You can see everything. They can't move as freely as they traditionally would. And Buster, not cleared out. If I'm Ash, I'm a little bit upset with that. We just got to flush the rat out of the system here, and then we could turn our attention to some of these extremities. And I'll bet if they hit scoreboard and they saw Axel was still alive, they might have cleared pit. You know, maybe not making that association, because we know Axel is a headshot machine from that pit position. It's where you put your stars, your star rifles. And yet, Buster, he converts the round despite Game of Legion. I felt like they did all of the hard part there. They, they, they managed did. to I really get in Cloud Knight's that, head. That, that smoke. long smoke was great. That was really and this nice. is how it started as well, bro. Let's not forget, you know, they, another opening from, I was about to say Navi, from Cloud9. <laughs> God's yeah, sake. We, we didn't I, have any words of that the other day, we did, did it's we? Just, it's just seeing Electronic in a new name is going to take me at least uh, a minute or two. Well, he looks like a new man in this he Cloud9 does. jersey. He does. He's more talkative as well. He's mm. got, you know. Happy to chat to us in English as chatty, well, which is yeah. great. So, okay, Cloud9 starting to make a game of this one. Back into the guns, Game of Legion, with that plan, can afford once more. Banana control. This time it's just going to be Molly's exchange. Car Molly, half wall Molly, and there you go. We'll extinguish to establish Kios's space. Shiro under the porch, flashed off the line. A court at the ready. Head to head here. I've seen his leg. Did he? Yeah, saw the leg. So Shiro knows. And A court, a dead man. Shiro. High flying performance from him. We've seen the stats. He is keeping exactly the same Shiro we know and love in the server despite the obstacles in front of them. Yeah, weird smoke here. It has just hit the leg, so gonna try and use this to lurk through. I like this. Heads up play from Kios with a situation that's just presented itself and a gap manifested they didn't know existed. He's gonna catch Shiro. Shiro has no idea! Oh, brilliant work again from Kios. As he's given him something, there's just huge distraction. Now Isaac looks to activate. Four Molly forces here. Buster away. He has to smoke it so they know there's at least one pit. Hobbit on the mini pit though. Spotted now. Nice execution onto Kios. Takes his head clean off from the mini pit. The rotations are coming they through. They delayed them. Gamer Legion are being held at the door. And that's the last of their nades. It's just the AKs now. Smokes are fading. Doubling up in pit. Buster to take that first contact, hoping they overlook Hobbit. This is very clever. Playing that Hobbit's advantage. in pit. He's not there there. Well, they work it out. And procedurally access the site. Bomb needs to be planted. Never mind, the frags are coming through. <laughs> Vault will close. And look at the vibe. Nealon very happy with his troops there. Massive round to win, right? That's a huge round right there. And their patience. The fact that they're just happy to sit and wait. We're talking about getting stalled out, bottlenecked. I'm saying, yeah, they know Hobbit's already in pit. It was still good for one more kill, sure. But they were always going to be aware. Where could Hobbit have gotten off to? Right. Ash, smiling. You can't get enough of this. I feel like in that previous, they probably should have had it. So to snatch this one away, to put the question mark for a Cloud9 who are using their second timeout here, and maybe you want necessary just to chill out, just to cool your beans a bit, because this is how it started. Spots more than enough leg. You know, we really should oh, have... Uh, Kios, that gap. We really, really should have uh, taken that result against the Mongols and, and realized oh, it was on Inferno. On. They beat Mongols, the map bearing in mind, and Mongols dominate on yeah, Inferno. They yeah, beat top map. teams. 16-8, they beat the Mongols on this map. That 
speaks volumes about the comfort this team has. Well, th this is where people start attributing to that to maybe the mental collapse of the Mongols, sure, right? And, that's and, fair. and hey, yeah, I think you could make Valid. those arguments here. You have Game Legion, three of these players win a bloody major grand final. And yes, Kios just made were. a player of someone who has been in a major oh, grand okay. final. Another opener for Kios. Bananas his domain right now. Keep jumping into my jaws. I welcome it. And Shiro, he punishes Vault walking out of the boiler. Dink was hit, so Shiro going to be off kilter. Oh, ooh, and Hobbit, yeah, tagged up through the boards on that spam. It was Neelan just throwing a couple of bullets down range with the Galil. I, I just execute B again. This is what they were having success with in the early stages. Unless Cloud9 go for a full gamble and pull all their pieces over, you have Buster and Boiler. That might make Shiro a little bit more willing to cheat over. They've blocked already, so... If you do use the smokes like this, and they go, okay, well, that's that's two smokes B, that's three smokes B, it might think that they can just execute in because now they can't be blocked with the gray screen. So the earlier you use it, especially if you're stacking that site, it could come back to help out Cloud9 here. Your biggest issue if you're Shiro is if they go for standard site mollies, you'd have triple box as well as oranges. He's actually played towards Emo, so he's just going to have to lie in wait here. Oh, they mollied him out. What? Shiro mollied Emo. Okay, I thought it was just going to yeah. be a triple and oranges. All right. Different variation from GL. Neelan, good on to the trade. Kios is gone, but he's already contributed. Not ready for the boost. Great work from Hobbit, but with that 3 HP, he does get caught. I'm still going to give this one a go. At least he's responding. Yeah, that's what you want to see. He's been playing this game. For many a year has Buster. There's no doubt he'll be able to piece together the puzzle that is this clutch. Yes, there's a kit present, so that five second defuse is going to be attainable, albeit a bit of a jog away. Buster doesn't strike me as a player who's in a hurry here. No, but he is still going to be having that first contact, I would imagine, from A Court. Isaac just going to be playing for that bomb, and even as I say that, Buster doesn't seem to be continuing to close that gap. Yeah, still got that James School of thought in him, doesn't he? Thinking, I need to save this, or the boss band's going to be He's unhappy gonna, with yeah, me. So just hanging me. around for a little bit of financial damage. That's one of the keys of a player like Buster. He's been in a lot of games that have gone deep as Isaac falls, and maybe everybody with the bomb through the molly, through the flames. Acor holds on to the AWP. Gamer Legion are up to eight. This is stunning, right? I think that is, is the key here with looking at this roster. Just absolutely stunning to see this performance coming out today. And this Cloud9, this Cloud9 in Cologne, they've already been uh, having some, making big names sweat in the same way Gamer Legion have, in the absence of Axile, and yet still, you know, nine fell by the wayside. I'm sure that was a disheartening loss for the Polish side. And Monty as well. And Monty as well in, in particular. <laughs> <laughs> I so. think at least three of Kios' openings have been on electronic. At least three. At least. And he's got four now. <laughs> he's walking on in. Nealon. He's already forced that smoke out of there. Very limited re resources. Smoke on the coffins. Flashes through, but no need to commit. So the bomb is now scooped up from T-Stairs and even boosting to try and see if they can find a nice surprise. On to Perfecto. Well, you talked about Shiro CZ. Yeah, if, if they were going to really break Gamer Legion's soul, it would be around like this. Yeah, this would have to be one of those bailout rounds, right? And, and this is where somebody needs to step up within the chaos. But if I'm Gamer Legion, just keep it simple. We've spoken about that throughout. You have the util, you have the space. There are too many unknowns over towards A right now. They could be in boiler, they could be pushed up halls, right? There's a space that you haven't been caretaking for now. At least what you know is everybody's in banana and we can group up and go together. No one back sight. Don't have time to get across. But Perfecto's Deagle noted. Side successfully. Perfecto, the only one to be making his presence known. And yeah, oh, Shiro. He is going to punish their overlook of the fate of the smoke. Who's up next? If they can keep disrupting that plant, you'd, you'd have something to say. But oh, yeah, Perfecto, oh. he's even hitting shots onto Acor. Isaac saves him. Just not enough threats being able to chime him in together there, right? Shiro gets the bomb down. It, you know that's going to remove a player while he has to punch in the digits. Hobbit was still deep down banana. Buster, as I mentioned, not the type of player who's just going to run in there willy-nilly. It really was just perfecto to try and make something of Shiro's frag. Nine already for Game Allegiant here today. Feels like we're still 
dreaming here from the major. Down a couple of players off it. Cleared eventually. All right, well, you get a cheeky kill. It doesn't really account for a lot. The money for Game of Legion isn't out of control considering the scoreline. So if we wanted to look at that as a positive for Cloud9, we could. But they're the ones who need to get something going here. We're talking two rounds. They were back to back. Max lost bonus in play, and Spirits looking like they're an all-time high for Game of Legion. Yeah, right? It's a, like it's a contagious atmosphere right now. You can see that there's just a general... They do have one thing going the for them. There's What's one that? thing. There, there is no expectation on that team. Absolutely none. Whereas Cloud9 come in. If we were to look at the polar opposites of the spectrum out of the player break, right? Out of the tournament break, looking at all the roster changes, looking at everything that could have come your way, Cloud9 with Axile was number one. It may actually be one of the greatest roster changes of all time in all Counter-Strike history. We have to wait and see how that plays out, but with who they've gotten, I'm excited. And I, I think everyone else think in the Counter-Strike world there is, is also excited. There is not a single excited. Counter-Strike fan that doesn't look at that roster on paper and get excited. There is not. I, don't, I, I would like to meet them. And then you have Gamer Legion, a team that I think everybody believes over overperformed in there in Paris. Sure. They didn't get comparable replacements. Sure. And yet they're currently up 9-2 against Cloud9 in a match that gets them into the Cathedral of Counter-Strike here in Cologne. Kios, he's been having a good start. Delayed by the incendiary towards the jump up. Slows their crawl towards the apartments. It's not occupied. Three man setup. Fecto playing anti on B. But there's a lot of ground to cover before that becomes a factor. It's just they, they've they never had banana control. And every time they fall for it, they've lost it. I understand why they don't, but it just makes them susceptible to so many finishes here. So smoke's invested. Long obscured. Shiro unable to contribute immediately. Fault clears boiler, flashes are high, and Hobbit and Buster have the crossfire for now. Fault edges through. Shiro not going to be falling foul to any funny business there. That helps Nilan understand there's likely still three players towards A here, or at least the AWPer isn't in float and rotation. They go for a flash that does completely force Shiro back. So now there is only two. They could smoke off the arch, progressing in, tighten up the crossfire. Oh, and Hobbit's exposed. Drops in. Audible. Isaac knows. Mini pit now for Hobbit. Acor called upon. They Posts just... up on short. Hopes that Hobbit goes looking. But with 20 seconds, Chad, I'm not sure. Best case here. Yeah, maybe a save. You don't have a whole lot of cash here. We just discussed that. So a good one. Cloud9 with those two kills have done enough. Kiels was just selling a fake on over towards B. That's why we haven't seen Electronic and Perfecto move just yet. So they kept the boots planted as they wanted to, but it came down to trying to exploit that long space, right? It was both Volt and Neelan who died over towards long. It was key for them that they needed that territory to be able to finish the round. So there you go. Just back to a six round game. The best Cloud9 can get in this half is six. So three more and that will mean four on the trot on the way out the door into that two minute break. So that was a whole lot more simple. Speaking of simple. He had a beast mode performance Didn't against Faze. Didn't he? Space. Yeah. Oh, he I went can't. 40 and 19, someone said. I'd have to verify that, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 40 and 19, plus 21 on overpass. Plus ooh, 26 ooh, for the series. Ooh. Perfecto. Great flash. Oh, wow. Set up for success. And Kios, <gasps> saved by the flash for only a moment. Perfecto throws aggression towards Game of Legion's attack, and they are left blindsided. And off kilter. <laughs> That's one way to get to the bottom of Banana. It's just been smoked off. He can hang around. He can backpedal. Or he can just chill because two players to the good and looking confident now. Well, moves like that don't happen when you're not confident. Perfecto started this round with four frags. He's found himself two extras. Buster losing that shot. And with Shira missing that shot, there is a Ooh. conversation now to be had. Uncharacteristic, sure, but he won't make that same mistake again. He's still alive and kicking. Turns the flash, closing the gap, and Hobbit the first contact. Double out of Hobnob. Oh, Vault? No way. He gets two out of that, and he knows where Hobbit is. The Molly might at least confirm he's still on top of the box. There it is. Confirmation of reposition. Hobbit gets himself a triple. And Cloud9, yeah, I mean, they needed that one, considering how it started. The fact that it, get, it gets that close is just a sequence of unfortunate events. And this is now Game of Legion broken here late within this half. So that six for Cloud9 is still a possibility, especially 
And as we see, Gamer Legion turn to what should be just a bit of an eco here. Some investments into their favorite pistol. With the loss bonus coming into the last round of the first half of 2400. So only one Tech 9 and a couple of flashes. They really need to set Vault up Banana here. If he finds success, maybe there's a conversation. Oh, that nade found success. I'll tell you that much. Hit Electronic. It's called up. Says uh, Perfecto, get ready. And indeed, the spray, the bullets, the shrapnel, it's all connected nicely as they get themselves a couple of extra frags. All right, well, this is almost classic Cloud9 on Inferno. You know, just get six rounds mm. on the CT side, just bring it back a little bit late. It's all good. Get the pistol round. A couple of uh, Shiro pop off moments. We'll, we'll make it if we try. As, uh, I think that was a timeout called. It was Ash taking the second timeout for Game of Legion here within this first half of play. And he's just quickly perusing the purchases. What do we got? What are we lacking? And what's worked for us so far? Kios has had. Not too many issues going for that banana control. It's something that he's helped afford his team in several occasions here. We've been talking about his prowess in the openers. Neelan hasn't bought, so if there's any utility that Ash wants that's lacking, right. he could buy in here with a glill or something lesser to make sure that they can accommodate that. But they're talking here as a unit. So if a player has a good spawn, I know it's Inferno, it's not going to be as impactful as other maps. Maybe they want to operate with uh, one of their special moves if someone feels that they're able to get it. This is where you like your players to be able to chip it. Oh, they haven't been doing this hauls or they haven't been applying pressure here. I can get away with this space. And that helps you as an in-game leader decide, hey, can we maybe find some wiggle room in the middle of this game? But double orbs now on the CT side. Perfecto and Shiro to try and close things down with the big greens. Should be quite direct towards A here. They're not vying for any banana control. Crossfire top mid, Buster and Shiro about to be tested. Has to be one hell of a flash. Perfect. Shiro doesn't need him because Buster's done it all. He gets two. He's trapped short, but there's a lot of support here. And Gamer Legion's 10th. Doesn't look like it's happening here in the first half unless Vault gets more of that. Clears out Buster. Tags up Shiro longside. Smoke will delay. In fact, they ditched his orb. Yeah, quickly. Not interested, and that's a fight that ooh, leaves them both wounded. Acorn will go wide to finish the job, and costly exchange. But yeah, the game is back on. You've yeah. still got a minute. And Electronic hasn't pushed down Banana, so that does become a possibility, or at least a thought in their mind. Acorn continuing on this wrap. It looks like Acorn's going to be the next contact point. Hobbit just averted his gaze. Trade required. Does pluck him out of the air before he descends. Oh, Shiro, lovely. Not falling for the strafe. That's Isaac into a one-on-one -on -one while traded. Electronic to B player, Isaac to climb up clutch for the 10. This is the problem for Electronic here. Isaac could have gotten off to anywhere right now. He's just responded. The bomb's down. Isaac doesn't know it. He's worried about Electronic being close. Oh, gets the jewel. Electronic gets the info though. And now Isaac perhaps going to start overthinking as Electronic just hides out in Moto. Information confirmed and still hasn't hit the taps. He's still got half a magazine. Electronic hard target to hit. Oh, oh and Isaac. <laughs> does hit that tiny pixel of electronic. It's 10-5. Game of Legion here to play today and playoffs on the line.
What is your calling? The Group A lower bracket final. Two teams, one spot in the playoffs in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike. It's been a long path to get to this point. Fresh off the break, big changes and expectations subverted. As Game of Legion are rocking 10, Cloud9 boasting only five. And our first look at this new Cloud9 on Inferno. We've got Shaddy B with me to break it all down. Ancient next, that's Cloud9's pick. And we're into the pistol. Aggression five sets here. of Kevlar, yeah, they're, they're running. Oh my God, this is going to be a full head-on collision. It's a car crash. <laughs> Live and Volt's the one to roll the heads. Two down on the clicks. Back to his response from Perfecto and Buster. They just turned tail. They just decided that's enough and there was a whole lot more to be done. Now Isaac's got a world of hurt ahead of him. Three charging in. What have you got for us, Isaac? Oh. Headshot. Oh. Make it two. Three oh. from oh. Isaac. Laughing all the way to an 11th. Oh, everybody has had their moment here today for Game of Legion. We're on the map number one, a monster moment. That is huge. He wasn't even Dude, aiming at the first kill the first he got. One. And look at Perfecto, distraught. They know it feels a whole lot different if they win that piston. The recovery they had here. Let's watch this one again. So, Volt double, Shiro back, and then this second oh. shot. Oh, gross. Isaac steps up and Game of oh. Legion, they must be beaming. Yeah, that's a smile that'll melt your heart. Yeah, ear to ear, man. That must feel so good. It could feel horrible in a second, though, because Electronic has run down with Hobbit's help. The B-site should be open for business. If Vault's been spotted, he's going to be smoked off. Double smoke, sure, doesn't matter. Oh, no! drive-by from Electronic on the MP9. Ah, there's some of that classic bailout bullshit I was talking about. A force by a banana rush in your face. This is the deal with the Cloud9 roster. It hasn't been the prettiest in terms of the team approach, but they're individuals. You put in the right place, you wind them up, you let them go. They're going to slap you in the face. And this is recovering Ashiro. He just spots the barrel. That's another kill. Another M4 scooped up and a recovery here for Cloud9 in round number two of the second half. Yeah, can we cut to Perfecto now? You know, I reckon he's probably going to be a little bit more happy after the... What a juxtaposition from the pistol to the second round, you'd think. Game of Legion. They probably thought they just had a bit more time. And yeah, Isaac's gone as well. Two rivals and now they find their... Value. Yeah, okay. Oh, God, I love Counter-Strike and I do love the human component. You can just see that they're, they're laughing it off. They're shrugging oh, it off. Yeah, because if I'm making Cloud9 yell at me and I'm Gamer Legion, yeah, who right. at the moment probably have no right. pressure, I've gone, well, I guess they're a little bit worried, guys. They're celebrating a second round win versus us. That's the framing. That is exactly the framing. You know, if you needed to rebuild the troops and morale, I don't think they need to. It looked like they were all fine. I, I don't know how you don't get a little <laughs> upset. I'd be pretty, <laughs> pretty salty after that one. Oh, good. Who wants to own them this round? Yeah. Eos, you got a deagle. You're going to give it a crack. Mate. Volt, apparently, uh, your time on the Fnatic Academy roster, you go over to ITB, you, you, you're just comfortable. Oh, we so blind. What? Dead. 30 bullets later, Eos is dead. That's how good the flash was. Neelan, he is being pre aimed by Shira off his boost. So just playing the edge of the smoke. Shira is so away, aware and alert. And there it is, perfectly strafing into Shiro's cross set. Okay, well, they are still waltzing into two players here, Alex. He's got a, gap. a huge yeah, gap. A monstrous gap that Shiro has overlooked, and it leads to one back. Isaac will go down. What about Vault? Well, over the top. Electronic vaults onto Vault. Without the pole. <laughs> Not this time. Wait, he's Romanian. Ah, yes. Close. But no cigar. but definitely a border, as uh, we just have Acor here. I can't wait for the CS2. This is going to be the only time I've got CS2. I can't wait for the CS2 Inferno just to see what Ruins actually looks like, because in some of those pitches that have been, it looks like it's, it's ridiculous. It looks insane. It actually looks like the cathedral here. Yeah, like a full church. Chapel, maybe. A chapel. Okay, well, there you have it. 11 to 7, the score line now. Four rounds, the difference. Cloud 9. We'll be seeing Game of Legion down to just an eco here. So ever closer we will draw. There'll be another little farm round available here for Shiro with this MAC-10 in play. Game of Legion, what is your full eco approach? You're going to set up a tank somewhere. You're going to have these five USPs pointed in the same direction. Or uh, we're just going to divide and conquer. Looks like everybody wants to start over towards A here. Might just be fast, a bit of a rumble 
down the gut. But no, Nealon getting the hair out of his eyes. Having to take a bit of a pause here because Game of Legion we will reflect in that first half. Their T half. Great work. I don't know how many other ways to frame it, but they were looking very put together. And we're getting scrimmy top mid. Multiple casualties hit the deck. There is a TK in the mix. Fault was doing too well. Kios wants to be at the top of the score. And on your red sun. Down he goes. Nade finishes the job and secures an eight. So from a 10-5 half, we find ourselves at 11 to eight. Cloud nine not winning the pistol. Yeah, that TK from Kios, it is only a little bit of amount of money. You know, no, you're not losing as much as you used yeah. to once upon a time, but it is still going to hurt in terms of what utility is going to be able to buy here. So when you get into a first gun round, especially after a second round loss, you are going to be having a couple of emissions here. And the biggest being HEs, I would say, for softening up. Mm. Look at the, there's a very apparent call from Cloud9 off this rip from four. Going up second mid. They really want to deny the banana info, right? So an extinguish to give off the impression they're in banana or at least can take that control. The smoke so they cannot see at all towards the top. So that's two smokes burnt in banana. And as you mentioned, they are already pressing the issue over towards A. This is going to be a bit more direct here and it might not be the right call. They've just been blocked over towards the end of apartments by a well-timed smoke. And now they might just opt to play out the round. It, just, it looked like it was going to be poppy, but now it it's going to cancel. But yeah, I want to know what uh, the electronic utility belt is going to be used for. Is it to fake or is the bomb going to join him? Okay, so three have posted an apps undetected. I think you want to apply a bit of pressure here to try and get one of these players in rotation, even if it's just CT spawn, right? Yeah. So you can isolate Isaac and Volt, who are currently very tucked in towards the site here. And Perfecto is just called like top B clear. Which means they very likely have to play 2B unless it's just an AWPer. That would be the only right. way, or you're crazy. So there's the util from Electronic and a straight... Ooh, a movement from Buster. And a headshot from Shiro. Two in that pit side. Nice hold from Isaac. He is going to be tested by a whole lot more, though, with nades and a pre-fire coming his way. It's perfect from Shiro. On the right oh. as well! Shiro pulling Cloud9 into a gap-closing round. There's nothing for Acor here. And this is the attitude. Keep it on Shiro right now. You see a lot of talking going on there. We very rarely get to hear from him. All right, back in the day, I remember talking to Nafni. He said he used to translate the HRTV confirmed episodes for Shiro to be able to hear what's going on. Oh, really? I'm sure that stopped after uh, they listened to us for, for a few episodes. <laughs> but, but, uh, but sweet nonetheless. Uh, yeah, and then you look at Shiro as this, you know, young Orpa. He's just this kid that's coming out of nowhere, considered one of the absolute best players in the world. But one of the differences between him and Axel, who's not here, is Shiro broke out of that mold. He understood when he, as such the good player, he is, needs to get the job done. He was always fiery. We know he contributed in the mid-rounds, and his attitude looks like it's even more on display. Him and Electronic. They really want to take these wipe rifles away. Bobbit goes down after that damage was inflicted. Got tagged down to one at the end of that. Wait, did he... He died. He, d he died at the Ruins entrance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think he had like three HP, and then he got tagged to one. All right. Fair and, enough. Uh, yeah, turns out <laughs> Inferno Bomb kind of crazy. And so is that a third time out called. So this is Ash on the mic. And it's, you know, it's not like it's, um, it's not panic stations, but they I did think just it use is, the actually. Okay. And the reason I think it is is because that's the third time out and they did the majority of the work on their T side. And right now I'm just looking at the scores on the doors. Kiel's seven, Acor seven, Neil and eight. I know Kiel's got a TK in the mix right there. Is, does that meet your expectations in terms of new teams, new leaders? You expect them to have more struggles on the T or CT? That's, a, it, that, well, that's, that's a, the mean, thing, that's right? It, if they had strong individuals, if I was looking to this team and I was like, yeah, I think like pound for pound these players are all very good, then I would expect them to have good CT sides because it's more focused on your area of the map. Right. Sure, you still work as a team, but when kills are coming your way, that's where you get more multi-kill potential. So I, I would want to say with most new rosters, you would expect them to be better on, on, on the CT sides. That but would be my assumption. Yeah, Hugo was talking about some stats yesterday with Cologne so far, and I don't know if he combined the planes or not, but he was saying that uh, the maps are... Uh, T-sided here during color. So it is a bit quizzical. It could be to do with a lot more factors than, than just the teams in the mix here. But um, for Nealon, we know and we heard over there at EG, like he, he ran a pretty decent chip in terms of their approach. Like somebody like Carrigan is appraising the defaults. Mm. That, that's a really good sign. Kios, good angle, not a good result. And now Nealon Molotov, double Molotov out. Yeah, he'll do well to catch one, but 
That's one of the rifles gone as well. Acor reveals his, spamming the smoke. Bomb should be planted any moment. Perfecto gets that one done. And uh, yeah, at this point, I guess you just want to try and preserve Acor's M4. Ideally, you leave with a couple of those AKs if you can. Yeah, just with this kit on vault, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, there was a chance. Maybe they exit and he goes for a ninja defuse here. I don't think so, but he is hanging around like that's on the cards. Don't know if Cloud9 are going to be uh, falling foul. He's going that. for it. He's going for it. He might just want to take more casualties with him with the bomb. Yeah, still being held by Perfecto. Still being held by Perfecto. Shiro. Not on his watch. <laughs> Good awareness from Shiro. I love the attempt from Vault, though. Okay, well, very cheeky from Vault. Yeah, though. man. I, I do appreciate it. I mean, you know, he, he loses nothing and he stood to gain something. It would have been uh, top, top, page, top page, front page. Yeah, front the top page. page. Reddit. Yeah. Maybe that's going to change its name to a letter as well. Yeah, okay. Ah. <laughs> ah. R slash R. Actually, yeah, I guess it already is. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, a single round now. It was a five-round gap. Yeah, it closed very quickly, it didn't did. it? It did, and especially when you win the pistol. You, that's probably why they were so you know, loud about it, because it felt like we've really been given a gift by Isaac and his 3K. Three players here at Game Legion. Is there follow-through for this control? Well, they do have full banana control right now. Kills with a spam through, not finding anything completely blind. Room smoke as well, going to make things a little bit more curious here. But Neelan and Kills are clearing it. So high pressure on Volt and Isaac right now. Oh, they're really applying so much pressure. Still no contact. Oh, off the flash. Electronic was flash. I think he just second guessed it. Volt dead. Big frag back, and that smoke does give him a one way to work with. Isaac. Staring over that smoke. It's Hobbit's been audible. Here yeah, Hobbit will relay the information. Pitt went looking. Neil. Oh, just as Electronic pulled his crosshair away, he deletes him. A laser beam out of that M4, but they are oh, going back to B. Kiosk got nothing to report. Yeah, is A. Isaac needs help. And he doesn't. Actually, he takes both of them down. He's still alive. Buster should at least get this one. Damage was inflicted. <laughs> Nay from the grave. Isaac leaves with three. Yeah, he's dead now. Perfecto, he's all gone, mate. They cleaned him out. That was the orb from the long side. And guess what? You're not long for this world either. Kios, the knife in the back, and here he is. Thank you very much, they say. The second round for Gamer Legion. And Isaac again. The impact in both of the CT rounds is thanks to the Swede. Come on, boy. That's a good point as well, yeah. Every single one. <laughs> I'm being a bit, bit uh, dramatic with that. The two of them. But every single CT round so far going Isaac's uh, 3K contribution. They'll see this one again. So, Neil, and this is the laser beam moment, just as Electronic had looked away. Yeah, just. We're on board just. with Electronic. And then the nade from the grave for his third. <laughs> I wish my teammates sounded that Every round we yeah. won, right? Wow. <laughs> did it reinforce a lot of positivity here. Well, Isaac did say they got the players they wanted. Yeah, which is quite a statement when no one else in the community thought they did. Yeah, I wanted to make sure I had the full context for that one. We maybe wait to an eco before we yeah. uh, bring this one up. Let's see what happens with Kios' adventure here. What? That's audible. They know. Uh, he finds it. Perfecto punishes Acor, at least averts from a certain loss. And just, oh, spots out Volt Bait. Oh, and Isaac switch. Perfect. Onto Hobbit's head. Buster's there as well. They want to fight him, and they will. Isaac doing it all for Gamer Legion right now. Yeah, this is more like the team we saw in that first half. And driven through one man here, he's going to keep pushing, calling the bluff. He might even get two more kills. Oh this is marvelous. He is playing his game, his way, and it's destroying <laughs> Cloud9. Isaac, another three for another CT round. Quite the trend, if you can keep that going. Nine kills in your three CT rounds. Your team has managed to convert. I say that. Electronic is still in the clutch. He hasn't got the bomb. They might have access or at least vision on it now. Just position so they can trade off of one another. Do not allow Electronic to isolate these jewels. Baits the orb shot. And there's Neil. 
Lovely work, loud, raw, three more required from Gamer Legion. Yeah, I want to make sure I get that uh, statement correct. Maybe not the players they wanted. Uh, let me read it okay. out here. Question, how involved were you guys in finding replacements? Did you trial many people? It was mostly Ash fixing the process, mm. uh, but he kept us informed. He talked with everyone. We talked with a bunch of players, but most of them turned us down for other offers, or they just said no, mm. or they had something else going on. It was a big mess overall, but I would say we are happy with the players we got. Okay, well that's important context. And the mood and reflects and that. And the mood certainly does. So, talking of mood, Cloud9 burning their final timeout, I'd suggest their mood is uh, is waning. Considering this resurgence they've had, right, it has been the, the middle portion of this first map of play here where they've started to come alive. Shiro's played some impact in that. A force by Rush Up Banana definitely assisted in this campaign by bo bottoming out the funds here for Gamer Legion. But now the money's back, and now that Isaac is handing out 3Ks, like they're free. Cloud9 have found themselves back in hot water. They have been able to purchase back. Shiro with the AWP in hand. A caught, feeling aggressive. Playing with a fight towards mid. Perfecto softened up and held at bay by the flames. A lot of responsibility on Perfecto's shoulders here to try and get this banana control. And that's where Kios had a great showing in that first half against Electronic in the head to head. I mean, yeah, they still beat Kios and found the opening frag on Banana in, in the previous round. It didn't stop the Isaac conversion, though. You might be hearing some uh, cheers down the hall. That is the mainstream going on right now, brought to you by Bardoff and Hawker. They're covering off a progression game. Get you into the semi or the quarterfinals. I suppose we could frame it with seeding, but it's G2 versus Vitality. Okay, that's the first time we've seen a little bit of tilt coming out of Electronic. It didn't sound like a call, did it? No, he wasn't happy, especially if he's taken everything off of the mouse right there. Yeah, so the first time we've really seen Cloud9 starting to show a little bit of Na'Vi. Okay, well, he's got his troops lined up. He's getting what he's asked for. And now they're asking for a round. Good work from Volt. On the boost, contributes, takes Electronic out, playing around the smoke. It's Neil and yet to reveal himself, and now he can disrupt further. Perfecto, an important frag. He's gotten him a chance, a little bit of a chance to perhaps extend play, get that bomb down, the rest disconnected. Only Vault waits for the team. Using their smoke against them here. Exposed on the fountain. Can't believe he didn't finish him off. It's long range up against an orb. I don't blame Isaac for being cautious. He's brought Shiro very low. Tagged him down to 35. Doesn't want to give him a way back in. Confirm Shiro still occupying that angle. Perfecto to be hunted now. Acor should be set for the clear here. It's Perfecto wise to that potential. He's actually dropped off. And Acor now with one. It all falls to Shiro. Tagged up before. Oh! But he's at low HP. He can't finish the job. He was bolting the sniper. An extra second on that. And it could have been Cloud Nines, but another Gamer Legion round. Yeah, decent attempt to defuse here. It's going to be down to the wire, but it's theirs. 14 secure. And it wasn't a kill. It wasn't a frag for Isaac, but he did the most impressive thing within that round, just keeping Shiro pinned to that position. Did not allow the kill to come through, but also continued to get that information. He's posted on me. He's posted on me. He's focused on me. Acor could slip in, not worrying about the AWP. Dumb question. Shiro, did Shiro fire a shot, or did Isaac just kind of think it could have been Shiro planting? You know, because like, it's long range. You're tapping someone on fountain. The bomb goes down, and he, then he starts playing super passive. I think he would, have, he would have picked up confirmation that it was Shiro, okay. but also the fact that CT wasn't and smoked. Was still alive. Wanna, exactly. Okay, so sure. he had a pretty good idea that it's, you're tussling with the AWP, and when you're in a number disadvantage post-plant, you always like to get a pick to make your life a whole lot easier. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. And this is a bit of a set piece out of these CTs. They smoke, they molly, they spray, and they are victorious onto electronic. More salt in the wound if he's already tilted. Now, whoa, whoa, hold on, Nayland. He's in trouble, needs a smoke. Teammate provides it. Now, there's nothing coming. I, I think one of the bigger questions about this team for Cloud9, and I know that Axel's not here, so it's difficult for us to really weigh things up of how they're going to perform when they have their full five, was well, without Nafani here, who's going to be the guy just to run in and really throw away his life? Well, it was pointed towards Electronic. He likes to have that play style. And the next up, we go, okay, maybe Hobbit. Right. So, uh... Maybe Electronic getting a little bit frustrated here that there aren't enough players willing to put their body on the line as much as they should to secure this territory or these frags. 
Acor flashed off, but still connects the shot onto Shiro. Shiro's going to be asking himself, what else do we have to do? He was blind. Full blind. But places his crossbow perfectly <laughs> and Hobbit. Punished for having a go. Just keep coming one at a time. Pick it up again if you're there. And the rest, that's a bit of a crazy one from Kioz. He just goes looking for answers, but not with a, too much uh, delicacy. Nah, look at this crossfire on A. I was like, I'm through that. have this. You shouldn't be getting through that. 20 seconds. I mean, Perfecto, he's actually gone all the way around, right? So there could be a little they something to be said. Eh? Buster could find Isaac, but crossfire's good. Rotation's through. Perfecto not clearing. Balcony, and that is another Game of Legion. One single round from taking their map pick and being a map away from the playoffs. Cloud9 standing in their way, but... This is seriously impressive. I think the only people you would have surveyed if there may have been a possibility could have been people from Gamer Legion, right? right. Uh, and that's with uh, some crazy belief in the changes that they had just made. Again, this is just wild scenes here. I did not think we would be uttering the phrase one map away and Gamer Legion from the playoffs. That is insane. And you just have to put respect on the name. Maybe not the most impressive individuals in the team, but uh, you can't argue with the results here. And there it is, that uh, tilt on full display. Yeah, some, some fresh air, banana, a bit of water. It's going to be on the menu maybe in just one round's time. Look at the buy. Blah. And I do love what you pointed out that they're getting this done without a call. Like, sure, he has 11 kills. That's fine. It's Isaac and Volt who are the ones at the tippy top of the scoreboard. I think Nealon did a great job in that first half of calling them into pole position. And now it's just about one more to close. Five more kills. And then we move on over to map number two of Ancient. Is that audible? Doesn't seem so. Vector's holding it. This is the best chance for Cloud9 have had in some time. Shiro, good on to Neil. And holding firm is Kios. Doesn't quite finish off onto Hobbit. You should call this one off if you game a Legion before you even start to look in here. You don't have the finances to go for this type of round. You get caught off guard a little bit there. Shiro does a great job of entering in. Shiro entering, right? I reflect on the conversation well, I had just before. What you were before. just saying, yeah. exactly. So, uh, and at this point, by any means necessary, is Cloud9's modus operandi. Yeah. You, you saw that statement from Perfecto, right? Like the obstacles. This is the thing. This is a roster, maybe not its complete form, but still enough players in this server to be scared of. Right, and that's Perfecto's quote with the knowledge that he doesn't have uh, the full five in the sense that yeah. he says, we want to show great results from the start. Obstacles don't matter. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that they're setting them that for, for themselves. They're not coming here with, with excuses. Or feeling like they've just been given an excuse. Yeah, you know? because that's the, when you're over, well, I wouldn't say over hyped, when you're as hyped as much as you were mm. coming in, there is a lot of pressure, right? You, you, you have the spotlight on you here. And to be able to embrace it, and, and that means they understand this Goldilocks mix that they have as well. Yeah, it's just right. It yeah. is just right, the porridge. It's just unfortunate that Axel can't be here. And I think there's a lot of people who are still holding hope that if Cloud9 can make the playoffs, and they're going to have to do it the hard way, that Axel can get here in time. Now, I have a different opinion on that, but uh, that's here nor there as far as this match is concerned. Hey, cool. Oh, what a shot! Holy moly, adjusted to the boost and he ain't done yet. That's Shiro coming for you oh. and Acor gets greedy. You know he was feeling himself after that first shot. And can you blame him? Yeah, I can't, but it does mean that an orb has fallen into enemy hands as well as an M4. Perfecto, Hobbit and Buster alive. And I am not full with an awful lot of confidence here at Cloud9. This might be it for Inferno. I mean, Acor just has one round, you know, in terms of if it, this leads to the conversion. It was only really necessary to have the hero moment in this round 27. They come knocking on B. Hobbit's lining up utility. There's a conversation to be had. Now, they've got three smokes. So let's see if this is the full commitment. Looks like it. Vault's been set up for success here. Kios can just disrupt. Front sight smoke obscures Vault's view from the boot. We'll have to reposition. Blades it out. Smokes it. Pushing through the smoke is Nealon. A 3v2. They know there's two on B now. Can Cloud9 really recover? Extend play. Perfecto through the smoke. Oh, and Kios is good for it. Only Buster can save them now. Otherwise, Inferno is going Gamer Legion's way. And it's all done. That is their map, baby. One away from the playoffs of IEM Cologne. So much doubt, so much uncertainty. Your roster is picked limb from limb from all of the talent you showed in Paris.
And here in Cologne, they still stand tall. A map to the good against Cloud9. What is your calling? Game of Legion is very good on Inferno. That's what I got from that game. Yeah, they are indeed very good at Inferno. And we did preface this entire thing by saying if Game of Legion are to stand a chance of pulling off uh, an upset, it would have to start on Inferno. They managed to do so. T side once again. You know, it's your map pick. They started T side every single time, Maui, and every single time they seem to come out on top. Gamer Legion have a lot of ideas when it comes to how they want to play the T side, and we also saw a little bit of the discomfort that we lightly preface with Cloud9. We weren't really giving it the credence that it probably deserved that this is the first time that this five man lineup has actually played Inferno, and we could see that the discomfort between a couple of their players was apparent. Hobbit and Buster, for me, were having a lot of difficulty defending the A site. You know that if that's Axile instead of Buster, that's going to be a completely different story, but in this case, Gamer Legion was able to abuse that duo. They were very good at bringing it back after halftime, though, and Cloud9 started looking like they could maybe upset and, and take the win. So I don't think that we can completely write them off in terms of how this group is working, but we need to remember there's a standard. Right, and the fact that they were able to find six rounds on the T side out of an 11 played on that second half means that had they actually maybe started on the T side, there's a chance that this game could have been still going, could have probably secured a couple more rounds there. But nothing to take away from Gamer Legion because I honestly thought that the T side calling once again demonstrated to me that Gamer Legion, when it comes to Inferno, they can be classified as specialists. Oh yeah, they absolutely can. And also, the, the interesting thing for Cloud9 is if you look at the, the standing situation again with Buster, right? There is a difference in ideology since couple of the place on the CT side, especially, and how to want to aggress. Electronic is just going to throw himself at the fight. He's going to be trying to you know, rest control off a round back. If you look at someone like Buster, he was, I felt, maybe a little too passive at times from, I think Ch Chad mentioned it as well, the James School of Counter-Strike, where he's still stuck inside of his head, just his neuron just stuck in that particular school. So there was a disparity in how I felt like they wanted to approach a CT side, which could be some of the, uh, the mistakes, which could be some of the reasons why Game of Legion had an easier time. On the T side, it was looking much better. But then, man, the defense from Game of Legion, we hadn't had a chance to see the CT side much in Inferno because of how dominant the wins have been on the map, starting on the T side. Isaac, he was phenomenal in pit. So phenomenal that we're actually going to make him our Air Force Aim High player of the, the map. He did, a, he did a great job. 
Yeah, yeah, Isaac was, I mean, seven multi-frags, I'm almost like, that's it? Wow. Because I felt like it was like every time they went port side against Isaac, and even on the T side too, he was finding a ton of impact. So for, for Isaac, uh, I think that when it comes to Gamer Legion and their run at the Major, he was very frequently a player that just simply wasn't mentioned a lot because he was on a lot of anchor positions, he was on extremities when it comes to lurking, and so he was never really in the action moments. But what we were able to say for certain by the end of the tournament was that he was proficient if not excelling at his role. And so that's really what's a little bit scary about Gamer Legion is that this is still three players that made it to a major grand finals. And so for us to be counting them out as frequently as we do, I think there's a possibility by the end of the end of this series, we're going to be the ones with egg on our face. I mean, I, I think it's very reasonable to kind of be list, look at them and be like, you know, they really shouldn't be replicating the run they had. But then again, you know, if they prove us wrong, we will have egg on our faces. This one thing it just kind of reminded me uh, was what Maui brought up when it comes to the trading, which has kind of dropped off ever since day one. I looked at the openings here. They got eight opening kills out, and I think Cloud9 got 19. Wow. They traded. Yeah. They they freaking yeah. traded. They really upped it up. So despite losing all the opening deals, I think Shiro went six and zero or something in opening deals. Cloud were getting all of them, but the trades were instantaneous coming from Game of Legion. So solid CS overall. It wasn't just Kios popping off. Volt as well. A shout out. He was a little bit quiet. I'm like, I really want to see him kind of step up to the plate. He did. It, he did so because I think it was uh, Isaac. Who was, uh, was it Isaac? I think it was Isaac who was a little bit quiet overall in this particular game. But then you know we did we did have uh, Volt kind of step in to fill up that hole. Maui, can we say that Gamer Legion is no longer meh? Because that is what we threw oh, at them no two days ago. Yeah, there's no way that you could say that. I mean, after the first series we saw in the tournament, you would have said probably nothing to be too happy about. But I love just the wealth of ideas from Gamer Legion. That's what I'm excited about when I watch this team now. We actually have a round nine, I think it is, where we can show, round eight that is, where we can show this really cool little play where Volt actually sneaks through the arch side smoke. And what he actually does is he finds this position with him and his teammate. And what Gamer Legion do is they actually smoke bracket right now feigning as if there is, they're still trying to take that bracket space and look at what they do in the meantime. Volt sneaks up onto the bomb site, and I want to just say, when we go into Ancient, watch out for little tricky plays like this because I have stood behind Gamer Legion at, at times so far in this tournament, and there are many players that are coming up with ideas for how to convert rounds in the mid-round. Neelan's doing a great job as an in-game leader, but there are multiple guys, Isaac, Kioz, Acor, all contributing with more ideas so that they can put rounds like this together where they're able to just use someone's intuition or their positioning and say, wait a second, I have an idea. I know a way that we can sneak into a bomb site and make something crazy happen. So Banks is actually having a chance. He went and, and chatted to the Cloud9 guys because I want to know exactly how they're feeling after that map loss. So James, what's going on in the camp? Sam, I am becoming a big fan of Game of Legion. And also, Ash, I just had a little catch up with him. And he said, actually, that Inferno felt easy. Now, admittedly, Cloud9 have not played it here at this event. They've probably got some growing pains to go through. And we keep mentioning it. Exile not being here is a big factor. But right now, Game of Legion are raiding the high. They're getting very loud, much like Vitality is right now. But I will say that coming into Ancient, he said that Cloud9 play a very different style to what Fnatic do. It's going to be you need a different game plan and different execution from them. But they feel ready, they feel prepared. So maybe Game of Legion are going through. Let's see how it goes, Sam. Thanks so much, Banks. Obviously, wasn't the, the Cloud9 update. He was the Game of Legion update. But there's confidence there. And this is my thing. Like, they're, they're feeling good. Like you said, three of those players, they did get into a major... F I'm going to build this up and then I'm going to hate myself afterwards. <laughs> I'm just not going to talk. Go. <laughs> okay, uh, I mean, you can still talk, but all right, here's the thing. Ancient, it's a map where both these two teams played against Fnatic, and ironically, it was uh, Cloud9 who lost to Fnatic in OT, and it was Game of Legion beating them, but it, that's not how it works in Counter-Strike. It's not like math. Not always, you beat right. this guy, this guy, and this guy beats this guy. I really like what I'm seeing from Cloud9, despite the fact that Buster is standing coming in. I think the Ancient is very, very solid overall, but that being said, uh, like how we said Game of Legion's Inferno is really really good here they really stand a chance here i think it's more 50 50. i saw a little bit of body language from cloud9 perfecto's head in his hands even though the game wasn't quite done yet and we know if you go back to the old navi team sometimes the pressure can get to you and you just might get into your own heads and lose the game for yourselves cloud9 is playing with a stand-in gamer legion has done this to us before 
They are going to their second map. One of these teams is going home after this matchup. The other is making it through to IAM Cologne. Gamer Legion is one step away from making those playoffs. I can't believe I'm saying that. Would not have guessed that at the start of this. Absolutely. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god, get ready, you're gonna be kidding me! What a match! What a match! The in game leader. Architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Two big nades continue down to 14 HP. But he's alive, he's dying, and that's always going to be a problem. One versus two for Zywu. Trying to solve this puzzle. Manasi and JKS slowly moving forward. Is he on the site? Or is he at Coffins? Is he in the pool? A few places Zywu could be. Clock is ticking. Only JKS has a kit. He's the man who has to defuse the bomb with Manasi covering with the AWP. It has to be that way. Heading towards the site now in the smoke. Easy 1v1 for Zaiwu. Maybe Manasi could pick up the site, but he hasn't found a kit. Looking for it in the smoke, he'll find it, but it's too late to get around. Three in a row for Vitality. The Apex war chart after the round win. They took so long to get towards that bomb, Zaiwu. Ever patient, never overextends, never gives away the information too early. And that means they have to guess where Zaiwu is positioned. They don't cover it on the correct angle. Easy spray just before the smoke blooms. He gets the spray going. And Monacy starts to panic because there's such little time. Zaiwu stays cool and Vitality only need one more to steal away G2's map. Three chances at robbery and Flames is back to his shenanigans on the CT side. Where he's got one, he's often got two. Nico's angry though, and that's a problem if you're Vitality. Moving through with the AK-47, trying to avoid the flash. Eats a big one though, that'll delay for a time, but maybe not enough time. Sphinx is rotating, he's got no util though, and Flames will be deleted by Nico. Forcing G2's way back into these rounds. That's what G2 needed. Tactically, they weren't winning rounds, so Nico relied upon to get the two entries. And there's not even a great amount of utility for Vitality. Oh, that kill really should secure it. Molly from Magisk. Maybe he'll try. It doesn't look like they're even going to go for this one. So finally, G2 find a round win after losing seven in a row. Four at the end of regulation, three in overtime. They're still in this. Some stats padding there for Nico with that last kill. First two entries though, oh so important for him. First test is passed. They've been in higher pressure situations before. Just another day in the office for G2. If they were to lose this in overtime, after the strength in normal time, they'll be quite frustrated.
What is your calling? Well, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you're watching from. You're watching the right stream because Gamer Legion are taking on Cloud9 and Gamer Legion are a map to the good. They take their map pick and have humbled Cloud9. Many expecting this team that, yes, operating without Axile, were still expected to be finding themselves in the playoffs of Cologne. Gamer Legion standing in their way. I've got Chatty B with me to break it all down. Yeah, especially when you consider the team that they have to get past as this final best of three. All expectations right. were coming out of the break. Cloud9 with some of the most impressive roster changes with Gamer Legion at the other end of that spectrum. Sure, a visa issue. We know how much a player like Axile means to a team like this. I uh, even have the accolades of uh, this, this Cloud9 roster if it was all full five. You've got Shiro, he was the third best player in the world in 2020. He was the fourth best player in the world in 2021. Axile, the fourth best player in 2022. The fifth best player in 2021. Then you've got Hobbit, he came in at number six in 2021. He was 11th in the world in 2017. And uh, well, then you have Electronic. Well, his history, I think it speaks for itself. Uh, number seven in 2021, if we're going with recently. And then, Perfecto, you got Anchor of the Year. So uh, there are individuals in this server that get us extremely excited and for big reasons. They are star players through and through. There shouldn't be a weak link. Everybody hot to trot. Down a man here, sure. Down a map, sure. But do they have what it takes to turn this around? That's the question on everybody's lips. Bloody hell. Electronic has been at this so long and so effectively. He has been, he has been the fourth, the fifth, the sixth and the seventh best in various years. I mean, like in terms of just consistency, this man just always seems to be able to deliver. He has to deliver now if they want to hope to see in the playoffs. And deal with some of those frustrations because we saw the classic electronic tilt starting to come in yeah, from the Navi days. Yeah, what was that about? Well, I, I think if you're an in-game leader and you're calling for your teammates to like flash up, like they weren't doing what they, they were told right. to do. Like they're standing in banana, they're all holding the Guys, line. Guys, I just told you yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah, flashing? No, right. they, he was very upset with yeah, something exactly. there. So, uh, and maybe understandably so. But uh, regardless, like I said, we got all bumps in seats, all the issues sorted, and we are going to get things underway. Electronic head -head. and Nealon, yeah. And uh, <laughs> Nealon, the newly appointed in-game leader of Gamer Legion, brought over from EG. Let's get this one on. And uh, we might even have a bit of history for everybody as far as some of these Gamer Legion slash Cloud9 member overlap will go. But let's focus on this pistol for now. Let's two pairs that. of dual Berettas. And two smoke grenades for Cloud9. They're going out mid without a smoke. They're just going to walk out. You can obviously throw one from here as well, should you require it, but... Yeah, there it is. to flash. Late on the red smoke. Julie's in Donut. 30 bullets of pain. Oh, when he's only going to get away with one. Traded out in towards the site now. Have to deal with Volt and Neelan. Yeah, but there's two of them here. Perhaps the crossfire, you can see the distraction from Neelan. Maybe they overlook Volt on their clears. Oh, no, they do not. One to the face already. Feeling rather hard done by Yasta Retreat, and Shiro will catch him. Just a flash of his legs on Temple, long range, and yeah, 2v4 for this retake. You can have Donut, Cloud9 say. They'll hold the exit. Three to find up close, oh. and a great shot out of Kios. Would have needed that second to be bang on the money instead. Isaac, Isaac's pistols. Very pesky. Oh, there's a difference already. Cloud9 with a pistol round. In map number one, they yep. uh, lost the T pistol, but then won the four spy, and that's how they got a big spree of rounds going in that second half of play. But this time, pick up numero uno, and now can set their sights on dealing with this four spy. Can't even fault Acor there. I mean, obviously he's expecting one, two, not four, when he rounds that corner. And it was on that delay, right, right, as well. If it was quick. I see what you're saying. By delaying it, it even it even more makes you think there's one or two. Because it could be lane, they're doing something else it's elsewhere, not, blah. It's not just the rush, yeah, right? Yeah, right. I'm with you. They're going to fight mid here. Hobbit, one of my favorite players to watch in his mid takes. They do flash through. There's a lot of bodies here to receive them. And that looks clean from the boys of Cloud9. Yep. They'll leave with three frags. Amiga 1 to boast for Gamer Legion. And they know that a flash came over, so that'll either be from A or just outside of middle here. So they have a good idea on where one of the remaining two pieces are. They just need to put a leash on Neelan. We're covering off right now in cave stage one. He's searching with this 5.7, a pretty deadly weapon at this type of range. Hobbit needs to be careful. I heard FaZe calling it Maze. Yeah. I like that. We used to, I think, well, actually maybe it was Matrix on Cobblestone mm -hmm. with the stairs. Matrix is a good call out too. But this area here used to have boxes, remember? That was right. a bit mazy. Uh, yeah. 
I don't miss the boxes. Now we've uh, had it without it. It's so Much nice. Much better. Yeah, it really changed the map for the better. So okay. do you think, were they, were they calling Maze the first stage of Cave or the second? I think they're calling the whole thing Maze. Oh, the whole thing is Maze. Right, uh, whereas like I call the whole thing Cave when it should definitely have right. separate names. It should, but I just, I can't, I don't like Jag for some reason. Mm. It just triggers me. I, is it is it even a Jaguar? Did we get down well, to that's the... It. Someone smarter than me knows that there's like a certain animal that isn't in this region. Like, okay. What is that? I it's, don't know. Let us know. Hit us up on Twitter at ESLCS at Machine Neg. But I, I, I don't want you to just tell me what you think it is. I would like your reference points. If you're right. going to do some study, I want some right. Wikipedia articles. Cause, cause I, I need to know. It can't all be cave because there is two very different fights in two different dynamics. And of it that means part. an awful lot depending on what you have control so of. It'd be nice to be specific. Ooh, and hop it. Hello. He's got the whole team in front of him. And fortunately, he's got Shiro with him. Jewel Beretta double. Wait, they would only have one pistol when doing the... That's true. But why do I think people in the Western would have two That's pistols? That's also true. So we've got kind of almost conflicting assumptions we need research on that about as the well. Cowboys. So guys, once you finish with cowboys the Jaguar research... and Caves. Yeah, Cowboys and Caves does sound like a kind of post-hardcore album. This Trace's favorite movie. He would like that one, especially because they'll probably be eating some red beans and ravioli. His favorite meal as well. All right, well, into the guns. That was meant to be about Eco to give you the history lesson, but it can wait. We'll put it in our pocket. History ain't going anywhere. Longer. That's the beauty of it. Oh, Flash. Perfect. Look at that team play. Game of Legion catch Hobbit. Completely exposed. And with a white screen, he goes down. Lots of smokes invested into this, mind you. Force. Make it five. Already deployed on the map at the same time. There's a lot more, well, time in this round. Oh, chipping away at Neelan. HE lands, the smoke is still up, and he'll actually crawl forward on it. They are going to push this, curiously enough. This is on the fade, not dangerous yet, but if they round the corner, right. there's three players to deal with. Perfecto addressing it now. He's aware. It's a possibility. Uh, not ready, though, is he? No, it doesn't look that way. He's got help now. His crosshair will be on the money when necessary. Two into cave. If they're throwing Yuta from here, they are susceptible. Yeah, well, that's the plan. Buster to hold him while he does so. So they're being bitter about this. But oh, wait, they know there's. They must know there's another one. Did he throw the smoke? It doesn't look like it. Okay. He's got a full belt of util. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so electronic. He eats that nade. They are really in trouble now. Cloud Nine, if they want to keep this sheet clean, it's their pick for a reason. And they'll flash and go. Turned in. Deleted. Not Overlooking. high clearing. Neelan, maybe. Maybe. Oh, oh wait, Perfecto. Barrel. Yeah, Perfecto saw the barrel. And he will find him. That is an important frag that determines this round right now here, right now. Retake on. Isaac has the kit. Acorn on that AWP. Check they damage with the nade. Them are. Looking for answers. Opting for long side. It's currently unoccupied and... Smoke cave, so this fight happens here and now. Acor, good for it. Need the trade out of Isaac as well, or at least provide one. No, oh, the jump costs him. Shiro comes up clutch, comes up huge. <laughs> That's so funny from Shiro. <laughs> if we could get the camera on that reaction again, he's celebrating getting it done with the 17 bullets left, then realizes I don't have the orb. Quick, I need it. Give it to me now. And it started, you know, this feels great from Hobbit. He watched that whole round transpire. Down and out early from the Isaac Flash. And this is great start though, isn't it? And this is what, a three on five situation. Shiro has to take out Electronic to get it done, get it across the line. Lucky Perfecto spots the barrel and here it is. Shiro, 17 bullets, he uses all of them to finish off the round <laughs> and gets back his AWP for good measure. 4-0 start for Cloud9. Here we go, this is the Cloud9 we've grown to expect in Cologne. Just ask their opponents. It's not always pretty, and I think eventually it will be. Yeah. But uh, it has to be a bit more gritty from this iteration, which is fine by me. It means a bit more clutchy CS, a bit more in your face than what we might traditionally get. Game of Legion. Back and forth they go, ping ponging across the map. Well, neither side is being knocked on just yet. It is going to be all five residing over towards B now. Perfected with a very, very passive stance. Electronic and Hobbit out middle. And I can give you this history lesson. So, once upon a time, there was an event called Star Ladder Berlin 2019. Mm. And there was a CIS team. 
Their name was Simon Gaming. They had someone you might remember called Rasmic Boss, but a couple of other players that they had on that team. Neelan and Kios alongside of Perfecto. The three of them used to play together on Simon Gaming. And that was back at a major together. And uh, it's been a different trajectory for a lot of them since. Kios seemingly making it to a major grand final. Perfecto winning one, being part of Na'Vi. And Neelan on AG. And that's, uh, ooh, they're gonna fight this. Yeah, that's so good. But, oh, Hobbit saves Electronic. Can't believe he's still alive and he's allowed to contribute as well. That's the kind of teammates you want. You're eating the flashbangs and they are covering you perfectly. I'm very happy with Gamer Legion there as well, though. The boss said jump through the smoke and fight and everybody did it. So mm -hmm. if we're talking about team elements, that's great. If you know no one's baiting, nobody's sticking. There's always that one guy, you know, just, oh, yeah. I, I got lost in the smoke. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, no, I had a different idea. And this, this is, is it, cool. look. Jump, Spring it into action. Yeah, it didn't help them, but uh, at least they did it together. In the Hobbit's position, yeah, no one's going to be ready to start pre-firing on top of the sign. He gets two before he goes down, and the rest just falls into place beautifully. Electronic gets his vision back, and the weapon discrepancy is felt. Well, this is Ash's first timeout that has been used here on the CT side for Gamer Legion. You can see here he wants to change the flow of this one. Would love to get on the board, and well, Gamer Legion started out in quite a dominating fashion on their map choice. Cloud9 are doing the same here. Now, it looks like Volt has taken over responsibilities in middle here, which is what Emma did. So you see him in combination with multiple different members. Isaac tends to be the A anchor, but uh, as the rifler, you support middle. Sometimes your orb will fill that void. And speaking of orbs, Shiro. Okay, that's going to punish them a whole lot right there. Eight Once bitten, twice shy. I'm not sure if we're going to see that type of mid-aggression again. Zero, yeah, you just can't get through, Shiro. It's a great way to set up round number six here, and that's just straight off the back of the timeout the Gamer Legion took, so they were more than happy to play for that control. They knew what type of CD set up they were going to be opening the account with, and now scratching their heads, scrambling, and playing for info at least. So together... <laughs> Shiro's already considered this and actually is being asked to uh, drop some nades. He falls away. Does Volt keep pushing or does he just park the bus? I think right? he'll, he will eventually. I think it will require some calls from his teammates. What I like here, and we can use the radar as an example while we see Cloud9 taking this B lane control, is because he can stay in A main, if they do lose mid and they come through Donut to A, essentially taking the A site, you have 180 degrees to have to worry about, right, as right. you entry in. So you're giving up Donut and essentially A here, but you leave yourself Whoa. a late piece. Huge amount of nade damage. Kios, he's got a good idea that there's a commitment behind this. And oh, the angle from Acor not rewarded. He doesn't connect his shot, but whoop off the flash. Confidence from Kios. And another TK. I've just nailed Hobbit. What is that? But yeah, there was nobody on the screen right there. That's a little bizarre. bit unfortunate. Super bizarre. It may not cost them though, Chad. I think unless Acor's feeling himself. They're going to get past the orb. Yeah, that's a flash. And he's so Jeez. dead. Perfecto. Can't believe his luck. Perfect flash from Shiro. Neelan will contribute one back, and Volt gets a frag. This would be a big time to step it up, find a little taste of victory here on your opponent's pick. But Shiro in this form is going to be hard to get through, even with that close quarters orb. You'd think that would be a disadvantage, not in Shiro's world. They've just dropped the smoke here. Will Neelan smoke cave or ramp? That's the question. Cave again? Okay, now Shiro is locked out. But Perfecto, he is ready. Takes the first, the second seems imminent, the fight is given, Vault will find it, but you really are going to be hard pressed to get the defuse, Shiro. Does he call the bluff? Does he push it? Forces him out, goes wide. It's too damn good from Shiro. I mean, yeah, we talked about him yet to die, but that just does so much to the funds as well for Cloud9. They have got oodles of cash to splash. And Game of Legion still yet to make a single indent into this T side. I wonder how they're feeling about the TKs in the last couple here. Here is it. Bang. Let's see this Hello? One. <laughs> um, sorry, mate. Yeah, no, the mouse, uh, just the uh, keyboard. I just kind of slammed it into the keyboard. I thought click. I saw something, man. Do you want me to shoot or not? It's the first time I've seen Hobbit kind of give a death blow. <laughs> I didn't think he had it in him. The evils, as we'd call it in the UK. Or daggers. Isaac I've aware. Good yeah. spot for this. He is. He gets the first, expected to trade. Hobbit, good to provide it. They have at least got bodies here, Chad. There's something to be said. 
Conservative buy. Kion's taking a gamble around the smokes. And well, with Kion's hitting deagle shots like that and spotted out oh, on oh, oh, God, they're all gone. GL. Hey, Jeff and Gamer Legion are having fun right now. That is a huge round to win. Hardly anything brought in the investment there. They have a set piece in towards the side. They lose one initially. In the space, he's good enough. Hobbit gets the tray without too many issues there, but weeding around in some of their own smokes. Game of Legion just surge forward, take the fight, catch them all in the choke point. Uh, we cut away on Kios, right? But he, we saw it from his enemy POV. That shot onto Electronic. And then he got a little lost in the source, but this, everyone hitting their shots. It's Volt actually getting two in quick succession. Okay, a little bit of belief. A little bit of belief, a taste of victory. We'll see how short-lived that is. Neelan's already put on notice here. Spammed on down to half HP, but Perfecto playing behind the flames there. Trying to spam him through the boards over towards B. So pressure being felt early. We'll draw the rotation point across. They've got three towards the B site right now. Acor in Donut. Is that healing? More spam damage. Not going to be confirmed. Acor's drawn a line in the sand. I'm worried about lane. Yeah, but Acor can stay free. Oh, Not and anymore. he. Yeah, well, the reason I say that is because they have cave control still. So he wasn't worried about ledge, but still loses the jewel. And it makes it really awkward for the rest of them. Look at this. Already into Donut. Shira's got ledge. And Isaac. Oh, missed his Molly missed there, didn't his he? Molly. Will they clear out Perfecto on this re aggress? It doesn't look like they will. So he'll have a very potent flank, but the information. Heard now, Hobbit, aware, and instead pushing through. Electronic, great on the swing. The precision and the speed by which he finds those shots. Yeah, Vault's starting to back off now as well, and Isaac too, but they need to be extremely careful here because Perfecto hasn't moved from Polly's pocket. He's here in steps. He's here in a lot of steps. Not ready for this at all. Clothes lined by Perfecto. Well, he might not be ready for Vault. Committed to this on the box. Definitely not where his box there's going to be. Nice work from Vault. He's rewarded for his angle. And his presence of mind for the hunt from Perfecto. But it does look like Electronic's not going to give in. And we'll take everything away. So those celebrations in the previous are cut short. But what the previous does afford them is another buy here. right? Because right. you won that round and you picked up all those guns, you were already saving for the rainy day. And now that the rainy day has come once more, that umbrella is ready and raring to go. So they can whip it out here, but not before they take a quick 30-second conversation with the coach, Ash. 7-1, six rounds down. As mentioned, another buy available. There's an AWP on the table for Acor. If you'd like it, they could even double AWP. Kios or Neelan could drop one of those. Even wielded themselves. Isaac might have to operate with something a, a little bit smaller here, but we saw him find a, a whole lot of punch in that MP9 over towards A previously. Like Acor is a player that when you can afford one, you want him to be taking it, right? You don't, you wouldn't want to you, smooth you it you over with rifles. You almost need it. Yeah. You almost need that identity of Acor being that stubborn, constant, in-your-face AWP that can make the difference. Right. And he wasn't needed on Inferno on map number one. We turned most of our affections towards Isaac, who time after time had those big 3Ks over towards that A side of the map, Vault with some good chip-ins. Kios getting banana control on the T side. But a map like Ancient, if your AWP can get going, get rolling. Oh, wow, Hobbit rolls into Vault. Completely flashed off, but perfectly placed all the same. Here's that AWP, right? So this is where Acor has to hit the first, and that'll be enough to stall them out. Becomes a different round if they can get away from that orb with the information. Util heard, so Acor's certainly prepared for this. And that's the shot he hit. Will slow them down as the Molly ensures it. It's essentially set up for this for the start of the round, right? They position him there immediately. They put three rifles to deal with mid. They trade one for one. Cloud9 can't get that mid control. They go looking somewhere else. And now, Gamer Legion are actually ahead of them on the rotation here. They're just going to leave Acor over towards Temple. They'll play three rifles locking down this B site. And another note is just how much utility is left over. A couple of smokes to block out for B and stall out Cloud9 before they can get things going. Vertigo map 2, ESL.GG slash Twitch A about to get underway as Shiro's got two pushing into him. He's so ready for it. Even gets away. Hold on. Hold your horses. Neelan onto Perfecto, maintains this advantage that they so desperately seek. Club Molly, oh, actually designed for Electronic to leave through. He can still get out. And Will 
Isaac confirmed. There's Neil in there as well. Best case save. Cover for the absence of Perfecto's funds. GL will be given that second. So there, you know, in terms of the A core posting on A. Now, we, if you're an Orpa, well, how does the thought process go? If you, you want to stay dynamic, the round prior you were responsible for donor and kind of just got out orb. If you want to do something crazy, right? And this is this is where the, if you're just going to continue to be used as that stationary turret to lock down a key component of A, and they want to mainly use the rifles, yeah. then what they're going to do is they're just going to have him float A, right? Because that's that's the best thing they could do. If they want to try and set him up for fights, it can be spawn based. If he gets a good cave spawn, he can run, he can take that fight. But they haven't had too many issues over towards cave early. If you go over towards B at the start, you might get executed upon and find yourself out of position. If you go towards mid, red is definitely going to be smoked, so maybe you try your luck towards Donut. And that appears to be where he's starting. So if Kios retains this cave control, and we can highlight what I was talking about in the previous. So right now they know they're not completely crossed on mid, right? You have Acor in Donut, Kios making sure they haven't crossed B lane. And now he can step out. He's not worried about ledge. Right. His bigger issue is this Tetris box. You can see the focus there. If he would like, he'd get a teammate to come over. Maybe Isaac with a molly. But at this point, Acor really just has to worry about the mid-slip. Well, they're aware that it's likely an orb save, right? They need to, they, what they should, yes. I think what they need to do, though, is, is try and apply a bit more pressure towards Kios on K, right? Because it has just been him there a lot of the time. And if they were to get this space quicker, then they could apply a bit more mid-pressure and Hobbit wouldn't just be doing it running through smokes. But regardless, it's I mean, a I see it, uh, Electronic jumping and Shiro firing off late on the swing. Yeah, but Kios, who get the early warning and <gasps> turns his back on them. He's been run down, held by Volt as well. They saw three there. Electronic That's would a have lot seen of two info. more players. Vecto dumping his Uto. Oh, and Hobbit punishes Kios for pushing ahead of the smoke. Nice one back. Nealon being hunted by Shiro. He's got the bomb on his back as he tries to provide an extra frag before that plant goes in. Extinguish and plant. They're all here now. Bomb has been planted. And Shiro, legs exposed. He still hits the shot despite the damage. Hanging on, not from the nade. Acor takes him down. The threat surely now neutralized. Only Perfecto with a Tech 9 buster in that cave position. Gonna have to do it all now as Gamer Legion look to secure a third on this CT spam side. Here. He can try and spam him off could, the bomb, but. He could. He could. Oh, he was just in the wrong spot. A little more to the right, but no, it's three. And Buster, they'll let you have your M4. It's all yours. All right, we'll scrounge you together a couple here at Game of Legion. It's two consecutive, the first taste of, of victory back to back for GL. The only other round we've seen was with those Deagles. Oh, these last and two the are previous. filling us with a whole lot more confidence, right? right? These, are, these are definitely better rounds to be winning here. We can see Acor still not just being let off the tap here with that AWP. Same task, make sure that mid does not hemorrhage. Oh no, it's an A play from Acor again with the AWP. So Isaac and Volt in combination for middle here. Cloud9 not pressing the issue. They didn't even throw out a red smoke. And you can see early what the crowd control util is. A B ramp smoke, a cave molly, a deep mid smoke. So it's a late mid take here. Yeah, they dropped smokes for these to be thrown out. Going through the process. Buster's cleared out the forward position of a main. They would just block towards Donut here. As I just dropped the defensive smoke, so they will get out and get the mid control. But is the question pressure towards A or is it a jump up and focus towards B? Well, as we see Electronics start to lurk behind this. Ah, cheeky from Isaac. Yeah, that is and naughty. I'm not sure that's exactly where Electronic wanted that Molly to go either. That is exactly what Hobbit was waiting for. He looks for answers. Isaac, that is. And only yet leaves with a bullet between the eyes. So the finish here, you'd feel it should be over towards B. You've still got Buster parked in main. You just cleared someone out of the donut position. You're going to go back and scoop up the bomb. You have a smoke and a molly available on Perfecto here. Electronic. Nice adjustment. Yeah, he's looking like his old self. We discussed his pedigree. This will just be the save here from Game Allegiance. This one came somewhat easy. I like the molly in mid to, to deal with that scale towards red, but I'm not thinking that cost him his life. Just a nice shot from Hobbit. 
But they are hunting again, and this is something we've seen Cloud9 getting up to here. Happy to throw multiple bodies at the problem to try and remove any threats going forward. I think Electronics also just trying to get away from that bomb radius. Don't forget, with one HP it's and Ancient... travel to a different map, I Yeah, think. if you could try and get away. <laughs> I think maybe Vault Corner is the perfect corner for Electronic. That's the way he wants to go. Go down. Vault would have loved that last bullet of the spray. Removing the AWP would be great, but this is a good position for Acor to save here. Yeah, he hears a lot of them. He takes the pot shot. Okay, yep. Fair enough. Leaves with his AWP. That's an important save. Cloud9, they've won out already on this T half, and the vibe certainly returning to them after frustrations in map one. Uh, third map for this, Mirage, worth mentioning. And that's another map we haven't seen Cloud9 play. Okay, another they black They only box. played three maps coming into today. It was uh, some Ancient, some Anubis, and some Vertigo. And uh, I think Blair pointed out in the desk that we'd be seeing two new maps from them here today. And the first didn't go very well at all. Inferno was all game of Legion. Don't get to see this one too often. Isaac looking for a 900 bucks kill reward. If anyone's foolish enough to walk into his domain, it's Buster passive in this hold. It's aware that the likelihood for a close quarter pistol, never mind a shotgun. The AWP is pretty scary here because they're trying to avoid it, right? Or at least they're trying to make the path of least resistance available as Acor. Now that it's noted, you'd like to see them move a little bit quicker here, but you still have to worry about a stack if you're Cloud9. You're worried right. about pistols grouped up, so you can't just run into this you need to be diligent, and you need to make sure you have guns out. Trying to slow them down on the rotation, but it's already happened. That smoke achieves nothing. Buster has the bomb. Buster has the bomb, and Isaac's shotgun. Rewarded! He gets himself the frag he was so desperately sought and body Almost. shot. Yeah, it's a different round if he converts that. That was the bomb as well. Look at the damage. Neelan trying to disrupt the plant with a pot shot through the smoke, perhaps, but no, plays upon the fade, and he's lost his teammate, so one. And done. Shira will close it out for Cloud9. Well, how many frag? I feel like I've seen it said his name so much. 15 and 3. That's quite the KD. Cloud9. Definitely haven't, um, you know, we haven't lost any of the, the, the beauty in Shiro's game, even when, you know, you plugged a new leader into the system. Uh, not that that would be an assumption of mine. But but I think it's based off of, uh, you know, I was saying before that Shiro kind of had to come out of his shell and show some of these big ball moments, like going for crazy plays or taking risks, not just saving, not just being that, you know, perfect AWPA, right? He's definitely come out of his shell in that regard. And if anything, that's going to work better in a team that has a stand in or a team that's newly put together because he's going to take a few more risks. He's going to take a few more right. chances and he understands what he needs to do to get the rounds won. And you see him not only doing it with the AWP, but doing it with the rifle in rounds as well. He is an absolute star here. And, well, you know, we, we tried not to rub it in everybody's nose too much. Axel would still be the second star of this team if he was in the server. So they, they, they're lacking their second best piece. Yeah, and yet functioning uh, competitively here. In yeah, it, it's working. Yeah, it's working. It's not uh, shining. Most definitely, a bit more rough around. I'm not the putting it in a showroom. Sure. You know, I would yeah. I would install this hot world or unit in your home, but it's not the prettiest welding job I've Gets done. Gets the job done. As Kios fails to do just that, swings out. Yeah, look, that's two, didn't it? Gets nothing done. Neilan, that's six bullets left as he reloads and is pushed by the Orb Shiro entering into the site there. Crazy, only three deaths, huh? Even when, and when he, and he goes for pushes like that, you give me a sound cue, I'm going to punish. It doesn't matter what's in my hands. Just looking at the opening exchanges here, Isaac has uh, managed to win out three, but mm. one of those was with the shotgun. So that's a, I don't want to call it a, a non-starter. That'd be nice. That's a, 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 could have been a round winning shotgun. Yeah, no, f true, true. That is true. Okay, I will, I'll, I'll, I'll retract my Thank statement. You. Thank you very so much. So he's managed three, Vault's managed one. The rest have all been coming in for Cloud9, and that's through the lion's share of Hobbit. And that makes sense. He has a lot of action in early exchanges towards middle. Yeah. And more often than not, he's going to be in those fights. It's Isaac, trying why A main is his home. Shiro knowing that... Uh... Oh, okay, I was going to say, I, yeah. I did just look at the final. I was Me like, Shiro knowing that somebody maybe could... Uh... <laughs> oh, God, <geez. laughs> He takes a 
he caught up as well. Okay, never oh mind. Oh my <laughs> god, yeah, yeah, you cheeky, cheeky bean. The Deagle running at him after time, after hearing like weapon drops and sound cues. Acor's probably a bit baffled as to what, how he just got ran down like that. This is the first time out of Cloud9 here, so uh, Groove just with the pause to say, guys, it's going very well. I'd just like to say, I'm proud of you all. Thank you all for being here today in the company of each other. Mm. We are coming together as a team, and what you're displaying on the server has really put a smile on my face. You can't see it, mm. and you never will. Never. But trust me, it's there. Actually, I think I saw my first Groove smile in the first Cloud9 game of Cologne. When they were all like talky and happy and like fresh off of their boot camp, and the vi whimsical there. vibe, I think uh, someone was cracking a joke, and I did see a little bit of a smile from Groove. Normally quite straight face, straight laced, and of course the brains behind this Cloud9 roster. Previously the Gambit youngsters roster, M management, scouting, and strategy. A little bit of everything. And a player once upon a time. Yeah. He's definitely been around the block seasoned veteran of the scene and Hobbit you could say the same as well major champion Hobbit and uh, he's just gonna go ahead Wee! and nearly win the round on his own well we even spoke to we we were talking to Groove weren't we about uh, the way they used to name spots yeah that was interesting never never became a content piece that but uh, we had a good time a swing and a miss and that is a bit of a swing and a miss from Buster nah look at the bomb bro yeah it's okay if only Isaac pushed. Yeah, you're right. If only he knew. Yeah, if only if they, only were, if only they were cheating, Chad. They'd have, they'd have known they had an advantage. Instead, this one's going to be a bit of a painful 60 seconds for both teams. They're both going to kind of wait for you to make the next move. There is an AK to be received. Perfecto isn't actively holding this. But Neenan's not feeling particularly invigorated to go for it. They're hunting him down now. He just had a little glance as well. So, oh, he's in the box. Horrible death for Neelan. <laughs> he reacted in time, made yeah. it awkward for Electronic. Well, Isaac does have a scavenged AK, and he's actually been very serviceable. I am surprised how long it has taken them to activate here. And when they pick up the bomb, after that kill, they might be lulled into going towards Isaac's domain of A main. Now, if his plan was just to save here, he might be saving the round. 24, do you really They're go going. D? They're Straight. Then I'm going to clear this, There's then I'm no going to clear this, then I'm going to clear this. Does he trigger discipline it? Does he trigger discipline it? This could be crazy. Oh my god. Both of them, both of them. Perfecto, the first. Oh, 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 Isaac oh. again! Saves GL! Stunning multi-kill from Isaac. He can't quite believe they walk into him. And we talked about not knowing about the bomb, Chad. Well, it's still, regardless of not knowing about it, leads to Isaac's conversion. Don't they look stupid? All he was doing was saving. There's 13 seconds left in the round right here, and Isaac was in a main on low HP, wanting to retain an AK-47 for round number 15 in Gabriel Legion. They'll take four, sure, I know it's only a meager four, but that was given to them. A tech timeout now. I'm hearing that it's an audio issue. Now, I may be jumping to some conclusions, Chad, but after losing a round like that, having an audio issue might be a bit of a frustrated headset rip or two. Yeah, I suppose it depends on which side of the server it's on. How much communication we got here behind it? Oh, it's good. okay. It was all right. It's all right. It's called by, called by GL? the uh, Game of Legion boys. Oh, damn it. I, have, I, I wanted to build this right. idea that Cloud9 no, is I would have liked that too. triggered, you know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Electronic like, trying to smash He's him ripped out. his headphones off. We can't show him. It can't oh, believe it. No, it's all fine. It's Neilan who's just... Uh, hey, guys, I could, didn't get to have sound that round. Turns out that's quite an important part of Counter-Strike. Oh, it's a whole new headset. Yep. A whole new world. A new fantastic point of view. All right, uh, we have League Ops. Now, two gentlemen required here to get this one done. Neil, I'm getting out of the way. We need access, full access here to get this headphones plugged in. Conversation being had here, eye to eye. Neil with a smile on his face and gesturing. Happy with this. The drink comes through. Neil, <laughs> really getting a good job done here. Is A caught a glimpse and a smile? We know he can't talk during the technical timeout. As Paperwork moved, cables dangled, and Groove, he can't quite believe it. Is there a universe where a 10-5 would convince you we could end, end in two, or are you almost set in Mirage? Do you believe in the multiverse? I don't even know what that is. Well, then the, the answer is yes, there okay. is a universe. Okay, I see. There's Not ours. Universes. Not yeah, ours, however. Parallel to ours. Yeah, can we step into it? No. I, I think it's very hard to see Game of Legion winning this map from where it's at right now, but... If 
you're right. If tilt is festering, which already exists from yeah. the previous game, we saw we have it. Evidence. If it starts to take hold again, right, and Cloud9 lose another bit of a stink around here to go into half time. 10 5 at the half. You're going to require a Game of Legion pistol, which they did a good job in map number one of getting two out of the two. Yeah. Uh, Isaac, we know he can hit shots on the pistols. Cloud9 are looking a little bit rough around the edges. Uh, then then there is there is a universe indeed. We've got 19 kills on Shiro. We've got 15 for Hobbit. we got Electronic with 11. Six for Buster, six for Perfecto. There's been a couple of TKs in the mix. Shiro took down Electronic in one of those rounds. Perfecto shot Hobbit in the back of the head. Could that be a cool thing we did as well, where we just have the... Um we keep track of the utility damage on the sides, so then you can yeah, see... Yeah, it'd be much better, much right? Much more valuable. Yeah, then, then it's comparable. Yeah. Like in, in the first half, comparing right. utility damage is it's like... It's pointless. Yeah, unless you're talking about banana players, and then like back and forth, maybe the Ts are landing better yeah, HEs okay. than the CTs. But even still, from reference points, this is why I have issues with the scoreboard being cumulative over the entire game, is yeah, because no. it doesn't give you a fair representation of exactly what's gone down. Yeah, it'd be cool if I, I could just kind of have something here, and I could see that, you know, like in HLTV, like yeah. CTT, CTT, and... Well, do you know anybody Valve, maybe we could. Oh, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Send an email or something. Because that could make a difference, man. Especially because you could sit there and go, you know, this CT, their CT side, they, they had 500 more utility damage by this point. 100%. You know, whatever. That's huge. Like, in terms of that gap in the game or a difference between the two teams. Yeah. Or if they, if, if Valve won't build it, we can ask MC to do it. I swear that man probably could do anything I asked him. Like, so I, maybe we get him on the job? A little wizard. Incredibly talented wizard. Yeah, exactly. You know... Magic is real, it's just now it's those dudes that can just fix everything. Yeah. Hey, I have this idea, can you... Yep. They're, they're ones are keyboards. Yeah, right. You know, you, we were talk, you've been playing a bit of CS2 the last couple oh, of days, you were telling me about one of your Deagle rounds, but um, you know on the scoreboard there, they've added damage. Yes. I like that. I think that's huge. I like that a lot, I because it's, it's so one much, of the bigger metrics but we it's, use. It's much, much better and more easy to digest and to appreciate than ADR. Sure. People don't, at a glance, process an average and what that means and what that translates okay. into. I think we do. Obviously, we're saying ADR. We're working at ADR every single mm. day. But even just, you know, as a casual player, never mind a casual viewer, ADR doesn't... Like, I can say 100 ADR and you're like, okay, so that's like a kill, kill around. Yeah. But if, I, if I'm looking at the grand total of the damage and the discrepancy between that and, you know, the kills, you can really understand what someone's been contributing. Yeah, I imagine if you're a player as well, right? And I don't mean at the top end. I mean at the fun with friends, right? You're mainly just looking at the kills and that's the assists, but that's it the give you more appreciation. Well. That's the order of... The, you know, you could have only like five kills, someone else could have 10, but you can have more more damage. Yeah. You know, and you're at the top of the scoreboard. And that's one, a, a better way that, well, it's if maybe people aren't finishing the kills, which sucks, well, that'll, be, suck. that'll be shown in the assists. Oh, game on. Let's not get caught out. Volt, he's already lost a lot of health, and Shiro's going for the early fight. Doesn't hit his shot. Whoa, Kios, Kios, data numbered. Trapped on rat. Orb is coming. Body forces Shiro forward. Are you up for it? Kios is dead. Trade unavailable Whoa. immediately, but Acor swings through with the AWP. Buster not taking any liberties out towards A here quickly, at least. If he made some steps, Volt's going to hear that. You can see he's still just clearing out because Isaac's been here though. more often than not. He has to, especially considering where that AWP was noted here. You'd think so. I think maybe... Yeah, he's selling something now. Feels steps. a little bit too late. Yeah, Isaac's already elbow. Nothing's here. He's going to call, like, no one holding, like, passive mid. <gasps> That's the bomb spotted. Oh, a screamer. Acor, yeah, he's mad about that. Goes looking for off the flash for another and does deliver. Perfecto. Walked up. He knows where the last one was. Spotted with the bomb. Gets one. Hobbit. No reason not to have a little look into this round. Neilan's going to spot him. Lock the door. And he's not expecting one here. Perfect angle and conversion and a half that could be serviceable. Don't you go anywhere. Join us after the break to see if Cloud9 take us to three or if Gamer Legion do what many considered impossible.
What is your calling? Cloud9 on their map pick, looking to equalize or reverse sweep their way through to the playoffs. Gamer Legion are up, but Cloud9 are up here in map two, that's for sure, a 10-5 half. Some individual heroics out of some of the Gamer Legion squads. Shiro is up to Shiro things. An incredible KD, you don't really doubt it when you see it. It's a, it's a brutal haul, 20 and five with 130 ADR. That's on the T side, we've swapped sides now. I yeah. think that Shiro would do his best work on the CT. So, yeah, it's already been fantastic. Oh, the odds, uh, they still favor Cloud9 for a reverse sweep. Yeah, fair enough. And they don't hate uh, this. Straight into two players. Yeah, Hobbit, Dreamy, jumping, hard oh, to track, no. and only the one. They've been flattened. It is Shiro, and he's already been spotted out. Ooh, Isaac, a fumble there. Going for the plant. Shiro spotted out. Kios gets him down, but Buster's rotated through a two on two. Not as much of a guarantee now. Plant won't be contested. This is a fight for Acor that favors him. That P250 rattles off a shot or two. He knows where they both are. Oh, but he's losing health rapidly. Kios tries to channel him away. Acor still getting whittled away out by Buster. He's got 10 bullets left to work this one out. Acor, hoping Kios can hold the cross, but Perfecto does catch him, and now Kios is sticking around on the site, and Buster only needs one bullet to secure the pistol for C9. And after losing Donut so convincingly, surprised that Cloud9 managed to get themselves back in, and you can see that it's all happy <laughs> in the camp. I don't think it would be if they lost that round, because you're bang on. That looked like user error from Hobbit, didn't it? It feels like it should be good for one. You set up with the dual Berettas, unable to get anything done there, but regardless, no real issues. Down to the wire, Diffuse comes in, Cloud9 get themselves up to 11. And as you can see, top right of our screen, we have Mirage coming up next. And they just need five more rounds to get there. Now, Game of Legion with the plant. We traditionally would see a lot of teams go for a force by here. They've taken their fourth and final tactical timeout to have exactly that conversation. If they take an eco here, they can buy into the next round without any problems. It's going to be a very tidy looking buy. They might even have the extra bells and whistles. A lot of teams would buy Galils, Tech Nines with armor, Util, and try and turn this into a slog fest. And that is what they're going to complete this One, uh, 30 seconds with. Ticket to the slog fest, please. And, and, and this here, because I, I like the fact that nobody bought up until the fact that the timeout had concluded. Because that meant that Neil and, and Ash could decide on what approach they needed. Everybody knows how they have to prioritize their weapons or utility. And you can work out how you can get the most out of this round. Dropping AKs, how are we going to make this work? So this is good. Game Allegiant took their time and are going to, going to go into the second round with a very clear game plan, you would hope. You certainly would. Opening kill is going to be a big determining factor of the lay of the land here in round 17. And Electronic, he's already confirmed no one's uh, beat the smoke, as it were. Maybe it's contact not up occupied, the ramp here. and they are walking up. Yeah, this is just a jump spot from Perfecto. He's got a smoke lineup, but they might be ahead of this. And oh, he's lost his head Absolutely as well. Kios, the entry for Aga. Pedal to the metal and straight into their faces. That is nuts. He thrives with a good spawn. It doesn't he thrives he? with a good He call. really likes to be in the thick of things. That just takes me back to Banana. Yep. Yeah, we've seen it multiple times. Even on Inferno on that mid take where he was just going through the uh, mid smoke from the CTs. They'd flash him in and he thrives in that environment. You just let him go. The crosshair will be in the right place. That went much better than I think they determined from the timeout. Right. Hey, let's throw a bit of a mid fake here. Let's keep some attention on us. We'll throw red. We'll keep it busy. We'll HE to soften up. And then Kios is going to walk into B and rip off two skulls. Yeah, slumped against the wall. No real counterplay. <laughs> Just owned. Crikey. And he loves looking through. Like, no one's... Uh... I would too. Yeah. No, I mean, like... You're seeing a lot of players, actually, you'd think they'd want to keep their eyes on the monitor, you know, don't get swallowed by your surroundings, but it's a rare opportunity to be able to make straight up eye contact with your opponent. And especially server. if they're not looking back at you either, right? right. You're using that as the, okay, there they are, that's my enemy, this is who I need to put in the bin, yeah. right? And like, if you can internalize that and make sure that doesn't take hold of you, mm -hmm. you can use it as a positive. 100%. I mean, for Kios, he's probably just looking at the two people he just owned, you know? They can say, hey, I know you. Yeah, I can see you. you You're not home. looking at me, and I wonder why. Here we go. Dead. Vault. An important kill. 
Then walkabouts middle and electronic. Did, how much did he see? Because with Shiro now posted up, or he was looking at the ledge jump up, he starts to rotate to B. So they have a pretty a big, pretty clear idea as to where they're going. Hobbit's here in this. Good cover. Oh. How is Neil not dead? One. Yeah. He's got all that util as well. You don't want to waste it. Perfecto. He's actually, they might assume it's clear because of the Molotov Kios again with a nice beam to the brain of Shiro. That was the bomb down in cave, but Perfecto would have had to have done so much more there. And I don't have high hopes for Buster. I think once he's noted, which is now, he shouldn't be too long for this world. The bomb's loose. Still plenty of time to deal with this. And he's surrounded. Needs out. Bomb going down. Hey, Daisy, won't be happening in the next game. Let's fucking go! And yeah, no wonder GL are going to be confident about that one because these two rounds combined, yeah, these two rounds combined are, are food and motivation for the idea of a playoff spot in map two. Yeah, and that reality has really just uh, come online with the force by victory and now the force by denial. Yeah, yeah, this is this has changed. There's a shift now. There's a clear shift here. Right, they didn't let Cloud9. Oh, have fun in the mud. That's a double red smoke. It's not the end of the world here. But this is where Gamer Legion not only believe they can do it, they are doing it. They are. And one slight concern I would have is that Acor has the bomb here. And Isaac and him have both detached. just looked away. Yeah, no. So there is just a little bit of a window where they both get jump scared, shot in the back, bomb is loose, rifles are recovered, and it gets awkward. They're going to have to shoot together here. Oh! Hell, no issue at all. Acor was not surprised. His eyebrows didn't even move. Shiro, last one on the naughty list, and there's a nice clean one. Really comfy. Forced by victory back, you convert theirs, and now you get yourself an anti-eco against USPs with all five staying alive. This is fantastic for Game of Legion going forward here. Kneeling with this MAG-10 could even opt to call something quite in your face. And I'm interested to not see Cloud9 taking a timeout just to get Groove on the mic to calm everybody down because this is about to get real rocky real quick. I spoke about Cloud9 in some of their tighter matches needing some of these bailout moments or lighter buys. We're not there just yet, but if they lose this one, someone needs to be stepped up and accounted for here on the Cloud9 side. Of course, been dropped a whole lot of utility. So it's very apparent that they plan to hit this site. Or is it smoke and mirrors? I think they want to draw them off middle here. Because Isaac and Volt look like they're still flirting with the idea of work walking out mid and well, mission accomplished. Yeah. Take a look at the T Donut Smoke as well. They can scale across to red because this will pull your red player to pull your donut player. They don't have vision. Oh, bit of a gap in that one. Buses. Maybe intentional. Yeah, it could be. Because it means that they can keep this channel open. Buster caught out completely. He probably got jumped out of his skin. As Isaac takes down that A defender, now looking for the finish into the site. Rotations are on their way. Volt. Fell this man forward. Electronic reveals himself close on the L bend. Does do. Bombs on the boost. The reload, and yeah, the bomb will be hard to retrieve. They have got time to work this one out. They're trying to jump up. Okay, awkward. Very awkward. No smokes at all. Still so, going to go down. Held at bay. Hobbit pushing in and caught by Volt. Now the smoke goes down from behind. Kios finds Shiro's AWP. Back turn, not ready. And nine in the bank. Cloud9 fans start to bite their nails. A nibble here, a nibble there. Because as Chad told us, if they lose this one, it's a different conversation. 11 to 9 with the tent seemingly on its way. Yeah, it's so rocky here for Cloud9. This is the thing. It just has to be a partial investment here. Max lost bonus into the next. The guns can come back out, but that means it's going to be a one-round game. And we're down the home stretch. I didn't think game... Like, that right there, I love that. If that smoke gap is intentional, if that's a play that they just pulled out of their ass, I love it. It looked <laughs> perfect. The way that they both clear around the donut, nobody home. Not expecting that type of a maneuver at all. And Game Elysian, impressing here. Electronic first down. And Hobbit's Deagle goes looking. Perfecto's racked up another. Not what one is of these. going on? 
Two successful digs, a miss. Oh, shot that Acorn Bates holding. Oh, but Shiro's there, and now he should have a weapon to play with. Yeah, not going to over step the mark. He's not going to get too greedy. They can still get the bomb back here. It's down outside the door. So you can see Isaac, 23 kills for Isaac. Alongside a vault here, they're going to be able to scavenge back the bomb. They've got plenty of util to work with. And if you're Cloud9, you're probably thinking, well, they should venture over towards the other side of the map, right? We've sat them on their ass over towards B. No armor. But a little bit of hope after these shots have come through. Perfecto. Spots out. Calls for aid. Shiro still worried about K. Crossfire is there. It's important to break Vault and Isaac safe. And they were worried for a moment. I don't think there's too much more concern. Especially with those nades out, that's lovely. You can see Buster's just going to have to wait this one out. But they're going to they're going to pull another one out here that they shouldn't have been winning, right? They were down in the dumps. They lost to these Deagles. They lost their heads. They just stay calm. They waltz in. They don't panic. They don't go for the plan. They don't rush the issue. Right. They play off of each other. It's good Counter Strike and Buster. Yeah, you're having a look. You don't have a kit. You've been noted now. And this is what we're talking about. Ten rounds of game Legion in just a moment's time. It's getting low. He's doing damage. And now he's getting out of dodge. Isaac and Volt have done enough. Okay, well, he does take away the weapons. There's plenty more cash, though, for Gamer Legion, and he'll go down as well. So they are still nothing but uh, double thumbs up from the Gamer Legion fans and squad. And there's so much money. Even though so many bodies were just removed right there, Gamer Legion are going to invest right now, but Acor before the buy has 14k. He's going to spend an awful lot of that while pursuing the AWP here. These were some crackers of shots from Cloud9. Some good deagles. That's fine, but you're not going to get the round off the back of it. And I thought that was about to be the bailout we were talking about to get them fired back up and back into proceedings I mean, here. Th that is how they manifest, right? Those players, them capable individually, mechanically. If, this if is I'm, an interesting call. But if I'm kneeling, I'll just call the execute towards A that I did before, but not lurk through middle this time. I'd just be much more direct on A because there'll be so many bodies worried about mid still. You do have to get past Shiro's orb, though. So if you've got a good temple smoke, it's going to force him open. They are throwing the same nades, or at least similar. Waiting for their swing through. This is his chance. They know where you are now. Set for success. Gamer Legion are into the A site. Five on five as that bomb gets punched in. Just about on the money. Buster's spray a little shy. And Acor's already posted. Shiro's trapped there. He has to worry about the back as well. Volt has got this held, and Hobbit's not going to be clear in his corner. He's going around the world as well. He'll be behind them. Now they know. Donut's going to be feeling like on a timer as well. Shiro's got 6 HP after that exchange. Bomb half gone. Oh, he's trying to close the door on the exit. Information flowing. Electronic is fragging. He wants them to go for it. He wants it. them to go now, and there's only one or two that can voice concerns. They need Buster's kit. Oh, on the bomb. One left, and they cover it off. I can't quite believe it. Electronic with the quad kill and Cloud9 steal it back. Daylight robbery right there and Electronic the general. They're roaming into the site. His teammates are thinking they're saving. No, not on his watch. He clawed them. He pulled them. He brought Cloud9 their 12th. And it felt like Game of Legion had that every day of the week. Recap, recap. Because I think this exchange with Vault had them thinking, okay, that well, we've, we've done it. Electronic nails Neil in Temple fight and then covering for that defuse. Buster had the kit. It just, everything aligned so perfectly. And Electronic, that was all him. Game you know, of Legion going to be kicking himself. No doubt. Is that enough to get Cloud9 oh! back in? Look at this! On top of each other! Cirque du Soleil! Kios can't quite believe it. Gets two with the Mac 10 Shiro plucks him from the air at the jump. But that's a bit of a pace change and a lot of uncertainty growing, grow, brewing here. Orbit, great find. Acorn thought he had a gap, thought he'd heard the relocation of the orb. Volt can plan on B. Volt can get in towards the site yeah, here. He can something. smoke off, he can molly long, he can plant the bomb. Neelan, he'll get here in time. Volt could even constrict. Oh. If he throws deeper, you two. If he mollies this up, yeah, he's bought a whole lot of room here. They, oh, they extinguish and they go. They have to. They need to apply pressure. He's going to get that bomb down. Neelan charging to try and support him as Volt smokes to obscure. Perhaps he could slink into cave. That no, adds kid that again. possibility no, kid again. and a 10 second defuse ahead of them. Both of them were in that mid stack. Both of those kits caught by the Kios rush. 15 seconds gone now. Oh my goodness, what a recovery. Short-lived successes for Cloud9. They're capitulating. They don't have a game plan. No one's going. Now the Molly comes through. Volt just needs to survive as long as he possibly can. One needs more. An extra frag is all he's going to take. I'm not sure. 10 seconds to no He doesn't have it. And Gamer Legion respond immediately. 
No kit. Both kits. Electronic. Look at look at it. Look, he he's back on tilt mode. He's back in tilt. He is. Back in full force. It's like Navi never left. And you wondered specifically why Kios is making that eye contact. He's looking at his ex teammate. Well, check this one out. This is Kios again. You're sending this man in first. This is where he thrived. He's been an absolute monster today and getting space for the team on the T side. That's 11. That is 11 for Gamer Legion right now. And if you're Groove, you're sitting back there. You're dealing with a team you've never seen. Cloud9 melt like this before. And I've never quite seen Kios yell like this before. <laughs> Gosh. Gamer Legion perpetually slept on. Again, this team, they took what they could get and they are making it work. A team effort, though. You know, across the board, there is this unity in the ranks. Individuals absolutely shining bright. Make no mistake, Vault's had some impact in the last few. Kios in particular, he's not got the most kills, but I feel like a lot of them have been high impact. And precisely. Round and that's winners. what Team Counter-Strike is about. Round winners, yeah. So let's get it started in here. I'm not a floundering. Yeah, sure, they've got the such, bonus. There is variance in the, the T side. Like, Gamer Legion are pulling and running rings around Cloud9 at times. And Kios, he's been finding ways in. I doubt that smoke is something he's going to choose to disrespect. He'll just wait it out. A one round game. This was a 10 5 half, Chad. And this is for the playoffs. Cloud9. Losing their grip. Shira oof, has not lost anything. He hits Kios upon the fade. Quick reactions out of the zoom banger. Setup is perfect to handle this, but actually Acorn, despite the flash, he's hit his shot. And with Neelan successful as well, they don't have to rush things. You've still got a full 60 second round ahead of you. Hobbit holding the cave to lay and ledge. Acorn making it clear he's actually Occupying the site itself, smokes aren't going to be up forever. And it looks like they want to fight before they frag. That's oh, what they were waiting for! Okay, bomb lost. Buster's given him a real opportunity for Cloud9's 13th now. Acor's not ready for this. And from behind, Hobbit strikes and recovered. Gamer Legion constantly testing though, testing Cloud9. I thought upon the loss of Electronic, it could have translated into something more, but it's Buster with an import, important contribution. He's up to, uh, yeah, a reasonable haul. 50 ADR. Still stressful here because Gamer Legion have enough money for another buy. There's even an AWP available if they'd like it. It doesn't look like they'll be wielding it here. So AKs are plenty. Important rounds here for Gamer Legion. They have to bounce back. He's running oh, through the flame. Oh and he just oh caught stranded God. in no man's land. He's going to really regret that one. A bit of a fist to desk moment for Neelan. A fumble that leaves them in, in an extended disadvantage. Perfecto's angle. Electronics yelling powerful. here. Yeah, he's heard a lot. A good idea. And Perfecto ready for them to receive. Kios and Isaac. Watching from the sidelines. Maybe Volt's got one in him. Trying to clear out Electronic. And it's not going to go well for him. Traded by Acor, but from behind. He turns around. Hobbit's good. And Cloud9 just two away from taking us to a third map here. You see the pivot and Hobbit's still taking his time and you just start to panic for him. <laughs> You're worried about yeah. it because Game of Legion, when they've gotten into these situations, they've been sharp. Even Acor on the AK has been very, very handy. Cloud9 have done enough here to send Game of Legion down to economic squalor. Ooh. It's been done the hard way, hasn't it? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Game of Legion have really made Cloud9 question this ancient at times. Kios, he has been cracking open sights. We talked about impactful frags. Shiro, he spotted out one. He has yet to report a whole lot more. And with Kios breaking necks like that on the Deeg, he's still on for more. Yeah, Electronic finally shuts him down. They That's have nice. they got the bomb down with only a single Deagle investment. The rest should fall into place here. Shiro's lost one in the smoke, and they're aware. Bolt needs some divine intervention to stop and a secure a 12th for Gamer Legion. It is going to be 15 to 11. And the run back into a 2-0 and playoff spot for Gamer Legion is certainly not going to be comfortable. Taking a look at the funds, they definitely can defend their honor here with every bell and whistle they desire, but... Hmm. Mirage up next, now. Alex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it starts to get... I, I'm already 
speculating what we might be seeing from Cloud9 on Mirage. Are you saying that's another map we haven't another seen? Another map we haven't seen of them, right? So you're trying to piece together in your head, where do you see the players holding? Right. You know, what are the key positions that you see these guys in? Not done yet. Same defense towards mid, the double molly. Electronics softened up here. And a good job of keeping this mid control honest, but Buster with a whole lot of space here. Fortunate that Shiro's come along for the ride, means they've fortified A completely. Game of Legion, three outside B, two outside A, and they're coming to clear A main just as Shiro leaves. Buster, it's all you. It is all on him. It's good for him. A safe pair of hands, and it pulls the trigger of that AK. Dispatches of two inquisitive GL members, and yeah, well, good luck to the remaining three. Setup is good. Smoke on ramp, they can focus their attention here, and you're walking in, you better yeah, hope for a very precise headshot, because this is a clean way to secure it. Certainly asking some questions of Cloud9 Gamer Legion, and a respectable scoreline with some high-flying performances. But Cloud9, still a hard team to put away. And they demonstrate that here in our final round as well. With five still alive, Hobbit is on hot pursuit. And Acor is gone. We go the distance, folks. It is a hell of an affair. Tell your friends, tell your pets. Cloud9 Gamer Legion is not done yet. One spot in the playoffs, still up for debate in Cologne 23. And it will be decided on Mirage. Is your calling? We are going to a third map to decide who will be going to the Lanxus. This is so exciting. Game of Legion up against Cloud9. I know we need to speak about the Cloud9 victory on Ancient, but what I do want to do first is just bring this up. We've spent the last two days and by we, I mean mainly me, giving Game of Legion such a hard time, calling them meh, sort of saying, oh, well, they did well this time, but the next game won't be as good. They are putting up such a fight. I know that this was the least exciting lineup coming into this, the, the least exciting roster change. Yep. But despite that, 
they are putting on one hell of a show, Blair. Oh, absolutely. And, and look, I, I'm not going to you know, try and justify why a lot of people have said, you know, this team, this particular lineup coming in. They themselves acknowledge it, you know. They didn't have any options available. Not many players wanted to join them. They had to pick up what they had to work with. Nealon coming as the IGL, Volt coming in as, you know, the replacement, the star player. But they still were able to indeed put up a showing. Inferno looking like, you know, a whole map of theirs, Inferno specialist. And coming into Ancient, I generally thought it was going to be Cloud9 just kind of running away with it, which looked like the case initially on, but then they were able to at least mount that comeback and heading into map number three, Mirage, a map that they have struggled even in Cologne, at least they have that thing in them knowing that, hey, they got a dog in them. They know that they can bark, they can bite, they can still put up a fight. Where was Cloud, uh, where was Gamer Legion potentially messing up slightly, which allowed Cloud9, Cloud9 to take the victory? Or do you think it was just a matter of Cloud9 being the stronger team on Ancient? Both. Uh, I would say that in the second half, Gamer Legion had some opportunities to close some rounds out. They let one post plant slip away from them as Cloud9 pulled off a really nice retake at that, but still one that I think Gamer Legion probably is going to look back at. And I would say that for the for the rest, I mean, for the second half of that part or that that question with. Um, Cloud9 just kind of being the better comprehensive team. I still feel like there is some room for improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, I still feel like sometimes play individuals are taking fights that aren't necessarily supported by teammates as much. And I think that's something where you know, you're playing with a stand-in, so I'm not really going to like harp uh, on I think we actually talk about a particular round, which ties into exactly what he said. Right? I think round number 23, you could probably just play it out right now. Uh, it's a round where Electronic, they, they had a crazy retake on the A-bomb side, and, you know, they steal it away. And then look at the reply here from the side of... Uh, Actually, it's going to be just a highlight. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's the round. So it's going to be a fast break from Game of Legion. They just catch Cloud9 off guard. Kios having a hell of a game. The Mac and the drive by coming in. Now, the interesting thing here is Cloud9 had only two kits to work with in this round. And both the kits are dropped outside a donut with the two CD players who fell. Yeah. So now it's a 3v3. Cloud9, they're panicking. They know the two players that died at mid. They, they, they get the read that Game of Legion are probably going to be heading towards A. But Game of Legion, they stop for a second. Once they lose a player, they're going to get the bomb down. Now, this is where... It kind of ties into what he said there, Maui, the fact that Cloud9, the individual, the decision-making, the lack of cohesion and collective decision-making. This, I think this round particularly highlights it. It's a 3v2, you have the player advantage, you know the bomb just got planted. They, they wait quite a while. Now, it's not necessarily the wrong decision to wait for Perfect to come in all the way from the A bomb side, but then they take so, so damn long, like there was no one telling them that both the kids, they don't have any kids to work with, so they take so long, Volt and Neelan both waiting for some duel to take place, and they decide, hey, no one's coming in. They stick on towards the bomb side. Volt will be, uh, sorry, Neelan will be found out with a nice flashbang uh, from the side of Cloud9. He's going to fall, and Volt, all he has to do is play the time. In fact, he does one better. He gets one kill onto Neelan, gets a second kill. Shiro finds the trade, but there's no time remaining, and around uh, slips away. Now, this is not something which should be happening for a team which is on the same page, and I think that really highlights that show. They're looking pretty good overall, but there's still a lot of rougher rough edges around this team right now. Some rough edges, but also some diamonds. Shiro looking super impressive, Blair. Oh, yeah, but listen, Shiro was the reason, if you ask me, <laughs> that we actually got Cloud9 taking us to map number three. He was just going absolutely nuclear on the T side with the AWP. He was hitting every shot, going for the plays, going for the clutches, and just dismantling the side of Game of Legion, especially on the attacking side. Shiro has just simply been phenomenal. By far the best player on Cloud9. I'm sure that's going to change up a little bit once Axile gets into the fray of things. But I think a lot of people are going to be wondering, Sam, why is Shiro playing this well? Why, how is he still able to play so well, given that he has a stand-in, he has a new in-game leader? And I want to say that this is the answer. I'll play the clip right here. We saw this during the tech timeout, that Shiro is actually... He, he loves his crystals. He loves his rocks. He actually has these rocks next to him when he plays. We're going to get back into the rocks in a second, but look at, look at this. Okay, so things to know about these crystals here is that one is actually amethyst. This one that's kind of right here, pe peeking out right behind right there, uh -huh. that one's amethyst, and that is used to protect against negative energies. He's got a couple other really nice rocks here that actually are definitely helping him out. This one is actually 
Aventurice, which is, many people might think that's jade, but it is Aventurice. You can tell because of the glossy nature of the rock, and that balances erratic emotion. And I want to say, we don't, need to, we don't even need to look at this anymore, because one thing that was hurting Cloud9 so much back on the old lineup was the lack of, in, the inability to control their emotions. And so the new rocks, new player Shiro, this is the guy that we have been waiting for. Doesn't even lose a single opening duel. Eight multi kills. Look at that score line, Bled. Like, is it the? It's the rocks. It's the rocks. Tell it me. absolutely has to be the rocks. I mean, this is a sort of high analysis, uh, analysis, high level counter strike analysis that I, you know, look forward to when I'm working with you on the desk. And absolutely, it's all about the rocks. I like rock and roll as well. And Shiro, clearly, he is a rock star. I didn't like that there was a slight amount of sarcasm there from Blair, because even me, I believe. I, I, I got I, the no, rocks. Look listen, at me. Look I, at that. I, I don't look know what he's talking about. I believe Shiro. What sarcasm? Shiro's got a rock. What? I was being genuinely, just very, very genuine there. Our high-level analysis. This works. Air quality, rocks. What's next? They're not rocks. They're called crystals. 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 <laughs> Crystal. Shout out. It's all about the energy. Minerals, someone said famously, once upon a time. Minerals. Minerals. It's yeah. not rocks. How do they work? Got to ask uh, some clowns. <laughs> okay. Okay. But hopefully, not Cloud9 today. They look like a Cloud9, not a Clown9. Yeah, so and I, I think the thing is that if we want to just slightly turn the discussion to something more serious Mirage. and why move I thought to, this was a very move, serious conversation and move to the third map here, I I do think that Cloud9 aren't in the, out of the woods just yet. That was a tough Ancient, even though they've shown comfort on Ancient before. We saw Inferno earlier in the series and how much difficulty Gamer Legion was able to throw their direction because we saw that without being blooded onto the map in officials, Buster has some discomfort. And yep. that's where I'm really worried about Cloud9. It does feel like Gamer Legion has a great instinct right now that once they know where Buster is on the map, they're going to hound him. Like they, they single just like Deagle entried him when he was trying to anchor that A bomb site on Ancient. And I feel like that's not an accident. Like they're trying trying to target him. I think it does answer back to Mirage and what he used to play back in his play on Cloud9, right? He was the B anchor, so to speak. I think he's just going to stick on to that role. I don't think he's going to swap anything around her to replace in a spot for Axile, his place towards B short. I think he's just going to place comfort spot and hopefully that works out for them. That being said, though, for Game of Legion, man, two, 30 rounds of CT, uh, CD side to play in Mirage so far, they've won seven. Ooh. So their CD side is a problem. So I don't think it's about a T side here. Rocks, little Papers. stitch thingies, whatever Papers. it is that helps you get through where you need to. Remember, it's all the mental game, and it is going to be a mental battle between Cloud9 and Gamer Legion because neither of these teams wants to go home. We're going to take a quick break. We'll see you in a bit. game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Second one here. One V4 made two. He's got 40 seconds. He could cut noise if he wanted to. He could cut noise and wait. And maybe find himself in a 1v1. Two bullets remain in the orb. Make it one. Now things become awkward. Two players to find. 26 seconds. Convince someone's there, but they're not. Creeping ever closer. Damage is still worth something. Rounds the corner, spots two. Tenth round for Vitality. Always going to be tricky for Hooksy in the clutch there. 
but much more like it for Vitality. Just winning those early trades. I like the proactive move over towards B. And it feels like Vitality, when they are finding a bit of success, it will often come from a little bit of aggression thrown into the mix to get them into a good position. And then as G2 try and reset towards A, walking into the AWP of Zaiwu is never advisable. Still not over yet. Gotta remember, on the first map, there were a few map points for both teams before it was finally closed by Vitality. This is a different story, though. G2 had a massive lead in this one. 14-8 at one point. When you get to that sort of lead, it's a map you simply have to close out at this level of Counter-Strike. Still five rounds required from Vitality. Still a long way to go. We've seen those B site entries previously. This time it's the A side of the map where Nico will be looking for something early. And Molly won't do anything. Nico's still hanging around here. That's info. They know there's a player sandbags. <laughs> so close. Nico. Very hard to deal with. JKS is here as well. Bomb will be collected by G2. Four on three for them. Zaiwu has to deliver. But now so many people coming his way through the smoke. Hunter topping the leaderboard now. Wolf frag. Flames and Sphinx remain. Last round for them to lose. There is an incendiary for Sphinx in a 2v4. They both have kits, but they need acquired a few frags. Molly to the sandbags, looking from up top. G2 disengaging. Oh, that's a tight one, though. Manasi is down. Bomb is ticking. And now it's down to Sphinx. One versus three. G2 angry after losing their first map. Are forcing their way to a deciding map of Mirage in style. A great performance on Vertigo. A standout from JKS and great work from Hooksy as well. G2 with a monstrous game of Vertigo. And they demand Mirage to come. What is your calling? I am Cologne 2023 Group A, Gamer Legion taking on Cloud9 for one of the remaining spots in the playoffs. Quarterfinals on the line, baby, and we have gone the distance. Map number three, knife round concluded. Gamer Legion have opted to start on the T side. We just heard from Blair and Maui on the desk. A map that hasn't been fantastic for them on the defense. And, well, maybe that is what has inspired this T side start. Let's get the momentum rolling, Neil, and thinks. Right, we can set, we can draw the bar. You know, we can set the limit of what we've, what's required of us on our weaker side if we have a great start here on the attack. But yeah, a little unusual. And we were almost off to a great start. Everything Damn. was ready. The players had sat down. They'd gone through the motions and electronic just as League Ops said. Stream live. It's called a technical timeout. So if you wanted to uh, have any more uh, anticipation for this final map of play here today, you can sit and wait with us. Yeah, well, while we're sitting and waiting, I've cast my eyes over from our uh, vantage point and I've seen Heroic and Ents are in the building. They are getting themselves set up for their battle. And of course, winner of that gets themselves a semi-final. Yes, indeed. Uh, and that's an interesting matchup there because it's got the same stakes as what's going on between the G2 and Vitality game, which is currently being brought to you by James Bardoff and Hawker on that main stream. They are going to their third map as well. So the distance there, teams fighting for a semi-final. But essentially, once you lock yourself in for the playoffs, get two cracks at the semis as long as it's through that upper bracket. Anyway, let's focus in. Tech issue sorted. Odds favoring Cloud9 and Kios. Front of the pack, who would have thought? Yeah, no surprises there. Kios, look, look at him go off he's the gonna flash. Need the speed. God, he's so quick. And already taking fights with these guys towards B. Shiro, probably second guessing himself. Now surely he has to activate. Kios hasn't cleared him. And he will at least be punished, but this is peculiar. They've lost the B site during all of that. They're set up in a post plant. You got Bench occupied, Acor close. I like the angles. I like the weaponry. That's a good smoke to get them in. Oh, wow. I tell a lie. They used that smoke to pepper Cloud9. Limited. 
And one from Acor onto Shiro. Still Buster and Perfecto with very little health. But they're running out of players here. GL need Isaac and Nealon to close this out. Short, spotted out. More bodies encroaching. Time is of the essence for C9. And Isaac not oh. cut him go. Profit from that earlier damage. And a one-on-one -on -one with no time on the clock for Hobbit. Oh, hit. Unnecessary shots, but doesn't have the necessary time. The kit will not be saved. And Game of Legion, they'll get themselves that first T round immediately. Some of the things we've really liked out of Game of Legion has been the approach on some of the T calling, right? Some of the rounds that they've been able to present. This was great. I can't believe how much room that Kios was able to get. And it drew a massive rotation once he went through jungle. Like well, an absolute speed demon. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I didn't check the time on the clock, but uh, in terms of a CT towards B Kitchen having contact with someone in jungle, that was rapid. Maybe trying to make some uh, land speed records here is Kios, but it will be the force by back for Cloud9. They won't relent early. Hover with a couple of extra kills will facilitate. I think the fam is in the hands of Electronic here. Yes, it is. So two scouts, one for Shiro, one for Perfecto. They need to land a couple of tags between the two of them. And then Hobbit and Buster to finish things off with their pistol of choice. Kevlar are plenty. You two are extremely light on as we do see Game of Legion starting to posture for an A finish now. Kiaz? Kiaz? Kioz? Wow. A ramp. Dead to Hobbit. He started strong as Hobbit. Three on the pistol. Didn't convert, but immediately posted his fourth on that 5 7. Shiro comes up short with the scout. Doesn't finish off or even tag up any of them. Vol seems no to have help. an idea of its location confirmed and eliminated now. Acor provides that. Nealon, oh, a real opportunity to stop that rotate. One's he heading for him, and Electronic's closing that gap, so he is going to be aware of that. Electronic. Forces the fight, takes him down. Still a time to go for upgrade. this grade. They need to get a move on and go now. If they want to give it a go, you never mind. They're not giving it a go. As soon as I see Buster going around T spawn, I know that's all she wrote. So we're two zero start here for Gamer Legion, and I want to keep Acre on the screen if we could. He had that scout. He forced Shiro off the line with the tag. Picks up the AK from Kios, runs into the site, gets two kills. They get the bomb down. Round secured. So not only a good AWPer, but also handy on the rifles is Acor. The Dane. Of this little international mix. Got Volt the Romanian, sometimes British. <laughs> yeah, he moonlights us both. Just ask Hades about that. Neilan from Kazakhstan, Isaac the Swede, Akor the Dane, and Kios. What's that flag again? I'm not great with uh, Europe. Belgium, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah it, that's not the same as the Netherlands, right? No, they're, <laughs> they're next to each other, though. And they do I'm kidding, speak. Europe. I know it a little bit better than that. There's um, Flemish, which kind of sounds like funny Dutch. Isn't that which where they're spitting everywhere? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> gezellig. I'm always uh, feeling gezellig, Chad. Is that like a skate surf? <laughs> it's a very good thing, actually. Oh. Believe it or not. It means cozy. Very heavy stance towards B out the gates here with its retained upgrades, but at least giving the indication it's an A play. Up, down, smokes. Hobbit also uncertain. He will drop a defensive one of his own over towards Ticket to play around here, but this is all a bit of a ruse. Nealon is hoping that Cloud9 move a little bit too far, oversteps the mark, and they can get a pick, but Buster's saved Galil, dominates Acor. That's dink dead. That's perfect work from Buster yeah, it there. Was so quick. Makes that uh, Galil look like an AK-47, and that's what now could be picked up by Electronic if he does clear this out, finds the timing he's comfortable with. Hobbit doesn't help, have help again, and they're going contact on him here. Ooh, Perfecto. Going to be hard-pressed to provide much support. Wow, drags them with the Deeg, and it's perfect from Perfecto. C9, this is what they needed. Vault trying to stabilize. Isaac and Vault up against the whole squad. Bomb is under the C9 rule, and so they have to go away, turn the flash and hope and pray. One down towards that uh, CT side with the scout. Goes a little too wide on that one. Perfecto will close. And Cloud9, a very convincing third round there. Not, not really uh, far, far from ideal, I'll say, for Game of Legion, considering 
the way that round started, just yeah. losing Acor and then it all just spiraled. Yeah, we did find uh, Cloud9 get oh. away with something similar oh. on in the PC. I think it may have even been, was it map number one? Yeah, they did a lot of damage with those USPs. Remember on Inferno where they saved all those extra guns? And I don't think it came back and oh. set them in such a pretty position as it has here. This is Cloud9 bringing out the AWP of Shiro now. It's Gamer Legion in the Force by Wars as they're going to scramble in with two AKs, a Galilla, Tech 9, and a Deagle. Shiro posted up here. And you do have Perfecto and Buster locking down B. Hobbit and Electronic in combination towards A. And well, the Sniper trained in at the ready top mid. And there was speculation on maybe whether I'd plonk Buster in this one. We did hear from Electronic on day one, I saying they are just going to put him in Axile's positions. But you think to get it across the line, if he does feel more comfortable elsewhere, does it make more sense? Do you have more versatile members? Yeah, I, th I think it depends on how deep they've been scrimming and uh, how set in their ways they are already. Mm. Just you don't want Buster to look out of place no, here, especially exactly. on the third and deciding map of this series. No, I agree. I think it makes a lot of sense if there is a uh, uh, requirement. If you got the wiggle room. You definitely have players probably more versatile. Buster. Yeah. Exploited. Acor puts a bullet into his head. Kios has found a gap as well. Perfecto's got a lot to do on B here. And on the rotation, Shiro caught off completely. Nice work from Kios. Vault builds upon it. And Gamer Legion now rocking and rolling. <laughs> Kios feeling himself and slapped right in the face by Electronic as he looks to maintain Shiro's orb. Fair enough. Doing it properly. Doing it by the book. Kios would have loved to bring that into the next. He didn't need to post so aggressively. They look out of sorts though, Cloud9. And I know they've had some good moments, some highlight moments, the individuals popping off, uh, the desk highlighting some of the things that they're getting better at. And I, I think that's all great. And I think that the full roster will be very good if I haven't made that abundantly clear here today. But just there, like Shiro not being aware of a window gap, right? Th these are things that Cloud9, I, I would hope at any point in their progression, right, can be on top of. Buster stranded on his own, isolated. He stepped out dead immediately here. I think any position where Buster needs to be remotely proactive and let go of that shift key, Cloud9 is screwed. And short is a position where it's aim map. You want to be taking some fights. You need to deal with locking down connect delay. You need to be able to take jewels towards middle if you want this mid control. You also need to be able to activate if your teammates need to cheat over towards A and then you're dealing with the slink up connector. You're also helping out your B defender. He just gets his head pinned to the back of the wall by some more great rifle work of Acor here. Nice angle held by Electronic. Even better, headshot. Three through Palace here. Yeah, and Hobbit, he has no nades whatsoever, and so he will use himself in a very forward position. This is how crazy it is. Electronic and Buster are literally just standing in front of each other and blocking each other. They caught down, Hobbit. Passes the first test of this round, and he will not be allowed to get out. Neil and make sure of that. Kios, ooh, strafe through. I think he spotted one, yeah. Electronic cowering in fear and eliminated in perfect unison with two others. Just like that, Vault and Kios crack into the A site, and Cloud9 left wondering where it all went wrong. Shiro. Oh. No idea about that one from Kios. God, he can't stop holding W, this no, guy. No, he loves it. This is the type of kid in face. Oh, I'm just replying to the W key with right now. This is uh, some wild work here, but if they can rip the AWP out of Shiro's hands, that is a massive boon for Gamer Legion going forward. And not just because of the scoreline and the outcome of these rounds. Cloud9 just look discombobulated here. If they can't get their act together and soon, I'm very worried for them in this map. It is looking great for Gamer Legion. They are looking well put together here. It doesn't look like they have as many gaps in the understanding of what's open, what's available. And they're searching for this. Want to make sure they're jumping around, I think Nilan was saying, so they don't get pinged by this AWP. But a three-round differential for Gamer Legion early. And they're justifying their choice here to win the knife and then start on this T side. If they can keep this momentum up, don't let Cloud9 get out of the weeds. It's another map that yes. we are yet to see Cloud9 play. I think Maui said that Buster's showing um, that if it's not a, a map they've bet him in in officials, it doesn't look great. I see. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, there's no doubt about it. We saw the same thing, Maui pointing to the statistics of Gamer Legion. Every game they've played, they've been better at converting advantages. Learning on the job. Yeah, precisely. I mean, just growing in synergy with every game played. But this is a progression match. Playoffs up for debate. GL lose Kios. Electronic! Oh! oh my god! He gets three with the dig!
and gives Cloud9 something to celebrate. Not if they lose it. Not if they lose it. Shiro had the AWP. It's now in Buster's hands, and I don't think Vault saw that sandwich player. Dinked by the P250 and AWPed by Buster. But Acor's been handed something he can manage and chew on now. If I was picking anybody from the team I wanted to live in the clutch, it's probably Acor here. Not because I think he's special in the clutch. I think he's just been hitting some good shots. And the way that Cloud9 tend to be playing some of these scenarios, they might just offer up the jewels. I have to take that back when I see it's Perfecto and Buster. Two who love a bit of inaction as their biggest action. Splitting up now. Divide and conquer. Perfecto over towards B. Buster playing ticket. 40 seconds remaining. Acor traversing around the world here. We talked about these individuals hitting their shots. Well, Electronics giving them another one of those rounds. This is the thing. It should be the B finish here with 28 seconds left. Acor hasn't been offered up anything. And Perfecto quite truly just has to play to deny the plant, not for info. His only objective here is to stop Acor when he has to plan in the next five seconds. Molly out. Oh, gets the info. Acor, he's doing it. Seven, six, five, just enough time. Acor, mind games. Buster on the orb for the clutch. Oh, and he takes the fight. Acor saves Gamer Legion and shatters Cloud9 in his hopes after Electronic Triple Deeg. What a recovered round. The Dane comes up Trump, and I can't quite get over the way in which he solved that puzzle. With so much, so much of the time against him. Yeah, I, yeah. That's yep. Neilan's face is that's, saying what that, I'm saying. That's somewhat my expression, maybe without the smile, but the jaw definitely a gape here. This is how it started. In case you uh, missed the memo, Electronic with the Deagle, Bops 3, absolutely destroyed. Acor runs past him there. You know, it's taken a, a while to finish the meal. Gets himself into an AK and oh. gets the job done. Massive clutch. And if that one there doesn't send a message to Cloud9, I don't know what will. They're going to take a timeout off the back of that. They are shell-shocked here. Cool. Gamer Legion have come to play today. Yeah, the hairs on my arm are standing on end after that one. <sighs> the Molly bench, which was just enough for Perfecto to touch his keyboard. Slightly out of line. And just expose a toe. With a second to spare for the plant in the two isolated one-on-ones. I mean, Acor did it. Well, it's all going according to plan, apparently, for Gamer Legion. Oh, they stagnated Electronic. He tried to get aggressive and he leaves with just 20 HP. Not a bullet, bullet fired, not necessary yet. Now they'll flash up and run boost out. It's looking fluid, isn't it? it certainly seems well drilled uh, and in such a short space of time. I guess you have to uh, give a lot of credit here to obviously the coaching staff and I suppose Neilan as well. Neilan as well. I, I would be surprised if we didn't point fingers in that direction. This is a uh, looking uh, they're going to overrun the AWP here. Why not? Well, they're trying to. Bounded Shira out the window. Hot shot. The Buster is there in support. They weren't accounting for him. And a missed shot from Shiro. That is a problem. Vault makes sure of it. Ouch! Oh, oh, oh. Ouch! That one leaves a mark. Vault takes three. Pieces together another round. And yeah, there is an AWP for Hobbit if he's brave enough. But he seems like he'd rather just leave a little earlier. Good look at Kios. Already on the hunt. Just... Chasing Literally. him down. I'm going to find Jep. I was going to have a look. Oh, J-Rez, is there a kit here anywhere? Oh, well, that's a shame. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter now. There was one. Thank you, J. J-Rez is so good at kit watch, man. Yeah, well, if he didn't find it, it'd keep him up at night. He, he wouldn't would. be out of sleep. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> now he might get the open anyway if he's got oh. the moves. Oh, Shadow the bottom. Oh, to the ball! <laughs> they even get the all for Acor. All right, it's Vault's turn. Vault's turn. I mean, like, like, this must be so good for morale when all these individuals are just popping off in simultaneously. Like, Acor's just won you a round, then Vault turns to him and wins the next round, says, I'll do it next. You know, this is individually exceptional. One, great. Second, stunning. The third, a bit of a joke, spraying down the full HP player on short. And yeah, you can see the reaction out of Cloud9. They are being put in the washing machine. Another timeout for Cloud9 here. And this might just to uh, center themselves. And Kios is watching you. Even though exactly. it's time to play with the camera, blows you a kiss. Things are going quite well. 
I can't quite believe this. Game Elite. Like, I, underst I, know, I right? understand when you look at Group A, you go, well, anything's possible here. And then the Cloud9 news and you go, definitely anything's possible here. But Game Legion. They lost their opening match Poof. of this group stage. They lost it to Monty. 2-0. They then proceeded to walk through the Mongols, Fnatic, and their last challenge, Cloud9. A full lower bracket run against all odds. Cloud9 dispatched a Monty yesterday. It seems like Gamer Legion's improvements over these days is being felt by Cloud9 here as they cause all through the smoke into Cloud9's new leader. Well, that was the thing, right? If you could apply a bit of Counter Strike maths, you'd go, ah, oh, Cloud9 should have him. Mm -hmm. Cloud9 beat Monty. But uh, we all know about Counter Strike maths. It's Not the quite how it works. Least inaccurate form of maths or mathematics. Opening pick, a minute and ten. Rare to see GL fumble so far in terms of, you know, they're winning rounds that they should, losing rounds they should. The only round that they lost so far in this map is one that they shouldn't. Yeah. Touche, touche, but in but terms of the series. Yeah, exactly. And that's very telling, right? If that's the only place this one round has come from, how are they going to replicate it? Cloud9. Good point, too. Oh, nice angle from Shiro. I think he had a bit of a pot shot or two, but found by Neilan. Hobbit is in prime position, actually. He's knife out flanking into Isaac. As soon as he shoots Isaac, though, they just have the bomb A. They'll know where yeah. both players are. So Hobbit guarantees a kill, but the bomb quickly jumps off short, down through middle, up connector. And Kios, of course, he's leading the charge. He's going to constrict you to kitchen. He's pushed CT spawn, Buster. Perfect timing from Kios. Positionally brilliant. Buster, bang on the money as well. Tied up. Seven to one. Damn. I'd be really happy with Kios if I was Ash because he, he hasn't given up this play style at all. And for good reason. He's done a great job in cracking open these rounds. He also makes space, right? That It's the room that he's making. It doesn't always get quantified by the kill, but it's what he allows the rest of his team. Yeah, because typically when they're entering into these spaces, Kios has already told you where you don't need to look. Wow, this is a change up. They're trying to mix it up. A lot of teams have this in their defensive arsenal. You get a player out the window early. You can hold underpass. You can be flashed into underpass if you ask Vitality. I guess Electronic didn't want to go through Connector again after copying that onslaught of nades a few rounds ago here and tried something a bit contacty. Kills walks out into the loving embrace of Hobbit, who has just been left okay, behind gosh. the ramp here. But uh, it will need to be picked up at some point. They still have this forward stance in middle. Hobbit left ticket, went back to window, and is now holding A from jungle. So you can see how worried he is about ramp being a possibility and palace being a leak as well. This is a very mid-centric setup with the extremities being held by Buster and Hobbit right now. Util, still a plenty here for Cloud9. Bunch of smoke, a couple of flashes. Connector now obscured. So starting to work on some progress. That Util is very traditionally telling of middle, but we can see... Cloud9 know there's nothing at home. Well placed Palace Smoke. Already electronic working on the full flank. And Hobbit, this is his round right now. He is the only member of Cloud9 who is firm grasp of this game. All Hobbit three on that A crawl. Sure has been caught off guard a couple of times here with the AWP. Either re-aggressing or holding a line and just not ready for the fight. And that's not the Shiro that we've been seeing so far. We did have uh, a look at his stones. Sorry, crystals. And uh, maybe Maui did need to evaluate a few of the others. I noticed he pointed out only two. I would love to know a little bit more. And, you know, he, he called me out as well. I would have assumed it was Jade, but due to the glossy nature mm. of it, it was the Alabalalalite. Of course, yeah, of course, of course. Called. Yeah, and the air quality today, uh, we didn't get a report on that, but we'll have to see how Zywoo is going. I'm sure that uh, the rain has probably helped take a bit of pollution. But here's those stones we were talking about. Any you crystal Hopefully mummies or daddies out there? Hmm. The one you got to watch out for is that rose quartz. That starts showing up in your life. Someone, some witches are pursuing you. That's all I'm saying. Game of Legion, first time out, Ash. A sandwich. He's just going to be taking the opportunity upon the first 
threatening round to concede. Of course, we've already highlighted the other one was a bit of an oopsie. But this is this is quite truly, again, where we can actually look at Ash. And if we see them come out with another great call yes. and they completely deal with whatever Cloud9 throw their way, you have to attest the impact of this man here. So they, he knows he has a great half. 70 rounds already. Boys, I want 10. Oh! Hero, not going to be deterred by the Wibble. Failed incendiary to disrupt the window smoke. It wasn't coming anyway, it seems. And they just get a caught out mid early for a look. Postured to hold the AX egg. And Acor looking for Shiro. That's the Shiro we know. Snappy. Hey, AXQ's coming now. Nades are out. Hobbit will disrupt with the smoke of his own. It allows him to play around triple. Fall back if he needs. Even got a nice gap for the cross if they don't go that way. Hobbit. And he disrupt this. He's been spotted. Pushing in. Neela not ready for it. There's an immediate trade. And a four on three. A lot of contact coming, CT. Shiro's behind them. Shiro is behind both of them. They're above him. No one's looking. Shiro with the orb. Kiosk reacts. He's got traded about by Buster. Volt cannot win this clutch. There's no way. And Electronic demonstrates. And so Cloud9, off the back of a Gamer Legion timeout, convert another convincing one. I think Shiro got a lot of contributions from him <laughs> there. What are you ever meant to do with Shiro in that situation? Like, I've got two guys in front of me, and I can't... Yep. Well, as you mentioned, it didn't matter. Maybe it was better that way because then Shiro would have been standing and in the flames in the window. window. So, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was all part of the plan. Hobbit gets rumbled here, but one thing that I want to appreciate with Hobbit in some of these A plays is his aim has been very steady. It hasn't been shaky. He's just isolated that one kill and guaranteed that he's gotten that frag, which not all players are able to keep their cool. So good stuff from Hobbit here is one more of those for Cloud9 and they can humble the economy of Gamer Legion. Shiro post up in window yet again looking for another pick. Smoke will land to obscure the vision, not off the rip. Electronic playing ahead of that. Yeah, it's Electronic's turn for some aggression. Into the smoke. You'll hear the run boost. Run boost spotted. I don't think Neelan has a clue. Acor should be a dead man. Neelan certainly is as two frags come through. Kios with a response. He's a dead man. Electronic makes it so. Acor would need the multi-kill, but there's just too many bodies taking the fight simultaneously. And Vault with his deagle. He might be able to pick up that rifle and has done so. Seven bullets. Would love to reload and would love to. That info just flowed one way. Yeah. Oh, oh, and that's the result of oh, one-way information. He's going to be heard tap. by Buster here, right? Buster will hear all of these steps until about now. So he's gotten away. Buster should be calling that he heard the footsteps back towards A here. Hobbit just making sure he hasn't had the missed call. That's confirmed. You're right, Buster. It will be the A finish. Didn't quite trust it. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of what, that's why I'm giggling. And now Hobbit's going to do his best perfecto impression. Now, they've already lost a one-on-two situation, Cloud9 here. The chips were not as uh, good as they are right here. We've got an M4 and an AK. He has got time if he wanted to clear CT. I don't think you would. There's because you also, you're probably worried about Palace. Right. Yeah, he is. Hobbit won't be able to disrupt. He actually just wants to stay unknown. They're calling the bluff on the fake here. And he does slip away from Hobbit's initial glance upon CT boxes. They have a good idea he's jungle, but there is a, t a world where they think he's gone round CT. Buster has a smoke and an extra one at his feet, right? He could smoke this off. He doesn't need to fight this. He doesn't need to fight this. Oh, he's in trouble now, Vault. Yeah. It's flashes. They're running in. Posted up. Flash don't catch their opponent. Vault, actually, yeah. He's somehow oh. leaving with the rifle. Uh, silver linings and all that, but Cloud9 do recover nicely. An attempt at a 1v3. Oh, the penny didn't drop that they were trying to usher Buster across because he had the kit there. At least they get the plant. I mean, in terms of uh, being threatening in this next one. Look at this. That wall. It's 60, ultra thick, but you think it gets peppered down to three. three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Hobbit's going to wonder how much more he has to do here. So it's more threatening than it would have been. Look at the nades. Oh, they're going to knock on Buster's door. Buster and Perfecto on this B defense here. And they're counting on Vault. Hobbit's rotating over immediately. Yeah. I think they've got a bit of a premonition about this one. Bit too quiet. On that A front. Oh, this is fishy, oh. isn't it? 
ouch, yep, 100 damage or thereabouts. And bust up. All he needs is one or two. He's already provided the first. Vault, that AK. He doesn't want to be the first man in. He needs to clean up, but there's no mess being made. Just one out of Isaac's Tech 9. Good from Perfecto's nade, and Hobbit taps into Isaac for a convincing round conversion. So five for Cloud9's defense now, and that's four on the trot as well. Should be a drop available for Buster here. They know that it'll be the buy into the next. You'd love to get him out with a full util, and they won't. They will be able to drop him a silence Den four. This is going to be the second timeout for Gamer Legion here. Ash on the mic. Last time he took a timeout, not successful off the back. As mentioned, seven's already great on this T hall. But if the momentum shifts completely in, Cloud9 win the half, 8-7, you're going to be feeling a bit flat, knowing that Gamer Legion CT sides on Mirage so far in this tournament have been, well, they've left a, a lot to be desired, I think would be a, a good way to frame it. They played it twice, they lost it twice, both were 16-8 games. Managed three CT rounds. In, in, against, in a full half? Yeah, they, they started CT side against Mongols, managed three CT rounds. Oof. And then they had it, you said they played it twice? Yeah, so... Would have been Fnatic? Yeah, I'm misclicking here. Oop, no stress. Oop. And... Uh, yeah, it was against Monty. Ah, uh, okay. And they lost that one in similar fashion. That was uh, where they only managed four CT rounds. So 10 would be lovely. 10 would really give them something to believe in. They've just walked past each other. Who, who, who benefits more from this? I don't well, Shiro's understand. Shiro's dead. Shiro should be dead. He's no way he's expecting someone to be in Palace Smoke because Hobbit's already pushing T-Spawn. Oh, Shiro's just slipped down here. So he isn't worried about Palace at all. He might get a jump scare of a lifetime, but A-Ram also becoming a problem now. This information. They're, they're not vulnerable to the Hobbit flank anytime soon. So if anything, now Vault has an advantage he doesn't know about. You're going to assume that Hobbit's pushed A-Ramp anyway. True. But if they go into the B-Split, Shiro's Orp's just rotated over. The bomb is part of this pack. Buster screams for assistance. This is where the Orp, you They're coming. See. Bomb's committed. Bomb's committed. Have the angle for it. And Keon's first victim of Shiro. Snappy on that AWP. Electronic rounding the corner. Acor caught by surprise. This B defense is perfect. Cloud9 are in the right place and they're hitting the right shot. Isaac next victim. Neil and gone too. And yeah, that Vault Lurk, it lost its potency. Uh, I mean, he really was just... You see, now he thinks that there was a player close they ran because they had all the info. They had the info that it was likely a B play, right? That Orp was already right. in the site here. So we asked who it was going to favor more. In the moment, if Vault kept walking, he would have found a freebie onto Shiro who wouldn't have seen it. But at that point, Hobbit's forward. He is no faffing around, right? He is no, no nades, nothing being dropped day ramp. He's like, well, there's nobody in Palace mm -hmm. as far as he's concerned. And that meant that it's probably going to be either a mid or a B play. So they get in the right place, fortunately, but I don't think they realize how lucky they are. They have no idea. And they just dodged a bit of a bullet here. It will be six now for Cloud9. As Vault will retain the AK-47. Lost bonus into the next. It's going to be maxed on out. That will not affect him. No lost bonus when staying alive on that T side. But the rest of his teammates will all be just under that 4K mark. You're likely to see a partial buy around this saves AK. A gun round in the last for round 15 for Gamer Legion. And does Ash want to burn another timeout here? It would be the third. At this point, they realize they've messed up. You've just walked into Shiro's den. It's not just Buster who's thrown that defensive smoke. It's the big man with the AWP who's starting to activate now. Had a quite a quiet start to things. He's now finding some form. Saved AK-47. Gone first. An opening death for your most promising rifle. Cloud9 give no quarter. Kios. Don't catch Electronic overstaying his welcome in middle. Shiro does get uh, crouch peeked out by Kios. Boosting window here. Shiro's yeah, aware. Telegraphed. Shiro good for it. Acor, great deagle headshot, but not much more when Shiro most definitely is alert and ready for you. 7-7. Seven, seven. Good to see Shiro back in, in uh, expected form. Very quiet at the uh, start of Mirage. This is our third map, by the way. Last round of the first half. It is really getting to the pointy end of this game. Elimination or playoffs up for debate. Now, if we look at the uh, average for Gamer Legion on the CT side of this map up to this point, seven is not going to be enough. Eight won't even be enough here. So 
Now that we've gotten to round 15, Ash is hoping that they can pull something just to give some confidence. It's six in a row for Cloud9. Could be seven here if they win this one. And another three-man mid stance. Shiro jumping out. He's been Ooh. spotted. I think there's lots of comms here. Shiro's on the W. On the W. Pursuing the same. Oh, my God. That's fast. He's looking for Shiro, too. He'll take Cloud9 down a peg. Grabbing the AWP as well. That's his preference, I guess. Oh, he's got Hobbit. Standing off in the smoke. And Hobbit will be good for the first. On the retreat. Hunted down. Vault good for it on the way in. Perfecto finally finishes off Key. But Neela is going to be overlooked completely. It puts Buster onto a 1v3, and it seems Gamer Legion, thanks to Kios and his quick pace change, will be leaving with an eighth on this T side. Buster exchanging smokes here. And look at Acor even calling the bluff, walks out on towards the balcony. Buster, a really difficult round to win. But around, he needs to give a crack here. He's going to wait for the smoke, understandably so, but he's a dead man walking. Vault picks him up, 8-7 on the half. Game of Legion with the tightest of lead. We are going to go to a break and we return with one final half of Counter-Strike. Who's going to the arena? What is your calling? One final half and one spot in the Lanxess Arena, an iconic arena in Counter-Strike that every single player dreams of playing within. The Cathedral of Counter-Strike, they're calling it. And this is the first Cologne, first visit 
to the city for Isaac Volt and Nealon. Game of Legion, eight rounds away from being incredibly successful. How many players on their first Cologne make playoffs? That's a short list. Yeah, uh, and I've given it a fair crack of the whip here, aren't they? A team slept on once more, showing up and doing it as a unit. Some good team-based CS as well as some individuals stepping up to be counted when necessary. The odds favoring Cloud9 ever just here. As Isaac and Volt been tasked with holding down B. Three players from Cloud9 have silently made their descent down through the underpass. And Molly towards window and now they're going to start making some steps. Fast up connector into an A split. Geos tapping away. Oof, has his bell rung. There is a setup established. Neilan yet to take the fight. Cleared out first as Acor. Nice work and it looks good for Cloud9 initially. Shiro's still got that P250, which is the perfect weapon for the job. Even if it gets a bit messy. Two kills from Shiro. Vent not broken. Perfecto doesn't even need to be staring at this one right here. Can use that as the sound cue. Bomb's going to go down triple. Vault from CT. Isaac's still on B. The kid is here. Yeah, that's something to be celebrated. He's got that smoke and kit, but... Okay, well, he just saved them $400. Well, actually, a whole lot more than $400. 700 smackaroos. Four plus three equals seven. Carry the zeros. Plus an extra for the Kev. He might be capable of keeping hold of. Doesn't look like there's any threats. I say that as Perfecto did just yes. have a little bit of a gander, didn't he? Yeah. But uh, nice pistol round from Cloud9. You know, you make sure there's no aggressions through the B apartments by coming through silently. Oh, Perfecto's going to hunt here. Uh, it makes sense. You don't want that cheap upgrade into the head armor as well as other woes that might come with this pesky famite. Just. Isaac, if he peeks again, he might lose his life. Instead, he gets the kill instead. So that's tidy. That's very yeah. tidy for Isaac. He keeps his Kev and he gets an extra 300 bucks to play with. See the way this was going down. Acorp, Hobbit's flight path was perfect. Shots were hit. You see immediately what Perfecto and Electronic opt for. Electronic holds short so his teammates can't die. He's already like entrenched. And then you had Perfecto take full window control. So it just meant they had to deal with the players on the site, which was the harder of the tasks. But the three of them able to do so. And they didn't actually buy behind this saved Kevlar. So game allegiant. Interesting decision. If you have two players save the Kevlar, you know, you can get Famuses behind it. Sure. You know, it you or like you can have something on them. Yeah, That's but nothing at all is, is, is odd to see. So it's almost in vain that they held on to those goods, but it's going to make Cloud9 question what the purchase is. If I saw two players save on the pistol, I'm assuming immediately forced by into the second. Immediately. So this is already going to be a different look for them. And if Volt and Isaac don't die, that's fine. They won't have to buy any armor come the gun round being well, round number 18. So we've seen them stacked over towards B. Cloud9 are going to kick down the door, roll on in, find out that nobody's home, be diligent with their util still, completely obscuring the vision of Connector and Jungle, and even spamming the boxes for good measure. So Cloud9 up to nine. And I'm sure there's a lot of people out there, if they do get across here and lock themselves into the Lanxess Arena, who are going to be hoping and praying that they've bought enough time for Axile. Well, that's my question. Is it two-day break? Two-day break. Wednesday, Thursday off. Okay. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And because they're playing in the quarters, they are, will be playing on Friday. Right. So, yeah, it's, you know, keep your eyes on the Cloud9 Twitter. I'd say if he's not here yet. Yeah. And actually, don't keep an eye on the Cloud9 Twitter because they tweeted out that whole Lord of the Raw, R Rings yeah. thing, which confused half of our crew. Bit of a misplay. But all the same. You know, Cloud9 are like, they, they still showed up to the marathon, but they have a dead leg. It's yeah. like, you know, you're here. They're injured. You did all your training. You know, I'm sure you've got the endurance, but you're, you're straight up missing a limb here. It's not going to be ideal. Yeah, and that's where you, I, two, two extra days of practice before with Buster, yes. that's going to be a lot, especially when they know their matchup. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't expect scrims. them to be a slouch by any means, but at the same time, and it's not to be mean to Buster, it's just impossible to compare Axel and Buster. Like, that, that's not fair to either of those two players for us to do that. Different players with very different responsibilities, typically, Precisely. In, in, a, in a team environment. This, of course, is the exception to that, as he's been given exactly the same responsibilities, which is why we're seeing that contrast. Let's go. Out 90 side. Underway now. We are rocking. We are rolling. Acor is posted for a moment. Smoke now. Forced to reposition, as Electronic does look to take that connector space. Acor can become their absolute worst nightmare on the CT side with the AWP on a map like Mirage. Yeah. If he gets hot, Cloud9 are going to be in trouble. Necessary smoke. 
does mean that Acor's going to be focused on this if they want to probe out Con. But is he just cheating over? I mean, they've got... Oh, they did have... While he was setting up for the boost. Yeah. Hubbard was quite truly setting up the boost there and tapping away at a player in sight. And look at oh, the red carpet that's been rolled out. Get back he to A. He hears Vault as well, rotating to B. Electronics got him dead to rights. That's Mac 10 to the face. No helmet. And he's punished for it. Acor at least stops Electronics retrieval, but getting into the site now. Unknown. The overlooked Neelan. I think he hasn't been spotted out by Buster. Oh, oh no. Okay, Neelan. Yeah, knows he could have done a lot more with that. Elise leaves with one, but the bomb goes down and Buster's still alive as well. Full HP on that stairs player that was spotted. They don't have a smoke for the bomb. Oh, if Hobbit oversteps here, there's a way in. And he's given it to them. Isaac, Acor. With their powers combined, could perhaps find the equalizer. Heard him charging. Orb looking for Arthur. Spots out. Buster nails the shot. Up close on triple. Acor's not considered it. He's perfectly played him. Ten Isaac's seconds. not looking. Not looking. Acor. Dead man. Shiro clutches up for Cloud9. A triple in total. But they need him. They need him. Without Shiro, Cloud9 cannot see the Lanxess. That little dart around the box from Shiro. Right. Perfectly timed. He could have got caught in the back there. So just gets around behind. They have no idea. They expect he's playing the bomb. Massive work for Shiro. And you're bang on. This kid is going to need to continue to step up here. Hobbit's been having a great half. Oh, a great game so far. 18 in total for him. Shiro now joining Electronic on 14 frags. And this is an impactful one. Look what it's done to Game Allegiance by here going forward. It's not just a one on two. It's not just a clutch. It's a round that gets him an and it puts Game Allegiant down to Pistols. Oh. <laughs> and Pistols, the name of Kioz's game. How's Shiro? Did he collapse them? Where they were, doing, actually, they were boosting, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> what? Well, Kioz's dig has manufactured an advantage, albeit, yeah, with the caveat of he did. They're starting to come back <laughs> over here quite swiftly. So five players from Gamer Legion now responding to any of the threat on A and Vault removed. Hobbit's aim stays steady. Yeah, he's taken a couple of nasty beatings. 110 as well. ADR from Hobbit. Hobbit. He's having a banger. Well, if they and go now, they'll beat on. them into B, but they just don't know. Well, that's it. And you don't want to be the first guy in running into the unknown. Buster getting a move on now. Send out the sacrificial lamb. Great play from Hobbit. He's doing so much for Cloud9 here. And him combined with the rest, Shiro et al. They got themselves the B bomb site. Bomb has been, been overlooked on this. Peek so he brush down the Buster, but doesn't quite find the head in time. And Hobbit the Hunter as well. Such an impressive player is Hobbit. Well, this was another question that people had, right? Because there was the discussion of should they. Remove, ooh, 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 bye. Should they remove uh, Hobbit and keep Nathany and have him in-game lead and, and let Electronic right. off, the, off the leash? But if Hobbit can play the quality Counter-Strike that he's delivering right now, I, I think that you, well, I see that there are also people who don't like Electronic as an in-game leader. I think he's going to be a baller in-game leader. Oh, me too, me too. It's funny, but, you know, it's people that know him as well, so that's why it's like, it's interesting. That's you know, true. It's Here blade, it is. Blade and simple. I've oh, they lined like, up. Yeah, yeah, collateral Oh, headshot. okay. My bad. I thought there was a boost going on. Never mind. Bang. Take that back. But uh, regardless, yeah, 11 for Cloud9. Five away from the Lanxess Arena now. And Gamer Legion, they just need one round to reinvigorate that hope. Because the funds are being accrued. Isaac on your screens as well. You know, he had a fantastic start to the series over on um, Inferno. Yeah, he had those multi-kills towards A. He kept 3 k on that CT side round after round. And then he even had a, a banger of a match on Ancient. He, he's definitely stand up to be counted here today as Isaac. And Ash burns his penultimate timeout. It's going to start feeling a bit hopeless soon, isn't it? Certainly if it keeps going this way, yeah. It's... Uh... Well, the, but well, again, the framing just to make sure I'm not just beating them here, is the fact that their CT side has sucked in the two matches they played so far. We knew that coming into this half. It's been four consecutive now for Cloud9. Is there any chance of this slowing up? Well, I think the recipe may be something a little bit more unorthodox. And Kios has gone for that, but there's a gap. There's a giant oh. gap. Neelan identifies it a little too late. And Kios, fortunately, Capable. Vault's here. Will he go undetected? 
the bomb. Heading up ramp. Perfecto. Nades towards Vault. No Molly, though. They have to clear him. Kios caught as well on the wall through the smoke. They're limited now. It's just him. And he's gone down. Perfecto gets some style points. And yeah, Cloud9 do seem to be ascending just a little bit. This extra level within the touching distance of the playoffs. They're having a mother's meeting right, right now. That's showing you again. Like, th these guys are hot and cold. They're on and off. You know, some, it's mainly electronic. Most of the time, you know, they're smiling. They're having a good time. Sometimes it's getting a bit tilty. I told you to throw this flash. But well, we have a tech called. The FPS bug raises its head once more. Okay, so two conversations we've been having and some two cool stats to, to add on top of that. Check out Kios, who is taken part in nine opening duels. Uh, victorious in four, conceding five. But interestingly enough, Hobbit five and zero uh, in his opening contributions. And that just adds to this, I mean, uh, heroic haul he's been providing for Cloud9 in the absence of some of the usual stars, one of which who couldn't make it. Yeah, he's done it on both sides of the server as well. I was just flicking through. Three of them have come on the CT side and two of them have come so far on the T hall, one of them on that pistol. So, uh, you know, Hobbit isn't afraid to get stuck in. And Kiel's not giving us the love anymore, but he's still got a smile on his face. Just have a bit of a technical timeout with multiple players just restarting to get their FPS sorted here. Hopefully optimized in the future. But, uh, this is a much better looking Cloud9. Uh, uh, of all the maps we've seen, and sure, I know the Lost Inferno, Ancient was shaky. This second half is, the I think, looking or shaping up to be probably the best half they've played so far. Most definitely. And well, that, that uh, is only exemplified by their current demeanor. Look at them. Better get those smiles off their faces. League Ops will be down there very soon to say no smiling during technical clear, timeouts. No crocs, no, no smiling. No fun and no crocs. Or I guess I could just say no fun. It falls under the same category. Yep. I need a bit of a match medic here, but both teams are ready and ready to go get things back underway. Four rounds the difference. Settled, everything sorted. All right, it's game time, game faces. Hours have gone by, and still we don't have an answer as to who will be taking this spot in the playoffs of IEM Cologne 2023. A cause AWP, the main focus of our conversation here. Now, Gamer Legion have yet to post a CT round. Acorn more than capable to mix things up with his own game plan and look at the angle he's opted for. Now, it's not going to result in any early friction, but it might be early info. It is huge info here, right? Isaac can immediately leave the B bomb site. He can go and try and bolster things with Neil and vault over towards A. Problem is, Acor is somewhat stuck, but might catch a timing and does, <gasps> but a missed shot. Oh, it's Another Hobbit. Hobbit opener. Yep, that's another 6 0 now. Orp lost. And I think their hopes may be joining them as Buster comes out of the ramp. The only defender of the A site now gone. There is one. And it's Kios. They don't know that this has happened because Electronics pushed back over towards B. So uh, Kios is going to get something done here. That nade, not too shabby. Hopper's going to chase him down. But we should stay on board with Kios here. Is the MP9 in range? All it's good for is Pepper. And Shiro's going to rub some salt in the wound there. That is 13 to 8. Oh, yeah. MP9 at range. Sometimes it feels like a rail, rail gun. Sometimes it feels like a sewing machine. Not ideal at range, believe it or not. 13, though, to 8. And uh, yeah, this Cloud9 run. This CT woes. I mean, it's not going to feel good for Gamer Legion. That's no, for it's sure. Not. It's not. And uh, no one wants to be patted on the back saying you played well when you're lost. Yeah, especially the CT half of a map like this where you should be able to put up some resistance. It's just not clicking for them. Ashiro has found some pace and might find an opener. There it is, Neil and gone. They are just completely disconnected from each other here. Shiro, he could get swarmed here. And it is Kios and Isaac. They just activate. And I think this is going to have to be the approach from now on. Yeah, from Game all of in moves. All yeah. in moves. Take the fight. Overwhelm them. Have the numbers. Just playing a... A misunderstood default without the nuance layers you need. It hasn't worked. But just charging at him. You've got the aim. You've got the team play. That flash. Oh, he's away. Spoke about team play. Hobbit re-peaks. That's brave. 
was really feeling himself. He does dink up Kiyos, one HP on him. Default plan, hard to win this round for Cloud9. Very hard, unless you go around the world from Perfecto. And Buster delays and distracts long enough. Just like that, Kiyos caught. Worried about the flank and aware of it as well. No one currently considering... Where is Perfecto? Oh, Buster oh, oh. gets another one. And now with the plant down like that, they're sitting not going to be looking at CT. Sitting they're it, not going to be looking at CT. Spray. Diffuse comes through. Gamer Legion finally find a CT round. Oh, that one's going to feel real good. And now the back of just aggressive in middle where they gave up that opening pick. They swarm middle. They take down two players. They force Cloud9 in towards the A site. Sure, they get the bomb down, but they do it together. That smoke they dropped to give them an avenue in worked as the wall for the defuse. Very fortunate because Perfecto, once he starts holding down Mouse 1, the spray and pray, anything's possible in that moment. Gaming Legion grab another one of those. Watch this. This was great. What a good job from Basti. He said he had to delay. He delayed more than long enough. Yeah, just that spray from Perfecto didn't hit the money on the mark. But this is the difference. It's not together here from Gamer Legion. You said you wanted a bit more out of the book. Well, they've thrown us something quite standard here. Oh, Electronic. Going through the procedures, but Acor's stubborn about this. Oh, and he's been flashed off. He's made the spray, and it's Kios from, from the way side. downtown to catch Electronic and save Acor. Like, it's a twofold benefit. And they're rotating B. There's going to be three players in the here. Right place. Yeah, Vault confirmed. Bodies, short, Buster in the apartment. Another huge frag from Buster, but he will not go down. Acor made a meal of that. Now perhaps there's grounds for a discussion oh. as Vault takes that bomb flat carrier down. Shiro still a threat, held and sprayed. Vault has had a big round here. Three important contributions. To find two rounds in simultaneous fashion. Buster a lot to worry about here, and the bomb, it's in no man's land. Well, it's a problem. Vault. Oh, spotted out. Confirmation of this walk from Buster. They know where you are. Now we're trying to keep them guessing. Vault perhaps going to be more exposed to this new angle he's found. <laughs> it's Nealon's holding. Team play. Two in a row from Gamer Legion. Uh, and Nealon not overplaying his hand there. Once Vault gets spotted in that position, Nealon might want to jump out and try and assist there, which would have offered up a one-on-one -on -one possibility for Buster. Just holds his nerve, holds the angle. And the Legion hold on here. That was great. And uh, you know they started rotating immediately. They know that Electronic is just trying to deal with that rotation point. So they have a very good idea of the finish there. They rotated over with multiple bodies that are ahead of Cloud9. How stubborn was Acor for that con control? You know, he got bailed out in the end, but that, that shows that they're, they're, they have the same memo that we've been discussing. We can't just let them get a couple of picks through our missed adjusted defense. It's crazy how much they're just allowing Acor to be the only one to patrol mid. Like in the current top tier teams, of, you, you have at least, you know, two players dealing with it. You have Nealon in sandwich, which tells me he's expecting an A execute because this is a position of commitment. Right, well, once you're here, especially if you're not smoking the choke points, you're essentially here for the whole round. And what a premonition from Neil, and it might turn out to be. Especially, yeah. Your B defenders have grouped up and are clearing apps. So they're on they'll, high alert now. Yeah, they might get their utility ready. They can disrupt. They could delay. 60 seconds. And when those smokes sail through the sky... Kios has the crossfire with Neelan, draws attention, hoping to be overlooked. It works perfectly for the first. Electronic was completely distracted. Oh, I'm so blind. He hasn't finished the job. One in towards default, threatening now. Problems for Neelan. He's having a tough time on Mirage, but a three on three, you know. Isaac's flank is fast here, really he fast. fast. They're still bottlenecked in Tetris. They can't get out. They Vault, can't move forward. He's just trying to remain present. They, they're calling CT. Eyes are on CT. No one's considering... The flank, and that's the bomb carrier gone. A great find from Isaac. 20 seconds. He just chooses to anticipate a reclear. Elevated. Oh. What a shot! Shiro has given him a grounds for this. Close. He does it all. 14. Woo! Found. Shiro steals that one away. I thought Isaac had done enough. And instead, Gamer Legion now staring down the barrel. 14 for Cloud9, and they've got peanuts in their bank balance. Yeah, that's why the celebrations just came in there from Cloud9. Electronic and Perfecto letting them know they understand the situation. They know the status quo. You are out of money and you've got a tough decision to make.
You can take a little investment, a light buy, upgrade ever so much here, Gamer Legion. Oh. Or you can shove all in. Next round, if you just wait, you can get out everything you need and more, but you concede round 15. So that decision-making tree you saw Isaac presented with there, Look at the time, so 17 seconds, and it looked like initially he wanted to run away, whether it was Palace, whether it was back con, then he thought better of it. I don't think he's expecting that hard of a clear, right. because you look how far Shiro has to commit, it's hard to fault him in that situation. Sure, he could have gone the corner, jiggled and played for info, it would have removed him from that possibility, but if you're Isaac, you think job's done, and they're gonna scramble, 17. they're gonna run into you. Shiro stayed poised, yeah. and that's what happens at this level of Counter-Strike. Brilliant stuff from Shiro. Wait, hold up. Everybody's here besides Isaac and the bomb. The bomb is just above them. That's going to be Ooh, heard. Oh, I think, oh yeah, dropped it. It hit the deck. It did hit the deck. Pins are pulled. Flashes through. You turn back. You hope they jump into your jaws. No reaction out of the CTs. Isaac is connected oh, 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 and oh, oh. <laughs> Two with the Mac 10. Did it all on his own there. Yep. Flash for himself. Not jumped too in. Too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Test the water. It's feeling fine. Neelan, Neelan wants a headshot, and Shiro is the one to give it to him. Yeah, well, 15, all but locked in here. Isaac and Vault, the last two remaining. Four players bearing down on this A site. As Isaac goes looking for information again, they'll just swing out. Cutting the audibles, Cloud9. You make Game of Legion think, hold up, they saw three rounds. They just expect this full stack. Are they just going to start rotating to the second letter of the alphabet? No, 15 secure now, and without Axile. Coming in hamstrung, a wounded animal. One on debut, one the Counter-Strike world was hyped to see, Buster. He's filling this void. The job is almost done. Just one more round here. They can eliminate Game of Legion and lock themselves in the quarterfinals in one foul swoop. In the last 17 rounds of play, Game of Legion have won three. Yeah, this CT side was I always going to be difficult. Yeah. Hobbit, maybe spotted, he's burning, burning. Four HP and a nade for good measure. Okay. Well, there's an opening for Gamer Legion in this one. Spotted out now. Electronics coming for you, Isaac. Blocks his teammates, Molly. But Isaac, ooh, lives on just about. Electronic is so intimidating. He wants to finish this job right here, right now. Round 26. Well, he wants it to be the last round. And Isaac's completely caught out. Electronic calling his troops into the site. As they peek one by one into Electronic and they are feeling his wrath. Maybe Kios, maybe Kios can say play on. One is great, two would be fantastic, but Buster denies it with a quick adjustment. Bolt the double, a triple total, and this a Buster clutch. This would be fitting. The stand-in down. And now four more of those required. That is the. Uh, these flanks have rumbled Cloud9 in certain situations, haven't they? I'm becoming a kiosk stand. I can, I can hear Electronic quite clearly, and the level that he is yelling behind, I'm assuming that's what he just said, or, or Biaps, or yes. whatever the con for that is in, in, the, in the tongue. But he, at the top of his lungs, letting that war cry out, because, yeah, this behind from Kios. Electronic dies, they scream, and it opens, everybody turns, and then Vault happens. It needs to be perfect. Cloud9. Beorb's going to search here. So Acor's been boosted. He can hold this line here. And if Buster doesn't come up with the jiggle, he can call things relatively clear. And if Buster does come with the jiggle, he might lose everything. You can see the passive nature of the angle he's currently holding here. And the same to be said for Hobbit and Shiro top mid. They're allowing Game Allegiant to make the first move. And you can understand why. I just mentioned the flanks. They've been a problem. What's one way to deal with that? Cast a wide net. Net set. Electronic going through his protocols. Neelan, being kept very humble against this Cloud9 roster. With a smoke on ramp, with posturing forward from Kios, they are very disconnected from what looks to be the final finish. The plan is set. Acor could be the disruptor. He could be the hero. It's all on him. So much responsibility. Isaac's coming. Oh, but at least he's getting away, but Rotation's he's missed his first. Way. He gets some info early. Hold on, Acor. And he's holding on as best he can. He's taken down Electronic on the first swing. Buster now caught by Isaac. 
and they do pass this first test. Incendiary's great. Acor, frag onto Hobbit, better. They might lose everything here. Look at this flank. It's Volt might get here at the perfect time. Alex, Whoa. if they kill them after time, this would be massive. Just 10 seconds to have to wait here, Volt. Hold your horses. Yeah, you're right, if he just waited. But Shira's gonna catch him, catch him, and bail himself out of trouble. You gotta wake up super early if you wanna beat Shiro to the punch. That quite truly, right, if they were able to get these kills after time, would be one way back into this game, right? The fact that they do retain this AWP is extremely scary now because it is Shiro who can find them an opening here. No dramas whatsoever. That is the biggest and scariest weapon that you probably worried about on the CT side of Gamer Legion, right? You just don't want to give up a pick anywhere. But again, they activated late. They blocked well, and the info push came through once more. Kios pushed a ramp. Volt pushed Palace simultaneously. So they knew immediately that Isaac could just beeline it straight over. Acor takes contact. Everybody's already on their way, just calling the bodies. And right now, calling a timeout. The final for Cloud9 here. Groove on the mic, wants to get this done. Now, the finances into the next 2400. So they're going to hedge their bets here. Hobbit has invested with a CZ and a smoke. Plus to buying in with a smoke and a deagle. So they can chip in ever so slightly here. In the next round, it's going to be wobbly as well. As if they don't get it done with a buy like this. Traditionally needing something like this as a bailout. This could be the closeout. Make Cloud9 work for this. Kios. Not going to have any issues with Hobbit. And he was alone. So that's information. Neelan. Can I slide a fight here, Perfecto, if he walks out now? You would think. Neelan will be fine. Oh, oh my god! Dear. Was he on the way off the box? I think he just jumped up. His feet just this is a great landed. Reaction. This is a great reaction out of Kios. This that is was Kios' an, wonderland. That was an orb. It was an orb, and Perfecto did own him. But there is a very fast flank on this. Again. Again. Yeah, becoming a bit of a broken record regarding the GL remedy to their CT woes. It is flanks. And because they're allowing Shiro to come palace instead of ramp, they are going to take their time, but Kios is going to go clear out top mid. Aha. Uh -huh. A bit of a time delay, but the information the same. He's got so much utility, and it's not going to be able to use it. They're just jumping into him. Uh, Volt! Yep! Gets one! Neil and covering for the rest, they're swinging into him. Buster doesn't have the weapon or health, and yeah, they'll close it. They take it all the way from Cloud9. Could have gotten awkward, doesn't. Oh, they've just brought out double orbs here. They've just brought double orbs. Kios just picked up one last minute, I think. So sure, one for Acor makes sense. He lost his life over towards Connector, but if they're going to wield double orbs... Is it more potent? Because they, they, I don't know if Cloud9 know. Shot. Bang. Yeah, he, he took the pick. Yeah, I think he was I on his way right. off the I box as he was right. dropping down. Damn. He caught in midair. Now, yeah, look, they know that there's no AWP on the other side, but I was getting a little bit concerned. I thought Cloud9, with their type of purchase here, it might resemble something a bit different, but executes would be the perfect way to obscure the vision of double yeah. AWPs. And they're, they're, they're so out of position. Kios won't be flanking with an AWP, will he? so out of position. It's exec. Oh! Doesn't matter. Kios draws blood. They know it's double AWPs now. Now they do but uncertain as to what lies behind the smokes. They're, not, in, they're not using their util. They haven't pushed into the side. The smoke's going to start fading he in about five or CT. 10 seconds. He'll be able to post up and have a shooting gallery here. Now, they need a plant. This is no good, Cloud9. The orb from Kios posted on that sandwich angle. Oh, and he's been spotted out, both taking a little thicker damage, but Acor's orb now fills the feed. Buster's gone. Cloud9 in pursuit of a plant. Otherwise, we are looking at a tied game, overtime, conversations to be had as Gamer Legion edging closer to another CT round. Kios, okay, this time on to Shiro, and Acor might be the next as he tags him up, trade it out, and it's good. Gamer Legion keeping this game competitive just as we started to doubt them. I gave you that stat, two in 17, well, Six in the last eight have gone the way of Game of Legion. Yeah, they've really changed the dialogue here yet again. And Kios, an X Factor here today. He's just been a menace. Aggressive throughout, but then picking up a secondary AWP, considering the circumstances. Risky business, but drops it now, going into round number 30. This cobbled together by Tech Nines, Mac 10s, Util to boot. They're going to try and finish it with an execute again, but this time, if they throw the nades, they have to follow through. Such an important round. 
one of the highest stakes rounds these players have played. Gamer Legion to secure OT. Third map for playoffs of IEM Cologne. And Vault has been ignored. Holds it, delivers a nice double kill. It's up to Neelan to do the same. Isaac's with him. And there's only two left for Cloud9 just with pistols. It's secure. Overtime is theirs. And it feels like a victory for Gamer Legion. It was a five round run to the finish line there. Well, what a time to have your best CT half on Mirage of the event to keep you in the game, to take us to overtime. And this is all for the playoffs, baby. MR3, 12 and a half K, and we're about to get this thing straight underway. No pause, no break, let's go. I want to see if Game of Legion maintain that CT form. Uh, if they uh, keep getting flanks, Alex, I can't even quantify it. Cloud9 have so many gaps. And they're going out mid fast. No one from the CT side is inspecting or investigating, but there is an investigation taking shape here. Not pushing. He's won the jaw. Another impressive and impactful frag out of Kios. They're reading the play again. Neelan's already over towards B. Isaac and Volta here. Buster, Shiro, Hobbit. Sure, they're coming. Act Electronic has a whole bunch of space available, but they're going into the lion's share of the defense. The angle, profitable. A great catch onto Buster from Neelan. And even Electronic pulling out his nades, he's dead. Oh, and Shiro, the same. Hobbit dead. Gamer Legion starting to bring the pain. A triple out of Isaac. First attempt. At a T round here for Cloud9 in overtime, and it comes up empty. No timeouts available. Exactly. It's going to be really hard for Groove now. He has to sit back and hope and pray. How many times has he been there, though? This combination of this roster. Well, this is the thing, but he has even less say in what's likely to happen here. Because you have Electronic, an in-game leader from a different team, and with a different coach and different star players around him here. Yeah. they got two players from a different school. A rival school. And Hobbit has been doing everything to try and keep Cloud9 in it. Shiro the same. But Eyes look how caged Cloud9 are looking. I, I think that they have a lot of good individuals that they need to just put in places to activate. If you're sitting like this and we just saw the B execute, you're coming through a funnel of death. You're coming through this choke point where Game of Legion are already set up for you. Right? They're not putting their players in positions to be able to get the job done. They're just sticking with this slow default crawl, which is reminiscent of the way both of these teams once upon a time approach Counter-Strike. I'm talking about Na'Vi and C9. I know Maui's been happy with some of the other details in terms of the way they've been approaching the game, but they need something now. A bit of a spark. This was looking like it should have been theirs. It looks like it should have been their playoffs, but he was aggressive again. This time found out by a diligent perfecto. That's a difference from the previous. An That's opening a gift kill. For Cloud9. Not only the opening, but also knowing that that early info was present for their adversary. Now crawl through the con. Perfecto. Nope. He's looking for Isaac, and he adjusts in time. What a round from Perfecto. He had 15 frags. These two worth their weight in gold. And see how they had tabs on the aggression there. They, they realized they've been being flanked in all of these rounds. It has to be coming somewhere at some point in time. And we're able to find out both aggressive elements, Kios and Isaac, walking into Perfecto. Anyone else? here as well. They call. You got tagged up. Neelan's managed to find one long range. And Acor as well to preserve his AWP. Neelan's happy to take these fights if you're going to give it to him. Yeah, well, he wants to add as many as he can to the scoreboard, Mr. Neelan. In-game leading, doing his best and doing a fantastic job here today. Pushing him the distance as they lose the orb. But none of that was ever going to matter. More than enough money for another game of Legion buy here. That was all in vain. 16-16. Who's going to walk away from the first half of OT number one? with the two rounds under their belt. This is where I don't think it's just going to be electronic calling. This is where I think you're going to get contributions of Shiro if he wants to pick any with the AWP. Hobbit also coming up with some ideas. Remember, Hobbit is a very mature player here. We've looked at him as the dad of the old Cloud9 roster. Right. Kind of stuck out like a bit of a sore thumb, but he's with a much more experienced team now. He's still going to have a loud voice and still going to be a necessary contributor. Gone for that double orb again. Now it worked once, and Kios hit two fantastic orb shots. 
It does give them a bit more mid-presence to clamp down early. So you can see Acor in the vent, Vault over towards Short. Kiaz is still loitering in this window position and kneeling in Connector. So currently, A is open for business. Mid's been flashed out. Another info play for Gamer Legion. They're either doing it silently or they're doing it with Utah. But either way, they're getting it done as Neelan. Might call top mid clear. Hobbit was lying in wait. The bomb's been picked up by Shiro now. Window smoke deployed, but Neelan knows. And so does Kios. Oh, this is a very risky maneuver from Kios. Hard to flash off. He'll collect it nice and clean. Re-peeking in for another, and Kios the Orpa finally meets his match in Shiro. Neelan wants to hold on to this advantage, and he has a duel with Harbit. Oh, that he pulls across the line, a necessary one. Otherwise, you'd have been staring at a three on three. But look at this, 35 seconds left. Shiro over towards b Abs, Perfecto in Palace. One of them is going to have to make a move here, and it can't be Shiro first. Do they bite? Eh, doesn't matter. He's going to have to get a kill or two. Isaac has no reason to move. Bomb is not spotted. Shiro is a dead man walking, and this is going to be 17-16 in favor of Gamer Legion when we flip sides. Perfecto, other side of the map, hit that concede button. You aren't sure. winning this one. Nothing for him to do. And Gamer Legion will be taking the lead. Taking Kios the again. lead. I would love to be able to look at the rounds where Kios has found an opening or even just like one or two kills and they've converted because he has now been involved in, what are we looking at here? 15 opening exchanges on Kios. He has just been that activated. We're talking about his pace, how quick he is in the face, the double orb. He has been involved in 15 opening exchanges here. He's been successful in nine. He's lost out on six. He is the great disruptor right now. And Gamer Legion, they will use their final timeout. Ash gets on the mic. That gives Groove the 30 seconds to try and calm things down here for Cloud9. They're on the CT side. But remember, the half didn't start great for them. They lost the pistol. They lost the conversion. It was very, very spotty until they put a streak of six of their own towards the tail end of that first half of play. They need to remember what they were doing in that latter stage. They need to put that in a bottle and they need to bring that here. Into Game their Legion. CT side. Their T side started incredibly well. Precisely. So what were we doing early? Let's do that again. Perhaps the conversation Ash has just had. Everything they could dream of for this buy that would put them one round away from the playoffs of IEM Cologne 23. They haven't been in that position in this map, have they? About to battle back in, have had to take it to overtime, and they're about to waterfall out into Hobbit. And Hobbit, the turret. Poised and ready. He only the one kept humble by Vault. Shiro sees to it that it doesn't spiral. The bomb is going down, and they... Ooh, late. Late, but the bomb ticking. Isaac dead. Acor responsible for an awful lot here. This could be insane. He's good in these close quarters. Exchanges, but not if Neelan goes down so quickly. It's not planted for Acor. Shiro had a glance at it, and this round falls straight by the wayside. Shiro even nails it. Thank you for the sound cue. Thank you for the round. And all tied up at 17 apiece. Let's see how spotless of a defense Cloud9 can erect. Okay, well, the first handled quite easily here, and it was Hobbit who was the man that we kept looking to on this A side to be good for one or two frags within the early stages. He was very steady in the aim and does so again here. Shiro, when he gets that kill, he spots the bomb. It goes out to the side. The nade short was a little bit late, but regardless, it's the kill he's looking for. Mission accomplished in that respect. And they give Acor the green light to go looking, and Hobbit did give him an opportunity. Just a slight jiggle. Reaction shot, but Acorn doesn't quite convert. You see what's happened here. Hobbit realizes he's pinned behind the box, drop backs, a set smoke towards top ramp, gets the ticker, and now he can turn his attention over towards Palace. Game of Legion had mid control if they wanted it, but now that Shiro and Electronic are both investigating this con smoke, they still have a few questions to ask themselves. Electronic just waltzes on out. Okay. Well, he has to worry about a player tap or top mid box, and you can see how diligent he's being on the clear. And Acor's watching this, trained with the AWP, so scoped in. Late window smoke here. And again, we've discussed this several times, but with players ahead of this, it's great information. And oh. now Neil, and he knows there's a problem. They need to hightail it into B, but there's two players here. Fucked up. Good for it. Couple more clicks. Perfect. Woo! Perfecto should have, would have, doesn't. Kios nails it. Now vaults in the feed as well. Could Acor combine with those contributions? There's such a disconnect between him and his teammate. Already the Baron is spotted. Oh no! Oh, no. Okay! Hobbit saved them. 
Mako had a chance there, and now maybe Vault does too. Electronic directly underneath them, and a nightmare to clear, a nightmare to get through. And Vault fought from behind. Electronic showing his pedigree. Three frags from him in that round, and very even kill spread from those top three performers. Well, we've been here before. We have been here before. Cloud9, they could have closed this out in regulation. Now they have to do so in OT number one. Now there's money to get AWP in the hands of Acor. That's not a problem here. 12 and a half K, they manage their money. It's all good. Acor, if he gets this second shot while he's jumping around, I think that's on. It is on. It is around. The game of Legion could notch themselves up to 18, but just not enough as we get to the last round of play here. Well, what very well could be. Boost assembled over towards A. Nobody willing to brave the cross towards connector. Palace smoked off. And they know that mid is a ruse again. So able to call their bluff on a lot of this control. Yeah, not getting what they're hoping from this utility. Out nine. Firm grasp of the situation so far. Must win round for Gamer Legion. And a must win round for Cloud9's hopes of the playoffs. Lost Hobbit. Have to do it the hard way if they want to close here. Oof, what? Tag onto Kios. Out. Now finished off by Perfecto. That's the shot into Acor. He can no longer help. And they're running out of players. Maybe Isaac with a proactive push held. But a gap all the same electronic walking through. And the trigger discipline is insane from Isaac. Not ready for two. Back turned. And Hunted Perfecto contributes as well. 3v2. Nealon and Vault. Either end of the scoreboard, Shiro's still a problem as well. They can't get the bomb down with Shiro here. He's hitting his shots and Vault does not surrender quietly, but not ready for CT. Cloud9 will see the playoffs. No exile, no problem. Electronic lets out a roar and that right there for the in-game leader, the newly appointed of Cloud9. It's crushing on the other side. Nealon makes his way back to Europe, an international team. They push them all the way. The hugs come in, but it's fitting. Buster in the one-on-one -on -one against Volt there to get them across the line, to lock them in for the playoffs. They've done enough. And that is exactly what Buster did. He pulled them across the line. They couldn't have done it without him. They certainly couldn't do it with four. And now Cloud9 will have another chance to play in the Lanxess Arena. Legendary. And Gamer Legion have to be, I know they won't be, but they have to be happy with a haul like that. You've had barely enough time to get yourself situated. Your brand new team, brand new leader. Kios, an incredible performance. And you see the hug shared here between Perfecto and Kios, right? We talk, talk about the relationship between Neil and Perfecto. And of course, Kios back in that Simon Gaming roster all those years ago. Now, opposite side of the server going toe to toe. But the performance here from this Gamer Legion team, you're right. They should be proud of this. They won't be in the moment, but when they go back and reflect on the type of Counter-Strike, Coming out of the break, this team had their star rifler, MVP, major level form taken, their in-game leader removed. But Cloud9, the story's about them today. Let's head on down to Banks. I've got a very happy Hobbit and probably a very relieved Hobbit. Your first time making playoffs of Clone and a huge achievement. And you've done it even with Buster stepping back in. You've done it with having very little prep on all of this. And also in this series, playing Mirage and Inferno with this team for the first time. How do you feel? I'm feeling good. <laughs> <laughs> I think a bit more than good. Oh my God, that was a lot of stress. I don't know. We really wanted to win this, really, so much. We were preparing yesterday a lot. Mm. So I think we, we did great today. It's fine. Talk to me about this preparation, because we know you only had a couple of days of Buster, but when you've been finishing each day after the games, what extra work have you been doing? What time has been being put in? I mean, we didn't practice with Buster mm -hmm. at all. No, you didn't yeah, have to play that, that, days. that's the problem. That's a mistake. It's a, the first of all, it's hard for him. Yes. Just because he came to mix team. So <laughs> two, plus, two plus two. I mean, <laughs> we're not like all team with the same structure or something like that. He came and we're playing as a mix. We're trying to create something. Yeah. But it's still hard. So I understand. But I'm really glad that uh, everyone stepped up and. You know, Booster already adapted, as you can see. Yeah. He already doing a lot of damage for us, and I'm really happy for him as well. And yeah, it's good. 
<laughs> it's good. He's got a big smile on his face. I want to ask you, obviously have electronic, right? Coming in as the IGL, changing things as well. Yeah. Groove, and you, you've got your analyst, Finn, here. How much extra work has gone into trying to find the success? Because most people didn't have this high expectations for a yeah. team that comes in with a stand-in. Yeah, I mean, yes, uh, everyone expecting that we're going um, we're gonna to have like a lot of firepower. We're going to win without any chance. But as I said before, nowadays uh, CSGO is very competitive. Yeah. Of course, you can be on paper most firepower team in the world, but still, uh, you need to make some chemistry. And yeah, we have stand-in. We, we practice together like with Axile uh, three weeks, I guess, three weeks, but still it's not enough. <laughs> because the system are new, uh, strategies, um, you know, a lot of rules, I'm going to say, um, a lot of stuff which we, for example, um, like like it to do mm -hmm. it's not gonna work in this system yeah. but if we're gonna see in the future yeah we are creating something big i guess so only time will show what's gonna happen so about our team about our team play or results or something uh, noise is hard to say right now just because we are playing playing with standing yeah. And you know, uh, and of course, you need to understand that we have honeymoon period where, uh, yeah, everyone positive, everyone very excited, motivated. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, let's see how how gonna be in the future. But yeah, our goal is always one. Is of course um, to win. Yep. As always. Now, really quick, because I've got to throw this back. Will Axel be able to make it back for playoffs? Do you know? I don't know. Damn it! We don't know what's happening. Sam, back to you. Uh, I'm so glad Banks asked that because it was the question that I wanted to ask as well. Uh, so I'm glad that he did. I'm feeling good. Cloud9 is going to the Lanx. So there's one spot left. And it blew my mind there that they were saying, actually, Buster did not even have a chance to practice with the team. He pitched up to Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, jumped in the server, and they were still able to qualify. Hot damn, that is an accomplishment. And props to Buster for being able to put up a good fight, because at the beginning of this map, he was having a very difficult time yep. playing Catwalk, Cloud9. They made the adjustment. They swapped his spot a couple times in that half, actually. And for, for him, he's got to feel great about it, feel like you're not actually a hindrance to your team, that you're still able to make it to playoffs. And honestly, I... My mouth was agape. As soon as I, as soon as James Banks asked that question, "Is Axile gonna make it?" My jaw just dropped. I thought, I thought he was coming. I thought, I thought uh, we were I gonna thought get it's a Axile. Thing. I thought yeah, we were I get actually Axile. sent a tweet out saying, "You know, he did it. He did it for Axel." Had a Simpsons meme prepared where he had like little Lisa Simpson on the wall and everything. Listen, if he doesn't make it to the arena, I'm going to be so heartbroken because they did everything they needed to do to make it there, right? It was crappy. First, they shout out to Game of Legion. What a fight they put up there in the second yes. half. And for Cloud9, again, playing with a stand-in with whom you had no time, no opportunity to practice, and yet somehow scraping, battling, fighting, and biting your way to the Lanxes, they deserve to have Axel. But I mean, they might not, because we don't know. How exciting. This is this is insane. Of course, you did mention that they're Gamer Legion. They played phenomenally well. And Banks is with them now as we say goodbye. Truer words have never been spoken. Gamer Legion played exceptionally well. And Kios, I know this is this is tough for you guys. I look at it being 13-8 down, then you were 15-10 down. You guys were fighting back so strong. At that point, did you think, we're going to do it again? Did you feel like we, we believed? Yeah, everyone in the team was... Believing for sure, we were all giving everything we had, and it almost forgot small details. And it does come those down to those small details. But looking at the fact that you are a new team, right, and Nilan's just taken over, what do you think of your overall Cologne experience? Because you started off with a loss, and then you fought back every step of the way. I think you made a lot of new fans. I mean, it's just a learning tournament for us because we need to to know how to play with each other on officials as it was our first officials together. Mm -hmm. Get used to the Nilan's way to lead so he gets comfortable with us as well. It's just a learning experience and we take it and we will move forward with it. And talk to me about your emotions after a game like this, how you're feeling right now. I'm feeling sad because it was so it was so close but I mean in the end they're really good players. I respect them a lot and fair play. They played really good. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you back at another event. Thank you very much for that, Kios. Sam, back to you.
It's heartbreaking for me when, when I see how upset he is. And, and I understand as well, because can you imagine coming into this event where your roster has been ripped to pieces, the replacements, the whole internet is telling everyone what a joke it is. And you come in here and you fight as hard as they fought third map overtime. I don't think we can write Gamer Legion off anymore, and I hope that people have a newfound respect for them. I think they should walk away with the heads held very high. The cruel thing here for, game, for Gamer Legion is they start off with a loss to Monty. They got completely destroyed. A scrappy win against the Mongols who have been punching way above their weight. They managed to somehow, somehow counter this pretty good-looking fanatic and then eventually to fall to Cloud9. The cruel thing here for me, Maui, is the fact that you kind of come in thinking, all right, we're not going to be doing much in this event. Let's use it as a learning experience for us to gel, and then you start winning and then you start winning again, and then you start to believe, and yes. you get so close, and you bring the comeback against Cloud9, and you're one round away from making it to the Lanxas. No matter how low your expectations were earlier on coming to the tournament, you kind of you know, brought it up with your performance, and eventually to the fall to the, at the very end. And, and that, that's heartbreaking. Exactly. To, to give yourself and instill into your teammates such belief, that's what hurts the most here for Gamer Legion because had they had just lost to Monty, lost to Mongols, I think we all would have given them a huge pass, but at least now we can be excited about the future of Gamer Legion because they lost their two most important figures, their star player, their star in-game leader, and they have actually shown us that everybody that's still on the team is still kicking, that they are all overqualified role players. Kios came out of nowhere to be a high-flying entry fragger for this team. Acor was constantly just shutting down T-sides of opposing teams. And Neelan, man, with EG, we didn't know what to think. And there wasn't much to think because there wasn't much of them. But now we can say with some level of certainty, he's a good caller. He put some great mid rounds on the board and made these games competitive when I thought they had no business being. Cloud9 is heading to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike and don't go anywhere because Enz is facing off against Heroic next. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god, Garrett, are you gonna be kidding me? What a map! What a map! The in game leader. Architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you?
off and it doesn't look possible here. Rain gets three kills though. And now one for the left. The Pache gets the quad kill. Are you kidding me? Rain, he picks up every single one. is going to be torn away from them very, very quickly by Simon. Oh my god, oh. Nico gets three, four! Oh my lungs, I don't believe it! Shocks then, that's just to find one more. The Molly isn't going to touch him. And what on earth has just happened as Deagle is on fire and Shocks is going to walk into it as well. Nico is on fire. What is your calling? It is Intel Extreme Masters Cologne and a few teams have actually already made it through to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike Heroic. Ents, Cloud9, G2, Vitality. There is one spot remaining and two of those teams, Ents and Heroic, they are facing off now because it is a battle to secure a spot in the semifinals. We saw G2 and Vitality fight it out earlier. G2 took the victory and now one of these teams can make their life a little bit easier as they move to the Lanxus. It is all to play for and it's going to be highly entertaining. It is actually my last day. Uh, at Intel Extreme Masters Cologne, and I think that ESL decided they wanted me to work extremely hard for my day rate. So they put me on the desk with Maui and Kassad. Silly ESL, do you know what happens when you give a pyromaniac matches? Hey Maui, how do you think this is going to play out? I think this is going to be pretty one-sided. I think that Heroic have a huge edge in this one because they have the best in-game leader in the world, Kassad. Are you insane? <laughs> yeah, you literally are. Did you watch the tournament? Oh my goodness. Are this you is absolutely. The Snappy is the twice as the IGL Acadian is. No. It's twice, twice is better. Are you insane? No way. No way. He's mean? twice is better. Look at the look, look at the look at what Heroic's been doing. Look at Heroic's been doing lately. Heroic have been monsters. Who won Dallas? Okay, and okay. who lost the major finals? Who lost three of finals? Who won the banana cup? Who <laughs> won the banana cup? Are you insane? Look at the players that he has. Look at what Heroic's been doing lately. Like what? That they always make it deep. That they're always going far and every they single win tournament. <laughs> hey, they won. They won the spring finals. They won the fall finals. They're always making playoffs every single time. Haven't they lost more than they've won? Doesn't everybody at the end of the day? It's like you saying I'm gonna top the like dead match with bots with only myself on the server. Like it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> My gosh. Okay, you have to admit though, Heroic's got the better players. Surely, Heroic's Please, got. If you match, uh, I don't know what's wrong with you. There. If you match every single player against the the heroic players, Ants is has the upper hand. No way. It's every single. Oh player. my God! How did you say this? How okay. do you get? How do you get there though? I'm curious as to how you made this call. Well, I have this, these two things in my head called eyes. And I can spot things that are happening on the screen. Because you are getting a little bit old, so sometimes your eyesight might just wobble. Yeah, but still, my mind is sharp, my mind is clear. That's crazy. I can see things. Okay, okay, well, we got heroic 
and myself, we got stats on our side of this argument. Do you I don't have the trophies on your side? Hey, they got a couple blast wins. They got a couple blast <laughs> okay, wins. We got, we got some of the stats, though, to show that the counterparts here for the side of Heroic are looking good. Look, at you got, you got Snappy versus Shush. Support players, anchor positions. Obviously, it's IGL versus support, but you got Shush taking that one. KD differential. Kind of a weird stat to take, I'm not going to lie. But Kadian takes that one, too. And then you look at opening kill percentage for the guys that want to take the opening fights. Stout wins that as well. I'll give you one, Kassad. I'll give you one. Okay, Deha. Deha's doing a little bit better here than uh, the boy Tessis. But when we move on beyond that, come on. You got to be kidding me. Yeah, be on top of Madden all day. You know that these numbers, they don't mean anything, right? <laughs> They're going to play the game. I'm going to prove you wrong. You know, I, I, I would love to agree with you on this one, but that would just mean we are both wrong. No way. So let's, let's no get way. this clear. Let's sort this out because Maui's had his time to, to show his things. Kassad, why is Inst the better team? Because they have better map pool. All the map, you can you cannot name a single map that Heroic is better on. Oh my challenge, god. Challenge, Maui, That's challenge. Oh my name god. the I map. Oh my I god. Name the map. Did you forget the maps? Did, I you challenge you. did you forget all the maps or something? Is that what we're going Go on? Go for it. Go for it. Oh my gosh. We, tell me. We gotta okay. We're gonna load up the, we're gonna load up the maps here. This is just ridiculous. Tell, tell me about it. We're gonna we're gonna see where they are here. Oh my gosh. If we could just actually even just throw it up, even just throw up the graphic at this point. This is just unbelievable, that Kassad. See, he can't There we go. Your it. maps are up. We got Let's the maps. Discuss. We got the maps right there. Look at look at that. Look at Heroic on the left, in the white column, on all of these. Better win rate on Ancient. Better win rate on Mirage. Ents doesn't play Inferno. They're Sure, they're tied on Nuke. Sure, they're tied on Nuke. But look at that overpass difference. What is the sample size of this? Like, last what? Last few months. Last few months. Last few months? Last, few, last three months. Last three Come months. Come on, Ents, they're, they're so good, they're not allowed to play on the Blast event. <laughs> You know, so <laughs> that is heroic, Snappy's point. So that far, heroic point. farming those maps doesn't mean a thing. Oh my! You saw the the numbers. Are you gonna, they do you're kind side of. With Maui here? I'm the not mother. siding with them. I am just the adjudicator, and I'm simply saying that the we the, the mathematics. We need the winning footage from Dallas. We need the winning footage from Dallas. The ma mathematics. Oh, in Maui's favor. Yeah. We are not playing with mathematics here. It's just you know raw skill. Okay, Dallas. okay. Beyond raw skill, beyond the numbers, Cadian's yelling. Cadian's yelling. Is he might as well yell on Botraki need. language. Oh it's my not god. Gonna, it's no. not gonna change anything. Cadian's yelling is elevating Heroic to new heights. Do you know the age of the players on Heroic? Not a single person beyond Cadian. I'm taking Shush, Stown, Tessis, Yabby. All four of them are younger than everybody on the side events. You got the four youngest players. You need a leader to be yelling like that. You gotta fire these kids up. Hold on. Are you saying that Heroic's better because they IGL shots at 16 year old oh, kids. Oh, yeah. It's oh, yeah. yeah. 16 year old kids. How does that make them any <laughs> better? No, you, your you, argument is going to make you better. Come on. Oh, my. That was just the cherry on he, top of all the other stats he, that he blew actually, you away. Like I said, he can yell anything that he wants. It's not going to matter. Like these guys on your left, my, my right, they're just indestructible. <laughs> indestructible. Also, I think they might be louder than him sometimes. Yes, Madden is pretty loud. He's got any more to, anything more to add to this to your mathematics, professor? Just that, just that. to me, this is clear cut. Heroic's the better team. Heroic's going to be taking it today versus Enz. No question. They're going to be finding that semifinal spot. Enz is going to have to lick their wounds after this one because Heroic have the better in-game leader. They've got the better players. They're going to be taking this one. They got the better map pool too, and they got more energy. Nearly lost to Mongols. Barely got here. They have the worst IGL. They have the worst players. This is Enz all the way. So... It's fun that you said all of that, but you know what we thought would be a good idea? To ask Kadian what he thinks about your opinions. Hey, Kadian. Kassad has been ripping into you, and he's bringing his own trash talk. And I've got some things I need to just tell you about what he said. He said Snappy is the superior in-game leader. Do you see any truth in that? I think I saw him say that in the podcast, but I'm quite sure that Maui Snake and Thurin said that he was wrong. <laughs> okay, okay. Now, they say trash talk won't save you. Maui feels it could rally up your troops. What do you say? Um, yeah, that's probably true. You know, I think it, it gives percentages. It doesn't win your game solely, but, you know, you take the percentages. And how do you feel going into this matchup? Have you got anything you want to say to these lovely analysts who have so many words for you? I mean, keep doing your thing, you know. Like, uh, I think just like it's entertainment sometimes when, you know, there's some screaming and some banter, you know, some hot takes as well can be... Entertainment as well. I, I said it actually in the interview with Frey as well. I think the uh, CSGO um, talent is, you know, up there. It's the best in esports, so yeah, do your thing. 
Always making us look good. Thank you very much, Katie. <laughs> What was that? You gotta give him that. No, what like, was that? That was ridiculous. How can we take the villain of Counter-Strike, the most hated man on the internet right now, and he comes back and he's all like, oh, good job, guys. You, you're still doing great. It's just hearts for Katie. I'm with Ents now. It's just hearts for Katie. I'm you're done. Now? I'm I needed what? Katie. I needed him to come he out and be mean. He just said we were mean. good at our jobs. Right. I mean, that's fine. He just we said we're good, we're good at our jobs. Our jobs but I needed him to be mean. Why wasn't he mean? Sam, we don't want you in Ents camp. You can stay like in the wilderness, we don't care. You're throwing away, oh, not, you just you gained want, a fan. We don't want the traitor. That's cool, then I'll be on heroics. I don't actually You just care. gained a fan, Kassad, and you're jump. throwing them away? Yeah, exactly. I don't need fake fans. You think bandwagons aren't allowed for okay, the end cool. camp? The veto's up. I'm now with heroic. I believe that they're going to take this 2-0, but there we go. Ents, <laughs> Ents is taking nuke. I, what do I, we think about that? I okay. For this is a map that both of these teams do have a 100% win rate on. I think this is going to be a I great test. I think on nuke. Oh. Okay, now you're now you're siding with Kassad here. Okay, where's Classic. that coming from? Classic. Now, now listen, this is a punished pick from Heroic. They went for overpass. They clearly think they they have seen, they've seen weaknesses from ends there. Obviously, there are none, but they <laughs> they've seen it somehow <laughs> and they picked it. So we are going into a nuke into overpass, which should be enough. But there is still like formality of this decider. Uh, that's yeah. going to be. We'll but see. Mirage? I'm thinking Mirage here. I mean, that should be the option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mirage is the safe safe bet I, there when it comes to the decider for both teams. I, I think overall, let, if you if discount all the all the shenanigans and everything, I think it's a pretty fair uh, veto right now. I think it's 50-50. I think Nuke is a really good map for Ents, and I do, do believe that Overpass might be a decent option for Heroic, which leaves the decider. I think we're going to go to the decider, and then you're going to lose, and I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say that the edge is firmly in Heroic's favor, getting Nuke. They love Nuke. Heroic love Nuke. Sure, Ents are great at calling on it. Sure, Snappy, I'll give him some credit. He's a great caller. He's got some explosive plays. He's got some good mid-rounds. But too. Heroic are going to eat him up. They're going to keep pushing his ass in. <laughs> Two words for you. Search help. <laughs> Uh, you know what? We don't know what we're going to get, but both of these teams have qualified. They know they are going to playoffs, which means they are going to be feeling super confident. We're going to see some really good Counter-Strike, some fun Counter-Strike, I think. Obviously, getting a spot in the semifinals is important, but it's not life or death. You know you're still going through, so I think that this is going to be... It's going to be entertaining. That's what we're going to get. That's what we want. We want entertainment. Both of these teams, incredibly explosive. You would say that because they're both already qualified for the playoffs, I honestly believe both of them have a shot to take the entire trophy. And I think that this is going to be a great chance to show what they're both made of here. I, I honestly, I do believe like 100% that any of these teams can go all the way. They can leave yeah. the trophy. And there is, there is no doubt about that. This is two great teams. We're going to have a great game to determine who, who determine who is going to be in the semis on Saturday. So let's just sit back and enjoy it. This is what Intel Extreme Masters Cologne is all about. It is the best Counter-Strike, and you get to see it right here. And you get to listen to some of the best casters tell you the story as well. Harry and Hugo are ready to take us into game. Hell yeah, we are. Heroic taking on Ents for a shot at the semi-finals here at IEM Cologne. Heroic have been in uh, in great form. I love the discussion between Maui and Kassar down on the desk, trying to pick favorites here. Uh, one thing is for certain, this is going to be a brawly game with the nature of it, with the kind of safety net of, of a quarterfinal berth for the loser. I think more risks are going to be taken here. I think more X factors are going to come into play. And so you don't want to take your eyes off the screen. We're going to find out in a couple of hours' time, who's ascending to that semi-final? Absolutely, and we won't have to wait long. It's a fast A play in this pistol round. Ents run rampant into the bomb site, and Stown's got to shut it down from main. Sub Pius, two picks on the entry, and Stown stuck. Shush has come in on a quick flank through the lobby, but the bomb's getting planted. On with the dollies. Shush is going to look to open a way back into this for Heroic. They've spotted him now. Oh, and it's down dead over in main. Shush tried to get a move on through the heart. He's out of it. It's just Kadian left standing here. 1v4. No chance to win this round. Ents going to explode onto our screens with a fast upper hit in the pistol. Yeah, this is going to be an exciting game, an entertaining game. I love the way you preface it with Brawly Counter-Strike with more risks being taken. But it's not a game that doesn't matter. It's not just a seeding match. I mean, we, we caught Kadian earlier, and he was mentioning how, you know, they want, they want the semifinals. They want this spot badly just to speed run their way through playoffs. Heroic are no longer a team that don't have that stage experience that, oh, they, they, they need some time to warm up for the arena. No, 
They have been there. They have done that. And now they want to get the T-shirt here in Cologne. It's a big tournament here for Heroic to start off the season, but it's a big pistol round for Ents on their map pick. The head-to-head -head of Danish in-game leaders rages on. Ents do love their quick top hits on Nuke. We will see more of them, but not in this round. It's just going to be outside with smokes. This is a fake, though. Yeah, only one man crossing with them, and Diha won't get learned of. They won't discover him, so he's allowed to kind of play on his own terms down through secret here. Curious to see how Snappy wants to use him. What's his role going to be? Do they want him making noise? I see him pulling nades down there on the minimap, so he is trying to sell this lower presence. Keeping one man down there, he's going to return up secret, so it's the fake down lower with the upper hit. Diha looking to move in a little bit later. Shush up close. Won't be that man to find the opener. Instead, it's Kadian Scout from the heavens trying his best to reply. His teammates get overran, however, and trapped in the vent is Yabby. Going to struggle to find a way back into this. This is what we mean, though. Not afraid to take a risk, jiggling, trying, leaving it to chance. But he will just bow out. Heroic have to let this one slip on by. And so Ents find this conversion versus the force by. Let's try and talk about this a little bit, though. So, you know, I, I spoke to Heroic on that media. There. I spoke with, uh, with with KD and a hell of a lot, actually. And he's kind of said, you know, being the team that reaches playoffs, being the team that gets to grand finals, being the, the bridesmaid and never the bride, it's cool and all, and it gives you a lot of experience, but he says he, he feels like this is his squad's time to win now. This yeah. is their time to, to to really come together. And I, and I think in light of so many roster moves having happened, uh, you know, post-major, I think this is really the time where Heroic have got to showcase why this five is the five that they have that X factor, because that's been this squad's biggest problem, right? Getting these playoff runs, getting these deep runs in tournaments has not been the issue for Heroic They've existed as this team to, to, to gatekeep the, the upper echelons of Counter-Strike, but they themselves very rarely get to taste the, the big victories. Yeah, especially with you know more Titans knocked out and, and FaZe falling out today. I mean, it makes it a more open bracket. Sure, we have G2 and Vitality still looking hyper-competitive, but you know with every Titan taken out, it puts Heroic a little bit closer, but Enter's form as of late has been just immaculate as well, right? You, you, for, for, for good reason, the desk was so split uh, with you know, with Ents coming just off of Dallas, looking so great to end the season. And I love how outspoken uh, spoke Snappy has been around Ents' positions in tournaments and the partner teams and, and how they have, especially against the grain, proven themselves in this year alone. It's always been an orc that we've credited with great roster pickups, not afraid to cut decent players for better upgrades. And in fact, if you want to talk about that, you've got to talk about the Orpa of Sun Pius. It was last Cologne in 2022 oh where he made his run with Movistar. But hold on a second, suddenly it's just Madden. 1v4, they're all going to peek him together. He hits a spray for two, but Heroic, while we're rambling along, pull out an eco round. They massacre ends on the top site. Blink and you miss it. Crazy way for that to go. That was meant to be the easy round for ends. That was meant to be the freebie, but Kadian with that saved scout puts it to work. And so Heroic immediately look to pose a bit of a threat here. Ents realize this ain't plain sailing after all. And it's quite relieving to see these lobby lurks finally pull through with a bit of success for Heroic. They've been shut down early on in this game. We've had a lot of these rounds just kind of culminate with someone wrapping in through the lobby, getting sniffed out by Ents. And so Heroic immediately make that a problem, immediately make that an issue. Yeah, nothing like having four grand after the AWP here for Cadian. Heroic suddenly buffed in the money department. Ents are going to have to break through with multiple gun rounds here. Need to answer that eco win early. Going to see Diha looking outside on his lurk. Going all the way back to CT. Is that AWP? Still covering the cross. But as those smokes come down, of course, vision removed here for Heroic. They have preemptively rotated a player into B. Stown's moving through. That flash comes early. Stown can't actually do anything with it. Molly is in the way but he'll make a peek regardless. 
Flash is rain out, uh, rain in outside, but it's Yabby to get caught first, and Stown is peeling back off these angles. He never plays on the back of that flashbang. Instead, the pixel spot, he's going to underhand the molly and just fall back, going through the motions down here in the lower defense. It's fine by Ents, as long as some pirates, you know, find something on upper, they can pull back completely from secret. They know Stown's stalling them right now. They're trying to find him. That molly is big. It's going to push him out of position. He's got to pick the door or the window. And the latter he goes, some pious. If he gets a vent lurk kill, they will come back up. If not, we might just see Ents commit with this B play. Climbing up the ladder is high risk. And even though we said this game will be messy at some times, it's not a call Ents want to make. This is a good move from them right now. There's no one inside of the B site. Stown has to allow the plant. Oh, they've blown the doors off. That's going to give what? him an angle onto the plant. Oh, that is wild. Hang on a moment. Matter tried to plant the bomb for double door, and that's throwing everything into disarray here. Ents have got to get the bomb back. Diha doing what he can, but there should oh. be time for this. And he's caught crossing. Some pious too far removed. And so heroic. They will get that B site back under control. A, a bit of a misstep for Ents. It felt like they, they thought they had the double door when they blow that open. Was that their nade? Not heroics from ramp. I missed it. Either way. That's absolutely crazy for, for, yeah, for them to discount it, plant in the open for Stown. They have a smoke on the side. They don't stick it inside it. Just a little bit out for Madden. And Stown absolutely tears him to shreds. Very nice reposition down lower. Made it look like he was running decon side, but goes all the way back to double. And Ents are flustered already. They lose to the pistols. They lose a planting player. And now Heroic establish their control on the CT side of this map. Great to see Heroic competitive immediately. So now questions poised to ends. You know, uh, c continuing the conversation we were having though, right? I think the sort of argument that was being had down on the desk, you know, Maui coming in with all the numbers and the stats, and uh, man, like that's the that's the golden piece of evidence if you ever wanted to, to vouch for Heroic, right? When you go and look at their track record here, this is a team that, that don't lose games unless it's in playoffs, unless it's in tournament runs. Only losses they have as of late. Obviously, that one to Mao's back at Dallas. And I think Dallas is a pretty interesting event to talk about when you look at these two teams. They were both there. And obviously, Ents went on to uh, to win that out in the grand final versus that Mao squad. So, you know, the, the thing that's interesting is even though the numbers look really good for Heroic, even though this is a team that always make deep runs happen and like we say, kind of gatekeep the tier one and, and deny other teams that, that shot through playoffs, they're not normally the ones to lift trophies. And that's oh. the question. Is the X Factor missing? Because Ents had it there at that tournament in Dallas. Had that fantastic game as well. Versus FaZe in the playoffs. Here, yeah, they've opened with a man advantage. Yeah, Kadian not expecting them to swing before the smokes bloom, but Ents play against the grain and they catch off the opposing Orpa. Some Pius going even further towards the heavens, but his team do have B control as well. Ents once more leave options open, but which will they take? Tessas catches that aggressive player. Madden has retrieved the Orp, though a reswing is dangerous. Tessas can't escape his clutches, and now a four on three where Heroic feel the need to move aggressively, take back that lobby control, find that lurker. Nertz is not far off. Shush holds on. Back of the site is Stown getting split from above, but Madden has a big ticket item. He doesn't want to die with nothing. His teammates are going to play into this first, and Ooh. then Madden looks to go. Overran in the back of the site is Stown, and now Shush holding onto this bomb. Yabby takes the heavens back, and they just clear this. He's got the round right there. And so he'll rain down a death from above. Yabby makes it happen. Hot on their heels from the ramp. And what a time to have him delivering. This last year, one of the, uh, the worst performances that this look at the heroic squad have had in uh, in in Cologne. Yeah, and that and was that was with a, a new look. Yabby having joined the squad and posting a, a a pretty poor tournament rating. It's fair to say, but he's had a lot of time to adjust to this team now, and he's become a a key figure within it. Yeah, it was a very poor rating, but he immediately recovered with a slew of fantastic tournaments. And the end of last year, which we can remember, was uh, very successful for Heroic with Grand Finals, with World Finals as well, um, uh, full finals rather, in Copenhagen going so well for them. So even though they took a short-term loss, it was a long-term gain. And the same can be said for, for Ents, who have, as we mentioned earlier, consistently made cuts and seemingly the right ones 
bringing in so many firepower pieces. We have double, triple lower this time. Enter not going to get this easily. They are walking right into a trap. Shush gets away with two kills, just trying to escape that Molotov. They don't have to respect it, and so they will not. Snappy chasing down this B kill. Shush committing to a spray, not punished. It might be a flawless round right now, as Snappy is on two health off of the wall bang. And even though you didn't have a lot riding on this for ends, right? You didn't have a, a huge case to make in this with the Force Buy. They've often found damage in these rounds. They've often found a, a reason to make them exciting. But here, it's going to fall. And, you know, you mentioned, just to contextualize what you said the, uh, the other round about how Heroic have been, you know, so consistent and known as gatekeepers and uh, the team that don't get upset. To, to put numbers on that, since the Katowice Grand Final, right, where obviously they lose out to G2 at the start of the year, Heroic have not lost a BO3 outside of a playoff with the exception of one group game against Big back at Rio. So that's unbelievable to think yeah. they've run every group stage they played except one absolutely flawlessly in this year since Katowice. So and yeah, that's that's Dallas, you know, top four. That's Paris top four. That's Rio final. Yeah, I was going to say, right, because at that Rio event where they do lose the week of the groups, they go on to, to make the grand final anyway and lose out to Vitality, a squad who would then go on to, to lift the major trophy. Consistency's not been the problem for Heroic. It's the it's peaks. Exactly, right? It, it's having that that X Factor, that extra 10, 20% that, that sometimes is, is needed to, to, to win a grand final. Something that, you know, a, a team, even like a, a FaZe Clan somewhat embodies, sure, the, the results and how they go game to game isn't super consistent, but when you get them in a playoff run, when you get them in yeah. a playoff berth, something changes. It's almost the opposite to Heroic in that sense, right? We sometimes see FaZe make early exits from tournaments a, a la Cologne right now, and, you know, we've seen it back at Majors gone by, but you put FaZe in a cathedral, you put them on the stage, and, and this team just feeds off the energy. Uh, Heroic certainly seem to be feeling more confident about that that opportunity, though, and given they've already got a spot there, they're just fighting to speed run the playoffs. They're just fighting to skip a game right now. And right now, they are shutting out the eco of Ents. They've had no problem dealing with pistols in this map. Five to two, five alive, and now Ents need to come in with a response, or this first map could be a bit of a wash. Heroic are picking up steam with very clean rounds. Yeah, I mean, since they won that third round with the save scout and pistol, they've, they've, they've not dropped the ball, right? There's been a couple of moments where Ents looked like they were in it, where it looked like they could have left an impression. But Heroic have been the ones racking up the, the, uh, the points on the scoreboard here. Ents are going to try and move in over towards ramp. Tess is about to be tested. He's set up oh, waiting for this, timing. but that decision to go a little wide, he wanted to reposition over at ramp. The timing just couldn't be worse, and so it's snappy to provide that opening for his squad. They barrel down the ramp. Stown is here fast. His teammate Yabby in the control room. Couple of kills, a bit of damage, but nothing to write home about here for Heroic. It looks like Entz, with Snappy's opening over towards ramp, have successfully broken through. Great shooting for Ensign. Heroic had the read, right? That's uh, that's three players dropping lower instantly, instantly off of losing the ramp guy. You know, not fooling for any kind of fakes, not over reading the situation, but still Heroic can't win engagements down B. And Ents break through with a confident round of their own, keeping it simple. Heroic even timeout, but money is not the problem here on the CT side. A lot of eyes on someone like Sun Pius, who, as we already have said, came through with that incredible top four performance back in Cologne last year in this very arena with Movistar Riders immediately on the uh, you know the the booking list for ends. A huge upgrade, and even though Hades has has found a lot more success inside of his. Uh, you know, full Polish squad. It was even a team that Ents managed to take down in this tournament, despite the smack talk that the Poles were putting out against Ents in that game. They were screaming at Diha all series long. But Ents took it. And all the better for it. Already in the playoffs with more to do. 
Yeah, they want to try and go fast out into this A play, oh, but now he's got something to say about that, doesn't he? Support in at the door as well. He's not alone in his battles here. And Ents kind of have to respect this, right? You try your hand, you try your opening move, you let Madden off the leash, you tell him he can go do whatever he wants to try and get you this opener out through the door. And you get spammed down low. Nurts is even super wounded. So two players that, you know, often can uh, change the course of rounds for Ents by taking space have been brought down low to open this up. That causes you problems immediately. Okay, he's been caught. That's a great grenade, though. He's going to catch Nerds, and he got flashed out by Stown, so fully escaped in a five-on-three. Kadian even gets down lower. Resmoking at the doors is frustrating. It's putting even more pressure on these outside players to be the one making a move, and that is kind of exactly what Kadian is prepared for right now. That's exactly Ooh. what he's hoping the reaction is from Ents. And no Molly's going to force him forward, but he plays ahead of it fearless in his approach to the what? yard. A missed shot out of some Pius' orb. And suddenly it's just Deha left in a sea of heroic players. Won't find anything to get a leg up in that clutch. And it's a flawless sixth for heroic right back on the board. As quick as Ents appeared, they are gone. These are such clean rounds when Heroic come through with them. And, you know, Ents have been doing a lot of defaulting outside, but it's not been doing them any favors, right? Like you said, opening play doesn't work. They have to go back to the, you know, the the whiteboard. They have to try and figure something else out. But Her Heroic just set Kadian up beautiful, uh, beautifully in that round, double flashing him back outside through the Molotov. Playing very ballsy CS right now is Kadian. Yabby again gets tested. This time, Madam will succeed. Rushing out to topside, Shush drops that bomb, but they're still in the middle of the site. And suddenly, all of Heroic are here. Tessas hits the ground, cracks his knees, and Stan with the bomb at his feet, finding Diho. The 1v1, one one. he can't close it. It's up to the captain. Kadian in the 1v1. Great position to find himself with the AWP. And he's often someone who excels in these clutch moments for Heroic. Diha on the other side, rerouting in through the lobby. He's trying to cut off any flow of information. And the longer he waits, suddenly the more places he can be. Kadian has a lot to think about here. Diha is not making it easy for him. This slowdown has suddenly opened up so many paths that would have been written off. And so Kadian's got to keep watching his back. Diha will just recommit back out the hut. Oh. Kadian looks to move in, goes hunting for him. And, oh, he's seen oh, it! Yeah. Back turn on Diha. And so Kadian delivers. He looks so comfortable in a round that Diha tries everything he can, every little trick in the book to just deny that flow of the info to make it uncomfortable for Kadian. But Kadian doesn't fall into the trap, doesn't overestimate his opponent there, doesn't outbrain himself. He really is one of the clutch kings of Counter-Strike. I mean, that timing is, is immaculate. The second Diha walks out hurt and gives her rafters a quick clear, Kadian then suddenly appears out of nowhere. And Ents again go back to the drawing board. Yeah, you know, I mean, one of the one of the remarks we made early on about this game was expected to be pretty brawly, and I think it's kind of lived up to that so far, but in my mind, it's in the kind of brawlier nature of this game that that can work in Ents' favor, right? Someone like Snappy can, can can put a lot of freedom and a lot of faith in his team. That's something you spoke about before, how, you know, if you if you, if he kind of respects the, the moves and he knows how, how you like to play and you listen to him and you play within those confines, then yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get your freedom, you're gonna get your movement, get to decide your opening moves. And I think that for someone like Madden, you, you hope that that can lead him to be a bit of a wrecking ball in this series. So I hope the Ents are down to embrace the chaos. Yeah, the Ents don't jump the gun there. They wait patiently as the third smoke is a little delayed on outside. Stown gets a spot, but Diha gives up that they're still crossing behind the smokes by spamming. And Stown can just escape. Essentially, no damage done. No harm, no foul. Ents make it down lower. Madden spot is still back behind Red, taking his time. So he's just going to reset and return to the lobby with Nerds. Again, Yabby down on B, this time alone, not supported. 
by any entourage from Heroic. They're gonna creep up on him. Oh, he tries to pick his shot, but somehow no connections. And with a molly in the vent, Ramp is the only obstacle here for Ents. They can get this plant down. Gonna be hard to have much of a say in this if you're Heroic. You, you don't even really know the numbers here. And if they had a bit more of a concrete image as to how many players for Ents are still floating back in the lobby, they would look to give this round a go because they don't know that. Saving is the best option they've got, and even then, they're not immune to being hunted down here. Madden can hear them fanning out and saving. He's able to tell the rest of his team, like, they're not attempting this. They're not even giving it a go. Yeah, I think that's just a mystery from Heroic, right? Thinking surely Ents are going to adapt and start trying to run fakes, you know, go for lower control, which they have had many times, but actually don't end lower and either come up the vent or only have to get down secret. And they, they go for an A hit. So Heroic still stacked top site. It doesn't help that Yabby dies with nothing. He could at least confirm numbers, but he only sees one player and, and falls immediately. So at that point, Heroic just have to surrender it, hope for the best on their top stack. And Ents get away with four. Still pretty tight on this T side. Trying to come back and win the half. Another orb. Some Pius has been leaning away from them in this T side. He's had one. Nerds gets caught by the door swing from Yabby. Supplemented by Molotov for Heroic to deny the rush. Down over the top. Snappy finds him. Tessas has seen the ramp play. He's late to this one, starting heavy on A to give them more utility. And so Eds will get that ramp room. But does he want to allow this, though? He's keeping the pressure on, but no one's going to throw themselves back through ramp. And now it's up to Eds to play the mind game. Do they commit to lower, as they usually have when they find this control? Well, the Amster's down here right now. Last time Ents went B, he was just that, that, that one player that even got to fight in the round for Heroic, and he fell short. Oh this time Heroic want to give him a bit more of a helping hand, and that kill from Tessas is going to help out monumentally. Suddenly a route is open for Yabi's teammates to be involved in this round. Whoa. It's success all across the board for Heroic as Tessas lines up a double. Diha might have planted the bomb, but he is boxed in and isolated, finished off. Heroic claps down upon that B site. And there are no survivors for this end squad. They try to run back one of these lower plays. And this time, Heroic are that much more prepared, that much more ready. Yeah, I like how we're getting more life out of other players on Heroic as well, right? Tessa's starting to become a bit more of a loud mouth, screaming in that round. And I think the more the merrier, the culture is setting in across this squad for Heroic. He even talked about it in a, in a recent interview, obviously about, you know, Cadian and the, that Mongols matchup. And... Yeah, it, it, it's it's a percentage play, as they call it. You know, sometimes it helps, sometimes it hurts, right? Sometimes it can motivate your enemy. But if it can give you that slight advantage, if it can ruffle the feathers of Ents in any amount, it's worth it for Heroic to take that risk. Eight to four, and Ents have used three timeouts already. So they're feeling a little flustered in this T side, certainly. Not getting away with as much as they would have wanted. Some very clean rounds out of Heroic. But still time to recover the half. There is time to turn this one around, don't get me wrong, but I, I do want to home in as well on, on, on Nerds here, who is, you know, usually a, a standout player for this end squad, usually a safe pair of hands. But he's had a very strugglesome time to get the ball rolling, and so I want to keep an eye on whether or not he's able to embark on that journey to recover in this map. Because Ents are going to need him, not just now, outside of this series. By the time they get to those playoffs, quarters or semis, you're going to need everyone firing on all cylinders. Without a doubt. And you know, Nerds was, when he debuted for Ents versus Yabby's debut for Heroic, it was incredible for Nerds back at Pro League. 1.4 rating in that playoff match. He will have to perform in this round. They're rushing him inside of the lobby. Heroic is still down a man, but Madden has that space, and he knows where they're coming from. They walk right in clueless. Four on two. And Madden even slips back into the lobby to reunite. Snappy Ooh, gets caught out on. in the open. Stown surely, surely not. He, he shouldn't win this. He's got everything going against him. But that kill on the bomb plan maybe could have given him an edge. Madden proves too much to bear. 
He's just freestyling around that top site. He, he recognizes how much room he had. And so, you know, this, this is at least a step in the right direction for Ents. Now going tit for tat across these last few rounds, trading them back and forth. That feels a little more sustainable if you're Ents over on the T side. And on top of that, you know, a lot of it is being spearheaded by Madden, who you're seeing put in these very outlandish positions. And I think that comes with the the, the, the brawlier nature that we expected from the matchup, right? He's already a player who, who likes to make these big moves. And that's only going to be amplified when you feel like you have somewhat of a safety net on the series. Freedom to take risks. Hence, again, smokes outside. This is the change, though. They're going back into the lobby. Diha might be tasked to uh, come in on a main split. And for once, Heroic, don't gamble a player down lower. They've read this, it seems like. They don't seem convinced by the fake smokes. There's no Yabby, no Stown down in secret. And once again, walking into the stack. Tessa starts to rotate ramp. That frees up KD into Orp, or Orp uh, in that position as well. But there's still three CTs in this top site. Just dropping off the hut roof. But is that the wrong time? This re is dangerous. Oh, I mean, this timing missed over at the door, but Stown got to bear this in mind. They're going to smoke him off at main, so he's never open to this push. His teammates learn about it the hard way. And even though Stown's going to reclaim one, I don't know if this entices Heroic to want to give the round a look in. That's Heroic staying active, right? It's something we talk about a lot on the CT side. They love to make moves. They don't like to be sitting back and waiting. And even though they weren't convinced fully to drop heavy lower, they still got curious towards the hut. If they keep that double hut roof set up, that could have gone very well for them as N slip out into the A-bomb site. But they push right into the patient AWP in lobby and they give Ents a reason to commit on top. And a couple of well-placed entries for Ents will win them the round. As they look for a seven on a T side, nothing to turn your nose up at. Oh, that could have been a massacre. And Heroic, it will have complications here for their buy. They're not going to have five rifles, not even close. Oh, they're dropping famuses. I take it back. Everyone always sleeps on the famous. Yeah, I don't class it as a rifle. Fair. Although not, because it is. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this uh, th th this was a nice round for Entomite. Like, you know, like, like you kind of highlighted already, it, it relied on the, the, the reposition of Heroic, but, but Ent still found the perfect gap and exploited it in that moment. Easier said than done. And now that that's going to lead them to close up this oh, half here. It's cool. The they know they've been getting play. so much yeah. room on ramp early because Heroic have been stacking topside. Think about that round that Tess says isn't even here. And Kadian oh. again, he has no clue how far they've gotten. They walked through the ramp smoke. Complete disrespect from Ents. They read Heroic like a book and they shut it in their face. Five on three, picking that B player. And now Heroic is scrambling, panicking down lower. Stown trying to save the day. Needs a pristine headshot here to find the bomb, but Nerds is not giving it to him. He knows, uh, oh. Heroic know how big an opportunity this is. Yabby was not dedicated anywhere else on the map. He was beelining straight for the bomb. They know they oh could dear. still win this by getting this bomb under their control. However, now it's just Yabby. And they go running him down. Ents are quick to patch this wound. And they will close up this first half. It's neck and neck. Ents chaining together three to at least salvage something going into the second half of Nuke.
What is your calling? Heroic came in here and showed supremacy early on in the matchup. They were up 7-3. Ents felt like they couldn't get anything going, but they finally find a bit of leverage, a bit of purchase towards the end of the first half, and they managed to close it out, split right down the middle at 8-7. This is now anybody's game. Yeah, and while the deaths were divided on the map pool masters of this matchup, it is 100% win rates for both teams in the last three months. A streak of nine for Ents, a streak of five for Heroic. Despite that, Ents are still keen to pick into it, uh, even though Heroic have wins over some serious top dogs in Na'Vi and FaZe, Ents feel like they have the data to play with. And Nerds trying to wake up into this map. He was 2-11 and 11 a few rounds ago. He starts off this pistol strong. A required player for Ents to win this uh, game today and head straight to the semi-finals. Takes out the opposing captain. Shush has made it down secret. The bomb's going to reset. They don't want to risk a second player running into these USPs. And while Snappy gets entrenched at B, Heroic still have a difficult time of getting down there with no utility. I'm really curious what Cadian's going to uh, re request of Shush in this moment. How do they want to use him? It looks like they want to try and meet up with him by playing in through ramp. And that will at least allow Shush to try and manipulate some of these rotates if he can hold down the vents. So there are ways to make this interesting if you're heroic. They're really making a little it bit look of noise. Like B, they yeah. are making it. They're making it look yeah. like B. So much so that we even thought this was going B for a moment. But now, straight up through the heavens, they're dropping in. Trying to use that point man like a living decoy. He's just going slick with the movement. But it doesn't matter when Madden's got this wow. many bullets to fire back your way. The pistol round dominantly found by Ents. What a way to secure it. Five alive when all is said and done. And that's in spite of the hard sell that Heroic tried to bring to the table down at lower. Ents don't fall for it. Yeah, nice shots. Those jewelies are lethal on CT side nuke and, and Madden even sending a screen back their way. This is a guy who's been under, you know, fire for, for you know, diminishing stats in the last you know, six months of this year, but has been given a lot of credit by his teammates in playing difficult spots, unforgiving roles, and was vital for Ents to make their run back in Dallas to take their first tier one trophy Snappy's project finally paying off at the right time, and it could continue into the start of this season as well. A playoff berth for Ents. And maybe semis in store. Snappy hears him running down on ramp. He's going to drop low. These smokes go outside, but Ents are already heavy B. And again, a heroic trying to pull the wall over Ents' eyes as they recede from ramp back to the lobby. If not done a bad job, two players on this top site is all Ents have to say. Madden is one of them though, and he's having a, a great day in the office. He uh, has been that kind of key piece for Ents to bring them into the map. Only one kill from him though, is the point man up on top of the hut. There's a bit of assistance raining in Ooh. from Maine as a result of that missed smoke. And so even though Heroic will trade wow, that out, Kadian always a dead man, traded by Diha from the heavens. Ents might have been lacking the manpower over towards that top site, but a missed main smoke, uncharacteristic yeah. of Heroic, not something you often attribute to this team. That really does screw them over in the round. It's one you can you know, brush off because you know the reason that round gets so complicated is just a piece of utility and that's a simple fix. But it's also annoying because Heroic are right there, ready to find another force by win. They won round three on the first half and they're fancying their chances in the second. Stan with a hero AK gifted by Shush leaves him with nothing. A lot of reliance on the young rifle star to save this round for Heroic. And, you know, I think one of the one of the big critiques has always been leveraged against a rug was the lack of that that real star by the time you go on a deep tournament run, having someone who is just 
head and shoulders, you know, kind of lifting the, the, the team up. A Zaiwu, a simple, a Nico. And Stown's often been touted as the guy who can who can occupy that space for Heroic. He's come into this series looking to display that grit right now. They've given him the hero gun, but he's dinked immediately. He's sat up top of the board for the Danes. He's got to drop that gun over, and so Cadian will be the next in line to the throne of the AK. Cut down in his prime. Some pious ringing out from CT will not let them into the heavens, and he will <laughs> trap them in the fires of hell. Some pious lives on in Hades' name, and Entz will secure a tenth. That AK had Magnus in it, man. The two players who pick it up get headshot first and foremost in Stown and Katie, and the two players with armor, and they're gone in an instant. So it will have to be the gun round here for Heroic. Ents looking good, though. As I said, they picked this map, but they had no fear that Heroic are, are, are more than keen to meet them, and that's a great sign for Ents, who have such a monstrous streak on Nuke in the last three months. So have they done their homework? Certainly felt like it in the first half, right? Calling three timeouts after 10 rounds. Scream that Ents wanted more, that they'd found gaps, but they couldn't close rounds. Some of those late ramp hits from Snappy, walking through smokes, finding empty positions. There's definitely a read here for Ents. Will that continue onto the CT side? Very strong on top side right now. With no smokes outside, there's no reason for Ents to get bogged down in the unknown. Here, Heroic and Lobby setting up, spamming walls. They seem expected of this top hit. They might have a point. Oh, the MP9s are starting to get curious, and Madden saw an arm. He'll take so much more out of the round than that. One kill off is the MP9, and even more where that came from, Madden in his element. This guy is thriving right now, right when Ents needed him to deliver a performance like this. It was kind of mad to get the ball rolling, and now around him, you've got this really capable three-man unit starting to appear. Madden up top of the board, Deha in just behind. These two top side players that have been playing it in tandem, that have been taking this out of the heroic playbook. And then some Pius just kind of rising up through the rankings quietly in the background. As that man who's going to be rotating around over towards the yard, it's important that he feels switched on. Yeah, the vibe in Ents looks really good right now. And this has just been a team on the on the fringe of the conversation when it comes to tier one, right? Exploding in the you know the end of the first season of the year, and you know with a pro league run, with a Dallas win, Ents have started to take titles and not too talked about in terms of how this is also one of the teams that kept their full roster over the player break, made no moves like the phases, like the G2s, like Heroic. But right now it's all paying off. Fantastic vibes. And, you know, given Heroic's tendency to scream down their opponent, try and tilt that way, given what Ents endured against Nine the other night, I don't think Hadian's going to get in their head. Madden's got some choice words for him. And Heroic have a quick hit. Yeah, they're going to go for another one of these top side plays, but it, it's always been a nice hold here for Ents. They've not Ooh. crumbled under this pressure just yet, okay. and they're not about to start crumbling now. Ents will keep shutting down these fast top side rushes every time Heroic go for them. And there's been a lot of the top side play from Heroic to open up this map. It, it, it's been their preferred way to try and play into the T side. Yeah. They might have felt good about it. It might have been something they've talked about before coming into this map, but Ents are, are so quickly making you look for other solutions. Heroga digging at the bottom of the barrel. They're just coming out with dirty hands right now. No solutions. A fast one outside. There's an aggressive play. Deha does get killed by Stam, but that is a wholehearted, messy spray. Only just gets the kill over the line, and some Pius is begging them to walk the smoke. Even then, he might spam them right through it. Shoot now. Somehow, Stam dodges the bullets, but they were inevitable. And there's more where that came from. Some Pius lights them up outside. Somehow, Yabby's in the A site, though. He's crept out. There's no one here. There's no one even looking. Some Pius Ooh. could do all he wants outside, but they could lose just to the plant. It's about to come down. 
They, they do look good to find Tessas. It's whether or not he's ready for this swing out from Secret, but he has repositioned to deal with it. Oh, what a check for Nerds. If he goes, if he finds Tessas here. Oh, oh, suddenly the retake would be back on. It still can't but be. But a matter of meters, a matter of meters might have betrayed this check on red and Nerds as a result backstabbed. And with that kill, the round can't be attempted anymore. Ensign not in position to give this a go. It all hinged. Oh, Nerds committing to that walk up behind the red box. Some pious. Cheeky boy. Moving into the heavens. Is this going to be a last second I retake? Think it is. This they is got a, a last second retake. Okay, they're going to give this a go. They still believe, even without Nerds. Snappy wanting to get a little weird with it. Moves oh. in through. And Shush will shut him up, shut them down. Heroic finally pull up with a round. A reminder that this series once sat 7 3 in Heroic's favor. It has been a long time since they've put one on the board. And they finally will there. An admirable attempt from Snappy's Heroic. That is a, a, a wild call for Snappy to bring out. Yeah, and Yabby takes all the risks as well for Heroic. He just creeps out into A, not supplemented by any util. Those are some of the rounds Ents were winning towards the end of their T side down on ramp. He finds that huge gap. And to think that just a few meters were all the difference for Ents being favored in a retake there. Almost considering it, but not quite. Some pious outside, and he's even got the AWP having a, a fantastic game in what was, I'm sure, a historic event for him last year. His breakout tournament. He wants to do it again. Oh, careful. They make it secret. He didn't see that. Starting to concede angles, though. Ents will consider that players can make it to lower just off of timings alone, and Nurse is going to start to move through. Heroic not in a hurry, and again, Yabby creeps out onto that top side, but is quickly traded. Four on three. Heroic have lost their point, man. What can they do? That was a wild move from Nerds, who got spotted going down the vent in the first place, only to then shoot back up it and get the trade. As a result of that move, it does mean that Stown has more room to work with down on this lower site, but a Heroic just going to try and join up with him here. They might get this kill forced as Nerds has Ooh. the swing. He's not given a second chance on this. And the path to cross at Vent is now open. That kill from Sun Pius finds Cadium, but the bomb still makes it down. That's the real ticket here for Heroic. They join up with Stown, who's been down on this B site since the damn start of the round. Going to need something out of Stown, and he does deliver the kill to allow this bomb to cross in. Look at the flank. Oh, it's not even needed. Some Pies has picked him with the AWP, and Stown, he can go for the pod, but his knife's out, and Diha ends it just there in time. How do Ents pick up these clutch rounds right now? It is so close. Heroic, fumble the bag there on B. Don't stick the bomb. And they run out of opportunity. If Stown's cut is out, that can be a very different round. But Diha, element of surprise goes a long way. And Heroic, they're the ones who are hemorrhaging timeouts right now. This T-side, one round to their name in the entire half. And everything just feels so unsafe. Everything feels so uncertain. You know, the, these topside rushes that we saw Heroic try in back-to-back -back rounds early on, both getting shut down. And it wasn't even the case where, you know, you, you were left with a feeling that, oh, at least we were close. You know, there, there's a reason to go back for that. No, it's like they were getting hardcore locked down out of the A play, usually at best, maybe getting two on the entry to try and get themselves in. But Ents have shown that they can repel that now over towards the yard as Heroic look for salvation there. That's when they're running into the Sun Pius. And his trusty AWP. We have really been seeing some risky CS play by Heroic in this game. Just with some of the moves Yappy's been making on this T side. Some of the gambles on CT, many of which paid off. Again, is Yabby going to look for an active lurk on ramp? If he does, he'll run into the AWP, and that should just be the killing blow for some players. He has been rock solid on CT side. Kadian, gap in the smoke. Did Dia see that? It's very close. It doesn't look like it. Kadian creeps all the way through. He needs to clear the back of garage or climb up heaven. 
Madden jump spotting B. Cadian in the prying eyes of Diha. If only he turned around. But there's a free orb to find to open up the path for Yabby. Oh, oh, he's going to hold is... the shot. This is mad. Cadian. Cadian doesn't want it. Doesn't just what? want the one. Cadian wants more out of this. Going to take the rap kill. <laughs> and Cadian plays with their minds. Now they don't know where to look. They're chasing ghosts. How did he get there? No one on Ents has any idea. And they're all looking down the line at Diho, wondering how did he let them down? Cadian finds a phenomenal timing and plays that perfectly. Looking to have saved the day for Heroic, even though one kill comes out from Madden, the rest of Ents are so uncertain and so shaken as a result of that play that they will not attempt this retake. The 3v4 save called in and Heroic with the reply. It's really not uncommon to see Cadian know in these make or break moments that he has got to be that guy at times. He puts a lot of faith in himself in these games. And just reading that there's another player there, right? Some players is knife out running back from ramp. So Cadian makes the perfect call. That means someone from B has come back up. Not only does it give Heroic room to further push secret, but it allows Cadian to take two kills. The risk of letting the orb walk past him. You know, if those comms are quick, if that understanding's quick, some players is round the corner. It's not like Cadian can go bop, bop. He has to reposition to take both kills. He makes it look easy, but that's such a risky play. Not one that everyone would go for, but at this time in the game, Heroic getting desperate. The, the thing that's so wild is like how many variables just are outside of Cadian's control there, right? Like, a, a, as you're kind of highlighting, he can't just turn around and bop them both. Some Pius might not have walked his way. On top of that, some Pius could have turned around at any moment and gone to reinforce oh, Ram. I think he saw him on the garage roof there as well. Some Pius has to drop off. He could be naded, he could be pre aimed. And so Stown gets behind main instead this round. Again, looking for the A pick is Yabby. To differing degrees of success has this door luck appeared for Heroic. It's one that Ents will remain vigilant of. Madam of the Molotov. Don't go through, Yabby. Although nothing's guaranteed. He looks curious. They're hoping Ents make a move. And if that's not the case, Heroic's hand will be forced into an A split. Stown's timing through main is extremely important. But Sampias has a very good position with his orb. Heroic look to go over into the A play, but they lose that main wrap. They lose down. Sampias has given free reign on the long sight lines outside, and so plan is to change here. Heroic, this might not have been the intention, but oh, they're looking for the dear. kill that gets them out ramp. Awkward as everyone had their knife pulled there. That's why the trade's a little delayed. Tess says we'll lock it in at least, but down at the back of the B site, he has been waiting patiently for his chance to play into the round. And wow. there it is! Signed, sealed, and delivered by Deha. It ends with the response, and for Heroic, what a what a wild round that must have felt like. Put yourself in their shoes. It felt like everywhere they went, Ents were one step ahead. Yeah. I, I can't believe that Ents never at any moment dismantled that lower behold. You're getting so many signs that that's the A split. It's so telegraphed, and yet they 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 stick to their guns. Diha believes in the call. Yeah, he recovered a really ugly, ugly spray as well. He gets spotted and he, he can't get the shots off connecting and he gets two repeats and wins both of them out with Heroic having trapped in a corner. So that was really nice for Diho. It could have gone very wrong and given Heroic a way back into a 2 on 4 It looked like they were starting to wake up to it. Kadian lucky to be alive. Sunpire's back garage again with the AWP, but Heroic are happy to hear that. They know they can run down B. Once again, Ents have the numbers in lower. Heroic again giving themselves get out clauses with players still on that top side. Doors getting swung, trying to beat the timings. But they don't know there's a crossfire in play here. Committing could be a death sentence. And they're only three strong. I like the routing. Awkward spray for Nerds. He just tries to commit, but now they don't know about Snappy on the midi ramp. Oh, oh. there's one, but he can't finish off Tessas. Going to take Diha moving in with a nade to do it. Madden's going to catch Cadian as he dry walks the smoke over on upper. And now this bomb is committed down to the lower site. Yabby's still a little ways out, but he will rejoin with his teammate here. Him and Stown trying to collect themselves, trying to win this. Trying to win this a man down, but it all falls oh. to Stown. And Diha is unrelenting. 
His rotates down towards lower have put such a such a, a block in the plans of Heroic, such a roadblock there every time they've tried to play down into that B site. It feels like D has been good for a multi-kill. He's been very heads up with some of these early rotates from the ramp. And so everyone right now for Ents feels invincible. Like you're just having one player per site that is excelling in their roles, whether that's some pious outside harassing with the AWP. You've seen Diha kind of swap that out on a whim based on when the AWP wants to start ramp. Diha excelling wherever they've put him and those B uh, rotates in the retaker have looked fantastic. And then Madden, as the guy who kind of kick-started this for Ents in the first place, has felt like a rock. Yeah, this is a, a sloppy game from Heroic with, with a lot of contacting, a lot of smoke pushing, and, you know, it's, often that works out for Heroic, but you're seeing the ugly side of when it doesn't. And early on in this game, I think one thing that was getting me very excited was how drilled and how, like, switched on Stown was looking. He came into this second half with 17 kills. Yeah. He's now sat at 21, and the game's about to be over. He has hit a brick wall since getting onto this T side. Well, they're going for quick A yet again. Often it's just been one for one for Yami. He will survive this time as he backs out of the Molotov. And Heroic, they again go through the smoke. Kadian very deep, or Tessa's rather, he dies. Diha must drop in. They can bail, they can drop into B, and they might have to right now. As Sapphires picks them from afar, he finds one. Diha back of the site gone, and a bomb plant option opened. But the cover, can you really have faith in it? Yabby is so low. If Snappy checks right below him right now. It's a free kill. Instead, he waits on the flank. Some pyres from outside to ramp back to lobby. One of the dual Berettas. He's about to face the one man with HP. It's just right here, so this has got to be a dink, and it isn't. Some pious falls, and Yabby will hold down the heavens with all his might, low on HP. He does well to deny Snappy's entry into that retake. Heroic finally commit to an A play. How many of these rounds have they you know, gotten a, a, a player out A, gotten a pick, been traded, and just had to desperately run ramp into you know either Snappy close ramp, the orb quick rotating, or Diha's pre-rotate B. It's, as you said, it feels like Ents have been absolutely everywhere. They've had Heroic's read every round, mm. and you know even if these aren't calls out of spawn, Ents know what's up. They're going to have to full eco now. Even then, Nerds is full broken on 1400. Good read of the economy. Heroic go for a vent dive, and that should just be the round. It's just how expensive can Ents make it. I've been so impressed with uh, with Diha across this map, man. Uh, you know, he, he really has been Mr. Worldwide for Ents, it feels like. You've had him towards the top rafters on A. Oh, oh my god, are they going to get the AWP out yeah, of this? Big. That is a huge win if you're Ents. Madden, not the yet. save's not guaranteed yet. Yabby is right here, and he will remove that AWP. It's Acadian's misstep over towards outside. Will not see that AWP put in some Pius' hands. And that would have been the route to have one for Ents. That was a, a real gift for them out in the yard. But in this instance, it's just poison. Heroic. Up on a 12. All right, Ents aren't out of the woods yet. And yeah, they know it. Timeout called immediately into another crucial gun round. They essentially have two full buys here on the CT side. Just got to try and stay calm, stay composed at this point. Because Ents have had the answers on CT. The anchors have been rock solid. Diha down lower. Madden on this top cycle, like you've been saying. Put on some incredible rounds. Some pious. He's not been, you know, too floaty with the AWP. He's he's kind of been anchoring his positions more often than not back of garage or playing CT. Yeah, it's why he's been I hitting mean, his shots. That, that's why I kind of homed in on D here, right? Because it's normally not uncommon to see the AWP really given freedom to roam. I, instead, it's been like uh, D here in that kind of rotatey, floaty side of uh, uh, of Nuke being the one to switch out with some pious whenever he looks for position changes, being the one to be that first point of rotation, whether it's down B or up towards the uh, the top site. And he, he's delivered on all fields. You know, he's on a different battlefield every time he's he's in these fights. He's not getting accustomed to one spot and how they're playing there. So it, it is 
It's super impressive, the mileage they've gotten out of him so far. This is another one of these rounds where D is going to go rotating down into the B site and some Pius is posted with the AWP at ramp. He's in a dangerous spot, but yeah, he climbs up over, giving him the option to drop out. Not on this side, though. Going to be a little, little harder for some Pius to reposition. Takes one kill, jumps back in for more, and some Pius burns out their eyes. Bomb dropped to the front of ramp. This is a disaster for Heroic. It may be their final hurrah. Man, when you're having to smoke the bomb Ooh. like this and make moves just to get it back, no that way. speaks volumes as to where you're at in the round. But Kadian will make it work. He does regain control over the bomb. Now they've got to believe in their ability to pull this one back in the 3v4. Stown has advanced yeah. positioning outside, and so they're going to give him room to work his magic. It's all on Stown just to gain position here. Heroic are waiting for him. That bomb's even gone outside, possibly to avoid a lobby crunch right now. Ents know there are numbers here. They saw just try to make a play outdoor. The seconds have been bought, but Nertz is staying vigilant, back of the bomb site, staring straight up. There's, there shouldn't be a world where, where Stown lives this. There, there shouldn't be a world where he can get past Nerds. And so it's just Kadian. One kill from the man at the helm of Heroic. But he can't take this any further. 20 seconds. Ends know where he was. They know where he can get to in this time. And so as tricky as Kadian tries to make it, expecting a 1v3 from him here. It's too much. Oh. Nerds dead. Back of the site. No. Kadian drops in. Tap on the bomb, but they oh. swing him. Kadian with another. And the last man, it's Snappy. About to go brain for brain. IGL for IGL. And he'll lock Kadian out of that clutch attempt. Ents pick up the map. They turn this around from being on the back foot. And they now move one map closer to a semi-final berth at IEM Cologne. What is your calling? The first map is done and Kassad gets the victory. Ents obviously took it. Uh, so awkward for Maui, especially because there was a, a lot of conversation about that IGL and right at the end there we got to see them go head to head and yours died. No, no, listen, there's like, you know, this, this like sports wear and uh, yeah, the, the, the drinks and everything you have their saying, and Ants can just be like, Ants, just better.
like that's how it. you're gonna take this. That's where you're gonna take. No, that's just the opening line. That's it's it's still gonna go. We do it in sync. One, two, three, ends. Just, just better. better. Just fun. Yeah. All well. right. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, ends obviously won. They obviously deserve obviously. to obviously. Yeah. float right they now. Did. They definitely Bo did win. Both of these teams came into Nuke with a hundred percent win percentage before it. Obviously, someone had to lose. So, by the numbers, I'll take it. I'll take it now. But Heroic are going to come back in this series. They were playing great Counter-Strike. They just kind of slipped up at some point. Sometimes this happens to Heroic. You know, we've seen it before. The comms fall off a little bit. They get a little quiet. And I, I think Heroic are still the better team overall. i got to see it through a series. That's why we don't play BO1s, Kassad. That's why we don't play BO1s. We play BO3s because we see it to the end. He's actually trying to make himself believe in this story. He's not even <laughs> trying to convince us at this point. But the thing is, like, the number says everything, right? 16, 12 in favor of ends. Where are your numbers now, mathematician? <laughs> <laughs> you know where his numbers are? His Instagram followers went up by one, I do believe, uh, just recently. And, and I do believe that, that you may or may not have considered jumping ship because a certain ends player followed you on Instagram. That's true. Now, now listen, there is, there is one more, like, <laughs> you, you asked the question, who is the better IGL? And I got this little, little, just short clip prepared for you, and it's going to be right on your screen. Are we doing this? Just in, in, in about a second. Look at this. 15, 12. Boom. Snappy kills Cadian. For the win. Okay, so here's my Does thing, that Maui. answer that? Who? Snappy killed Cadian. Oh. Snappy followed you on Instagram. <laughs> oh are, my god. Are you hundred percent committed to your choice right now? Because I'm allowing I'm, you the opportunity. I'm sticking. I'm sticking. It's heroic all day. It's heroic all day. They're bringing it back. I'm not even worried. I'm not even worried. That overpass punish pick, it's coming up next. Nuke, you know, I mean, it, it's a day off. Both these teams had a day off. Cadian's talked about it before. Don't make your decision just yet. Don't, I tell you what, okay. Banks has been able to catch up with both teams, so let's go find out what they have to say. You guys are making me laugh on the desk because right now you've got your own points, you've got your own views. Well, I've got some views from Exist here, and what he was able to tell me was coming to this game, he knew it was going to be tough anyway. Losing both pistols didn't help, but he was mainly concerned about the energy. We've been seeing the trash talk, we've been seeing how loud and pumped up these guys have been. You guys, if you were standing around here, it was so far down and they were not really feeling it. He said it's about resetting, coming into this, overpass should be theirs. But the question is, is can they be able to battle back mentally in this? Because they just don't seem to have the same kind of care to put in right now. Is it maybe because they already made playoffs? They should want to get semis? We'll have to wait and see. But they need to give it their all if they want to really show us that Heroic can win. Okay, Maui, so not only Snappy's following you on Instagram, which means Ence is okay with you joining them, two, we have the, the better IGL because Snappy went head-to-head -head with Kaden one, and three, Banks says that the energy is really low in the heroic camp. Do you know, are you sure you don't want to jump? We can feel it. We can feel it. But Kadian's still going to do things to fire up his team. When? He led by example in this game. I think we have a round where we can show how Kadian was able to infiltrate the Ents defenses, the way that he was able to slyly maneuver past the gaze of the Ents players. They throw these outside cross smokes right there, diagonal smokes. Kadian sneaking right through that. And look at this. Oh. Wow, gets right past Deha. And you know what's going to happen on Overpass, Kassad? More of this. This is what's going to happen. Kadian is going to outmaneuver Ents. His players are going to find those slivers, those cracks in the defense. They're going to be able to get behind Ents. And it's going to be as easy as what Kadian did in this round here. Quick 2K execution. And you know Tessis is going to do this. You know Stown's going to do this. You know Yabby is going to do this all over the B-bomb site. Calm down. You're not campaigning for the president. Just listen. If we <laughs> if if we are like putting in a vote right now to see if it's actually going to happen, the things that you said, there are probably like 10% of people would vote yes, but 90% would be you know normal people and just realistically say Hans is going to win because they're the better team. But overall, the first map was pretty close. You know, we're not going to disregard that. It was like all over the place. The T side was not really existing for for heroic. The CT side rotations. You see some pious outside that is pitching to ramp, going to seeker. They're moving all around. Really confused heroic players a little bit. That their defaults are not really, which are very successful, but not really working on this map. Coming into overpass, they have to start on the T side once again. Are they going to catch the same, you know, the the, the the same problems right there? I don't know, but I know that that Ants is feeling fine right now. They look fine. They look energized, pump, and they should be winning this. And they are you, I, I mean, I understand that you're super competent. This is the team that you're going with. But 
the numbers don't lie, and overpass is the better map for Heroic. It's why they picked it. Ents, 50% win rates on it. That's always problematic. One thing that Heroic can abuse with this Ents t defense, because Heroic will be starting on the T side, is the fact that Nerds and Sun Pius have had difficulties connecting as an A defense duo. I've seen them in the past, sometimes just playing very separately, just dying one by one, and I have no doubt that unless they have changed what they've done over the player break, which is possible, that Heroic are gonna have a great opportunity to pick them apart and then just easily take that A bomb site. Yeah, I, I, I'm relatively sure they're gonna do just fine in the quarterfinals on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I mean, Kassad's getting the last word because he is currently in the lead. It is Enz up against Heroic, and Enz looks refreshed. They look energized. They've got a map in their back pocket. Heroic is looking and feeling tired. Maui might be losing this one. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we're going to overpass. What is that reaction? Yeah, right. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my! Oh boy! Phase Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my God! Yeah, right, you're gonna be kidding me! What a map! What a map! The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Picture this. The major grand final, the pinnacle of CSGO competition. The Lancess echoes with the roar of thousands. Just one more series separates you from glory. But in front of you, your kryptonite, Fnatic. Envious had faced the Swedes a total of 14 times in two years prior to this major encounter. How many series had they sealed? The solitary one. This time, things had to be different. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is the ESO One Cologne Finals. It is Fnatic versus Envious. The pistol round is underway. A knife is out. What's happening, Flusher? He's oh. getting stabbed. He goes down. Oh, JW, who wasn't taken down, does manage to get himself one. Backs away, he's got the support of Flusher down long as well, but they're going to pressure him. And Kenny S, of all people, comes around with that Tech 9. He manages to make it count. Now Flusher is well aware, and Kenny lands himself another. Flash bang out once, buying more time. 30 seconds, Olaf gets a kill. Krim spraying down one is a double for Olaf. Kenny with a headshot, it's down into a 2v2 as Kronax takes down Kenny, it's all unhappy and he drops, Flusher picks it up, excellent free fire and that's a good round for Fnatic. Oh, Flusher, the follow nade did catch MBK. Runs through Sean Molotov into middle. Oh. Yeah, headshot on Crims really turns a one heavy to Kiyoshima. Gotta be careful here, Fnatic. He's gonna get a chance to get at least a couple of shots off. You can duck down behind at the first. Second one. Kronax is down and be killed, Fnatic. They're running into the French wall and it's gonna be all of Meister gone down. Peekaboo is all it needs, and Kiyoshima gets himself the initial entry straight away. Olaf Meister! And MBK from behind.
What is your calling? The Langsness awaits both of these rosters, neither of which have ever stepped foot in the arena in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike. But right now, the question is, how high can they go? How far can they fly? And who will take that semi-final placing to skip a whole stage? And so on the first map, they take their pick. It's Nuke coming through. And now Heroic have gone for a punish choice to try and uh, turn it around and make us a three-mapper on Mirage to close question is can they keep it going there was some messy brawly counter-strike especially on heroic's t side and it certainly seemed like snappy had all the right reads yeah he he had great answers and early on you know ends do well to to keep that competitive up against the heroic that i think came into this series hitting harder to open but they weren't able to sustain it as long ends very much built up over that first map started off by madden and then you had some pious and Diha both join the ranks. Man, you know, looking down the heroic squad, this is where I, I really want to home in on Stout. For me, he, he has to be a make or break player here. He was lights out in the first half for heroic back on Nuke. He finished that half with 17 kills. He went on to get seven more in the remainder of that game. So he ran in to the buffer stop. He got shut down, stopped in his tracks. They nullified Stout. They got rid of that star power. And suddenly we're left hinging everything on, the, on these Cadian rounds to come out of nowhere. That's not sustainable, and that's not what Heroic are about. So let's see if they can turn this around. Second map is overpass. It's their pick and a T-side start as this one's about to go down. Yeah, Heroic are known as a comeback team, right? And you know, as even mentioned in that interview, Tess has talked about the, the difficulty they've had in starting strong and, and often having to fight from the back foot and pull games back, but still being able to do it fairly consistently. As you said, it was the opposite in map one with a strong start, but the slow finish. And well, if there's any way you start slow, but come back quick, it is off the team side of overpass. Nice pick for Nerds. Again, the first kill of the map. Heroic going to try and flash back into the playground. Nice kill from Stout. Some Pius got warmed up towards the end of that first map. This guy was not missing a beat. This round, he is getting pressured, and he's really got his work cut out for him, but he's making it happen. Trying to run him down on the reload. That will eventually be the punish from Stout. The two Titans clash in middle, and Heroic come out looking worse for wear. Look at the moves that Snappy is making. He might never find anyone. He might never see anyone. But the info, the, the freedom that this gives to the other two players on Ents can't be understated enough here. Diha down in con, just waiting with the dual Beretta. Got to take a swing on up. I think they're hunting the jewelies in Khan as well. It's a great flash. He didn't want to run, but he had to. I think to. he's gone out. Now nah, they've smoked him off. They've realized they're just looking for more. The jewelies will make it very clear where Diha's fighting from, and they actually avoid this setup. There's still flanks on flanks, though. Snappy comes back from T-spawn. Madden keeps them drawn in with taps from heaven, and Snappy here's a check. They don't commit to it, though. He's still with good timing. Going back for more is down. Diha moves in quickly, just spraying away with the two guns. He does find one through the wall, and now should out in the open, has to pull out a clutch. Bomb's not for him, and neither's the round. They pinch him in the middle, and Ents take the pistol. And it's teed up really beautifully by, by some Pius getting involved super early on, right? Opening up this pistol with a double kill down yeah. through mid. I, I, I think you really have to pay respect because he was not in a, a good spot there, right? Oftentimes that playground fight, you, you do feel like you can get a lot out of it, but he loses all of his teammates. He loses Nerds aggro over in, uh, over in the playground. And so suddenly, you know, he runs the risk of getting wrapped through middle. He runs the risk of... Players closing the distance on him as they went on to do, but he gets out with a double kill. To think that, you know, one of the most uh, Colo experienced players in Cologne uh, in this series is is some pious for having already made top four last year is kind of crazy when you consider the rosters that we have and some of the legendary players uh, inside of this game. But as we said, it was Yabby's first event for Heroic last time around and it took some teething issues but overall have left Heroic in an undoubtedly better spot in the last 12 months. They can't always be close, but never quite. 
they eventually need to push over that finish line. Cadian being thrown on top. Sampai is just wide enough on the dice box. Just missed by a second. These are tight timings. Heroica not hitting them, though. We've got double flash for Tessas. Seeing how far they can get to remain silent. But two M4s on the bomb site. This is not going to be an easy walk in the park. Great flash is brutal. Some Pius thought he would have a bit more time here. Sinert going to have to be the guy to save the Ooh. day, and he gets run down. It's Stown and Cadian to make it all happen here. Hello. Tess says, here's this rotate. Help. He knows that someone's up the connector. Click oh, oh. from the Glock. Snappy turns and will deal with him, but at quite the cost. He comes out looking worse for wear. And now he needs Madden to join him. Deha could get fed a kill on this smoke fades. Down his sack. Oh, no. Over towards the dumpster. Cadian, weapon primed just in time. One more, though. Deha collects that one. There's one more pistol in the sight, and Cadian's dead. Back in the bathrooms. It might get stolen away right at the 11th hour. Ends no come kit. in, but with no kit to play with. It's a heroic round. Just enough time bought. Just by the skin of their teeth, heroic hold on. But that one was terrifying. So many details that could have gone into his way. Cadian pulling his gun out a second before he gets the fight. The Glock not converting that frag. And Yabby just buying a few seconds. This was an awkward mistake for some Pius, though, to not be far enough back on the box so that you can drop if you change your mind. It, it, he had to run all the way through it. And just that extra second, that extra step he must make gives Heroic the entry kill. When he's flashed there, he, he felt like he doubted it and didn't want to drop off. And it's too late. He got punished. Free M4 given to Heroic, free bomb site, and they take not even a force buy. That's an eco with one gun around the Heroic. Consistently do like going for, but I've never seen it look so, you know, efficient. Pistols do most of the work. And now Heroic have a pep in their step, an orb on the T side. Okay, he flashes them back out into middle. They go quick towards A. Some Pius is scout, looking for scouts. I like are aware that ends still have a, a decent arsenal to, to put to work here. diligent in how they go about clearing out some of these key areas of the map. Right now, they've got this front toilets control. They've taken long. They've got connector. And they're waiting around outside of B. This is great real estate for Heroic to have. It feels like you can take, you know, you can make whatever play you want when you've got this sort of room. So they've at least got that going their way. But now as they start to prime these flashes over towards B with 20 seconds left, there's nothing being offered up from Ents. Eventually, the onus is on Heroic to make moves. They will open with a double kill. Deha down in the water. Oh. Nails one with the Deagle. Any more from Deha? Some Pius oh, no. rotates in. The bomb gets away from them now. It's their time. They just start spam. to plug in the numbers. Oh. But the spam connects for Nurt. And he robs Heroic right back. Him and Sun Pius, both of them dropping the bomb carriers, both of them throwing that round into a spin. Heroic go hunting for the pit player, but it wastes valuable time. Seconds they can't afford. Those are some phenomenal shots coming out from Enz. That scout worth its weight in gold. And Nerds, who started that last map so slow, if he would have come alive now in map two on a map that has been a pocket pick for Heroic, which has been fairly horrendous for Enz. That would be one way to steal a semi-final spot away with ease. Dear, oh dear. Heroic may find their half by, but Ents force right back. I mean, Heroic always know how to make these rounds interesting, right? There's always some hero element at play. And in this round, it is the captain. Cadian brings out that AWP, but it's going to be the pistols caught first. 
Shush dead down in con to the boost. When you see them employing that, you feel like maybe there's a window where you catch them, you know, moving back in a position over here at B. So they try to get out through Monster, but not to a great result. Hen's not justifying the means here for Heroic. And even though they've got this off, it, suddenly it's the only thing really left in the round. And Circadian likely already thinking about saving, but not Ooh. even that's guaranteed. That was Stown saving Cadian's life. I wonder if that entices them at all, but with 25 seconds, I don't think they move past this point. The combat save exits would be lovely, right? Just try and chip away at Ence's money, but no one's going to reswing. No one's going to make that mistake. And even Heroic have to smoke their back to assure this save. See, that's that's like a, a round that doesn't at all really shape up how Heroic would have wanted it to, right? You, you know from the times that we spoke to Cadian about his philosophy with these sorts of buys, with these sorts of rounds. My God, look at how bloody he yeah, is. Yeah, he's messed up. He got, he got tagged. There were a lot of shots through the wall there as well, right? Mm. MP9 drilled but, him. You know, his philosophy in those rounds is the pistols should let the hero gun play first. And that's where, you know, Heroic never at any point did it feel massively like the, the pistols were overextending. It was more Ents using these little gimmicks to, to force and squeak those gunfights out ahead of time that left Heroic feeling like they had no options. And so that didn't look like how a lot of those hero rounds end up panning out for Heroic. Kadian didn't get the contact he wanted. And so now they're gonna force up again. This oh, is This is wild. And to play like they got nothing to lose, and in a sense they do. Nerds pushes all the way into playground with his knife out off of spawn, despite Heroic smoking that bollocks on the middle. He does not care. And again, the pistol saves Kadian's life. How the hell are Heroic bailing their captain out time after time? It still may not matter. Back to B. Smoking a flash for Tess says nothing's getting lobbed right now. They are just dry walking. Kadian has to win this round, but how can you ask out of him on 11 points of health? I mean, I don't think you're hoping he's the guy who, who wins the whole thing. You just want him to get that one kill that sends you in. But nothing is offered from this end squad. They play so passive, knowing what Heroic have in All their right. arsenal. All Waits right. around for that exact fight, but it still surprises him. I think the smoke just spread right as he was holding it. There was a gap, and then that gap closed up as he got peaked. So, you know, the, the mist is moving just a little bit and just enough to give Ents another clean round. And now Kadian coming in with choice words. It's not even a pause. But things need to be fixed. And this is getting stressful for Heroic already, as was the T-side of Nuke. Felt like they couldn't really get a solid grip on that second half. And despite them you know, being a comeback team on a very hard half, I don't know, man. Ents look like they're here to play. Ents look like they're here for another trophy. Yeah, no, I mean, you've, you've got to pay attention to the form they're showcasing, right? And I think all the other teams in the playoffs are watching this with a keen interest. You know, you, you want Ents to make Heroic implode before they reach the playoffs. <laughs> We say this is a team that, that Gate keeps playoff runs for a lot of squads. Gate keeps themselves from trophies, though. And they want that narrative to change. I mean, you don't want to be sitting around always being second place, always being right there on the cusp. And the further it goes, the longer you are that team, the more frustrating it gets, the more that plays mm. on your mind. They can tell us that they don't think about, uh, about it. They can tell us they think they're experienced on stages. And they are but they still don't have trophies in the cabinet. Yeah, you know, and I think it, it's always a very interesting dialogue to have because, you know, obviously at that point, you you are looking at the top 1% of the top 1%, right? For for some teams out there, the idea that you could consistently break into the top five, that you would consistently be in that position, that already sounds, you know, like a, like a huge dub for someone on the rise, but it's when you get there, that's when the, the goals change, the focus changes, and Heroic have been at that point for a very long time now. Uh, flip the script for Ents, right? It's a recent resurgence. It's it's pulling pieces together into a team that peak at the same time and find their form at the end of last season. They have a, a few weeks off over the player break. I imagine they, you know, continue in the right direction, finish what they've already started with that Dallas win and come into Cologne fr fresh and refreshed, ready for another run. And again, this is easily, it, for some reason, it feels like a team you could doubt, a team that you can overlook and 
Ents again remind us that is not the case. Yeah, I think there's something very cool within this Ents team. The idea that uh, Snappy had to, you know, be a part of kind of building this squad up from the ground up, looking to bring in changes, looking to bring in players, right? Adding the likes of some pious, bringing Nerds in as that replacement for Spigs. You know, he's made a, a lot of very sound moves within the. The, the more constrained budget that, that he gets within this end squad and the results are there. And that's always so impressive. You, you love rooting for someone who doesn't have access to, you know, the, the same resources, the same contacts as someone uh, as part of, you know, the, the larger organizations. You kind of love rooting for the underdog. And on top of that, there's, there's something almost reminiscent of how Carrigan went on to find success with FaZe while he was himself 32 years old, winning uh, winning back in Antwerp, looking great there, calling into question of when is the expiry date on players? When do you peak for Snappy? Born in the same year as Carrigan, both 1990, both 33 years old. And it feels like for a lot of players, that would be you in your twilight years. That would be you with the best behind yeah. you. And but for Snappy, it feels like the, the best is still to come. And akin to Carrigan, we see some really sick rounds out of uh, out of Snappy. Some raw entry rounds where he showcases some great aim on T sides. And even though that's not required, right? There's so many pieces to this Ents puzzle. We know it's an option. We know it's there, waiting to be unleashed. What a push for Madden and Nerd setting up so his barrel doesn't stick around the corner just about in time, but they will check it anyway. Safe and secure for Tessez. We'll take that shot. Some Pius back to the bomb site with a smoke in his face. This will let them climb up. Tess is gonna get flashed through a cheeky move. He doesn't pop. He waits for the second one. And some Pius blinded Ooh. by the light as Tessez comes alive with a double kill. Three in the round and Madden moving up. That's mad from Tessez. He's not even on the ground for the second one. But Madden, what do you really expect out of this round? Shush is a long way away. That's the one thing that makes this a little weird here. He doesn't know that. But he's got no info on this. Uh, and so Madden can't justify attempting the 1v3. Gonna bow out. And as he goes back down into this B site, he doesn't know it yet, but he's playing right into Shush's hands. Who looks to deny this one M4 save. Just something else for Heroic to latch onto here. As they pull up with their second round, they called out a couple of pauses right before it. Yeah, two in a row for Heroic, pause-wise, right? They, they, they burned both in you know, one break, so they really had something to nail down, and it works wonderfully. Great reaction in a three-on-four down uh, to, to you know, pop through that smoke. And, you know, double pauses aren't something you, you, you get every day, right? To, to me, that suggests that that kind of was Heroic looking to, to bring their heads back into the game, right? That, that first pause is clearly leaving a mark when they called out the second one. Nerds has been fearless in the CT side. He's done it again. And with some pies in this position, his entire back is covered. He can sit in Fountain super late round and Heroic only have one man in middle. So Tess has got to be careful. Is that a teammate? I think it was. He's not playing CS2. Just lobbed an HE into the smoke where Heroic were playing. That one's curious. Was it meant to be a flash? Was it meant to go further forward? Heroic, they reroute. They abandon their initial plan. They eat a nade as well, but this boost up could be well timed. Madden hides inside of the barrel smoke. Not what you're expecting to see. It's down sees nothing. They hear the noise of the drop. Ents know there are at least two players nearby. And now they're double holding for the boost as well. This one feels a little awkward for Heroic. It's feeling kind of obvious like, to be a B play. Sunpire still has decent control towards A, and he's moving further forward. Uh, Heroic have to go, and Ents are ready for it. Madden's going to open. He now steals himself away. He's got support. Doesn't have to do this alone. Snappy lends a helping hand, and it's just a mow down. It's brutal. Heroic never even get past Monster. They never even get out the smoke. And much akin to how back on Nuke, what felt like some of these up-tempo rounds where usually Heroic find ways to break in, find ways to get the ball rolling, and uh, stopping it in its tracks. Yeah, I mean, Heroic come into that round with two plays and both of them kind of fail them, right? The, the monster pop, you know, trying to come out through that smoke together, play the fade perhaps. But then they go for a barrel's molly, hoping that Ents, after the barrel's been mollied, reposition into, into that spot. 
you know, it's, it's just been cleared by Heroic, right? And they wanted to boost into that and get the kill. Everything goes right, except Madden smokes the Molotov and just stands inside of it. And so Heroic don't get any vision there. They don't get any picks from their early plays. And then they just have to pop out Monster, hoping for the best. Sure, there's just still winnable rounds, but Ents play their crossfires really, really nice. And Snappy comes out with another multi-kill. So it's going to be a sixth round for Ents. And Heroic, again, having T-side troubles today. Well, this was a very aggressive round for Ents. If Heroic knew that, they could pop out Monster and get full control. Three in middle. Two passive B players. Heroic is still coming. Utah coming out. Kedian is being very vocal right now. He's really trying to get everyone engaged. You can hear him, but falls on. Nothing happens as they move in. They will start to overrun and Madden and Snappy. And now the retake is poised to Ents, who group up in the heavens. But I mean, already with that re-smoke coming in, that removes a whole avenue from this retake. And so even though they lost the Abbey to open that up, even though that first man cast into the flames events doesn't find any success, it disrupts the setup enough for his teammates to flow over them. Yeah, I mean, Ents aren't really set up for the full execute there. They just have two players and they're in, you know, kind of non-helpful positions to each other. They're both out on islands. One of water, one of pillar. Nice exits for Deher, keeps his money alive. Not the end of the world for Heroic, who just want to break Ents' economy to redeem those free rounds. Oh, that molly doesn't help uh. either. Full blinded was Madden. The pillar flashes go a long way. Yeah, it proved to matter a hell of a lot as well because it boxed Deha in. I mean, he he likes playing where, where he falls anyway. It's uh, or, or not Deha rather, but you know it, it boxes them in and it, and it had them stuck in, in a very awkward position. And even though you've kind of seen Ents go through the motions of playing it back from water, it, it's different making that decision versus getting boxed in and trapped Ooh. there. No, it's yeah. dead man over in the connector. So Heroic are looking to carry this momentum forward. They don't want it to be a flash in a pan, a one and done. Oh, monster spam. Kadian does return fire, and that barrel's position is now in the prying eyes of Heroic yet again. How long will they wait on this boost? Kadian's just found a second pick. Snappy goes swinging, and there might be more in store, but Deha denies from the side. Kadian, he's seen the barrel. He knows he's still here. Deha trying to flash his way back in. Kadian has to fire. Deha's a dead man walking as the molly hits. So does Shetesses and Shush to close that round. Heroic. Some more energy injected on this T side. Some faster B approaches. They're breaking through. Yeah, I've had an earphone off for some of this, just trying to listen in to, to what's happening down on the down on the show floor. And I tell you what, man, it has been a noticeable increase in energy from the heroic camp since they took that double pause. You know, there, there's yelling now. There, there's reasons to get hyped. So Kadian's trying to bring the boys back into the game with a bit of help from Exist. Ooh, okay. Nerds, crazy spam through middle. But they'll reply by just running straight through his smoke. He's trying to go fast here, but they'll run into the might of some pious. Kadian able to extinguish him. And Yabby waits on this smoke fade, slows it down, hinges it all on this fight for the long toilets. And now that you've got it, now that you've got this three on three, you're no longer feel as committed. You know you can go slow here. Can't believe Tessas is still alive. He is buying so much time Madden for Heroic. on a mad round. The fact that he's up and left B to commit to this flank is is, is kind of crazy. He's not going to find the open time, though. Kadian should have this open on to Snappy. Know. They're going slow to give Kadian time to work with this orb. Oh, he gets his contact, dear. but a missed shot. And Snappy knows he doesn't have to pressure this because Madden's right there with the backstab. Bob gets away from Heroic, uh -oh. but they can still win the round. They've just got to get past Madden. Heroic, wait. Yabby moves in, trying to play in tandem with his teammate. They've got to swing this together. They've got oh. to trade this, and Yabby will make quick work of Madden as Heroic keep picking up steam. That's now three in a row over on the T side to make something of this run and to keep the dream of a semi-final berth burning for Heroic.
Beautiful slowdown for Tessa. That's what, that, what allows Heroic to actually group up. Ents had great positions. They had a stack on A. They had the flank that you mentioned. But Tessa just stalls in that little flower bed position. And Heroic are able to get set up and go hunt the bomb back together in the 2v1. I think even if Madden gets that first kill, he's getting reswung by Tessa on default. And so now only pistols. This is what Heroic have been going for, right? Why they've been hunting. Why they've been playing, breaking the economy of Ents. And a free round on the T side of Overpass. That's just uh, a dream come true. Bomb gets stuck and... Running to their death in T spawn. This is, we'll have a couple here. And a brutal crossfire to break through. There's no way anyone's getting it done. And so Heroic get out with four alive and an even scoreline on the T half of Overpass. Slow to start, strong to finish. That's more what we expect. First pause called out for ends. Early on, you know, that they felt like they had enough solutions. They felt like they could carry over that momentum from the opener. But now, now they're recognizing that this is a different heroic to the one that they just put to rest. Once again, it's down top in the charts for heroic. That's a, a reassuring sign after he grinded to this super awkward halt back on Nuke. He went from being this eternal light for the heroic squad someone that they could always depend on always rely on to just having his opening move shut down failing to find any of the successes he went on to get seven more kills in the remainder of that game in the second half already fragged out further on his t side then we're not done yet oh it's just really gonna go for it yeah, he's a good he has backed up though that, that was for his position to spam. And actually, that's great because, you know, down in con, Shush is calling, yeah, I'm being spam. Throw now. And D had just backs up in time. Could have been a dead man towards B. Nerds, again, aggressive. But Tess is with no support. Doesn't want to risk it all. He'd rather call that he's trapped. And Shush is here to help out. But Nerds doesn't go back. He goes further forward. Meanwhile, Yabby's out B. It's like nuke door all over again, just dry walking and die walking is D her. He won't be he will be traded rather, but there's still more players out monster. Heroic can seed the position. They take the four on four, they go back to mid. Oh my nerds oh. is trying to reposition in the meantime over here in middle, and he gets out with a kill. That is gonna force Heroic's hand into this B play. When you know that that Ents have all this info, they're just gonna battle forward. Go deal with the B site and a miss shot from some pie Blimey. seals his death. And with it, the crumbling of B. Still getting more energy out of Tessas. I'm loving what he's adding to this, uh, this you know, sh shouting meta for Heroic. It can't just all be on the shoulders of one man. And Heroic trying to get back in the heads of Ents. As they pull off a very strong T side on what is historically been the most CT sided map in the last couple of years. Even if that hasn't necessarily transpired here in this tournament, the deeper we get, the more fat we cut, the more this should return to normality. Worth noting, you know, the majority of the teams of the play-ins are teams who haven't made you know, big roster changes coming into the new season. Heroic and Ents obviously both already having qualified. Vitality and G2, only one player change between those rosters in the same situation. But then we have those lower final matchups, those quarter finalists in Cloud9. And maybe even a new look Astralis to join them. That's putting a lot of faith in Nerds in this round. And, you know, he's he's played this game very, very confidently uh, over towards middle, oftentimes left to his own devices. And so he seems like a good candidate to entrust this AK2. 
The scout has some pies. The fact he hangs around is crazy. He takes a second shot from the scout before dropping off. But he wasn't able to punish. It's just the tag onto Cadian. Entry and force down in the bathrooms. Madden's been spotted, but it's a bait and switch trying to bring them forward into Diha. They're really selling this, but wow. Shush will deal with them both through the Ow. smoke. A stray bullet knocks out Madden. And with that, the A side crumbles. There's a freebie for Snappy, and you'll take the AWP upgrade all day long. If they let you. It's the only way that Ents are going to have one. Oh, what a reposition for Shush as well. He might sneak in. He might still lose this, but if Snappy was crossing, that could be a very claustrophobic. He will not escape the second. Yabby yeah, already down Monster with a big 3K. And yeah, those stray shots for Shush go far for Heroic as they have made quite the second half, or the, the run in this first half. I guess the second half of the first half. A huge streak on the T side. Six straight, looking for seven. It's ends to timeout for their final ditch attempt. And this becomes a game that ends up really, you know, embodying that that heroic spirit, this idea that they are a hard team to put away. They are a hard team to close out against. All it took was a, a minute of talking here. And suddenly they were they were right back into it. And one of the things that's relieving is, you know, whenever we see this heroic squad struggling in playoffs, it feels like one of the guys who often has to put a lot on his own back is Kadian. And, you know, whether or not that's because it comes from the top, he, he still feels that pressure. And one of the things that's been so relieving to see here in this streak of rounds from Heroic is it, it hasn't really been Kadian required to be a part of that in any big way. Instead, it is the, the, the rest of the gang doing the heavy lifting. So when the pressure was on, it's the rest of Heroic that rose to the occasion. Whoa. Kadian, first to fall. He's going to get a front row seat to see if his team can turn this around on its head. Not looking good to open, but Yabby will look to make a play out through Monster. They forgot the bomb, though, so this is awkward. They still want to stay together to trade out these kills. We need a hero from Heroic right now. Back they go. Util gets burned by Entz. Tessa still has a lot of space, and he could set up on a flank. The question is, do they want to bring the bomb to him or have him come all the way around the world? Heroic take the former option. They enter uncharted territory. Murky waters back through middle. Tess says, sooner the better, really. But he doesn't want to give away the aim of the game. They throw a front side smoke like he's walking up Banana, but that can be confirmed and denied by some pious with all this control. It will keep his eyes on the wrong position for now, but Madden's coming through on bank on good timing. Tessas might get shot in the back. Wait. He's just missed it. Bombs up long. Oh, this this is orb big. is a dead man, and Tessa looks for two, but he has to take the kill. Can Nertz cut off the rotate? <gasps> he's just run away. Looks away from middle. What? Madden's playing trigger discipline of his own. 30 seconds. This is a round of the shots you don't take. The ones that they hold, oh. trying to milk something of it. But Yabby opens up the roots of the plant. No way. Snappy dead up through the connector. And now it's just Iha left in the hot seat. 1v2. He's had a miraculous time across this series as Iha. But this clutch is asking just a little too much of him. Heroic. They complete one hell of a turnaround, chaining together seven rounds in a row to close out their T-side.
What is your calling? Ents have impressed us today, but Heroic have woken back up. They chain together seven to close out their T side. Seemingly from nowhere, it's on the back of two pauses, a handful of rounds into this game that Heroic looked like the whole vibe within this team changed. Yeah. And right. since that point, they've looked damn near unbeatable. Ents have got a new challenge. Can they rise to the occasion? Yeah, we saw Kaden getting pretty full of life at 5-1 down when it felt like Heroic were you know, sleeping at the wheel. And then they go on an unbelievable streak to close down the half and win it out 9-6. to six. These group stage goblins are trying to scurry to the semis. And can Ents put a foot in the door? Can they stop them? Will their toes be taken off? Back up con here. We're going to need a monstrous T side on a very difficult map, friends. Moving through connector. Heroic play the A side, but they do ensure a third rotation. Tessis is moving up on CT spawn at the right time. He's even running absolutely fine with giving Ents that information. Because Heroic feel confident in this decision, and for good reason. There's a flash primed, smoke's thrown by Ents, and Heroic know what's coming. Folegzek reigns in, it's down, back of the dice box, but leaving nothing to chance here on his jiggles. They're closing the distance, and Stown ran down, finished off by Nertz. That plant's going to come through, and for the remaining dregs of Heroic, as they move into a lost site, that kit lost. What are they meant to cook up for us here? Shush is trying to find a way back into the round. He's ready for the reswing a truck. He knows exactly how they plan to kill him. He'll only be able to deal with it. A lot of time ticked off this bomb already. Nothing being open to heroic, and it looks like Ents have done enough to secure this pistol. Bringing themselves in with a little ray of hope to hold on to in this second half. Yeah, confidence uh, display as well. Just quick pop into A. No info for Heroic. They still make the right gamble stack, but shots just don't connect on the USPs. And Ents do not go down without a fight. They came into this first half screaming in the in the freeze time, trying to hype each other up. But it does seem like the camaraderie, which we often attribute to the brotherhood of Heroic, is certainly there with Ents as well. Off of a string of strong recent results since the addition of Nerts. Reason to believe for Ents. So why count them out of a comeback on Heroic's map pick? They're already in the playoffs. Something I think has really helped Ents across this series now is is how comfortable and how good they look in these pistol rounds. But we'll hold this door Ooh. because getting churned yeah. up on the monster rush. Not how they wanted this to go. Right gun for the job. You're expecting Deagles, five sevens. You don't want to see double MP9 on your smoke push. That is a dangerous call by Snappy, and Heroic will take it every day of the week. And so I was just crediting Ents' ability to win pistols. They've won all of them in the series, and, you know, now this is starting to get called into question a little bit more because here in the first half, while they won the pistol, they lost to that force in the second. They then went on to force back and kind of course correct that. But it looks like Heroic are getting away with some of these swing rounds that they usually find, right? Yeah. They they broke those conversion streaks that Ents had here on overpass by winning the second round. Now they're looking to do it again on their CT side. Yeah, but he's not crazy. He's just spamming E while he looks for a gun and shakes around. They catch some pious. But Yabby's still here, hits his shot, doesn't he? Deep to the face and nerds far back enough that he's able to get that trade. Looking for the AK-47. And yeah, you talk about the, the force by upsets. It happened on Nuke as well. Remember round three on that CT side where Heroic got it done with pistols, not even a full buy. They keep complicating matters for Ents. Very hard to get momentum when the rug is swept out from underneath you. Heroic onto double digits earlier than anticipated. Yeah, that's a worst case scenario if you're Ents, man. You uh, you try to throw in a, a fast round where you just play with all the strength that the Force Buy gives you, running out through Monster, and you play right into Heroic's hands. They're going to respond. It's actually a Heroic timeout here. I like this. Keep it tight. You know this. You just want the uh, you want to swing round with you know Force Buy. 
If Ents start trading them back and forth, it's going to do better for Ents. Heroic's money will be more on the line, being on the CT side. So just shut it out. And Ents' first buy is delayed to round 20. So Heroic are in a, a powerful, potent position that they need to capitalize on to keep this map. Is that every time I've burnt now, though? I think it might be. No, I think that was their third. Ah. So they got one more left in the tank, and they've been very purposeful with when they've looked to pull them in. And you can imagine that this one's been pulled through now, not just because they know the impact it's going to have in delaying this by friends, but because in the first half, they, they tried just riding the momentum after they won the force, and, and they got forced upon. So... Looking to make sure that doesn't happen again, and this time you, you, you live out the full potential. The moment that you just captured, if you're heroic, oh. it's always coming to these rounds with a plan, with an idea. Snappy's got something eating away at him as he makes his way out through middle. They want to try and wrap Tessas down in the connector. Diha opens. There's another kill available over at short. Will they look to challenge this? Yabby, it's a good nice. fight for him, and Snappy's caught looking to leave. Trying to rejoin with his teammates here. They wanted to make the A play happen, but nothing more than a distant dream by the looks of things. Madden locked out of the round, and it's just some pious left. Cadian swings him, and will deal with that attempted fast play up through the toilets and down the long side. Heroic this time, stick the landing versus that force from the end squad. Still seeing some smiles sneak onto the faces of Heroic here and Ents looking a little more dismal as they are running out of room on this T side. They're even buying a hero AK into this eco round. I would I would love to know, you know, what, what exists is said to, to Heroic during the, the timeout here. During both these timeouts, because the, the sort of proficiency that Heroic have had on the back of them has been great. As mentioned, they called two back-to-back -back early on. From that point on, they went on to win seven and close yeah. out the half. Coaches are a hard thing to talk about from our perspective in that, you know, we don't get in the comments. Mm. We don't know exactly what's being said. And while Heroic speak highly of him and certainly have the results to back that up, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a little more un unquantifiable for our side, especially with how quiet exists does appear. That, to me, at least suggests that he comes through with a lot of ideas on the tactical side. Uh, considering he's not a hype coach by any means. You don't need any more hype in Heroic. But uh, this is a little bit of an awkward round right yeah, now. Yeah, Cadian's caught. All Ooh. out on his lonesome in middle, and that's good spam damage from some pious. Stown's been called in, trying to lend a helping hand. The AK does even more damage, but now it's lost a little further afield. Matthew's been able to retrieve this one from Cadian over in middle. So that at least gives N something to work with here. If they can find the room to grab this other AK from short, Heroic are giving them that respect. Ents can arm themselves, and Madam wants that gun. Madam wants oh. it. Oh, Snappy! Brings us into a three on three. Yabby is punished for his peak down short. And even though Stown was flashed in, that peak is not without risk. Stown can't withstand even a Glock shot here would be enough to open up the A play. And Heroic burnt their util. They've spammed so many flashes, but now they've got nothing left but a Molotov. If they can deny the plant with it, that's the only way they can win this round easily. Otherwise, they're going to have to fight for it. Molly goes too deep. It's down on the truck. Cover denied, and maybe the bomb as well. Diho with nowhere to go, and Stown steals it from the bank side, cashes the check, and takes the anti-eco for Heroic. It was always meant to be theirs, but some pious and snappy with that hero AK made it a little bit more costly, a little bit more cautious for Heroic. And this is what we talked about, that first buy round coming at round 20. Heroic keep it tight after winning their force by denying the B rush. And now they have the opportunity to do it again, to take two for one with every round they get. timeout called through they, they they really want to capitalize on this i'm i'm hoping that some pious on this t side can 
can give us something to marvel at. He was so instrumental yeah. for, for, for why Nuke came up for NC. He's someone where you you know the ceiling of this guy is terrifyingly high and he can just take control of games. And he has kind of fallen a little quiet here for Enz on overpass the map where your AWP can reign king. And in tandem with that, Kadian has not really carried a lot of impact with his for the side of Heroic. Only that's kept up across both maps now. And so you feel like the stage is set for some Pius to be the guy to get switched online and try to take a bit of ownership over this game, over the orping. Tess says with mid aggression, and he's here quickly. You were you were not expecting this. Nades are pulled for Mad. As he oh. rounds the corner, he is not at all expecting conflict here. No. Some Pius is caught repositioning, and so he gets to bring that AWP out, but never gets a moment to shine with it. The sun sets on some pious. And Ents are down to three to open up their first rifle round. They're going to creep out B, but even that is supplemented by a flash. Heroic trying to regain the space that they once conceded at the lower site. And now Stout knows that Nerds has his intentions set on B. Kadian, this is awkward. He has to reposition. They're pulling back a three on five right now. And find a way in. And even though the bombardment of nades land for Heroic, they still have a chance to plant after the Molotov. Snappy just surviving on a point of health. The flash, Heroic don't want to wait. They don't want to relent. And they drop the bomb again. It's down to the AWP against Nerds. He backs up. No way. Kadian should hear this. If he runs up con, but he takes the quiet route. Oh, no idea. Not yet. Not till it's too late. By the time he hears these footsteps, Nurse has already secured the route in to plant this, and Kadian still tries to play the element of surprise. Up he goes, AWP. Dawn in oh. his hand, but it's Nurse. Clinical execution and so calmly played in that 1v1. I mean, we saw Kadian attempt similar things back on Nuke where he would just go quiet, where he would cut sound and look to have his opponent stew in the, in the madness of that info getting cut short. The mind game's played by Nerds and he makes it look easy, but it's anything but there as you get into that 1v1. You know who you're up against. You know that one bad peak one instance of shift being held where maybe it shouldn't. One timing hit and suddenly your round's over. Three on five, a one on two. Ents bring it back from the brink of defeat. And Heroic don't get that two for one. Instead, it might go the other way. Only the AWP here and a couple of M4s. But Kadian does it well up close. There's his revenge, right? Yeah. But he doesn't get it till the next round. He doesn't get it till Ents have already profited. Even if they walk up banana right now, if they don't clear long toilets, Tessez will be able to backstab on awkward timings. And they're about to get that spot on A very soon. Stown doesn't know what he's walking into, but he drops the AWP with ease. Two more around the corner. And Heroica here to massacre Ents right now. Here's this backstab coming through. Madden is a dead man walking. And Heroic respond as they always do. You just can't get comfortable. Even if their money's in the bin. Such a threatening team on four spies. They put the AWP first and the pistols to close. 13-8 and Ents. Where can they go from here? But Mirage. They really don't want to take this to a third map, man. Heroica, a team that, that warm up into a series and they're, they're certainly feeling more like their usual selves here. And still feel like they have unfinished business on this map. But if they don't break in soon, they might never get the chance to. Nerds is going to try and open this one up with the MAC-10. Up through short, Yabby. Oh, it's awkward on the spread. Down and Shush have got to rise to the challenge, and they will. They make up for Yabby's failure to contain the short split, and they'll lock it down. He and support every step of the way there. And so that low buy brushed aside with ease. One man falls. That's the extent of it for Heroic. Ents really are running out of time.
This is their investment to, to get to try and claw this game back. This is really about as good as it gets for Enz. One AK in the hands of some pious. The man that sits bottom of the board for the end squad has now got to be their diamond in the rough. Yeah, Madden's been the most consistent piece alongside D here in this series so far for Enz. Varying maps from some pious and nerds. One strong on the first, one on the second. But without the consistency the Heroic are showing, and so we'll have trouble here in this series. That third map looms. And the pistols may decide it, popping out monster. They'll go with the second flash. Heroic waste there, swinging. They think they clear it. Then the AK comes in and they drop it not once but twice. How about thrice? Madden wants a fight. Flashback in for more. He does get the entry, but Yabby's got so much support. <gasps> not that it matters. Blinded. Madden finds a double entry and enter on the right path. D has now armed. D has now dangerous, but boxed in. Might get finished off here. The nade brings him down low, and the Glock is not a winning recipe for the round. Reloading, oh. and the nade rains down from above. Cadian from the heavens lobs in the HE that puts 15 up for Heroic. And they must have netted five flashes at least down Monster in that round. They kept doing it. Even though Ents bait out the first two, right? They throw a pre-flash. They don't peek with it. Heroic flash swing. Then Ents swing again. Heroic kill them all. Then Ents pop back in. Heroic meet them there. It's just a trading of flashbangs. And even though Maddox gets a blind shot, it's not enough. The inevitability is setting in here for Ents. Heroic taking us to a third, and again blind. They don't mind. Right now, the B-side is empty. There is no one there. Heroic have played everyone in connector or pushing mid, and so Ents have got a route to the bomb plant. But hang on, some Pius is going back with the bomb. Oh, oh my goodness. Sure, he's won this one fight, but They're there's right more where him. that came from. This is such a weird call from Heroic. The Ents should never be ready for it. All they know is they've got to get this bomb planted. They've got to get it down over towards B. So Pius has managed that at least. It's a nice plant. It can go for heaven. They can play towards the top. They've just got to deal with that man, Cadian, waiting for the flank. Waiting for no one, gets very aggressive. Some Pius finds him from back in the pit and Snappy sits alone with an open bomb plant. He has position to close this round. Moves into the mist, sees the shadow on the swing, but Yabby will find it. And despite the slow start to the map, despite the slow start to the series, Heroic can hold their heads high as they take us the distance here in this qualifying match to the semifinals. If Ents want a top four in Cologne, they're gonna have to earn it.
What is your calling? And it's a complete reset now because both teams have won their map picks, which means it is going to go to Mirage. That is going to be the deciding map. And ironically, we, we spoke a lot about which analyst is correct in their predictions. Kassad got this on the money. You said it was going to Mirage, uh, and then you said that Ents was going to take it. Well, that's why they pay me the some money. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the thing is, like, it was obvious that, you know, both teams are very confident in their map picks, and you can see on the, on the scoreline as well, especially in the second map. Ants looked kind of disjointed, completely kinda? disconnected a little bit. Kind of. But it was all a bait and switch <laughs> because we were going to Mirage. Why do you and think Ants is... Quick I mean, why do you think Ants is going to take Mirage? What is it about Ants that's got you Have you, you not, like, remembered the two things in my... You Just know, your like, eyes. Okay, yeah. Kassad's eyes guarantee like, See, I'm like a hawk. They're like children. Now they're staring into each other's eyes. Oh, Maui like wants to say something. He's like, let him, let him like, it was like, like a, a very cute little bromance stare down happening there, which I'm sad about because we missed that on camera. So hopefully we get that again one day. But let's let's talk about the fantastic heroic who won, but kind of not very impressively on that last I month. mean, Kassad says he's like a hawk. It, to me, it's more like a pigeon, just like pecking <laughs> for little things right here. Uh, just what can you get? What can you get, huh? I don't think there's much. There's much because... That was not a great tea side. That was not a great. I would love to see. You, I would love to see you do that again. <laughs> yeah, let's go, please continue. Sorry. <laughs> Heroic looked dominant once they switched to the defense. There, their tea side was great. On top of that, they were able to outmaneuver ends. They did have some trouble in the beginning as they kept trying to go for these B pops. But once they open up the map with a nice, uh, nice couple plays towards A, they were able to bring some pretty incredible rounds back, as we can see here in round number 15. This to me was a bit of a backbreaker. Was able to secure the ninth round and it's a three versus five. Tessus was able to lurk up long, able to backstab Sun Pius there. Nerds gets a little too excited right then, and he doesn't recognize that Stown's around him, and even though Madden's able to get this kill to still keep the man advantage, there's still just too much synergy between Yabby and Stown, able to find that kill on the site, and Stappy, you gotta win this duel, buddy. You gotta win this duel. If Kassad is gonna highlight the fact that you took down Kadian to end out Nuke, where's the frag in Kassad? Listen. I'm gonna explain to people out there how just how confident are you in this in this heroic lineup. Back at the beginning of the second map, he already packed his things. <laughs> no. Getting ready to leave the venue. This is not true. But then all of a sudden they started winning a little bit, and then he's like, you know, sprout his wings and just started yapping. But the thing is, I object. I object. The, the thing on, is, what's, what happens in the green room is supposed to stay in the green room. But <laughs> well, this. I quite enjoy that you, you see, put in that in. In war, there. everything is allowed. I'm war happy love, with that. Right? I'm gonna allow That's it. That's it. So the thing is, and we are at war right now. <laughs> the, 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 okay. the thing is definitely that heroic did play good did play very good on both sides of the map and they controlled the map throughout the majority of the of the whole you know thing that was going on but it doesn't really matter all that much because like you said Sam we are in a total reset now I just I'm just a little bit not worried but I'm just wondering about the mood in answer camp right now but that's why they have the good sports psychologist to help them getting through that and I think they're gonna come out on top I actually didn't listen to a lot of the analysis because I just kept thinking about how much fun it would be if someone on the internet turned Maui's little chicken dance into a gif that we could all use. But anyway, I'm just putting it out there. Use it, don't use it. You obviously think Heroic's got this in the bag. There is a confidence to them now, which we didn't see. They were very quiet and subdued earlier. They're looking a lot louder. They're, they're shouting again and, and getting excited, whereas Ants is quietened down, which could work in their favor, maybe. You obviously clearly feel that Mirage is their map. Yes, I do. I am sticking with that. I, I feel like map number one, even though Heroic weren't even playing up to their normal level, they still made it competitive on Nuke. We finally saw the normal level level there on Overpass, and it was convincing. I think that it's going to be even more convincing when we get to Mirage. I don't know if they're going to win by the same scoreline or anything like that, but everybody's firing right now when it comes to Heroic. I'm scared if Snappy wants to call a B-pop because Tessus is popping off right now. I'm scared if he wants to lurk out A right now because Shush is popping off. Listen, I just, can people just notice the difference in his voice when he was 0-1 down and when it's like 1-1 one, one and we are equal? I was biding my time. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was saving my the energy. The thing is, like, yeah, it doesn't really matter what side they are, they're on. Like, what Snappy calls is going to work against Heroic and Kadian. That's simply much determined, like, right before the game. But I'll let you hope that you're going to come out on top and 
Just, uh, that's, that's how good I am as a person. What could potentially help Hero come out on top is one of their players, who is our Air Force Aim High player of the match, Stav, and he had a banger series on Overpass yeah. Maui, and I'll give you this one. Oh. Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. I mean, it's really, really all Stown. It's not not actually me in the server playing, but I will oh, take a little bit of credit for what Stown was able to accomplish here. Yeah, I think that what Stown was doing so well in this game was just kind of finding, he wasn't necessarily finding a lot of openers for me for Heroic, but it was in the mid round where he was consistently able to just kind of read what's going on. Felt like the comms for Heroic were actually all in sync, and so he's able to play off of his teammates so well, and that's why he fragged out. Is that it? That's it, he's done, now you get to talk. I mean, yes. No, more. You wanna, you wanna... No, no, no. He did play well. I'll, I'll give you that one. 25-16, pretty, you know, commendable score. But it doesn't really mean all that much because, you know why? Ants, just better. <laughs> Ants, just better. That's the slogan. That's I actually the slogan. really just love that. We need to trademark that before they steal yeah. it and put it on like, they, they all their stuff. They should do it. Stuff. They're watching. They should do it right now. And just, it just has, like, that ring to it, like a like elegant... Like a wipe. I think yeah. one, one thing I want to say to give a more well-rounded analysis of this is that I, I actually want Nerds to play a little bit better. He was pretty quiet there on overpass, but he is so instrumental to the mid-defense mid, mid defense for, for uh, ends. The thing is, like, one. if you go into a deeper analysis, serious analysis, because we are getting paid for this. Yeah. The thing is, like... Wait, do you guys get paid? <laughs> Ants is definitely more versatile team on a map like Mirage yeah. rather than on a, on a map like New. Yeah, Mirage, uh, overpass is a little bit like wider mm -hmm. and Mirage is a little bit more defaulty and a little bit more compact and the rotations are a little bit different so I do think this is going to come into play overall. It's going to be a banger and the winning team gets a spot in the semi-finals in the playoffs. We are going to take a quick break and when we return they are going to be playing for that spot. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god, oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god, Gary, are you gonna be kidding me? What a map. What a map. The in game leader. Architect of every move and every win. The Entry Fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The Opper, the deadliest of them all. The Support, the true difference between winning and losing. The Lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Mirage, one of Counter-Strike's most notorious maps. Paradise for some, a prison for many. But these inmates choose not to leave. You gotta know that one. Oh my god! Who left Mirage on the fucking map pool again? Why don't you try out some other maps? Because he's a sweaty little mess. What the hell you mean there's another map? Protesters have seen the psychological impact on the subjects within Mirage and are trying to have the facility shut down. I mean, hell, where are we going to go? I do have a friend over at Vertigo. I'd soon rather get the damn chair than go up there. The city has responded to the outcry by promising a refurbishment of the facility. City coming in here trying to change our map. But we don't want no upgrades. We like it just how it is. Have you seen the plans for Palace? Are you telling me I need to upgrade my fucking video card again? Tensions are high in the facility as two star players clash. Do you not own a fucking headset? I go first, you cover. What's so goddamn complicated, you fucking idiot? Dude, do you even have a mouse to move? How the fuck am I supposed to cover you if I ain't there first? Oh, okay. You want me to jump in front of... The op, you just let me through. Well, 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 what do we have here? Look at you two, complaining about who's gonna squeeze into each other's hole first. <laughs> just like a prison, there's extensive evidence of segregation within the facility. Let me explain it for you. It's just like a backyard barbecue. You got your wieners, 
you got your sloppy joes, and then there's just folks taking up space in the yard. And then you got leftovers, and in our case, Timmy. He's over in the psych ward. B, let's be yes. B, nothing be yet. Uh, 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 nothing be yet. Nope, 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 nothing be. It's clear. Timmy, why do you do this? I just keep jumping, 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 and looking, and looking, and jumping, and I look. God, where are they? Timmy, do you mind if we come into your area? Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they're coming. You need to leave. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. They're all here. Be, 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 be. Where it all went wrong for these outcasts of society is hard to say. But the epidemic of Mirage addiction sadly shows no signs of slowing. Let's roll. What is your calling? Heroic refuse to go quietly into that good night. They step it up on overpass and they come through with their heads held high. An entirely different looking team to the one that we got to open up in this series winner going on to the semi-final so a lot on the line for these squads it's been a brawly matchup thus far and you can imagine as we get ready to head to mirage the decider here that that is set to continue ents on the other side they bought the heat to open this one up but full very silent on overpass the star is some pious having been snuffed out and eclipsed by heroic and for the Danes, they've had Stown to look at. They've had him to inspire faith, to inspire confidence, and it's brought them back into the fold. Yeah, and that's a benefit of this heroic roster, even though we at times criticize them for not having this one standout, monumental titan of Counter-Strike. They've still managed to make all these playoff runs with you know just the ability for anyone to step up. It feels like on the right day, in the right game, we can have a different player save a match for heroic. And Shush is putting on an admirable performance as well, right behind Stown in this series. But of course, with the outlier, if he can keep it up into map three, that might be a top four, at bare minimum for Heroic. Odds sit in their favor in the final map of this series, but Ents are happy to play against them. T-side start lets Heroic really decide how they want to set the pace, set the tone for this third map. Madden's getting it flashed in a ramp here. He wants to be involved early. Ooh, oh, but a missed opportunity. Slow. A big missed opportunity over towards connector. The bomb gets away. So maybe Nerds can hold on. Maybe Nerds can be that, that buffer stop between Heroic and this A play not to be as Kadian gets rid of him. Pistol round oh, off to a rip roaring nah. star, but a couple of missed shots for some pious. Disaster. See him in a weird way. Snappy will take matters into his own hands. The bomb finds a path all the way into B, thanks to Tessez. And so Heroic are still very much in the round here. The favorites in it as Ents left high and dry. No one left on that B side of the map as they all shuffled around to try control that split out onto A. And Snappy having to do it all himself is not the winning way here for Ents. It's Heroic. To step up to the mark, and yeah. now they're off to the races with a pistol under their belt. They're first in the series. Great mid-rounding for Heroic to just be rooting B the whole time, despite getting that A pick off of Madden's flash push and uh, and taking a lot of space out of Palace. Yeah, he somehow survives that spray of the pistol into Sandwich. But even as the bomb was spotted in Connector, forcing Ents out of the B bomb site, Heroic just waltz in and get that bomb plant. 
force up. Scout MP9 and a good boost to get Nerds in the right place at the right time. Hiroka coming up all into middle. Yabby in the catwalk trying to clear this corner. He does check it out. The scout can't really offer too much assistance. And Yabby, can he, can he bail? He tries to go hunting up the ladder. It's an awkward one. Meanwhile, Heroic still take A, and that smoke for Madden loses any vision, any denial of this bomb plant. He can play the one way, but Heroic, this should be theirs, all tied up. That kill really should Ooh. look to confirm it. Drive by from Nerd. So Madden oh, hello. out. He's out. CT. What? Shush back turned. And now it's just Tess says, this has gone so awry so quickly. Heroic wow. can't hold on. And it's nuts with drive by after drive by on the MP9. And Madden hitting some crazy timings that make this force buy happen. Heroic get their first pistol. And for what? As Enz immediately come up with the response here. And that's the opposite of how this series has been going, right? It's been Enz with pistol rounds, Heroic taking Ecos or four spies and winning them out. They did it on CT side nuke. They did it on CT side overpass. Now Enz come through with an unbelievable round and Nerds lets them know Maui wanted more out of this man in the third map. And how is that for a beginning? The jumping MP9 kill. Let's fucking go! <laughs> Heroic, not out of the woods yet. Force up, of course, and Cadian with no remorse. That is a beautiful nade. Already tagging up the B play, Snappy. Involved and thriving as he shuts down their attempt to get out through the apartments. This round was started by the captain of Heroic and it will be ended by the captain of Ents. Snappy sends Cadian packing and even then he's dispatched his boys to hunt down this last man. Cadian suspects. But Nerds has heard this. He knows the slowdowns happened. He knows that Cadian was moving away. And so even something as simple as staying alive, getting out of the round with a gun is far from guaranteed. Blinder of a shot from Cadian to keep this AK in play. But that should be all this round is for Heroic. Everyone else just sat back in their chairs as they watch their captain fight for his life at the end of the round. Mirage is just such a banging map for a third map of, of you know this status. With the relative little on the line, and I say that in terms of not being eliminated and the brawliness that this game has given us as a result. No better map than Mirage for some focused fragging, some quick mid takes. We'll see how Ents match that as this will be all that Cadian carries into the next round. Nothing behind it here for Heroic. Force would be optimistic at best. I mean, Heroic are going to force around this again. They, 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 they don't feel pretty comfortable doing this. It's well within their wheelhouse. Their second time having a buy like this in the uh, in the series where the hero gun doesn't work out, so they just recommit to it for a second time. Let's see if they're able to show us why. KDM right now with that AK is all the way in top middle. He's also got the bulk of the util in this round, so he kind of needs to try and tee his teammates up as they come out through lower. This re-smoke ramp might feel good for Ents, but Heroic, they were accounting for this. They, they make that presence known over towards ramp early, trying to get this util out of the way. And they've managed that now. Waiting out the con util before this ramp side gets engaged. Kadian can flash them into connector. It goes into the window instead. On the jump, they heard the wood. They know he's here. Yabby still hits the blinder. 
It's up to Nerds, baiting them in for Madden, back in the sandwich, trying to take a bite out of this attack, and he's already stifled the first. CTs are coming in for reinforcements, and they are hitting their shots. It's a good lurk for Yabby in this round, finding a couple of kills off of it, but the bomb is dropped back on the ramp side, and Madden is remaining in control. 20 seconds, Heroic have to break through. Madden whips his shot, gives it away, comes back down, but they've hunted him, and Nerds now has to keep this strong start to the map going with a 1v2 clutch. They've got him cornered. He tries to swing for the fences, but he's out of ammo. Yabby finishing what he started, looking for the third kill and he's got it through the box so reassuring to see Abby looking like this you know we touched upon it already as we opened up this series but back at Cologne last year that was one of the first looks you had with Yabby in this squad it was a poor tournament from him and he went on to to look so much stronger past that point this is a heroic with the fifth man that they didn't have back at that last Cologne. Well and truly in the swing of things, it's him and Cadian to get that round over the line. And so ends, they waste no time calling in this pause. Heroic went with the risky move of recommitting to that hero AK4 spy. After Cadian saved it out of the last round, they all invested around it. They, they double dip on the four spy round. Hey, not many teams would make that yeah. decision, but Heroic are one of the squads that don't mind to. Optimism pays off. And so this battle will not end until a couple of concurrent rounds come back through. Again, they set notes up. The uh, dangerously crosses back. They don't spot him, so they're not aware of the heavy contact on ladder. Some Pius can bait for his teammate in that position. Or swap out entirely. That's a beautiful shot. Yabby yeah, getting activated in map three of this series. No time like it. And Kadian giving Util to set them up. What could be this cat take here? This double setup ends one once had has been dismantled. There's almost nothing stopping them from taking B. Yeah, Snappy is in hot water here. He's gonna have support from Diha, who just gets to the market in time, but he's been spotted and seen and dealt with by Shush. Out of the van, it's Snappy's P250 and some Pius on this MP7 trying to make magic happen. They've spotted Snappy, but Yabby's not able to deal with him. Getting Ooh. whittled down, death by a thousand cuts. Snappy's able to elude capture for just a moment, and that lets Nerd slip out through the market. Now he's in the site with them, and they've got no idea. He is right wow. here, but Tessez will sniff him out. And so Heroic navigate through that stack. It starts with just Snappy there, but the reinforcements kept flowing through the market. And every time Heroic cut them down, the four spy wars look to come to a close. And it's Heroic who emerge the victors. This is an early start in the right direction, an early step in the right direction for Heroic. Just incredible how they can recover it given the you know, Ents do to them what they've been doing to Ents all series in finding that first uh, first force by. And Heroic are now still sitting three to two and soon to be four with only USPs on the other side. Easy enough to break into A, minimize casualties, let the high health players take the brunt and they will. A left, right and a good night for Ents on the eco. Not a kill to take and I love how Heroic prioritize who peaks there. As each of them get dinked, they swap with a player to their side. And four players leave sub-50 health, but not a single casualty. Nothing to write home about for ends. And even one kill on those kind of rounds do make uh, all the difference, right? It's an extra bit of utility for some pies. It would be armor with his AWP in this one. He's just glass into the first full by round of this map on number seven. Oh, he's on the angle at the right time. They're double over in the palace. That's only a tag, shush. Ow. Wearing an extra set of armor, it just clips through the, 
the wall over in Palace, and so it's not that early 5v4, the orb. Now knowing about, that's going to force some Pius to reposition. He takes the market, trading places with Snappy. What's this call? Are they bringing him back? Kadian's looking to his side while he's tucked in the corner, calling all of Heroic on a spawn reset, leaving Shush to sell this very late fake. And it's just some... He's only one man, one unarmored one as well. Mid util comes through. There's still a lot of eyes on mid hit for Ents, but as I say that, Snappy rotates back out to B, reinforcing the AWP. Deha's going to hear this coming up catwalk at least. That will be the first warning on this very late B hit. Oh, oh that was dead on. He holds for that exact peak. And even though Kadian gives it to him, some Pius does not react fast enough. Now the rest of Heroic has siphoned out of the round nice. slowly but surely. Snappy moves in. And he does strike while the iron's hot here. It's just Yabby left standing on the B play. The bomb now away from them. And even though Stown has got this flank, it's considered, it's held. And Ents will adjust to that nicely. Heroic try to get tricky with some of these lurks in the mid round. And everything is considered. Even though they lose some pious, accomplishing nothing in the sight hold. It's Snappy who moves in. The rotates flow like water for Ents. Yeah, they're still very split, our Heroic, right? It's still a man back in the palace, layered in middle. Only two coming out of apartments. All over the place. And Ents are able to pick them off one by one. Oh my, Kadian, that's a pace. Great grenade from Ents. Look at the red. Everyone gets blown to bits in middle. And even though Heroic realized they have a gap, they have an opportunity, and started dropping out of window into middle. They try and move out the ramp. They get denied by the AWP, waiting for that exact reaction. Some Pius one step ahead. And now Heroic have to rely on a two-smoke execute. I feel like a lot of this is going to come down to whether or not Kadian can open up down some of these long sight lines with the AWP. He's going to have the duel versus some Pius if he wants it. The flash goes out now for him to try and take the angle. And Stown beats Kadian to the punch. Not the man he was supposed to get it, but you take it nonetheless. And Madden was tagged from that AWP at the ramp. Tessez burnt to a crisp. Over in Palace, they lose one of these prongs, but the rest of Heroic try to flood in. They managed to gain a little bit of leverage over the site here, but that bomb crossing is still tenuous at best. No smoke down over towards jungle. Gives Deha open sight lines. And Snappy takes up position at the spawn. One smoke out. That's to plant the bomb in. That's to facilitate this bomb plant. And Circadian just has to hold this angle deep down towards the spawn yeah. as his teammate plants. He can't afford to miss here. Takes a swing and leaves Ooh. spawn open. They make that oh so easy for Snappy. That's so cheeky for Snappy. He doesn't swing off of the tap. So Kadian just thinks there's no one spawn. They're all coming from the same side. And he tries to jump up, beat the timing on top of his teammate to kill the players in jungle while he has that smoke acting like a one way. But then Snappy swings out a second after the plant, right when Heroic are discounting it. Great hold for Ents. Even though Heroic feign a, a mid-take late in that round by throwing a window smoke from T-Spawn and then contact into A, they get the entry, they get nothing more. I know coming into this series, this is one where, where both the captains of these teams have had pretty pretty strugglesome times on, on either map, but here on the third, they both sit top of their respective teams. Two IGLs who often get compared to one another, really playing their hearts out here in the third. Snappy holds the line over towards B. He's still a threat at the van, and his teammates move in to lend a helping hand. Wow. B is off limits. Another one of these fast plays that Heroic looked to bring to the field, locked out by Ents. Snappy's just giving us a monstrous game right now, fighting tooth and nail for his first time in the Lanxus. He wants to go right to the semis, and he is 13 and five. Incredible hold back from CT last round. And here are the B site now against the Eco from Heroic. These can certainly get out of control. Snappy does not allow that to happen.
And Ents take the lead right back, given how this game started. They've got it in very early on this CT side. Ruck risked it all with double four spies to take their 4 1 lead, or 4 2 rather. But Ents don't wait long, amassing a streak of their own and drawing Heroic's money into question. They will have to buy here, but players around 4,200. You're going to have the bare minimum allowed for a four buy. No orb, barely more than smoke, flash, flash. And so one of the things, you know, we, we, we teed up and we talked about earlier on in this series was how it was relieving to see Stown looking like a star, right? Looking sick on Nuke, admittedly hitting a bit of a brick wall towards the end, but then really finding his footing on overpass and being a big time player. But it's as we get into the third, as the pressure is really on, Stown, the guy who has been topping the charts for Heroic, sits down bottom of the board. That old problem of when the pressure's at its highest. And he starts to crumble, rears its head again. And on the flip, Nertz has had no problem, even if he was uh, quieter at the start of this series. He's now putting on one of those superstar performances that we know he can, that he did in his debut back at Pro League on Ents' playoff run. This is weird, though. Yabby swapped in the smoke with the aforementioned man. He can go over the stairs. His team, however, has been picked apart, and he can't even close that kill onto the orb. Disastrous round for Heroic, and Ents know it. Six to four, they lock it out. And that's a round that just sucks the wind out of your sails. If you're Heroic, uh, you know, they, they, they try to run a nice split up through the connector. They get some of the space that they're looking for as well, but everyone's returned to dust and the, and the few opportunities you had they get away from you without you even making a dent a flawless round on the board for the end squad this late in the game ends are now established on the ct side heroic are gonna have to break through buy after buy if they want to make something of this half so the the job gets a lot harder now for the danes when has it ever been easy for heroic to make their own luck here. Deagles, Tech 9. And happy to face him in mid here. We have a nice double short setup. Nerds playing the con smoke, looking down under. And Heroic is stoic behind the boxes, but they're lining up some util. And now Snappy gets he that. He sees info. that. That's a yeah. big nade already. You know it. Lights him up again. The util damage has been incredible for Ents in these last few CT rounds. Makes their job a lot easier. Heroic have won a round, though, just flying up Con. Gonna try and do it again. No tears all of it. Oh, up on his head. They will deal with Nerds as the point man over at Con, but it's Madden under Palace. Really looking to drive home his royal stature within this team. Three kills from the man, Acadian. Dead man walking in middle as him and Snappy clash. Hence, <laughs> don't let the pistols in. So often for Heroic, they found ways to make those rounds costly at least. But across the last two, across the last three rounds rather, We've had 13 out of a possible 15 players surviving for Ents, so they are they are so built up. They're going to be a hard nut to crack here for Heroic. They're getting cheeky, though. 4B rush. Yabby doesn't even buy an AK. He's just going for the speed with that MAC-10. One man already in. Snappy back at the truck, but this time only one kill from him on the anchor. It's going to fall down the line to Diha. Has them trapped over in the apartments. Didn't need to go swinging, but he wanted to oh. fight with his teammate Nerds on the rotate. Instead, they both give Heroic a kill and suddenly a chance in the round. This is wild. Heroic look to go and fight for See middle. Ya. They're trying to take that bomb out of the B site around the world and now play it late into A. And Kaden can just stay here because as long as you get this open bomb plant, he has the perfect post plant position. Some Pius is confused. Where have they gotten to? He backs up through short and Kadian repositions for this cross. There should be no way he's ready for this. And Heroic steal it right back with the B rush. You called it the dangerous swing for Deha as his teammates are getting out market to play. 
away with him. If he just doesn't move, Heroic are in trouble. They wait patiently in the apartments for the players to come to them. And right when you think they're in control of the round in a four on two, Ents feed Heroic a couple of kills as they slow down and they make the perfect mid-round move. Love that heads up play for Cadian, sending the bomb straight into the A site. with the timeout you, you're probably not happy with with how quickly that one got away from you you know it, it went from looking like another one of these guaranteed another one of these guaranteed rounds where they repel the B offensive where they remove that from heroics playbook and it gets away from them so a time to look to the to the future four ends time to plan ahead Stop heroic from streaking these rounds together. Already touched upon how it's going to be a real uphill battle for heroic every step of the way because of how set up Ents are. Snappy's played at the van in every one of these B rounds. This time he's trying to keep it a little fresh. They finally uprooted him last time. He's lost short. He's feeling very trapped in at the back of the site. And so Nertz moves around to reinforce with him. Some Pius has dealt with the mid component here. And Nertz rings out from the bench. Now that they found Snappy, Cadian sees the barrel sticking through. And he uses that to cut through this oh. B site. Another from Cadian's orb. And he's seen some Pius. They're about to clash here. It's 1v1 made. And some Pius is getting tricky with it. Looks to leave, looks to leave the market. Trying to reposition, trying to keep Cadian guessing. Just akin to how Cadian pulled the wall over his eyes in the last round. Some Pius now tries to do it straight back. With enough silence from the market, Cadian considers the short wrap round. He asks himself, what would we do in this situation? And so he tries to get in the head of some Pius. He has read this well. He has opened a market. He no longer be be believes that that's where Sun Pius is coming from. Cadian knows. And as this smoke goes in, he sees an invitation to play around it. Closing the net. Sun Pius doesn't have time. Sun Pius writes this one off. You never see 1v1s where he just straight up doesn't give it a go. And Heroic almost can't believe it. He just concedes. Cadian wins that one, not with brawn, but with brain power. Just avoids the contact long enough that some Pius had no choice but to give that round over. It's so glamorous. It's like the chess play from Cadian. He sees the barrel through the bench. I can't believe that. But the repositions, the timings that he clears market so late, but just late enough that he can't get backstabbed, that he doesn't need to swing. And there was just an, an orchestra of Danes yelling out all at once. When they knew he wasn't attempting the 1v1, there's no better feeling to feel like you removed every option from your opponent that in such a winnable round, a round as winnable as that, you got them not even attempting it. Yeah. That's a victory that you don't often get in Counter-Strike. I mean, it's desperate for some players, right? Even the fact that he's making that rotation, his team just get flattened in the B bomb site. He had one shot as Cadian crossed back from the right pillar and he missed it. At that point, you're doubting yourself. You know he's got the info with the bomb in his favor as well. Everything is coming up heroic there. And they're looking to steal this winning half right at the bitter end. On the bright side, some Pyre saved his orb, but this shell that enter built up with these 13 out of 15 alive rounds it's now coming to a close if they don't win this round they're eco for 15. some Pius has to be the savior after that orb save look at the space heroic have gained in this round they've got ct spawn they've got jungle for crying out loud and they've got re-smokes to boot my oh my, Ents are in trouble for what will be a very tricky retake. The bomb's still not crossed that ramp though. It's on Cadian's back, so it will come down to kills and Heroic will provide. Some Pyre survives for one more fight. Three on three now, and Cadian starts to get out of his cave. But which way? I mean, they want to get weird with it. I think at this point you can kind of feel how you've You've got Ents doubting everything, and Circadian is just checking for a flank. A flank that we can see is never going to arrive. 
And the lull and the action has made Snappy try and read into it. I like the Snappy's playing active here. He's going to confirm that, okay, I made this long rotate, but it isn't B after all. And if Kadian takes too long, Snappy will still have good timing on a T-spawn flank, but he will need to run sooner enough. Util serves to complicate matters. Ents can try crossing behind that. Yeah. That makes Kadian feel uneasy here, and Madden will walk the smoke, but Tessez holds it. Now you've got to lend a bit of time to Snappy. They know about him on the wrap round up through middle, and they've got him boxed into this fight on Shusha Connector. Snappy dead. It's just some pious. Didn't attempt the 1v1. Is there any hope for him in this 1v2? Flash goes out, and some pious has got to run away. It knocks him off the angle, which Kadian now owns. And even though he's floating around, this is not a round meant for some pious. Just like over at the B site, he's having oh. flashbacks. And Kadian will fall, but so yeah. will Sun Pius. Heroic tie this game up, and they know with how these last few rounds have gone, they've got Ents in their heads. That's back-to-back -back clutches that Sun Pius can't even attempt. Yeah, he's got to be feeling so flustered right now in this map with the way Heroic is shutting him out in the last couple of clutches, and to not even be allowed to save the AWP. Uh, you know, what did you save it for in the first 1v1, right? Now you're going into round 15, and Ents have barely got to buy two M4s. Sun Pius snuffed out, Heroic in your heads, and they're screaming down the hall as well. Double entry into middle. Ends. It's slipping through the cracks right at the end of their CT side. He's going to get this one for free. Ooh. Wasn't as clean as he would have liked, but still good for it. This re-smoking window is huge. Deho is really hoping he could have manipulated that gap. Use that to provide some sort of opportunity to his team instead. It's going to have to fall to Matt. MP9 up close, just one kill from the man. And even though Diha tries to get ahead of this by repositioning early, it's going to leave him high and dry away from Heroic's true intention in the round. He comes back. But the timing can't be made up. There's another gap for him to look to exploit, but that's ugly from Diha. There was definitely a chance there. Snappy sits top of the board for Ents, but a 1v3 is asking far too much. And so Heroic might have been on the uphill battle the entire damn time. And they managed to win out this first half.
What is your calling? A series that has flowed in either direction ends with a strong opening map on their pick of Nuke and Heroic stealing away at Overpass in dominant fashion. Now splits us right down the middle at the end of the first half. Mirage is miraculous, full of clutches, full of screams, and full of playoff players as Heroic and Ents buy for a semi-final spot in the Lanxus. Skip a whole stage, skip a whole day but only one will make it that far. And as the chapters of CSGO come to a close, it's the last chance to really leave an impression and guarantee yourself that top four placing. On Cologne, on the back of the semi-final berth, it grants you Ents T-side now. And they make a bit of noise over towards the apartments, but Cadian might uproot everything. Spots some pious as he tries to leave the apartments and so this is going to throw a bit of a spanner in the works for Enz. Yeah, if Snappy can call as well as he can kill, then we're in for a treat on this T side because he's been playing uh, some incredible CS on this third and final map. But he still needs his stars to shine bright on a T half. Up under after a fake towards B. And Heroic playing full retake, but with no kit, you'll note they've given it up from CT spawn. And Yabby felt like he needed to thin the herd coming into the A side. He won't be able to. He'll pay the brutal price of his life. Bomb getting planted. This should just be impossible for Heroic. Look at their positions. They are locked out of the site. Stown does start things off on the right foot. And maybe Heroic can sneak in at the last second. Nice flick from Deher in the connector to win his engagement, and now he becomes a real swing player in the round, but dead immediately. That's uh, over in Palace. He's got to buy Snappy a bit of time. He's working with small margins here, but Snappy taps out that first man. Now they try to get back on the bomb, and Snappy lines them up. He sets it all no up chance. for Nerds to win. Shush has tapped it, and sure, he's going to win the fight, but with no kit, there's no time as Snappy... Sign seals and delivers a pistol round to Ents. Huge work from the captain of this Ents squad. It was his team getting it done on that opening map. And now come the third, they look down the line and they see the veteran of Snappy firing on all cylinders to bring them back in to semi-final contention here with that pistol round. Yeah, and what a veteran, right? Uh, you know, over 10 years of LAN experience, no trophies till his ne to his name till Dallas at the end of last season. And man, he is doing it individually here for Ents when they need it the most. Making his first playoff appearance at Cologne. All these Ents pieces peaking at the right time. But if there's been one consistency of this series, it's been Force Buys in second round. And Heroic, they've offered even more than Ents in that department. So CT side buy up. Ents have to be very cautious. Back on overpass, they rushed a monster smoke. They paid the price. This one will be more slow more calculated. Still two players towards A, but with no smokes on either of them. This will be a weird fake. Going to try and sell this towards the A side. Tessis alone at B right now. Madden about to meet his maker. Oh. Bait and switch over towards ramp. Sees this fake over towards the A side of the map get dismantled. And Tessez Ooh. wins a fight in B, complicating matters, even though Snappy moves in with the trade. It's time for Heroic to siphon players right. around. They want to take these fights while they've got them, while they only have a handful of ends players here to worry about. Snappy is spammed down and finished off. D is trying to buy time, oh, no. but Stown will delete him. And with that, the force by is one for Heroic, huge from Tessez, to even open that up, to even throw that much chaos into the round. And his team is so quick at moving in, so decisive that they want to fight for that B site there and then. Heroic and Kadian know 
The Ents did not have everyone over towards B. They're just the scariest rounds, right? Heroic playing like they have absolutely nothing to lose. The jumps through market, as you say, the hunting of those two Ents players in the B bomb site. Heroic hound them down. That is a, a disaster for Ents, but it is not the first. It's all about how you recover from those kind of rounds. And Heroic continue to bring the heat and the pace straight up top mid. Yabby, faced by four players, does get bullied. So Ents at least start things off on the right foot. Heroic want revenge. They have everyone here, even he taking the gun out. Didn't move, though. But even so, they're not keeping eyes on it. Heroic going back to this B stack. And hey, we might have the back and forth beginning of this half once again as Ents seem to have made the right read. And Les Down goes superstar mode and shuts down the entirety of Ents here on this offense. And if this was earlier in the series, you would have faith in him to do that. Ooh. The nade is nice. It's info. And let's know that there are players moving up ramp. Snappy, not often separated from this team. He does like to be in with the pack, and so that's going to influence how Heroic look to move around here. They pull everyone over towards A. They still haven't seen anything yet, but Tessez and Stown are both swinging, both fighting, and they've got nerds boxed into a corner. Madden with one off the Deagle, and Sampaya so far away. We saw him putting clutches. We saw him not even get to attempt these rounds. With 20 seconds now, he's got to cook up the answer. And he is jittery, firing off early. Now they know where he is, and that element of surprise is gone. I really do think that Heroic have got some pious doubting himself in these clutch moments with how a few of these key rounds earlier in the game went. Yeah, and I love what Heroic do there after Stown gets that nade kill, right? It's, as you said, the information that Ents have a have an A, to, a, a attack and Heroic who have gamble stack B with three players immediately rotate, but they don't just rotate, they stay active. They push up on A, they kill the bomb, they aggress towards Ents with a better weaponry and that ruins some pious's time so of course he has another impossible to win round. His whole team are dead by the time he's in position. They're supposed to still be fighting for it. They'd have a chance. And some bias getting chased as well. It is a rough day for him. Winter is coming. This round is one of little interest for Ents. It probably feels a little bit now like like Snappy is getting a, a taste of this feeling that the Cadians have multiple times in playoff runs for Heroic, which is, you know, that the idea of you as the veteran, as the real experienced voice, you, you're feeling a tremendous amount of pressure to have to do the job yourself. You're the only one you can trust here. And don't get me wrong, it's been fantastic to see Snappy playing like this, but he is not so supposed to be the guy topping the charts for Ents. He is not supposed to be the one up at the top of the board. That is normally a privilege that goes the way of someone like Sampias or goes the way of Inerts. Yeah, and while we've had you know, Ents screaming along, think of Madden's energy he brought into the first map, him and Nerds having great fun uh, with the back and forth, and now it's just Cadian. That's all you hear. Danish shouts and Ents have nothing to cheer about right now in this T side. They won the pistol. That is it. The rogue have carpet bombed them ever since. And Ents with their third timeout, their first buy round. No open play for either team. must start strong or Heroic will snipe this semi-spot. Oh, they want to go for something a lot faster, a lot pacier. Far more simple as well, and maybe the beauty...
is in finding a simple solution to a complex problem here for Snappy. Diha opens, oh. they nearly line up for Shush. Nerds is able to keep this in Ensa's advantage. And now that bomb goes down. Nothing crazy, nothing convoluted about this one. Just a bit of pace behind the A play. And Ents have found a way in. Now they've just got to withstand the first few seconds of this retake, and they should have done enough. Yabby pressuring, brings oh. Heroic back into the round. Nurse is getting spammed, and suddenly he's the last man standing. He's got to do it all. They're low. Nurse with one. Oh, and the double. Nurse is trying to make it happen. There he is. Wow. Up on the screen, it's Nurse nailing Heroic to a post. He makes it happen, and he keeps Ents in the game. We were questioning who would have been the star to step up alongside Snappy, and Nerd shows he's got what it takes. Yeah, there's a reason he's here. There's a reason Ents plucked him into this roster with big boots to fill. The Israeli, Israeli talent performs when Ents need him most, right when they're ready to give up, right when Heroic is starting to run away with a series. And Nerd finishes the job that his entire team started. Three players in the red. Ents, with confidence now, starts 